At one time, the apostles, they all stood at the top of the world, collectively known as the Twelve Super Beings. They were all heroes, and history says that each of the apostles was incredibly strong. Each of them had their own superpower. Some could control water in volume compared to the ocean. Others could control the entire humanity of emperors. And moreover, they could create new worlds from their flesh and blood. Among them is the most mighty apostle known as Yulman, who has limitless power. According to records, his combat power is far superior to other apostles, but its origin is unknown, although he was happy about it. The highest category of danger is designated as the apostle, but when the apostles disappeared, they were posthumously forgotten and began to be considered legends. At some point, the boy decided to sneeze without paying attention to the viewer. Yulman understood that it was quite cold here and the soldiers would soon come to fight the little dragon that lives in these mountains. By the way, this very ice dragon of Warcraft is a disaster category. This is the most dangerous category in the existence of the Warcraft classification. It has great destructive power and also large ice bayonets that can kill ordinary people without any reason if they catch his eye, of course. Also, the Warcraft Ice Dragon leads monsters from the north on the Thunderfield. At the same time, in order to protect the nationality and security of the Fram Empire, people immediately moved out of their army for protection. They also understood that this battle would begin soon, and one of the guys decided to say whether they could, more precisely, their entire squad defeat this dragon, to which another replied that it was possible. Only God knows the answer to this question. After which it seemed to others that the first squad would go into battle, to which they, of course, listened to the order and began to attack the monsters along with the dragon. The defense, as always, was at its best, and really wanted to protect all the soldiers who were nearby, but also did not want to die themselves. One of the boys saw some kind of monster attacking him from above. He screamed and did not understand what to do. While he was shouting, the dragon attacked them all and what was in defense, he quickly could not hold back the dragon strike, which caused him to suffer. The boy understood that these soldiers are not opponents of this monster, so he should watch all this or help them. In general, the inequality in combat power is too great. Most likely they will lose soon. But suddenly some girl screamed and told them not to panic. The guy who paid attention could not help but notice the new person, and also looked at her in surprise and wondered who she was. She said that if the enemy is stronger, it does not mean that they will lose. But if they retreat now, they will definitely fail. The girl decided to create her own fireball and throw it straight at this ice dragon so that it wouldn't seem to him that everything was so easy. Having launched the ball, I will now introduce her to you, Her Majesty Dana, one of the four great magicians of the Fram Empire, known as the Witch, was appointed to lead this army. All the people immediately stood up and were motivated by her words, and also said that this was the lady in whom they all did not believe. They said that excellent, now they have a chance to win. She decided to tell them all to start attacking the dragon while they had the chance. Of course, they listened to her and began to attack the monsters that were next to the dragon, and also quickly get to him in order to quickly defeat him, and also get rid of unnecessary victims. All the people were surprised at how indignant the dragon was, and it would be clear to any person that this dragon clearly doesn't like it when they try to kill his monsters. One of the guides realized what the hell was this, and why can he still move? The princess said that it's impossible. It was one of the most strong, fiery magical attacks and an angry explosion, but by some miracle he was able to escape and did not even damage himself. As soon as he stopped shouting at them all, he decided to make a counter-strike and launch his ice ball, which would possibly destroy everything around him. Of course, it wasn't exactly like that. It wasn't just a ball, but precisely its flame that it created on all these soldiers. They soon all froze and tried to run away, but everything was useless. 
The girl was getting more and more angry at this dragon and didn't understand why her blow was so weak. You see, she trained as best she could and still didn't achieve anything as possible, she thought. Dana realized that she needed to act and quickly create a small explosion around this dragon. Having begun to fly, she seriously decided to swear that on behalf of Majesty Seryoga, the great magician of the Fram Empire would not allow him to win, and also to mock her and her subordinates. The dragon didn't seem to care, and all he wanted was to get rid of this girl who had angered him with her blow. They decided to look at each other as two elements, ice and fire. They began to think of each other as a mortal enemy, if she does not defeat the dragon, then the dragon will defeat her, and something needs to be done seriously. The dragon began to attack this girl who wanted him dead. The dragon began to attack, and she also began to use her active magic to fend off his blow. As a result, they began to fight with their elements ice and fire, and did not begin to seriously call and also replenish with empty energy which soon turned into ordinary energy, which happened in the end. And the fact that everything is very simple, she lost to the dragon. After all, the best one turned out to be much stronger and her fireballs scattered into pieces, after which he sent her far away into the winter mountains. The girl was seriously injured and also could not get up with anyone's help, and it was not clear what would happen if she didn't get up now, whether she would die. The soldiers could not understand how it happened that even Mrs. Sarah had lost. What to do now, they didn't even know what to think, because most likely there would be no help. The soldiers were so desperate and couldn't believe what was happening now. They all saw him running away and said that they could defeat this dragon, considering him all crazy. But considering that he was already protecting the lady, and if not them, then who? They decided to attack this dragon alone without any outside help. And the girl only tried to stop them, but nothing happened. She was able to understand that she was not strong enough to control this army. And she was also not able to protect herself or protect others. But still, she wants to try again, because it's not in vain that she will have to lead the next throne of her kingdom in such a family as Fram. The master realized that from now on she hated dragons. Therefore, having gotten to their feet, she realized that why did they all run towards the dragon and why didn't she run away? It's very clear that they don't have a chance to win. But still, who should accept her, after which she noticed someone standing right in front of her? Suddenly, he decided to ask her a question. This same guy turned out to be the same Yulman, and he decided to tell her that the man who wanted to earn a few gold coins here is who he is. He also decided to remind her that she did not answer his question. She only proudly showed that he really wants to run away. There is no such word in her dictionary and will never appear. The boy said it looks so cute, but there's no time to talk about it now. To which she said, what was he talking about? But he was right because behind her a dragon was running straight towards them at a fairly high speed. A little later when she finally heard it, she realized that after all she was distracted by him. Of course, it was at this moment that the dragon began to splash his laser directly at her in order to finally punish her for the rest of her days with his death. The girl didn't know what to do now because it was all over. But suddenly she saw something and couldn't understand how this was possible. This guy decided to go up to the dragon and say that he was bothering them, and with just one touch of his hand he decided to throw him far away from here. Flew far away. He said that he was talking to this missus here, and a small creature like him should calm down and get as far away from here as possible. The dragon kept flipping over and he also threw it back so much that he even took a little damage from just rolling backwards. The dragon realized that that girl is not as dangerous as him, so first of all he needs to take care of the death of that boy so that he does not dare to interfere with him, the dragon thought. Having risen to his feet, he decided to show this guy his power by placing himself right in front of him. 
he decided to defeat him with his attack in order to, so to speak, infringe on him. The boy told him that it looks like they have naughty Dracoshas here and it's time for him to get a good night's sleep right now. Also, he might not have noticed that if he pressed, there would be one punishment, and he would also be burned forever for his presence, and shows his fearlessness in front of him. After which he used his magic and began to dry it, strangely enough, right in his hand. After which a few more minutes passed and he began to burn, nothing would help him after such an element, as well as narrowing. Oh yes, of course, all dragons drop some kind of crystal. There are not three types, as humanity knows, ice and fire. Well, the same. The boy realized that since he saved the girl's life, he could invite her to go on a date with him at her expense. She replied that how could he kill a disaster category monster with just one hand? She also wanted to ask him who the hell he was. Of course, when she got up, she couldn't stand there as she was too weak after the dragon caused damage to her body. Well, he said that it was quite simple. After all, he is just something simple, a mercenary who decided to earn some gold coins. That's all he told the girl. Of course he lied, because Yulman was the first among the apostles to be called the Limitless. After which a lot of time passed, and she woke up in her bed, and also frightened that everything was not over. She told the ice dragon where he was, getting scared right next to her bed. Having thought about the information a little and also understood what had happened in the end, she realized that everything seemed to have worked out. She decided where she was anyway. The gentleman decided to assume that for some reason some voice spoke and said that she had finally woken up. Looking a little to the right, she saw some old man, or rather an acquaintance. He said how she was feeling and also how she was feeling in general, because she had only been sleeping for a few days, although he had waited more, but still he was glad that she woke up so early. In general, this is the main magician empire. Fram Aces is the director of the Royal Academy. The master decided to ask the director of the Aces about what happened to the ice dragon, she asked the old man to which he replied that let him lie quietly and rest and not worry about anything. The ice dragon was destroyed. But what happened at the end, how the dragon died, he doesn't know. To which she became nervous and said that she could not remember anything from that moment. Acer realized that this is how it is. He asked her to look here in that case. The girl was very surprised because she understood what it was. To which the old man said that when they arrived it was next to her, and even when she was unconscious it did not disappear. Grandfather decided to tell her that this is a hellish flame. This pendant is unusually strong. This is a flame that people will never be able to manipulate unless it is the same. To which she understood that most likely the apostle owned such a flame. The old man said that this is exactly the case even if the apostles had disappeared for a long time. But since hellish flames appeared in this battle and they obviously don't know something, he decided to praise her and say that she had done a good job, she should get a lot of rest, and he would not disturb her. So he decided to go to his office and watch this flame. Also, he might not have noticed that in addition. The Empire will claim that they defeated the Ice Dragon, but still, in the end, Everything connected with the Apostles causes a lot of unnecessary panic, so they just have to accept everything with honor and praise. To which she replied that she would do so. All the people rejoiced and smiled, and also considered her a hero, and everyone said thank you to Mrs. Sergei Dana for this victory. All the people began to discuss this victory, and also could not believe that she was able to defeat this dragon alone. This same guy was sitting in the corner of the bar and also thought that of course there would be too much noise if his identity was revealed, but still. How it happened that he would never see little girls who would treat him is not known, of course. Everyone was also interested in how he came to the human world to find a girl for himself and not wander in these winter wastelands and also kill creatures that are lower his ranks in the Almighty. 
But still, the boy understood that the agenda was to leave this city and hide somewhere would be a good plan. Suddenly, until this moment there was one policeman who was the commander, and there were also guards behind him. They were heading straight to this bar. While the boy was saying goodbye to all this goodness, they said that his favorite tavern, the beautiful ladies behind the bar, these all had to say goodbye on the same day, how offensive it was for him. The general and the soldiers headed towards him and said that one of them was a mercenary. But what all the guys in this bar heard, what he asked everyone, said that. The mercenary is this guy who is trying to get himself somewhere right now. After which he decided to run away because he realized that, damn, was he really discovered so quickly and he didn't even have time to say goodbye. The commander said that he had finally found him. In fact, he came here to inform him that he had been invited to take part in the entrance test to the Royal Academy. All the people were seriously alarmed that some ordinary mercenary decided to go to the Royal Academy. Isn't this the best academy in the Fram Empire? And this guy only recently came to them. Why did they call him the third one said that this is exactly what it can't be that simple a coincidence? The general decided to tell them all that he wanted to ask everyone here who participated in the battle against the ice dragon, just like this man. To which they were all surprised and said that in the battle against the ice dragon, was he really there and survived? After all, they said that only the lady survived. The guys couldn't believe it, because only a handful of people survived there, and this guy was one of them. The general replied that it was true. In addition, after participating in the battle, he remained safe and sound, which means that he is a lucky guy who has good skills, which means he needs to join the Royal Academy. They also have some other questions on this topic, to which they all looked at him, and they didn't even know what to answer because they didn't have any questions then. They were just surprised by this outcome of events although one brave raised his hand and said he had a question. The boy laughed and decided to ask. He turned out to be and said that there were many beauties and beautiful girls in this academy. Eager for an answer, he decided to ask the general. And there, only someone's female legs glittered. There were beautiful clothes as well as beautiful hand shapes. There was quite a lot there, because the Royal Academy of the Fram Empire was one of the richest academies. After all, it was simply paradise. The general wanted to approach the old man and ask her something, saying that Mr. Aces would allow him to ask why he wanted to train this incompetent mercenary. Thus, noticing that the old man began to tell young people what to give and what opportunity to prove themselves, because they can be unexpected talents. This guy clearly came here with good intentions, the old man thought. Suddenly, someone called the microphone and said that, first of all, he would like to congratulate everyone here on the chance to enter the Royal Academy in order to understand whether they are suitable for their ranks as academic servants. They will begin the entrance test right now. Of course, they all hope that they will do everything in their power to get through and survive. They were all very worried, and one girl decided to ask the other what he really said to survive, and she didn't mishear what he was talking about, what he meant with these words. Of course, after these very words, the old man was not impressed by some kind of hellish wolf with the necessary desire to tear someone to pieces. Of course, these wolves were quite strong, and they were also called fire demonic wolves, a summoning beast that can only be summoned by experienced fire magicians. All of them, except the hero, were shocked by this outcome. They all asked what kind of thing the lights were. But the demotic wolf, why exactly him? To which the other said that it was not at all. This is just a test. This is not a wolf will harm them all, right? Of course, Yuji was only interested in the fact that let her not be afraid, little sister, because he will protect her. All of them were quite surprised by this outcome because they did not expect that the teachers would drive fiery wolves at them. They were all really alarmed and understood that this was really a simple test. 
this was not a real monster, one of the guys said correctly, while as a boy he understood that it would be quite interesting to look at the abilities of these students. Although he understood and looked at it all with contempt, is it really worth making such a fuss about this small fish? Another of the boys said that this is not the time to panic, it's time to act. Then she said that since this was a test, let them all show together everything they were capable of, and that would be the end of it, he thought so at least. Trying to grab this wolf with his magic of nature, he was easily able to repel this blow without even inflicting it. He just moved away from him with his agility. They are all so famous for these fire wolves. Someone tried, of course, to defeat them with water magic, thinking that it would be effective. But the fire in their spirits was quite strong, so not every water can defeat fire. Another girl looked at these wolves with such a terrifying look and did not know what to do. She just burst into tears and stood in one place, watching how they harmed her future teammates. They all understood that she herself would actually kill them if they didn't do anything. Therefore, many of the students who could not do anything ran away from the academy, thereby proving that they were weak and unworthy to study here. Yuji couldn't even think about why everything was happening like this, and whether they were all so weak that they couldn't remove these insects. But then he heard that one of the boys said that they were all fools, and he even paid attention to it. It was clear that he was a rather determined guy, and he also said that in such a situation, a mass exodus is really a stupid decision since they become their target. Therefore, one must not run away, but only fight with dignity. Saying this, he also used his air element and said so that the air chain could bring down his enemies. He said that he was able to hold them all back and therefore ordered them all to attack the wolves while there was time. The archers attacked the salt flank first with their arrows. And then the magicians should attack from the right flank. And of course, the swordsmen are right in the center. They all began to attack these wolves in a crowd and how they did it. But they managed to resist these wolves with the called teachers. They were all defeated and could not even move after such blows. But with this outcome, everyone was happy and shouted that they had finally succeeded. The boy even said that they really managed to do it. But the truth is that while they were happy, they didn't know that the wolves had a few more lives. Or rather, they just lay down and shook themselves off a little. And they also have regeneration properties. Therefore, they could not even present that this was not all. Also, after they were defeated the first time, they decided to unite into one creature. And my fiery wolf Cerberus, a creature unlike those ordinary wolves, although he is only one, is superior to these wolves several times. The students decided to use the same tactics. This time, the student finally decided to think that it was really the Royal Academy that was using such a dangerous monster only for a test. While he had agreed on his words, the wolf finally decided to attack them all. Therefore, all these students had to either hide behind something or dodge the blows. Yuji understood that it was such a weak attack flying in his direction that he didn't even want to pay attention to it, but they only made noise because of this. But trying not to pay attention to it, suddenly he noticed something else. Besides this was flying at him fireball. He noticed two fireballs flying straight towards him. The boy could not even imagine that he would be able to come into contact with such Egyptian buffers that were flying straight at him. Of course, the girl was just trying to save him, but for him it was something more. It never occurred to us to admire such an act so much, after which the girl told him that he should be more careful because he was almost hit, although he understood that even if he had been hit, nothing would have happened to him, but still, her heroic deed was cool. The girl decided to ask the guy if he was okay, to which he replied that everything was fine because thanks to her he was safe. While they looked at each other, an explosion occurred around them. Of course it was dangerous, but he didn't care at that moment. 
After which she realized that she had done a slightly unprofitable act for herself and told him to be more careful next time. And she also said that she would take care of the rest and let him rely on her. The boy was very shocked because she really was worried about him. Not about some gentleman, but just about a guy who was in danger in front of a fireball. It was beautiful, he thought. Also, this facial expression will be remembered for a long time. And he couldn't believe what kind of feeling this was. His heart began to beat faster every time he looked at her. Could he really be in love, the boy thought. Oh, and by the way, this girl had the element of ice, so she easily decided to summon an ice boomerang. Fly, she told the boomerang. Of course, this boomerang was able to inflict unusually small damage, of course. But still, it managed to anger the monster, so he decided to attack her first. But the students knew that they needed to confront these monsters all together, just like those wolves. Also, one of the students said that he shouldn't forget about them either, because they will also help. To which she replied that everyone please distract him for a while. She will use a restraining spell. They all rushed into battle with swords and magic, and they all tried to find some way to harm this creature. Of course, this could not be done without difficulty, but still they all tried. This creature was able to notice how this girl was still calling for something unusual, and he decided to pay attention to it. She decided to create ice shackles that would be over him, but he tried to destroy them. But he didn't succeed, and the student also said that it looks like she managed to do it. The tailor knew that they should finish soon, and then he would definitely talk to this young woman when it was all over. Suddenly, the same princess who killed the ice dragon, supposedly, of course, suddenly came. And also deciding to give in in front of everyone, she decided to launch her fiery rays directly at this wolf. The girl was shocked that such a blow occurred in a table in such a place. Could one of the students be so strong, she thought after which she saw how a huge dragon exploded from this ray. Watching him break out of her cells and also watch him burn in such a window was quite difficult. She couldn't control herself and the blow that came from such an explosion. The lady understood that this flame had just belonged to an unusual student. Of course, a fiery ray on fiery creatures of his type only restores it and makes it stronger, so one of the students got angry that some fool used fire magic on the same creature as the element. The boy decided to use a wind barrier. He also noticed that the other students saw that none of them did this, and they were all surprised that he really was able to block these blows. He has amazing wind magic. They all thought about this student. They were all shocked by such a stunning view as well as from such an empty element. The guy understood that the wind would not be able to extinguish the flame, but it could hold it back. This man calculated that he was really not as simple as he thought, and it was clearly noticeable that this wolf was approaching. She was extremely frightened by this outcome. She also knew that if her shirt had not yet recovered, she would not be able to do anything about it. The guy understood that this was his great chance to show himself. Therefore, coming closer, he decided to do something. She was even surprised that he wanted to do this defenseless magician. She decided to see why he approached her, after which he abruptly decided to take her away so that she could return there, so to speak, returning the favor to her. He decided to calm her down so that her dear little sister would not be afraid of this ferocious beast. After all, he can tame this wild dog, you just need to lightly kick her, that's all, so that she would finally shut up and not come near her anymore. This is how it is done, he told this young girl. He had to charm the boy. Having looked at her, he saw that she was crying and was convinced that this was not the reaction that he expected to see. The guy decided to ask her if it really hurt her. Maybe he somehow gave her a pencil case from this dog. He was very worried about this because he didn't want to harm anyone. After thinking, she replied that no, everything was fine, but she asked that maybe he would let her go already, to which he sparkled and said that then he already understood why she might have been crying.
because most likely it was the softness and elasticity in his hand that could not be so easily felt, after which she screamed and told him not to stop touching her there, to which he then apologized to her and told her to forgive him. He did not intentionally tell her honestly. After this situation, they didn't even look at each other, although they were just a little embarrassed, but they didn't seem to be offended by each other, or rather the girl wasn't offended by the guy. They all understood that he used the moment to touch the fall when he managed to approach her. This guy, he's so infuriating, he's so jealous, he'd like to touch him too, but as a friend, she told those two. After which they finally destroyed this wolf, the old man said that this was the end of their tests. It is possible that the student used the magic of the talent, and then one of the teachers introduced herself that she congratulated them all and this is where their Tesla ends. Those who stayed here and were able to fight with all these monsters remain in the academy and can continue to study about those who ran away. We'll be expelled from the academy, she said. They all decided to ask who she was. They had never seen her before. The student kept repeating what was happening here and why they were attacked by such creatures that are very difficult against ordinary students. The deputy decided to ask him what he meant by that, to which he clearly showed that could an ordinary test at the Royal Academy be so dangerous, many students died. The girl just laughed a little and said that they expected something different, since they want to enter the Royal Academy it means they need to work hard for life and death. But it's still hard work, but it's clear that none of them will die because it's possible to restore and even resurrect all these disciples. Of course, she read all this and could restore them, because before that she directed magic and made the arena so that it would be possible to restore all those. Of course it's impossible. But even if before that you make a spell that in the area of this academy will restore everyone or even resurrect, then nothing will happen to them after she uses her magic. After that, she decided to say that he wanted to tell her about the students. After all, it was normal. The student looked at it ineptly and said that this was really the magic of the puppets. They were even surprised why all this was happening, and another even said that there were rumors that the deputy director of the Royal Academy could control objects using magic. This is truly cool. After which she stated that now that everything was settled, she would only say a few words. First of all, she wants to congratulate all of them for passing the test and entering the ace class of the Fram Empire Royal Academy. They were all happy, and one even said that she heard that the ace classes were taught by the great wizard, and the other said that she wondered who it would be. The boy immediately realized that maybe she would be interested in a cute little little sister. The chairman of the director said that this year the class is leading the ace, to which he replied that why was that, looking at her with an inept face. She decided to introduce herself and told them all to meet Grey Charlotte and their leader. She would be responsible for all of them. The girl was even a little shocked that she herself was an angry witch. She also decided to imagine that they all seemed to have heard about the reputation of Serba's teacher. If they had any questions, then let them ask her directly. And after that, she said that it was time for her to return to her duties and said goodbye to them and they answered the same to Claire. After that, all the girls came up to her and told the teacher to sulfur what she would do now, but for now this boy watched that he was trying to be invisible. She said that today they are free, tomorrow at 7 Acre a.m. They are going to the training ground and will practice fighting. She also hopes that they will breed with each other if there are no more questions and can now disperse to which they all responded in unison that that's exactly right, sir. The boy decided to ask her to please wait for him. Turning around, she decided to ask what was the matter, were there any questions, to which he replied that if they got into the ace class from their strength, then why did this guy pass too? She decided to point her finger at him and he was also worthy of attention. Yuji only thought about being calm and needing to control himself. 
The girl decided to ask the guy what was wrong with him. She stated that she did not see him do anything other than undermine other students. This guy did nothing. Besides, he is lustful like a wolf, and he is simply terrible. The student decided to say that he was not entirely different from what she thought. He was there to help her, and the rest was just an accident. The boy even said that the goddess is so kind. Dana decided to approach him and do something. This girl was a little embarrassed and also excited that she wanted to do this to him. The guy stood still and didn't seem to show any signs of it, but on the other hand, he was damn afraid. After all, they were idiots towards him, but that time he erased her memory so she shouldn't recognize him. Coming closer, she decided to ask him. His face seemed familiar to her and had never met her before, but the guy replied that it was hardly impossible, for sure she had simply confused him with someone. She said that even though he said so, they had definitely met somewhere before. The guy, a little nervous, said that he would absolutely remember such a sweet girl like her and would definitely not forget. To which the guys became even more furious and said that how did this guy dare to hit on the most fiery witch teacher of the series, she should not allow such a person to go to the ace class. She told them to calm down because she would only place him in the class temporarily. The previous girl said she would explain to them that it was only an accident, and he did not do anything wrong. He was the only one of them all who dared to help that girl, and you stood against Cerberus. This courage is not like that of an ordinary person. He was really glad that he was praised so much, and told her that she should praise him like that more often and also thanked the teacher seriously for such a compliment. But she also stated that, of course, if one of them is dissatisfied with her decision, they can try to convince her, to which they all fell silent and just looked at her and realized that there was no point in arguing with her. This guy was just angry that she accepted someone like him who just decided to have the courage to hang out a little, already at night of the same day. The director said that it means that everyone who participated in the battle against the Ice Dragon ended up in the Ace class. To which she replied that it was so, but she also wanted to ask the director if it was possible that the Apostle would be among these students. He decided to move away from the topic and said how the entrance test went. That the director himself answered that that was all on the test, the student was able to withstand Cerberus but she thought it was strange because the fact was that they didn't see what happened. He ended up right in front of the server, flew off as if his body was out of control. The girl realized that this might really be so, but still. The old man decided to say that if he just flew away, it is possible that the student used talent magic. In fact, talent magic is quite complex. It is a spell that ordinary Mahi will not be able to use. Only a few capable magicians can use. Their talent magic is the rarest type of magic. Grandfather decided to tell them not to think too much about the Apostle. It's already quite late and let them go back and rest. After hearing this, they understood him. Since it was really quite late to discuss such topics, it was already quite late so they should both go to bed the director thought, to which one said, Okay, then she will leave the director, and the other said, Please, let him also go and rest, and wish the director good night. After that the door slammed and they left. The old man really knew that something was clearly wrong here and he needed to see it for himself. Dragging someone into such a matter was quite dangerous, so he needed to deal with it alone. Still, the director was haunted by this flame which is imprisoned in this very crystal. It is clearly too unusual and he also understood that perhaps with the help of this very apostle it would be possible to recognize the apostle, but it is not yet clear how. The guy understood that he had to get up so early and that it was actually quite tiring. Without remembering a little, he said that he wanted to sleep like that, but still the victims were quite valuable namely girls who also woke up in the morning. For example, 
Here is this example, and this is how it happens. When he saw the beauty who saved him, he could not restrain himself from paying attention to her. Therefore he immediately beamed and said that it was at that very moment that the little sister was the best, and now was the time to talk to her. So he decided to run up to her and say that it was him and also greeted her. When he came closer, he only looked at her embarrassedly. Just even looking at her, and also seeing how she unfolds slowly, this made him feel very uplifted. Because of this, he fell a little to the ground. She told him to forgive her because he wanted something from her. To which he said that yesterday at the test, well, I hope she remembers, he asked not intentionally honestly. Remembering this, she became a little embarrassed and understood what he meant. The girl said that yesterday. Yes, she should thank him, to which he replied that it's okay. That's what he's talking about, and she said that she wouldn't be able to escape from that monster, but it seems she misunderstood everything. But in general, it's nice that they were able to agree, and by the way, she still doesn't know his name and would like to hear his name. For example, Alice, and that's his name. Convinced that she really is some kind of angel, he decided to say that his name is Yuji. That's just his first name, but no last name. The girl said that this name suited him so well, to which he laughed and said, Is it really true? And he also noticed that they should quickly go because their class was already supposed to get ready. They needed to hurry, to which she just nodded and they calmly went to the class. We walked together, essentially as a couple. They muttered something, said one of the students looked at this spectacle, the one who did not understand why this guy decided to stay with them and come to their class. He looked at him enviously and didn't understand what his reason was, how he could become so strong, or on the contrary, he was just pretending to be weak. When they all gathered, she decided to ask again if everyone was already here, then they couldn't start right now and would hope that everyone would learn everything the first time. So, the girl decided to say that today they will not fight against each other. Their opponents will become, where they will all train. The student stated that although he is a drunken tiger and is an ordinary summoned beast and not a new type, he has great fiery power. Another student laughed and said that this means that they will have to deal with one tiger. Ian, is this fair to the tiger himself? To which she replied that did she say that he was alone? They will hold a lottery. According to the short one, they will deal with in pairs. Two people with the same skill number will form a group, and within an hour they will have to defeat these tigers. All of them will need to be defeated at a certain time. If they fail, it means they will get it in the neck. All the students discussed how they would attack them, and they were also interested in who would be with whom. Yuji was unlucky with the number. He got the seventh group, and the girl opposite got the first group. Yuji very much regretted that fate did not favor him. Oh, I want to cry, he said. Looking back, she saw a guy who would fight with her. She saw that same little hare walking, who said that it was a wonderful mission. Alice, he is very lucky that he can team up with her, and his name is Kyle, and he is the eldest son of the Belay family. The girl said that they didn't have much time, maybe they should discuss the battle strategy first. At which he became a little angry that he was not allowed as much as someone who stands for the day. But he still said that compared to the others, he believes that to win quietly, one person is enough for them. Let her let him handle this for her. I thought that she said that they don't just fight, they train. That's why. He told her to have confidence in him because it wouldn't take much time. And also, with his family power for more than a year, he will deal with the tiger, and then this girl will take care of him. This was his cunning plan. He begins to stare at him and also wants to attack. Therefore, he decided to try the normal ability first, taunting him. They say that some small animal. The guy began to use the wind blade, and the girl also realized that the magic of Kyle's talent was a broken limiter. 
it can increase the outgoing magic attack by one level. Now it seems that, along with the enlargement effect, his attack level has increased, rising to an intermediate or even advanced magic talent. Yes, the girl thought. The tiger began to attack with its fire techniques. The boy didn't know exactly who he was fighting with, because calling the tiger an insect was quite strange to watch. Of course, he tried to hit the tiger, calling him an insect. But the wind, as they say, is not water, so it cannot extinguish it, but only weaken the fire. Having overdone it a little, he raised their grade further than his classmate, so to speak. A little. It's a pity, but the guys didn't see it, and they had to close their eyes from this blazing wind. He didn't even realize that things were only getting worse. After all, if you blow on the fire, it will become even brighter. He also added that, you see, as he said, he would quickly deal with all this. When he came back, he said it was training. It was so simple. But the girl just looked at him and thought that maybe this is not so, because there is a little hostility behind him. She decided to scream and tell him to look behind him, because there was another danger right behind him. Looking back, he saw the tiger attacking him from behind. He realized his mistake and quickly paid for it. Well, before all this happened, of course, everyone was watching them. When she screamed for him to try to push her away or to run away from there, he couldn't do anything at that moment. So, of course, the animals jumped on him. Ah, he said, that it's a stupid animal, which made him even angrier. The guy decided to tell the teacher that he would probably die right now if he didn't get help. And I didn't understand what the problem was. It was going so well, but in the end, it ended so badly. Looking there, she saw something happening inside, perhaps with the help of the wind. After which the tiger, who looked here, flew back. The guy just laughed and said, no matter what he did, he was ashamed of it and also worried. But he's not going to die here. Coming closer, he decided to ask her for help. After all, their team should be the first to complete this task. The teacher decided to call both of them, Kyle and Alice. He said they passed. They are the second to complete. This is a task. Now they can rest. Surprised, the guy decided to ask again. You mean the second ones? He decided to ask how it was possible. No one could do it faster than him. There's some kind of mistake here. To which she replied that it was not impossible. She pointed. Which way? First team. That I ended up there. They may have already completed the task and were one step ahead of them. To which the student said that this is impossible. Having proven time, they cuddled the little quiet cub, playing with him as if he were a cat. Meanwhile, fifteen minutes ago, the guy couldn't believe that now he would have to go alone, and he was so unlucky with this. She decided to invite the boy to her place, they say, so that he would not cry if she disappointed him, or rather, on the contrary, if he disappointed her, then she would give him some nice bream. Having noticed her, he asked, Is this really for him? she says. And she replied that she had a request for him, so that he would not interfere where he shouldn't. And she also had number seven. That's right. It looks like they will be in the same group, and maybe she should just call her Agi. When he looked at his partner, she went nuts, and now seeing that it was the king, the reaction was not the cutest she wanted to give. Angry, she called him a freak and decided to deal with him by speaking the right way. He was sad, but what can he do, the guy thought. When he stopped this quota or something else, he said that he heard it, because how can you not hear it, just be a little sad. She got even more angry and thought that this guy, clearly getting on her nerves, and she also decided to say that she heard that he was also a pervert, which hurt him even more. Moving further away, she told him not to leave her problems. She could cope with the tiger alone, to which the guy, of course, why should he interfere? Although he still wondered if she could really cope alone, the girl decided to quickly attack the tiger. 
Of course, it was not so easy because the tiger is quite maneuverable and can evade it. She looked at the tiger with a face like she wanted to kill him right now. Although this is the goal, it is quite cruel, after which she screamed for him to get what he deserves. When she decided to fall, he caught her and she realized that she was trapped, after which he simply threw the same tail far back, and she, along with her weapon, fell back and even hurt herself a little. She realized that the sticker would still be more difficult to manage than she thought. After that, the tiger attacked her, scratching everything she had. The girl couldn't even imagine what she could do now, because she was all alone, and that guy probably didn't even move. After which she decided to put up her weapons as protection, so that he would bite him and they would bite her. Keeping the tiger's attention, if she were stronger, she would be able to kill him. The boy decided to ask the tiger why he was so cruel to her sister after which he confirmed that he was addressing the little kitten, after which a little time passed, and it seems that the matter with the tiger was resolved quickly. The girl could not understand what happened. She saw how this little fierce tiger became a defenseless animal that was beaming with joy and was also so cute. The girl said exactly this, the most difficult way to defeat a monster is to tame it. Alice was surprised that this was how Eugene wanted to defeat the tiger. It was the first time she had seen a person do something like that. This same student understood that this was some kind of joke. That is, why did this happen? Why did they fight? And he was just lucky to meet a harmless tiger. They all looked at this harmless tiger cub and were touched by his appearance. Approaching Sadi, he said that he was really jealous of her. He also claimed that why was she so lucky, and she met a harmless tiger without any problems. She began to say that Kyle, he, she said that he was right in telling their team that they were caught so angry, one of them was seriously injured. It was not spring, Eugene said. He told her that it was his magic. The teacher was very surprised because taming an animal is really... The guy said that, yes, yes, of course. He had never heard of such magic of talent, or maybe even show him what he told him to prove his words. What he immediately decided to do was stand near a group of tigers. They all couldn't believe what was happening to these tigers. The boy checked her, and as the saying goes, if you don't see, you won't believe. He decided to prove it right in front of them, and also asked them if they didn't see it. Then it didn't exist. But what will they say now? Kyle couldn't believe it, because he didn't understand how it could happen. The girl was nevertheless surprised how this happened, and her friend, who was in Europe, could not believe that this pervert was hiding such power. Everyone was shocked. The teacher may have begun to suspect who he was, but she still wanted this to be the most extreme option, since most likely she preferred it to be enough to remove them all. Of course, she understood that they would most likely be done for today. Dana also wanted to ask him if the talent magic was not registered when he was going to do it, to which he replied that, well, um, that, well, no one asked him to do it, so he didn't do it. She decided to declare in front of all the students that they would forgive her for this. But the situation is urgent. She needs to go to the academic affairs office and add new information there. Therefore, when leaving, she said that the training was over and everyone could be free. What did the guy or what he thought? That fortunately, in one of the human novels that he read, there is a magic talent for taming sulfur should not suspect anything. After this event, all the students began to walk around the park and walk around, so to speak, to relax for the day. The friend just patted him and said that she didn't expect that such a pervert had such strength. Well done, she praised him, to which he replied that it's not us that it doesn't call him that and he's a pervert. His name is actually Eugene. While she was saying this, he only inhaled, but Alice only laughed loudly at this whole situation. The boy decided to come up and said that even if it's very funny, 
It doesn't mean that this is the magic of his talent. It's not surprising that Cerberus didn't attack him from the entrance test. This may be true. Yuji understood that it had started again, although they said that one thought that he deliberately did it, and then used the opportunity to leave the shovel, and the other said that it was obvious that, with the ability to control the summoned beast, he could direct the server to attack and them. He definitely didn't expect such a turn, so he just thought, why the hell is the human imagination so developed? His girlfriend replied that the fact that he could do it means that it was so. Moreover, if he sent Cerberus straight at them, would they have gotten through? Proving this fact, they only thought about it. Alice screamed and told them that the magic of talent requires great abilities, and only training is also a probable barrier. That time it would hardly have helped Cerberus pass the probability, but he saved her in time, so she is very grateful to him and hopes they will no longer make erroneous assumptions. Because of this fact, the guy let in, and was also angry because he couldn't. She said, he thought that the probable barrier would not be able to withstand. The guy was clearly out of his mind when he realized that this woman was waiting to help that unjust bastard. It was better to just say that Alice is kindness itself, while the other girl said that how could she even defend that too? A little later, she finally came to the director and said that she most likely found him. However, she said that a person with magical talents with magic taming the old man was even surprised by this and could not believe his eyes, as well as his ears. What did the old man think about how powerful animals this student can control? To which she replied that it is not yet clear that he can instantly tame a beast like Cerberus there. The director was glad that since this was the case, she should find out as quickly as possible after which all three of them walked and only slightly enjoyed their free time. The girl couldn't believe that the rest time was over so quickly, and now she had to go back to the room to go to bed and wait until the next morning to fight with other creatures, and also to train. Oh, how sad it is. But she had to think. The lady said that it seems to her that today they will go through history. Yuji decided to ask about history to which Alice said that that's what she heard, that this is a subject that deeply studies many major historical events. The guy understood that he hoped they wouldn't talk about the cities that he bombed in the distant past. And she also decided to ask that the teacher was Sarah, the witch Dana. They took notice, and they really saw her. Yuji didn't understand why she was here, and he only thought about something that seemed to him like he had a bad feeling. Dana told him to go with her to the Tower of Judgment. In this very tower, there are very beautiful statues. Also inside the tower, there were four elements, as it should be, fire, water, earth, or nature, as well as air. They wallpaper went there, after which he laughed and wondered why Miss Dana brought him to this place, to which she replied that she wanted to ask him something. She decided to ask him about such a thing. Speaking of her word, having Sir Charlotte, she would ask him just once whether he would become an apprentice to the Fire Witch. To which he was actually surprised, because he thought that they would recognize whether he was an enemy or not. The girl thought that no one would refuse to be a student of the great imperial magician, also, as details in the guise in the first chapter, he wrote that she is one of the four princesses and apologizes, and she is one of the four great imperial Arsky magicians. Of course, Yuji was not interested in this and said that she had forgiven him, of course, but he would probably refuse. What will he say? Of course, she naturally began to say that it would be great if she could wait a minute. Then she realized that he only said he was refusing teaching from her. After hours, she screamed at him at the top of her voice and said that how dare he refuse such a chance one for miles and he. She screamed with such an expressionless face that he said that he didn't want to and refused. The boy decided to prove his words to her by saying that this is how it is. He is here only to find a new wife and not to become some kind of student and work hard. But he also had an idea, 
but there is no rule prohibiting a student and a teacher from getting married, so it would be a good idea for the girl to come, even if he doesn't dream about it. After which he sighed and said that it was a pity, and so be it, he said that then let him forget about it. Getting a little angry, she decided to say that how he thinks about finding a wife given his status. She invites him to remember how he lived before he got to this academy. Yuji remembered this. He understood that when as soon as he came to this world of people. He recalled that the price tags were more than the entries on the tables, as well as large commissions, and this commission took most of the coins, and also this cake, which he found very expensive. He imagined that if he could not rise in the academy, then he would be poor, and in this case Alice would tell him to forgive her, because he was too poor and they could not be together, and he would cry about it if he imagined what would happen to him. With him, he will return to the old days without a teacher, after which he realized that this would never happen. She said that if he became her student, he would gain status and access to her property. Dana decided to ask one last time if he could and would want to become her student. Is he ready to become a student of Charlotte's Greys, this Candemal? He just laughed and said that Messer thought she could convince him only with this. The guy was made by Nepalese and said that he, the master, agrees to this, only he promises to become her best student. And so on, of course, she was even scared that he agreed to this so quickly, after which he rushed at her, and they fell. He decided to hug her legs. Hugging him, he said that the master should encourage her student. It didn't take long before he just hugged her legs and they just lay there for a full minute. And suddenly the girl said that he didn't have to worship her and could finally get away, to which he said what was wrong with a student holding the master's hips. He was a little surprised because something was happening around him behind him and he also smelled like smoke. The girl said that he is an idiot since he thinks so about his teacher, as well as the master. Also after this, a contract was concluded between both of them, after which he felt something strange in his forehead. She said that he would tremble at her anger. And also, even though he knows that somehow a contract is concluded between the master and the student, the mark of the contract appears in the place where they touched. And now she will have it on her leg and on his forehead, Yuji did not understand and did not know about this, so he said that she would have told him so. She understood that, in essence, he was right. Actually, okay, but in any case, this mark does not appear just like that. Yuji said that the master would mean that her mark is on the thigh, and that's not bad, to which she told him to fall down. Meanwhile, in the academy cafeteria, the guys were discussing that something was going on with the three of them, or maybe the four of them, who knows. One said that he heard how yesterday the teacher called Yuji to the court tower. The other realized that it seemed that he had not returned yet from there. Perhaps he died there. Who knows? Alice and Kara just sat at the table and wondered where they had gone for so long. The girl suggested that in the Sudak Tower the Royal Academy judges and punishes students, to which Alice replied that he hadn't done anything wrong. It's clear that their classmate was just laughing, saying that he is afraid that he lied about his taming talent magic and it was discovered, and apparently the lower strata seemed to care about each other. Apparently, since this must be the case, he was expelled yesterday. After all, Trash remains trash. Kara stood up from the table and told him what the hell he was talking about. After all, this is most likely a lie. Alice told her to calm down. The boy said that there was nothing surprising, because she was just like him, the scum of society. Mistress decided to tell him that he had seen the magic of his talent with his own eyes, and this is a fact. Kyle must learn to watch his words better. He looked and said that he seemed to hear what they were saying about him. Coming closer, the guy said that he had only been away for one night, and this kind of intertwining had begun. Is he really just popular with us, said Yuji. But they already missed him, and he also had a bag of money. 
he just went out for the whole night and also wanted to make a bill for himself. Alice was glad to see Yuji, but did not understand where he could have disappeared to. The guy was very glad that Alice was as cute as always, and nothing would change. Catherine also decided to add and say that he was still the same lustful boy as he was. He replied that she was still the same cruel and active sister Catherine. To which he replied that it was so, let him tell why his teachers took everything away with him yesterday. Kylo was also wondering what he was doing there with her. He decided to ask if, after all, he had been expelled from the academy, and he simply decided to take his things. Well, Alice either said that it's most likely not true. Yuji looked at him and decided to tell him what was there. But in fact, there was nothing like that, except that the Master of the North entered into a contract with him. They were all shocked. After all, a contract between a master and an apprentice can only be one thing. Basically, it should prove to her and to all of them that he's not lying. The guy just laughed and said that, even if he had the magic of taming animals, he was just lucky that there were animals on the test, albeit differently. But would he have been able to get into the ace class? Only when he laughed did he say that, why don't he try to fight with Kyle Ballet to demonstrate his strength? to which Alice only proved that, even if so, he has magic talents enough to enter the class. So all this can explain to you why the ace I believe in him and that he can defeat Kyle, and only Yuji admired her beauty, and also because she supports her friends so well. Taking his hands and raising his wind, he decided to show that, after all, it was not made with a finger and he decided to put it in its place, cutting off the ends of the hair with his technique. Yuji began to get seriously angry that he didn't dare touch his little sister Alice. The boy just said that she shouldn't get involved in someone else's conversation unless she's asked to. Kira was scared enough and asked Alice if she was okay, to which she replied that everything was fine. She wasn't worried. It was just a little hair pancaked because of her braids. Yuji was angry with him and still wanted to punish those who offended her friends, as well as future wives, because if he said to fight, then so be it. So he replied that it might be worth a try. He hoped that Mr. Kyle would be gentle with him, but in fact he didn't care because he would make him regret the act he did to Alice, coming at each other in the same room. Each of them expected victory over the other, of course. Yuji was confident in himself and was also not afraid, while Kyle was determined and wanted only one thing, to defeat this insignificant magician who only wants to fool around with his talents, which only worked once, for the entire academy. I decided to ask him what the rules and conditions for the fight would be, to which he said that he would release maximum energy, as well as his amount of mana and his magical energy would just strike if he survived, he would win, but if he lost, he would immediately leave their ace class. Kara Alicia was angry and knew that it was Kyle who was so vile because he decided to play by the rules of the ace and also wants to remove Yuji from their territory. Now, there is not a single monster there. This is completely unfair to the guy. Alice was very worried about Yuji because she didn't want him to leave the class. The guy saw that Kyle looked confident enough in himself, so let him start first. To which Kyle only laughed and understood that victory would be easy. Kyle decided to demonstrate his abilities with his windy element, as well as his mastery of control. Yuji saw something unusual, according to him. He thought that such a thing did not exist anymore. Alice was nevertheless shocked and thought that this could not happen at all and that now before her eyes he did, it was simply impossible. Kyle wanted to ask Alice what was wrong. What was wrong here? The girl said that, according to legend, one day the ancestor of the Bolet family received countless amounts of gold and silver as a gift from the king of the elements and also one of the greatest magic swords, and if she is not mistaken, then the sword is called Excalibur. 
I couldn't help but notice such an interesting sword, the guy decided to propose adding a few more rules, let it be so that if he loses, he will not only leave the class, but also leave the academy altogether. Kyle was very glad to hear this and understood that such a proposal. He finally realized that there was no place for him here for a fool of his type, of course. To which the guy replied that if he wins, he will not only stay here, but also he will give this sword to him. I decided to shout out to him and tell him that this pervert Kyle is not an easy opponent, but still let him deal with him quickly, she actually wants to eat. To which he just laughed and realized that it would be good, so he decided to tell him that Mr. Kyle should no longer think that he could lose for sure. Kyle, having heard this rule, understood that he would most likely win, so he accepted these conditions. It was already disgusting to look at him, he thought, but let him not blame him for the fact that there are no animals here that could help him block his sword. He said that he should not ask for mercy when he hit him. I enchant my evening. He began to stand still and read his spells. I looked at this and realized that this sword was good at releasing magical energy. The girls were quite alarmed because this sword is truly legendary and it will be very difficult to block it. This is not an ordinary sword that can just break or something like that. It will be quite difficult. Plus, they themselves do not know what Yuji is fully capable of. After these considerations, the boys decided to go into battle directly at the boy. As he got closer, he decided to jump straight at him to deliver a crushing blow. Having hit Yuji, he could not do anything to him. He only stopped this sword and no damage even hit him. Alice and Aggie looked at this and simply could not understand how this was happening. Why the hell did this sword do nothing? The guy couldn't understand how he could withstand such a sword without moving, but even with his eye. The guy just said that they probably wouldn't waste their time. Then suddenly this sword disappeared from him. Of course, Yuji said that he would gladly accept this sword into the bargain. The boy just shouted at him and said that he might have been cheating, to which Yuji said that Mr. Kyle is so generous for such a wonderful gift. He thanked him for such a good weapon. They girls decided to tell him that it really happened. They were so glad that he was able to survive. They asked how his health was, if he was okay. By the way, he has not forgotten how his past attack towards Alice was very dangerous and quite crazy. So he wants to answer for this act. Saying that this will not happen again is true. To which he replied, what the hell, he's threatening him after which Yuji decided to throw this scum away so that he would remember that he had never touched anyone he knew well and never touched girls at all and did not humiliate them. The guy lost a little blood from such a blow. The girls were shocked because Yuji was so strong that he threw him away with just one of his right hands. He understood that that was all. That was the end of their whole comedy. The guy fell from this and could not do anything about it. He did not understand where this ordinary loser could have such strength. He didn't understand how this was even possible, and whether there was such magic at all, with the help of which one could fly a couple of meters back with a simple touch. The guy also decided to remind him that he was taking the sword with him, and from that moment on, it was his. Looking back, he saw something pleasing to his eyes. He saw how her friends, or future wives, who knows, began to run to him and congratulate him. Carrie said that it's super easy because he'll really take this Excalibur for himself. Alice praised Yuji and said that he was stronger than she expected. He was able to attract all her attention just by showing how kind he was, and then he is still strong. The guy was even a little embarrassed and even laughed. With such a nervous laugh, they say that he is actually very strong, although it is better not to tell them this. Carrie said that they had no classes today and could throw a party and celebrate his victory. They all rejoiced together until this kid, Kyle Leshy, realized that he had made the biggest mistake he could ever make. He understood what would happen to him if his father found out that he had lost Excalibur. 
The guy decided to ask them to stand still. The boy decided to turn around and listen to the loser after all. Yuji said that he couldn't give Excalibur to him. Alice decided to remind him that this was a condition he agreed to, and she hoped that he could keep his word. He was just angry because she was right, but this guy was definitely cheating somehow, he thought. Just for the sake of justice, he should return him. To which Yuji said that he refused to do this. The guy felt this refusal right up to the point of goosebumps, as if he had been a girl for a moment and received a refusal from love. Since he refuses, the guy thought, he won't hold on this time and will take him by force, he thought. He said that then he should not think that he would leave this site unscathed. The boy was, of course, strong enough, but in order to damage a magician like Yuji, he, of course, would have to sweat for a very long time, and then he would have made at most one scratch and no more. Yuji decided to tell him that, alas, it wouldn't work out, while Carrie said that, damn, it looks like they can afford to lose him, yes. The boy looked and was surprised at something. This boy kept telling him to obediently return the sword to him, and then he would spare him. To which Yuji again said, what if he says no again? Clearly knew what he said, that he was a brat who didn't dare give up his life. But if he wants it that way, then he will die here. After which these windy lightning began to be directed directly at them. The girls did not understand what to do. Well, of course, his wind couldn't easily overcome the entire barrier that Yuji had just created. He couldn't understand how it was possible that this was happening now. He saw Excalibur into himself. The boy knew that something was going on here. He had the right idea. The girls couldn't do anything about it and just stood there and watched what was happening. The guy grinned and decided to see that something again happened during this period. He saw how this sword Excalibur decided to suck not just energy into itself, he decided to protect himself with a stream of wind that was released from this guy. Although there is something more interesting, this Excalibur was able to create something unknown. It's a girl. He couldn't believe that there could be a girl because of this Excalibur. After which she said that her name was Sylphia, and she is the sword of the king of the elements and welcomes the new owner. They were all surprised, and as soon as she said, sword of the king of the elements, the girl was surprised. Alice could not say anything or she screamed from an incorrigible nervous symptom. Kyle couldn't believe his eyes that right in front of him was a beauty who most likely was his sword, and now his father would have exactly who to fuck this evening for such an act with his sword. She started to approach Yuji and decided to thank him. Again, she imagined that her name was Sylphia and she was greeting her new master. Yuji couldn't help but notice that she was the spirit of this magical sword, and that was quite rare. The girl insisted that this is the way it is. She is the spirit of this sword, according to his agreement. Now she is the sword of the king of the elements and will belong to him, Yuji Satoru. Maybe she will find out what the owner wants now. After which Catherine said that this means that this ball had a spirit, it is not surprising that it is considered a precious treasure. He didn't even know what he was doing about it, but first he asked her to stand up. To which she agreed and began to get up. Uh, Kyle was not himself with rage, but the fact that there was a spirit in this ball and he didn't even know about it. He decided to yell at her since he is her master. The girl decided to look at him and realize that most likely this was not the case. The guy only began to say that he definitely would not have lost to that guy if she had shown up earlier. He also orders her to return to him immediately. To which Catherine just laughed that this Kyle was really so shameless to say such a thing. Alice was furious with how angry Kyle was. Yuji understood that he was not able to hold his spirit, and she could choose who to serve, since he is not any owner or the swords are inherited. So he still didn't know that there would be a spirit in this sword, so he decided to ask the Sylphie if she wanted to return to him. To which she replied that no, she doesn't want to, 
Firstly, note that at the beginning of the fight the conditions were agreed upon. The spirit decided to say that the old owner bet on her and lost naturally, that the sylph changed her owner precisely because the previous owner was ready to bet on her, and this is inhumane. Also, secondly, it is up to her to decide whether to change the owner or not. Kyle became even more angry with her and could not understand what was wrong. Yuji said that now that the sylph has cleared everything up, he asked Mr. Kyle to stop humiliating himself even more and just agree to the terms. And also, by the way, he decided to remind. He apologized to this sylphie for using her as a bet. Yuji asked that she might help him in the future if, of course, she wanted to. She smiled and said that of course she would help him. While there was such a touching scene, this guy just laughed at this whole situation because he thought it was quite ridiculous. He said not to underestimate him. Then she used her magic, pointing it directly at Mr. Yuji, saying that since this is the case, he will reveal it now. He couldn't stand seeing a family member get sick now. He couldn't allow scum like them to insult him. At that very moment, he decided to summon his monster and decided to take the strength and take away the spirit. Carrie was very much afraid that such an attack would not leave a single piece of this place. Yuji decided to tell her not to worry about it. He would stop him now. But suddenly someone decided to take his hand and also say something. This someone turned out to be Sylphia. She wanted to ask the owner to use her as a weapon since she really wanted to see what he was capable of and also cared very much about him because he is truly a kind person. After which he smiled and said that it's good, because then let the sylph please let her give him her strength in order to defeat her past master. After he stood right in front of this very monster, this hawk or firebird attacked him before the sylphium turned into a sword. Yuji did not think about anything other than avenging Alice, as well as his behavior towards the spirit. Therefore, he used force to quickly defeat this same bird spirit. Of course, it was very fast, to which everyone was surprised. Kyle couldn't understand why this happened. Somehow, it happened that she was able to team up with this mortal, as well as the poor and helpless possessor of the talent of tamed beasts. How can he be capable of this? The guy who had just received only defeat from these hands thought only about this. At first he defended me, but a little later he didn't give a damn about me and even managed to hurt me. He has no forgiveness at all for this and would not say that his family could be worthy of praise. Kira also couldn't understand why this hero could be so strong, because he's just like them, a student from the academy, but he's much stronger than she thought. The boy said that it's all over now. Apparently that's all. Soon everyone from the academy decided to have lunch and also think about what would happen next, what difficulties would be on their way. Kara Alish screamed and told the waiter to give them something to eat because they wanted to celebrate the victory. That's why Kyle. They all sat down at the table and began to dine. It was truly delicious as well as many delicious dishes that looked very appetizing, or so it seemed to the spirit. A friend said that she had never seen such food before, and she was completely serious because most likely the last time she was called upon was a very long time ago, and since she is a rather ancient spirit, perhaps in those centuries they did not eat very good, or not as artificial as it is now. Alice said that it was prepared in this restaurant by the highest cuisine and very tasty. In fact, let the sylph definitely try it all, at least one small piece at a time, but she must. Suddenly, when everyone started eating, Yuji had a wonderful plan and idea, and the chance given to her right now, he said that here is his chance to win Alice's heart. Therefore, he asked Alice if she knew how to eat it so that it would be tastier, to which she only thought about it and said that she would most likely eat it while it was warm. And then, after these words, Yuji's eyes began to glaze, and he immediately realized that this was his chance. The guy understood that this was perhaps his only chance, 
and this was one in a million. He said that he just needed him to feed her with a spoon, because it tasted much better. This made Alice even a little embarrassed, and didn't know what to answer him on the one hand. She didn't mind. But on the other hand, she was very embarrassed, and didn't know what to do now. Kara decided to remind her that she suddenly felt full, but somehow she didn't really want to eat from a spoon. A little later in the director's office, the young lady, who was the director's right hand, thought about something. She also played with action figures, after which she created a toy sword, and also fought with some paper opponents that she created personally. After all, she can control all the dolls, and she understood that Kyle ultimately lost his Excalibur to a student named Yuji. To be honest, in fact, this should be taken more seriously, and the Witch series and director Acer will decide what to do next. After all, who else? But that ball has a spirit. She is afraid that the family is sick. She won't just leave it like that and wants to return the spirits along with the sword, because this is a family property, which, most likely, is very important for their ancient and also the most senile insanity, no matter how harsh it may sound. It's true. Also, a little later came the moonlight, as well as the stars and, of course, the dorm building, in which, after all, Yuji settled. He said that amazing people were able to create such delicious food from simple ingredients. After all, he had been living for several hundred or maybe a thousand years and did not know that such a tasty property was possible after all. He used to go and buy what he could. He also understood that Alice was as sweet and gentle today as always. If she marries him, then there will be such a spectacle in his castle. In fact, he was not cruel or even a little inhumane, but he had one flaw. He loved to fantasize. After all, he was still considered a pervert. He still imagined that she would really say such things, like he was hungry, he is today, and she decided to cook his favorite food and also whether she wants to sit down the dish or sit down first. Her imagination of the strongest Apostle Yulman was 100% off-scale. He had a very strong idea of what it would be like to be together with Alice. It was really strange, but still lust is lust. I even think that every viewer who is watching now was the same or the same. True, he underestimated that if he is alone, this does not mean that he is completely alone. After all, a caliber is a spirit that can turn back. Sylphie decided to ask him that he seems to be a very happy owner, but he doesn't understand why. Frightened, she did not expect that she would suddenly turn on her own, screamed and said, Mommies, she was so scared of him. Why did she appear here so suddenly? She asked the owner for forgiveness, because she did not suddenly feel strong fluctuations in the owner's emotional state and therefore appeared without permission, because she thought that something might have happened to him, since when the heart beats very hard, it is not always good. The guy said that he understood and realized that everything was fine and there was no need to ask him for forgiveness. Her head and told her to just tell him next time before she appears in the form of a person, to which she replied, well, and had a lot of fun with the owner. But still, she wanted to ask him why the owner was so happy, to which he replied that he was happy because spring had come to him and everything was seething inside him, or, to put it more simply, he fell in love with Alice and now very much imagines her in bed. This is quite open, but true. The girl decided to say that this is very similar to the desire for physiological needs that she knows. He said it was almost the same thing. Selfie decided to take him by the shirt and wanted some affection for herself. Yuji noticed this and even became a little embarrassed because he didn't think that perfume could be so feminine. She decided to say and hint, so to speak. She was of course not sure, but she wanted to help him and offered her help said that maybe she could help his condition. To which he looked at her and asked again if she could really help him with what, after which he thought that this was very bad, to which she said that it was the sylph's job to help the owner. 
The guy understood that he needed to feel strongly about this, so he coughed, so to speak, to show it, and said that since she herself sincerely wants to help him, then of course he doesn't mind, to which Silphy was very happy and said that she will help as soon as he can because this is one of the most important tasks of the spirit, to help its owner, after which she created scissors. The owner looked at it and thought, what are they doing? Why are those scissors needed? After which she said that it would hurt a little, but she would try to be gentle. The guy immediately realized that she most likely wanted to remove his dignity, so he told her not to do this and asked for her forgiveness. This was his deepest mistake. That same evening, the princess was in a rather bad mood, although rather exciting. She was reading some brochure in which something ridiculous was written. She said that the same surname as the general's. It's strange, but in the general's family there is no daughter named Arcuria. It's the same surname. She looked into Yuji's resume, which means that it was written there that the name of the educational institution is the Royal Academy of the Fram Empire. Yuji's full name, gender male, ID 9527. Well, and also a magical attribute, it is not there. She really couldn't understand, so what's the joke? Why such strange information about this guy? She knew this was a guy she couldn't even imagine defeating Kyle today. Logically, she could do that, okay? Tomorrow she can personally ask him because from that day on, he is now officially her student, so he should not hide anything from her since she is his master. Also, of course, there was another brochure about Alice. The name of the educational institution is the Royal Academy of the Frank Empire, full name Alice, gender female ID 709527, as well as information two versions of the mother's name is Lilith Lawrence, father's gender Lawrence, stepfather, the same. Of course, there was a place of residence, the Franma Empire, western suburbs, Lawrence's estate, and also features the use of close combat. She just gave such a stupid answer. The next morning it was already in the laboratory, where there was a bunch of elixirs, as well as unusual objects. In some cabinet it was quite quiet. Also, the weather was beautiful outside, which penetrated directly through the glass into the room with these same elixirs and preparations. In these very rooms the teacher was sitting with Yuji. They looked at each other rather surly, or rather, the girl was somehow interested in him. It seems a little that she was angry with him, with something, just this. A little time passed when she decided to lower her hand onto the table with great force, which made Yuji very scared. After which she decided to yell at him. They said that what the hell, that they signed contracts between master and apprentice, and he immediately ran to the dining room to brag about it, and also started a duel with Kyle. What the hell did she think, and also did not understand what his problem she also couldn't believe that, beginning to suspect that he had deliberately created so many problems for her in just a few seconds, just to take revenge for the fact that she had decided to accept him by force. Yuji was very scared at that moment and wanted to justify himself so that she would calm down, firstly, and secondly, he would like her not to lose her temper on him, and also, he asked her for forgiveness, because sooner or later everyone knew about it. The teacher said that he would say about the duel with Skyle, to which Yuji only thought a little and understood that this was a simple misunderstanding. The guy decided to simply tell her directly that he was the first to offer him a duel and looked at him so angrily at that moment as if he wanted to kill him. But what he might not have noticed is that more than that, he was very arrogant about his opinion and also used tricks earlier during the battle but fortunately he is strong and was able to defeat him easily. It was, to put it mildly, ridiculous for the girl to hear this, but she understood that most likely it was true, and she thought that most likely he was arrogant, especially now. What she might also have missed was that when they made the master-apprentice contract, 
she only sensed his basic magic. And also, she was without attributes. Then how was he able to master the magic of the taming talent? She asked the guy. The guy insisted that since she didn't like him calling her master, he decided to suggest calling her his wife. She was definitely not happy with such a stupid answer, but she understood that, in fact, this guy was so stupid. Since such things speak with indifference, she decided to tell him to come to the pulpit, saying that he needed to avoid getting into trouble and learn the attributes of magic. Otherwise, he will not be able to become popular, and then she will not be able to teach him further. And this means only one thing. He will not be able to receive the funding that he so wanted from her. She also noticed that it really infuriates her when he calls her a master and when he speaks as if he feels like an old woman. To which Yuji just laughed and said that he could then call him his wife instead of the master. After these words, he immediately received a book on the head. She also laughed and said to excuse him. She didn't hear, so she decided to ask him again what he just said. To which he replied that it was nothing because he said that he would stop calling her master. After that, the teacher went outside to talk to the director. She said gratefully, saying, thank you, that he was able to make such a situation happen, and she also wanted to ask him a question. Is Excalibur solved? or is there some trouble there? The girl decided to say that the family was sick and could not find him. The old man replied that Kyle's skills were not that good, and the loss of Excalibur is well deserved. In addition, their family should not think that since they are stronger, they are allowed everything in their path. The old man thought that they, in fact, did not deserve such an attitude towards themselves since they themselves treat others arrogantly. He also might not have noticed them how the student's training was progressing. After all, she must train him and teach him magic. He also couldn't help but confirm that there would be a magical meeting next week. Let her take him there. Dana understood and will try to improve his skills until then. Also, the old man could not help but notice that she had become pleased with the cultured girl. After all, the more she grows, the more polite she becomes. Suddenly the old man even had some memories. How he remembered that she came to him when she was still so little, and already quite an adult. After which he coughed, so to speak, to get away from this topic and said that now she was already an adult and independent. Therefore, we need to take this more seriously. Also, while he started coughing, the girl became a little worried about the director and asked what happened to him, to which he replied, nothing special, because the years just take their toll. She looked with sadness on her face. After all, I didn't want the director to start getting sick in any way, and she was also very sorry that she could not help. The old man told her not to worry about him. Let's concentrate better on the magical meeting. After all, Perhaps there will be a chance to awaken her magic talent. She said that even if she could awaken her talent magic, then she could help him and they wouldn't be so tired. The old man just laughed and decided to praise her for her decisions, and so he added that then he would look forward to this day. After this moment, Yuji began to read a book, and while the spirit of magic helped him with this, bringing him a hot drink and so that he could relax a little. Yuji might not have noticed that literature in these centuries has advanced quite a bit from those he saw a long time ago. He solidified that this is how it turns out. People use attributes in magic to use natural elements. While the guy was reading, Sylvia came up to him and told him to drink some hot green tea since there was no coffee here, and she brought tea. Yuji was glad that there was nothing wrong because green tea was also delicious. She was very glad that she was able to make something useful for herself and also watch her owner drink a hot drink on his own. Seeing this, Yuji felt a little self-conscious, so he decided to ask her if there was something wrong with him for her to look at him with that look. To which she replied that the owner shouldn't worry so much. And she also understands why he doesn't tell anyone the truth 
because in fact he is very strong. She feels it with her spiritual body, because from that moment on she crossed contracts with him. The guy decided to tell her that when his power goes beyond the understanding of people, they begin to be afraid, and then threaten in every possible way. That's why he hides such power so as not to harm anyone, as well as himself. Even though it was a long time ago, he understands and remembers it all, and therefore he tries to keep everyone surrounded by any forces away from him and try to save everyone he can. So in those days, everyone was quite happy when the apostle came to them. He also could not create the truth, because they were afraid of him. They only said, Long live the first apostle Yulman, and people greeted the apostle. Also, he might not have noticed some girl, so he decided to pay attention to her. Of course, because Yulman was an apostle, he was quite a threatening person. Therefore, when he asked that beautiful maiden if she would like to admire the moon with him, they naturally responded not of their own free will, but only out of fear, which constantly washed over them. She only replied, Thank you, Mr. Yulman, for the invitation. But she, that he noticed that he was not saying this from the bottom of his heart, but only because she was afraid of him, and also thought that perhaps he would kill if she did not listen to him. So he let go of his hand and realized that he probably didn't deserve to invite anyone. The spirit decided to ask if he really had friends just like himself, and they were all like him as one whole, to which he replied that of course they were, but they did not seem to be one whole. They have been traveling for a very long time, and he does not know where they are now. But he couldn't help but notice that, nevertheless, now he feels like an ordinary person, just like everyone else. And that's what he likes about being a guy who just hangs out with girls and tries to be like a regular guy. Sylphie said that there were misunderstandings between the owner and the common people, perhaps. In general, everyone also heard that the fire witch herself took on an apprentice. Everyone was just talking about it and no one even thought about it, that this could happen. Also, they all thought that whoever became him, maybe she just, they all thought. Also talking to each other, the guys decided to say that this is no longer a couple. I personally saw the mark of the master and student on his forehead. Then he must understand that only a couple of lovers can win a mark right on the forehead. Alice understood that she actually knew who he was and could not believe that perhaps Yuji had found a mate. More precisely, they were there the whole night for a reason. The next night in the same academy of all these houses there was something else interesting. Dana decided to take a short walk and also have a snack, making small desserts for herself. She thought that she had forgotten something. She realized that she had forgotten to remove the magical part of the entrance, and she did not even know what this stupid student had learned during this time. Understanding, she began to open the door to make sure what he was so good at, as well as what he did. When she came in, she wanted to ask him how he was doing, and she brought him some food, after which I saw that he was now just lying on the lap of some little girl and was also just purring sweetly, like a cat. It wasn't very spectacular because she imagined that he was studying and not lying on some girl's lap. After which a rather large explosion occurred around everything. Yuji was very scared and told her to forgive him for being an unworthy student and for making a grave mistake. And next time he will not evaluate from work, to which she only realized that he was most likely lying as well as blowing at him with her plump counters. She decided to ask again if she was the spirit of the sword, to which Sylphia said that her name is Sylpha, and therefore she asks for forgiveness, let her become her mentor, adding the word master. She was very surprised by this outcome and did not expect that she would have another student, and also the spirit. The girl realized that she was too cute to be her student, Yuji also decided to ask the question if she was really a venerable master, 
to which she heard that most likely she said that he should not call her a master, since she thinks that she is old, although he decided to push only up to one hundred venerable. This made her laugh quite a bit, but she also couldn't understand why the essence was changing. She decided to think a little and said that she came here to inform them that next week they would take part in such a personal magic competition. The guy immediately asked the question, what, who would have thought, and who even came up with this? The name just sounds sweet, in fact. After which she got angry and hit him, and he only said that the master should let her change him, that he interrupted, and also let it continue to speak further, while he was saying this, on his head, so that it would cool down a little, and also not hurt. She had already decided to continue and said that they had no plans to take them there together. All these people could not imagine that he would be able to obtain the Excalibur of the family more, and in addition, a sword spirit would emerge from it. It was quite unusual, she thought. Yuji looked at the sylphs and realized that perhaps this was so. This would probably be difficult since she only woke up for the first time and that was from his hands. Teacher Dana said that this is why the authorities of the Magical Congress reluctantly decided to invite them. If they refuse, I'm afraid his weapon may be in danger. Yuji knew it wasn't worth the risk, so maybe going there would be a better decision than giving up, which is what he mostly does. The teacher also stated that the majority at the meeting would want to put pressure on him, and also not the spirit that howls with him. The guy replied that up to 100 the venerable master, let her be calm. After all, they will still see who will put more pressure on whom. After this conversation, the battle and also this competition began right on the same day. Already Alice began to fight in some kind of battle. She was serious, like a crystal that was looking to shine around itself. The director's right hand could also confirm that since this meeting was stopped, they could rest a little. After which Alice began to rest, thinking a little about herself. While she was thinking, she heard the boys discussing. For some reason, there was no sign of Kylo. But they didn't discuss the fact that, isn't it because he angered Yuji and now Kyle is trying to resist these same haters? I didn't even think, the other guy said, that Yuji clings to influential people. Alice couldn't believe that such terrible things were being said behind her back. After all, this is all a lie. But suddenly she heard someone coming straight towards her. She couldn't believe her eyes, because it was Yuji himself, and he finally decided to come here. They can finally talk about everything. She understood that it looked like he wouldn't show up for training for too long. During his absence, a bunch of annoying flies had increased, he thought correctly. And the unnatural ones came, and one even coughed, and said that it seemed that he heard that the deputy director was calling them, and another confirmed this, because he also heard. Let them get there quickly. The director and the chairman decided to tell them that she really called them. She had already forgotten what they answered, that of course they themselves heard it while they were discussing it. Alice told Yuji why he came here. She heard that teacher Sarah allowed him to attend training. She said that of course he came to visit his beautiful and playful Alice, who might have been waiting for him. After all, that's what he asked her. Well she said with embarrassment, that even if Silpha and the teacher Sarah, that's who's more beautiful in way of life, but definitely not her. He definitely didn't expect to hear such an answer from Alice, so he decided to ask what she was talking about, to which she replied that she heard them say that he should go with the teacher to the capital's magical congresses. Putting his hand on his head, he said that it was so. He will go there and discuss matters there, and possibly fight and undergo trials. But also, when he leaves, will Alice really miss him? Therefore, he realized that there was no need to be bored, because he would always return as soon as possible. She approached them from behind or hooked them with the fact that no one would wait for him. 
She said that they had not seen each other for just a few days. No matter how much you feed the wolf, he keeps looking into the forest. Yuji decided to come back and answer that, okay, didn't she already get it today during sparring? To which she just screamed and said, is he really such a freak that he decided to say that to her? Alice looked at it all and realized that everything had returned to normal. A lot of time passed before that very day finally arrived, or rather the very moment when they began to go there. The teacher told them to sit down and go already, even if they didn't delay their departure. The guy said that this morning he would still like to say goodbye to his beloved dear Alice. The spirit also said that she checked, and it looks like Alice is not in the room, after which he decided to tell the master what he thought about it, to which she didn't even want to listen and said that he didn't think anything, and let him have only three seconds to get into the carriage and finally go to this congress. Alice just looked at how the carriage was leaving with Yuji, and also the fact that most likely she would not see him again soon. She was very sad that he left without saying goodbye to her, but she saw how he wanted to, but it didn't work out. The girl, while she was standing, some kind of clot of energy was approaching her, calling her by name. The girl knew that he had finally come and why he came here at all. She had no need to know, but I wanted him to get out of here. He said that now there is no strong person left who can protect this academy, and she thinks that the task can begin tonight. Come on, sir, to which she replied that we can start tonight. This bundle of energy said that it seems that this guy named Yuji loves Alice very much, or if the master finds out, he will be very angry about it. She replied that everything that concerns Yuji, she asks him not to tell his father and mother about him. I decided to very strongly ask him not to say this, because it is very important. She asked please, to which the bundle of energy only replied that he would see how she copes with the task, and in that case he would think, laughing, he said, or it. The annual and capital magical congress was held in turn by the three heads of the clans, as well as Bolit, Capella, and Izes. Donna thought that this was the main solemn meeting of the world of magicians, where the best of them gathered to discuss the highest magical achievements and, in general, any other thing that could come to mind. The boy decided to ask her a question. Does it really mean that the Bolit family turns out to be one of the three main clans? To which the girl replied that it is so, and there is no need to underestimate their clans. The descendants of the heroes of the founders of the empire are sick. They are inferior in status only to the imperial families. Sylvia just remained silent and listened to all their conversations, and she didn't know what she could even add. Analysis thought about her own things. Alice also added that the Isis clan controls most of the military forces of the empire and has outstanding magical skills. The boy decided to ask her why the famous Capella clan. She said that she wanted to monopolize, perhaps, most of the trade routes of the empire and the Fram non ferrous industry. He owns countless riches that enrich everyone who is in their field of vision. The boy thought about her words and thinks that it feels like the reigning family of the empire does not control anything at all. While he was thinking about this, the girl said that this time the Magic Congress was organized by the Capella clan. So let him be careful and not do anything bad to them. Yuji said that isn't it just participating in a banquet? What should he be afraid of? He also insisted that, by the way, at this banquet there will be a lot of delicious dishes, and let Sylvia they will definitely have to try everything and eat until daylight to which Sylvia only said that it all looks very appetizing and tasty, even without seeing it all. From such a conversation, she only sighed and realized that they were helpless against food. But she also thought that there was still one problem with the Capella clan that would be difficult to solve just like that. A few days later, the capital of the Fram Empire, it was in its prime and the people were quite welcoming to each other. 
It was a wonderful place with beautiful views as well as unknown buildings. The fountain splashed around all this, and people, in principle, were happy. After a while, they finally arrived at this wonderful place, and after a while, a butler arrived at them, who decided to welcome them and represent their city, and also said that they should not be surpassed in the estate of the Capella clan. Finally, they began to open the doors and get out of the carriage, after which they began to slowly descend from this carriage and began to imagine how beautiful it could be. After they all stood on the ground and arrived at this place, one of the best of this kingdom said not to feel at home, because she, along with her predecessors, should enjoy this evening. The butler also told them, Thank you for coming. Finally, Madame Charlotte, the hostess, was already waiting for them and had also been waiting for them at the gathering place for a long time. Dana told them to tell their owner that he shouldn't bother and she had other things to do. Therefore, she would not be able to introduce herself to him in person so quickly. To which the butler was a little shocked and understood that, of course, he had to refuse him, but he also had the right to contradict the master. So he said to Mrs. Charlotte, doesn't she know how her master treats her? When he said this, she turned on him so much that she wanted to kill him. It was quite a scary look. He just looked at this look and thought that his life was more valuable to him than his master's order. Although, on the other hand, which is worse, the lady told Yuji and Silfa to come in and find a place to rest. In the meantime, she will duly go to the director and tell him about their arrival. And even until she returns, let them behave as quietly as possible and be especially attentive to her. Although she thought that it would be better to let them be attentive with someone, let them behave more quietly than usual. I didn't immediately understand what she was getting at, so I asked her what she wanted to say, to which she replied that it was nothing, just let him forget about it and let them have fun together so that no one was warned and no one was disturbed at all. The girl decided to tell the maid to be kind and let her show them the way, to which she said she just obeys. She decided to say let them all follow her, please. Yuji was not in his prime and did not understand what the problem was. Why didn't she come by to say who they should be very careful with? While he was thinking about it, he didn't even know what could be so terrible at this banquet. They finally arrived here, and the maid kindly showed them where they needed to go. She told them all to come to the place and also to enter through these beautiful, luxurious doors. Entering there, the first thing they saw was a nearby pile of lamps, which were saturated with white tones of color, as well as some veils of gold. It was all exquisitely elaborate to look at, as well as to look at all those dishes and the waiters and the guests who arrived here looked simply wonderful. Arriving here, they saw how beautiful the views were of the whole place, as well as these luxurious curtains that were blood-red, although they were just normal. But the most important thing is that Yuji and Sylvia thought that they were delicious. Here they are, to which they both understood that they would be here with us all day. Therefore, you need to save your stomach. Some lady decided to start a conversation, saying that today those two Trump magicians from the Bole and Isias family did not come. Well, okay with them, but these city people snuck in, and now they eat and drink at someone else's expense. How ridiculous, she thought, and also uncivilized. Watching these two devour everything from the table that was there was quite disgusting. They also said that real langoose and the deepest fillet steaks here are everything they need. Soon there was an incident when one of the options fell, and someone said that it was worthless. Yuji noticed this and felt a little uneasy at that moment. He heard this same gentleman calling the maid names, saying what he told her, and that she should bring sulfur. So this is how she carries out orders. This was the same gentleman who wanted to see Dana. She only said that it was not her fault because she had important things to do. The butler, in order to protect his own skin, decided to lie and told her that he had nothing to do with it. 
But Lena is two days old, Anka. And she heard several times that he told her to bring her, but he did not understand what was wrong with her memory. How could she have forgotten? Yuji looked at all this and realized what would happen. Hmm. Silpha, what does she think? Has she seen this manipulation and is called playing dice? When he said this, this gentleman decided to pay attention to them and said that he had never seen them before, these two. In response, they just ate all these dishes and said that they didn't care, they just came here to eat. But they also thought that a full plate of food plus sloppy clothes turns out to be a gentleman who climbed in to eat a freebie. The guy decided to greet and, albeit sarcastically, said that dear guests he welcomes the Capella family, the hosts of today's event. After which he came a little closer, telling them that people come here only by special invitation. They have these. Well, Yuji immediately openly said that they did not have an invitation. Everyone else who heard this was only convinced that these two were real strangers. Also, one of the gentlemen said that it is not their guards who eat their bread in vain. Is this really so flawed? And the lady also said that because of such young people who do not know etiquette, their country is not and also the empire has ceased to be what it was before. He just said that those without an invitation should not be here, and he shouted about them. Do they really not have an invitation and they weren't there in the first place? Then please let them leave their banquet immediately. This only made me angrier at someone like him, and I wanted to hit him hard. Yuji only held back her trepidation, because he felt that she was angry like not normal, but that was normal in such a situation. He said that they should apologize, of course, but it seems there was a misunderstanding. After all, they came here with the Master and Charlotte, and that's why they don't have an invitation. To which he said that this is all nonsense. His family is so beautiful and outstanding. How could it happen that she took people like them as students? To which he told her everything, sulfur. All the people just clung to him. For example, the lady said that the owner and everyone were chasing the witch. It's a pity that only she did not reciprocate his feelings at all, to which other people said that, in fact, he heard that not so long ago she took on one guy as a student like this. The owner almost burst with rage. The mistress said that this black-haired guy does not know who he is talking to, saying that he is her student. He signed his own death warrant. Yuji didn't understand what the problem was since they came here, but he understood that if they didn't believe him, they could ask that butler. He had just met them with Master Sierra, and he also couldn't wait to check that butler if he could tell the truth. To which the palace said that this was nonsense. He was joking because Mrs. Rod had met Lloyd. This made him even more furious and told him to stop all this and let him think that he was fit to be a student to which Dana finally came to them and said that she thought he was suitable as her student. Everyone turned their attention sharply to her and did not understand why she said this. She decided to tell him that he really became her student, and right now she is teaching him everything she knows and sees no problem for them to appear here with her. Mr. Alish laughed and said that it turns out that he really was a student of sulfur. A small mistake came out. He thought he would flirt with her, so to speak. Also, he might not have noticed how rudely he was, but made a mistake, so he told her to express his apologies. He wants her to allow him to show this achievement of magic this year. She just said that there was no need to do this. She found out everything herself. After that, she decided to take the student by the hand, so to speak, to show that he was her boyfriend or someone else. Yuji at first didn't understand why she took his hand as well since she had never done this before. After which he heard that she said that she got married and her husband, they'd better see it all for themselves. Yuji couldn't expect that marriage would happen so early, but in general he actually laughed. He loves Alice, so what a wig. The gentleman could not believe his own ears. He told the groom the truth. 
to which she only answered joyfully that it was true that he was not only her student, but also her groom, to which Yuji only thought that this was not happening. He decided that he would then ask the Master of Sulphur what was going on here, what she said in a whisper that the chapels were also rotten and used their influence several times to marry her off to him, and since such a great opportunity presented itself to you to make them abandon this idea, she decided right now to take him as his wife. I hope he doesn't mind, she said. To which he just laughed and said that, yes, that's right, they'll take a look at it themselves, to which she said that so that they and her, that the groom themselves would praise the achievement of the magic of, okay, the gentleman could not believe it, or it made him angrier and said that he would take it and contact the poor man, but refusing his advances would be very short-sighted on his part, and he also could not afford for her to marry someone like him. The butler decided to calm the gentleman down a little by telling him to calm down, because today is the day of the Congress, people of the highest class are looking at them. Also, he might not have noticed that he had heard that Cape Sulphur did not have any magical achievements to show off at this Congress. What did he do to destroy and humiliate her since she didn't want to be his fiancé? He decided to act very dirty. Although he thought it was funny and he realized that that's how it is. It turns out he just said that they had a good laugh. And now, if no one objects... He invites them all to try his newest development of a magical medicine. After that, he began to clap his hands, so to speak, to order everyone to try it. All the maids seemed to have the same face. By the way, it feels like they decided to lower the panache a little, but they decided to provide each guest with their own potion. Having placed it there, there was an unusual grayish-blue substance that was very similar to some kind of juice or jelly. It was not immediately clear, but it was worth trying to see if everything would change. Eugene could not believe that someone could create some kind of medicine. He was wondering what kind of substance it was. The lady was surprised by such a substance. She said that it tasted a little bitter, but even the smallest sip completely replenishes spiritual strength. The gentleman said that it was a real magic potion, I thought. He just said that, thanks to him, laughing, he really valued such a substance, and also the development was extremely long, so he told everyone that his series was approved. This is the result of the development of the Capella family this year, a concentrated spirit replenishment potion. Deciding to humiliate the one who ignored his feelings, he decided to say that but some people show up at their congress eating and drinking without having any magical achievements. A real shame, in fact. The truth is gray, he told her, to which she just looked at him and realized how vile and inhumane gentleman he was. Yuji immediately grinned and then decided to use this substance to prove to her that it really is. In fact, it's complete garbage and worth nothing. Gentlemen, he was surprised and realized that he had poured out his substance, which he, as if especially for bones, showed that it was unworthy of attention. Oh, what an impudent man he was, he thought. The guy laughed and told them to forgive his hand. It trembled, and that's why it decided to slip. Mrs. Dana just laughed and confirmed his words that this really happens. The gentleman could not believe his voices. He and she decided to vote with him themselves so that he would start laughing at them. So he said that how dare he pour out what he had prepared in ideal proportions. He even knows how many rare ingredients he used in this ideal and a recovery potion. He said that it was just a powder of a shining stone, the scales of the basilisk angelica, and the purest water from under the polar ice... Everything was correct. He decided to ask him again for the composition, he said, and realized that these were not very important ingredients. And even if they were important, then he it will not be difficult to obtain them since he has the whole market in his hands. He couldn't believe it, and he could even believe it without drinking it. He just said all of this. He could find out its ingredient. He knew about this matter even earlier. 
Yuji decided to tell him that he would make him a box of this and swill in a day, and he also calls it the latest development with ideal proportions. What nonsense! To which the gentleman became even more confused and said that he worked hard for a whole month to create this potion and achieve the perfect balance. And he dares to say with his dirty mouth that this is swill, then let him see how he can make the same box of this quality of the latest potion today. Dana was quite surprised that he could recreate this, but decided to play along. She decided that he wouldn't brag about being a stupid student in vain. It was uncivilized. To which she realized that perhaps he was bluffing, but Yuji told the master to relax. He wants her to help him with this and that. To which she asked if he was sure about this. To which he said that this is how it is. It's as easy as shelling pears. She just agreed with this proposal. Then she answered that, where did he know the ingredient and method of preparing this potion? To which he said, well, it was just a long time ago. And in fact, it was written in some ancient book and about recipes, and he just read it a long time ago. Sylvia decided to say that once upon a time he was only in violence on the list, and she prompted him. To which Yuji replied that it was so, although Alice looked at it all with an exclamation point. She never thought that Serifa was part of the Excali in the early days. It's surprising that she can sniff out the type of smell of the potion. E his ingredients, and Yuji then told Vasili that great job. After which he came here and realized that for all this he would need an untrained clean table, as well as ingredients, and then he would be able to prepare it all in a better balance. The gentleman just smiled and laughed at him, and also thought that the powder of the shining stone, the carrots, the chestnut for the urus seemed to be all brought here, the stove and the frying pan, and so many products from the market. Is he ready to prepare a potion for all of them, for which the guests only voted from him for this entire recipe? because they knew that he most likely would not prepare it, since the greatest gentleman had been preparing it for a whole month for them, and he could prepare it in less than hour. This is impossible, they all thought. But Yuji was confident in himself and knew that he could prepare it all, since he understood that he had a faithful assistant who was next to him and could always help with ideas on how to do it faster. After which he decided to put on an apron, and, in fact, he felt quite amazing. Since he could show you how to cook, it was quite cool for him. He decided to recreate this potion by using snap thread to begin with. Then he decided to add a little heat to finally start preparing the potion. Then he mixed all the ingredients that he needed, and it turned out quite well, and the color was almost the same as what was in that very plate. All the guests just sniffed and said that they smelled such a pure smell, and another said that this smell seemed to be transferred to nature and to the heart of such serenity. The gentleman could not believe that this could not happen, as no, this is no longer simple cooking. He recreates an unknown potion, and I also add my mana and unusual circles. This is just something incredible, I thought. This guy, he really created a potion that he recreated for a whole month, and not alone, but with a whole group of people. The guests were surprised that it actually transformed into the color that I had not just drunk. They did not understand that it turns out that there is such a way to create the potion, without any test tubes, just cooking. Although no, there were some test tubes, but this is just a cleaning filter, and also just the consistency of this very potion, they could not believe that this guy could not create such a wonderful potion in literally less than half an hour. They looked at the delightful transformations of this potion. It was quite shining, something that they even drank. It was not dark blue, but a light bright blue, and this gave them hope that it might even turn out much more beautiful than what they drank. After that, he told them all to look at him, because his greens were already ready, and now everyone could taste exactly the same potion, only much better and faster. One of the guests wanted to come up and say if he could share this taste, 
he would like to try this lighting product. Can he try his potion that he just prepared for them? Sarah couldn't believe that the master was able to free himself so early. This professor of mandolin from the Imperial University of Brewing Potion is known throughout the empire with the main magician ass, the director of the academy where Yuji studies, by the way. Well, unless someone has forgotten, of course. To which Yuji only said that, of course, it was possible, because he was ready especially for the guests so that they would appreciate his high-quality work as a potion maker. Coming closer, he decided to drink it from the glass. After tasting it, he felt an irreversible taste. The boy couldn't understand what kind of smell it was, what it tasted like, he thought. That this is the same taste that he tasted once upon a time. He said that he never thought that he would ever see a person who would make a super-strength potion. The gentleman could not believe that it was even a week that he had prepared, but something different and surprising. He understood what was going on here. Superpowers have emerged that increase spiritual strength several times. It was lost almost 300 years ago. How is this possible? After which he decided to put it and asked if he would allow it bow before him and tell him that he would give half of everything he has to know his method of creating this potion. As soon as he found out that he decided to give half of everything he has to find out his secret, it was quite a spectacular sight. Yes, she said. The boy realized that for this elixir they could give him almost their entire fortune. So he asked again, Is it really just half? This price is quite low for such a substance. Maybe he'll think about it if he gives it all. The old man said naturally, if he doesn't have enough, he will add more. They were all very shocked that he wanted to give away this elixir that had just been created, half of the fortune, and add more. Ready? Yes, this is a huge amount. Everyone could not understand how valuable this potion was. But this is a magic potion that was lost many years ago. Having it, you can get back any money invested. The gentleman decided to say that since it is so. And if so, his Capella clan is also offering half of their wealth for the recipe for this potion. The old man could not understand why Capella suddenly decided to have this recipe too. He's such an impudent guy since I decided to compete with him. The master thought that the fortune of the Capella clan was much greater than his. This guy won't be able to resist such temptation. Yuji said that he actually didn't plan to sell the recipes, to which they all said, why is he giving up wealth, which he can then live as he wants and not demand anything else? How so? He said that, okay, since they had already looked at achieving magic, then they could already go back to which she replied that it was so, they would go from here. The gentleman decided to play Yuji right in the ear. They say that he adds a share of the sales of the potion to half the wealth. The guy decided to add that he really was going to refuse that kind of money. This is madness. Yuji and Sylvia immediately beamed, and their eyes looked as if they were rich. Yuji said that, but there will really be a lot of them. Sylphie said that money is all she dreams and desires. After all, you can eat a lot of delicious food from them. To which she only realized that who would doubt it if he could refuse such a temptation. After which he decided to present his wealth to someone there, telling them to look at these three rings. They are spatial rings that have already laid down the position of the amount of money. Maybe they should test it for validity. They claim that they are 100% real and also the most expensive. What could be in this kingdom? The creative magician was also able to declare that after the start of the market, his share would go annually to the account of these rings. After that, he decided to ask anyway, since there is already a recipe for the potion, to which Yuji replied that the energy lies in the magic potion. It was never obtained from the ingredients themselves, it is obtained by coagulating the contents contained in the air of the elements. The gentleman could not answer this, because he understood that if the potion was created only with elements of magic, 
then it would be impossible to create it on a large scale and also to make factories for it. And then it will be very difficult to sell them since there will be almost no products on the market. Yuji decided to show that in the vat, they are a magic circle capable of coagulating the elements of air. The guy also might not have noticed that when using high fire magic, he can successfully cause a resonance of the magic circle with the ingredients. And as for the ingredients themselves, then low herb ingredients contain low AVAT elements. Therefore, in the magic circle, they interact with the high concentrated air elements that seep in and fill the void. After all, no one can do it so simply. Master everything. There are also several ingredient levels that not only improve the results of folding, they also improve the quality of elements with folded ingredients. It would be more difficult. He finally understood what the joke was about this whole ingredient. He realized and still realized that he might be able to recreate it all on a large scale. Dana said that since she had already learned the secret greenery, they would no longer linger here and could finally go home. To which the gentleman said that Sarah should not rush. There is one more matter that we all need to discuss together. He does not know if he is aware of the recent eruption of Mount Lerta. She replied that they had heard all about it. Just natural disasters. Most likely nothing interesting happens there. But the gentleman just laughed and decided to tell her back that when they sent a rescue group there, they also thought so. But in fact, until they accidentally discovered traces of a rare magical beast in a mountain cave, a fiery unicorn. Sarah could not understand and also could not accept the fact that they, well, these people, exist. If this is so, then they are in danger, in fact. Yuji didn't understand what the problem was, but he decided to still say that don't fire unicorns live in the east, just like he ended up in the west. The gentleman decided to say that it was true, because although they do not know how he ended up in their lands, we can say with confidence that the unicorn protects the precious stone that will be burned by fire. The boy realized that a valuable stone would be fought with fire. This sounds quite tempting. That's right, said the sir. He says that this is a precious stone, probably the untold wealth of Eastern myths. So they send a group to get the stone and think that Sarah would like to join them. Once it's over, he'll offer them a deal. Before that, he wants the unicorn to be theirs. But now the master's precious stone is coming. He asked both of them. Dana understood that this was dangerous, but having new unicorns in her kingdom could be one in a million, since this is a very precious animal. So she couldn't help but agree. That's why she said she was going. And when does this group leave? The gentleman said that in three days. While they are waiting, they can, in principle, be their guest, and they should also prepare well before the trip. Great, Eugia said. After all, he just wanted to go and find out what it was. An excellent chance, because he just wanted to go and see what kind of stone it was. The butler didn't understand why the gentleman was so kind to them. He decided to ask him why the master not only did he give half his fortune for potion recipes, which that guy can do in two counts, but also told them about the fiery unicorn. I'm afraid this is not good for their reputation, and it is also possible that they will become enemies who will be admired by others. The gentleman said that this is not so, laughing. He only suggested that they go there. Nobody said they couldn't go back, to which the butler was only glad, because he understood that then the master's benefit would be on his side. He said that he, as always, excels in strategies and knows how to destroy enemies who can compete with him. The servants decided to show these of yours where their chambers are. She told the lady not to apologize very much for the convened days of the Congress. All the rooms in their house are occupied. Only this one remains. The lady said that it's okay, it'll do, and maybe they'll settle down here. She also told the maid to be free, to which she replied that she was obeying and leaving. Yuji decided to put his Excalibur back in place. 
After stretching, the guy was even a little tired. And also, I decided to ask Master Sarah why they take a unicorn and not a precious stone. She decided to answer that the heart of a unicorn can be obtained. The blood can turn any fiery magical fire received into a magical flame, and her back can also awaken her natural magic. Badge, as always, from some kind of unicorn blood you can always get either immortality, as in Harry Potter, or hear some kind of agility. Poor unicorns, indeed. The boy just looked at her and realized that perhaps this was too important for her. Therefore, I decided to listen to her a little and also listen to what she could tell him. Sarah said that she thought that she had already guessed that she took him on as her student to help her deal with the fire unicorn. Turning around, she decided to tell him that she was sorry, that she was so selfish. She really was. Yuji understood that in fact this is how it is, in general. Yes, she is a selfish girl, but what can you do? Because she didn't expect him to tell the truth, she was a little shocked. But also Yuji might not have noticed that she, selfish humanity indeed. In general, people are never faced with a choice. For example, he wants both a pebble and a unicorn. Therefore, he is even more selfish and wants to help her with this. To which she lay embarrassed and smiled at him. After all, all she wants at this moment is to get the unicorn's heart and awaken her fire magic in order to finally become stronger. She was glad that Yuji would help her with this. She said that he was a stupid student who most likely just listened and gave in to her orders. Well, in general, she realized that in three days she would need to leave, but now he is too weak for this. So she decided that she would. There is one way that she just came up with so that irreversible things don't happen to him. All that remains is to attach some magical powers to him and transferring magical powers will not be so easy. Yuji was dumbfounded at how he could already transfer magical powers. Yes, she decided. Show him how it is. She ordered him to sit down and let him show the seal on his forehead. Sitting down on the bed, he said what he showed. So, what is next? After which, abruptly, without any pretentiousness, she pressed his head to the place where they finally reunited these very lights. After all, with the help of these very lights, she can transmit magical power, as well as exchange substances with him. It was certainly not a very good place. But what can you do, she thought. While they were doing this, they could not even imagine anything. She was so captivated by how nice it was to convey semantic power. Magic circles were happening around all this, which only proved that now he was becoming a little stronger than he was before. With every second this erotic and also a little vulgar scene turned, however, into something under 18 plus. But even though she ordered him not to move anymore, he basically couldn't do anything. After a while, she said that, this is an ancient way of transferring magical powers through a seal between a master and a student. Now, having received her powers, he can use magic. Let him try it himself, see if he can. While she was saying this, he didn't move at all. He had a feeling that he died there because there wasn't enough oxygen because it was quite a long time. She got scared and said that the stupid student was really unconscious or passed out from lack of air. She decided to ask questions. Does she know that everything is okay with him or that he really passed out? Raising his head, she could not understand what happened to him at all, how he felt. Yuji realized that everything seemed to go well. He said that it was very convenient to receive strength from the mistress and he also felt that he had become much, well, maybe a little stronger there. The gentleman could not understand, that is, all these days they did not leave the room all the time. By the way, the butler decided to say that, by the way, he heard pleasant screams sometimes coming from the room as they were doing something depraved there. Because of this, the gentleman was not at his best and said that if she was happy, it would be better for the butler to keep quiet about this. 
He understood that, damn it. Why was he worse than this black-haired guy? With shouts, he said that Sarah was simply blind and did not understand how much better he was than him. The butler only said that the gentleman should not worry about it. After which he saw another gentleman and told him to apologize for his tactlessness. He is to blame for this. Agree. The boy said that he didn't call him to resolve the issue with them. By the way, this unknown person was the void traveler Hostadan, one of the four best magicians in the Empire, believed to be the only person in history to enter the void world. At this time in the gray room they practiced over the fire and she also showed him how to do it correctly. Yuji was trying to make fire and he asked him, Is this really how it's done? Sarah said that everything is right. Now they can freely use internal magic, so everything is fine and goes just like clockwork. The boy couldn't believe that he could be so valuable to her and also could master all these skills so quickly. He was impressed and didn't think it was possible to control fire in this way. Now, although he is not a fighter, his fire will burst out. The girl also thought that they didn't need any incidents while taming the unicorn. So the magical powers transferred to him should be enough to withstand any fatal blow. But let him remember that they need to be spent wisely. But at that moment, Yuji only admired the lady and said that, wow, let her look at what he is doing. A huge heart. Because he simply ignores her words and just uses magic for some hearts, she called him a moron. The maid decided to go up to their room and tell them that, madam, the cart to Mount Leda was already ready and they could leave at any moment. She understood who opened the doors while Yuji was a little left over from the fire. The girl replied that she immediately understood what needed to be done and said that they would be there soon. But suddenly she saw a stranger leaving. She thought he seemed familiar to her. She said that for some reason that man looked like Kasa and Dan. Yuji asked, Am I really a master? Is something bothering me? The lady said it was nothing. Let them go quickly. He said, Okay, okay. She thought that... Most likely she was mistaken. Meanwhile, in the Tower of St. Fu, in this very tower someone was running very quickly to some place. Suddenly she was in a hurry and saw a dead end. She didn't know what to do. After all, she seemed to be running away from someone. This unknown man decided to catch his breath and did not understand where to go, after which he decided to raise his head. It turns out, after all, she was really running away from someone. Some unknown steps from someone walked behind her. All these people shouted that she was there. After all, it seems that this unknown person was a girl. The chairman of the director decided to tell her that it seemed she had no way of retreat. Therefore, let her be so kind and give back what she just stole. In response, she only slowly turned her head towards them. The girl, who decided that she wanted to threaten them with something, decided to immediately act and stop them. While she was hooking her chains to wrap her up like a chicken, she suddenly decided to do something. She smiled again and realized that this was not a hindrance to her, and she could easily escape from chains like these. Jumping on the spot, she decided to sneak out of here. But fortunately, she was lucky because there was a window near her through which she decided to escape. It was quite high, but she was able to reach him as well. It was not difficult to climb over. Even the fragments were not so sharp, or even if you or they did not hit it. While the lady decided to run to the window, she could no longer find anyone, since most likely she had fled a long time ago or very far and quickly. She knew, of course, that she was damn fast, but she still managed to escape. Therefore, she will have to report to the director and also explain the situation. The girl, having caught her breath, only walked around the corner so that they would think that she had run away. But in fact, she didn't run away. She just stood there. After which, she decided to pull off her mask to grab a little more air and catch her breath. 
after which she discovered that she had finally gotten the very thing why she had done all this in the first place. She took out a box, which, most likely, is precious for herself, and perhaps for that very unknown matter, which most likely is part of the family by agreement. Meanwhile, a few days later at the foot of the fiery mountain Lyaretto, the carriage decided to stop right here to finally do something. The gentleman could not understand, really again. He needed to get out of the carriage, but as the adventurers also saw, they only felt sorry for this kid. The fact is that Yuji was intolerant of the carriage, or rather, he was very sick in it. Therefore, standing behind the tree, he did his business, and they both just didn't know what to do in such matters. The gentleman also decided to ask Seriaya why she didn't know that she was getting motion sickness. She could have told him before that it was so bad. This is how it can be used because of him. This one-day trip stretched out there for several days. Dana said that, unfortunately, she herself did not know that so many unpleasant things could happen because of him. He thought a little and said that he never wanted to get into this carriage again. He noticed something, something approaching them. After he immediately noticed, both Mr. and Sarah noticed, they heard someone scream. This very cry belonged, and there will be the most interest that the gentleman said. He said that you are the cartilage of your face. The gentleman realized that you are just a gristle. What is there to be afraid of? Fortunately for him, he brought high-class magicians who most likely will now cope with all this. The adventurer told the master that, in fact, he was wrong, since there were too many of them. These are just the couple he brought right behind him, and there are a lot more of them. Everyone said that this is a flock of cartilage. Yuji immediately realized that if they were a cartilaginous species, then they could be tamed, or even better, ride them. The gentleman realized that he had really brought a whole flock. There were too many of these same cartilages. Their master said that he was an idiot and called them all to kill a single horn and not stir up a lair in the cartilages. In fact, in their grove, mid-earth and low-level magical beasts move at incredible speed and also jump out poison after you. The gentleman realized that although there was no real reason to be afraid of them, there were indeed too many of them. It will take a lot of time and effort to fight with them. We need to figure out a way to have less conflict with them. Until the unicorn is killed, nothing will happen. The mistress decided to scream at everyone and tell everyone to get into their carriages. After all, plans have changed. First, they must escape from the lizards, and then think about what to do next. One of the anti-tourists told him to take a look at them. This is simply amazing. No one has done this before. What the gentleman just decided to pay attention to was what happened there, after which I was surprised. After all, it turns out that Yuji was able to tame this beast, and it was clearly visible that he was just playing with this creature. Yuji only said that he should stop or get in his face too. Already holding on, they were all shocked. After all, they couldn't believe it. He decided to ask Gray, his fiance, if he was familiar with these lizards or something. She said that of course not, except maybe. He can control them just a little, since his ability to control magical beasts is a little higher than that of ordinary people. They were all delighted and in a daze for the time being, because that's what she calls it a little bit. The gentleman decided to say that maybe then he would ask them to step aside a little so that they could continue on their way. Yuji said that there is a much better idea, and what the gentleman suggested can wait. After which, this very flock of lizards decided to hit the road in a crowd. The gentleman did not expect that this was his wonderful idea. Just tame these lizards and ride them. Yuji said that's true. And this is both a fast and convenient way of transportation. And also, it's generally cool, right? He said laughing. He was also very happy that he would finally be able to get rid of the carriage and ride such lizards throughout this area. While the lady looked at him, she only imagined. 
that the truth was not wrong that he was actually a good guy and a good student of her kind. Therefore, she is happy that he became her student. Meanwhile, Loretta Volcano, finally they arrived here and decided to go down with the lizard and go to this very cave. Having decided to come closer, the adventurer, who was a scout, said that this was the same cave in which they found the unicorn. Yuji saw how these same lizards looked at this cave, and they all looked at her with caution and did not want to let the young master go there, nor did they want to go there themselves. Yuji understood that there seemed to be something inside, and it was extremely dangerous for lizards. He also said that they had already arrived at the place they originally wanted, and he said that they could be free, to which the lizard obediently listened to him. She told everyone that it was okay to leave. It's worth coming in quickly and they shouldn't stay here for long. Walking further, there were only red stones around that covered this cave, and also just comfort, and there was a flashlight that gave hope that maybe it wasn't as dangerous here as they thought. The gentleman knew that he would never have thought that this guy could get along so well with wild animals, but he knew very well that even if they curbed the unicorn, they still wouldn't survive today. Laughing out loud in my thoughts, they saw a way out. The adventurer told them to take a look. After all, the exit is already visible at the end. But suddenly they suddenly saw something unusual. The adventurer said that, my God, he had never seen anything like this before. Besides the pile of flowing lava that was in this cave, they saw something incredibly valuable. Thus this very treasure turned out to be valuable, which the master also wanted to take possession of, a magic crystal or a mystical one. Yuji realized that the movement of this gem looked somehow familiar to him. The gentleman decided to come closer to this gem, saying that great, finally there is no fire unicorn. This is a great opportunity to grab a stone and run through the dumps. But suddenly, as he approached, Sarah heard something else, unusually powerful and strong. She told him to stop immediately and not go near that gem. Soon the greatest magma that was around this very egg fell on them, and in this magma was that same unicorn. The gentleman saw with his own eyes what it was. Looking there, he saw huge claws that stood around him, and he also had a great desire to run away from here. It was a day dragon, half dragon, half unicorn. He really wanted to expel everyone and the people who came to him. After all, it is a rare level magical beast. This fire unicorn comes from the eastern continent, is a master of fire attacks, and is also deadly strong. All the adventurers, from almost all elements such as fire, water, and natural elements, were ready for battle. So they just stood there and waited for the order to attack. Sarah said that this shitty unicorn is a very rare magical animal, and although its killing power is not as high as that of natural disaster-level animals, she is afraid that she will not give in to them easily. After all, he is really strong. She asked the stupid student to simply stand aside first, wait, and then, if possible, take advantage of the chance. Let him tame it with his talent. He said that after all, Sarah was right. That's right. She says unicorns are tough. If you train him, he may begin to resist. It's better not to show him your magic in front of the whole crowd. He also might not have noticed that ordinary people will not be able to understand everything that he can. They were all very afraid, especially the gentleman, who sees how this very fiery unicorn pressed against him. He told them to quickly get rid of him and start attacking. Of course, all the adventurers listened to him and started attacking that shitty unicorn. They began to use other techniques, as well as block it with these same ice cubes or rectangles. They didn't know exactly how to fight him. Therefore, we decided to throw elements that he should better avoid. But in the end, it happened that it didn't matter to him which element. He was strong in himself, and his fire was so hot that no one could resist him. Therefore, they only suffered from this and told them all to start running away from here.
While they were all running, Sarah just started attacking directly with that unicorn. And she said that they were better to be her opponent than those weaklings who were behind her. Since the unicorn didn't mind having legs, he was staring into his eyes to end it all as quickly as possible and return to his quiet life in this place. Sarah couldn't understand, because in fact, her sword was so strong that it could melt him, knew that he wanted to defeat her. Therefore, I decided to use an explosive attack to deflect it from here. After the explosive attack, Sarah naturally crashed and threw her sword back. She couldn't do anything to him, since element to element is quite difficult to fight. The gentleman said, what the hell? The stone fell straight into the lava. You see, she just crashed, and it takes quite a long time for her to get it back. And this is just for a moment, and I. But at that very moment, this very stone, which very much resembled an egg, Yuji was able to save thanks to his dexterity and ability to move around the wasteland. All these adventurers could not expect this from an ordinary young man who could so quickly master his technique and take away this very stone. Having finally decided to use these same pebbles that were falling into the lava, he decided to climb back up them and was easily able to get that same stone back. She said that the student is okay. Does this stone contain the future flame, or rather, he definitely shouldn't take risks? While she thought he shouldn't take the risk, she couldn't figure out if it was really an egg. But judging by the character that was from the fiery unicorn, apparently it was so. The gentleman said that if things continued like this, he would receive both the stone and the unicorn. Then he will be left with nothing at all. Yuji said that he was wrong about this gem from the very beginning. After all, this is a precious stone, in fact. As he spoke, some unknown wasteland began to appear behind him, covering the area. Then from this very wasteland, some tentacles came out and wanted to grab him and his mistress. She immediately noticed this and decided to act, because if he doesn't do anything, they will both end up in this very wasteland. Therefore, he immediately decided to push her away and then try to get out of there himself. He told her to be more careful and to let her live until he returned. True, she didn't have time to hear anything, for some reason, because she was in shock and couldn't do anything. Just turning her head, she, like Yuji, was slowly sucked into some extraordinary wasteland from which all these tentacles came out. She didn't understand how she could help him, so she wanted to catch up with him as quickly as possible but she also noticed that this same unicorn was also entangled in these tentacles, and he was essentially without a weapon and had no access to it. The girl said it was nothing, and was she right? The master decided to order all these adventurers to attack the unicorn now, to which they replied, Okay. After which ice shards flew at this same unicorn, and it crashed. The girl was surprised by this and couldn't believe that they wanted to kill this same unicorn and they succeeded, and she also didn't understand where Yuji had gone. The only smoke flying from the fragments was the steam that came from these very fragments due to the fact that the ice came into contact with the fire. The unicorn was completely wounded, and he did not know what to do. Sarah decided to ask the gentleman what was going on here to which he replied that it was nothing special. Or was she really so naive that she thought he would be sincere with her and cooperate? But he said that she initially agreed to become related to him, but nothing ever happened. And at the Congress, he and the boy decided to disgrace him and all his achievements. The gentleman realized that it was okay because the Capella clan had already tuned in and he gave himself up and the time had passed to pay the bills. It was not for nothing that he called the master of the wasteland to deal with them. To which she now understood what was happening that time in the corridor, she definitely saw Kasadan. Out of anger, she wanted to kill him. If something happens to her student, then it will all be his fault, and even if he doesn't dream of leaving here alive. After which she decided to attack him, 
and then someone began to emerge from this very hole, a survivor from there. He said that, what a pity, because the way Sarah is trying to do something against him, as well as against his customers. He said that her student had already become dinner for the master of the wasteland, and now she should not even dream that he might come back here. From this she suddenly realized that she had lost the only student who was joyful with her, and was also truly important to her, not only as a student, but also truly as a boyfriend. She remembered all these moments when they were together, and it was all lost this time, and she would never meet him again. She couldn't allow this to happen. She didn't know what to do. So she realized she needed to act now. She decided to deal with them with just one blow, because then let them not pay for this dinner with their lives. Then she began to run with her fiery power straight at this Hasid. But he decided to do it his own way, opening this very portal right in front of her, and they realized that the gates of the wasteland would most likely be opposite her. After which she was not surprised, because how did she understand that this was possible? And there is this very wasteland that absorbs magic. But she definitely couldn't expect that he could ricochet this very magic, and now she would take the entire blow that she took and wanted to defeat them all. The girl did not know what to do in this case, but she understood that the blow would not be reassuring, and it would also happen right now. She, of course, managed to jump away from this explosion, but still suffered considerable damage to herself. Therefore, when she left here, she only coughed and did not understand what to do now. The boy only said that she really wasn't a master of magic. Since she didn't know about this, he just laughed and also said that the magic of the wasteland exists outside the basic framework of magic, and even such a high magician like her, fire sword magic, cannot overcome it. The magician decided to tell her that he advised her not to flutter around pointlessly, once again, but to die calmly and accept that she could not do anything against him. But suddenly, before that, he heard how these customers of his decided to offer something else, so that they, the master of the wasteland, would say whether it was too easy to give it up and die like that. They just said that they could do a few more things if they did a few more things to her. While she heard this, she understood that if, as she said, even the fire sword magic is not enough, and also pouring this highest magic guild alone then, it's worth trying something else. Based on the example of what she wanted from the very beginning, there is only one way left for you. Therefore, she decided to run closer to the same shelter and become much stronger. The gentleman decided that no, she should not do this. Let it be to you, master of emptiness. She already wants to take the unicorn's blood to awaken natural magic. She needs to quickly contain it before it's too late. The Hasid said it's not worth it, and so did I. Let him calm down. She's just wasting her energy. Even if she can recreate and master it, she will most likely die. Or even if not she won't be able to do anything against his void technique. Therefore, only after laughing, he understood that she had no choice but to simply die peacefully. She decided to approach him, this other unicorn, to apologize to him, but she still needs his powers, so she asks for help. Also, this same unicorn was actually alive, and he was watching her try to extract her blood. Seeing this, she simply decided to drink it and actually felt something soon. She felt how this very blood could somehow change her well-being. After which she knelt down and spat out some blood, she thought. What kind of blood is this? The feeling as if the whole body was being burned by a fierce fire. It was a very strong pain that she felt on herself. While she had this feeling, he told her that she was too naive since she really believed the words of that old ace after drinking the blood of the fire unicorn. She will only burn alive. The girl just looked at him and said that this couldn't happen. After all, the director would not have deceived her just like that. She knew that he valued her most of all. Kazid said it looked like she was being lied to. After all, she doesn't know him completely. 
While the girl suffered from drinking the blood of the fire unicorn, he only realized that if they killed her, now they can make themselves a big explosion of future heavenly fire in her, so the best solution is to leave her here to die a natural death. The stone is still in their hands, so he came for everyone to go. Well, the gentleman and the adventurers agreed. The girl only suffered from pain and said that they couldn't just let them leave. After which something happened, and in fact the Hasida was wrong, because she released her energy and became much stronger than before. She realized that the magician of 1,000 lights was awakened in her right now, and apparently the magician was wrong, and now she is much stronger than before. He couldn't believe it, that this was really possible. The girl only said that even if she had awakened natural magic, she was very sad that she had lost her student. That's why. The girl wanted the mercy that they would now receive, so that they would not expect her at all. Then she began to send her new abilities to them, which she had just received just a short time ago. As always, Mach decided to use the void field to check what would change if he now simply put this technique in reverse. Using it, he could not do anything. He did not understand what the problem was. After which he did not understand, somehow, what it was because the owner of the void did not answer him. While it was too late, that same fire dragon that she had unleashed with her magic was heading straight towards them both. The gentlemen and the adventurers did not understand what this was, how this could happen to them right now. After which, after a while, they all died. There was no way they could have gotten up at this very moment. The guy simply couldn't believe it and thought that someone could master the magic of heavenly fire. She said that since this was the case, she had just released all her strength and now she doesn't know what to do. She understood that even though she had tamed and received the natural magic she so desired, she was not happy about it at all because she had lost her best friend. After which she heard some steps, as well as clapping, and realized that this someone was her teacher, Acer. She couldn't understand how the director ended up here and how he was able to find them all. He said that she had finally awakened her natural magic, to which she said that yes, but he was a strange director. The Hasid laughed because he said that she was a fool for not listening to him. He told her that she didn't understand yet. After all, this old man has been waiting for the day when she will unleash natural magic from the very beginning, because he is the demon snatcher. This seemingly kind old man is, in fact, the demon snatcher, and as soon as the moment comes, he would like to take this magic away. She couldn't believe it, because the demon is the snatcher, what are they talking about? A long time ago, there was a legend that, according to the rules, 500 years ago, a monster appeared that was capable of stealing natural magic from people, and for a hundred years there was no person capable of defeating it. She couldn't believe it, but the chronicles say that after the battle with the children of the apostles of Sarier, the demon disappeared without a trace. He died to the shepherds a long time ago. How then is it possible that this is the director of Aces? He decided to tell Sarah that she told him that if she manages to awaken natural magic, she will help him with many bodies, but this is troublesome. Wouldn't it be better to just take her? After all, if he can directly take her natural magic, then he won't need help, and he can handle everything himself. She didn't know what to say. After all, natural magic is equal to magician talent. There will be something unusual, or what? And yet, she could not understand what the director was trying to achieve all this time. After which, at super speed, he decided to come close to her and decided to take her by the throat in order to quickly take away the magical energy from her. She didn't understand why he was doing this to her, because she was always happy to serve him. And he acts so dirty and doesn't want anything in exchange, and she didn't know what to do. At this moment, he only said that if he did not feel that she could awaken the master of a thousand lights, he would have raised her so carefully. The girl realized that she had been pitifully used, 
but all this time and she simply could not do anything about it. She realized that she knew nothing about him. Although he knew everything, he only told her to look at herself, how pathetic she was, how disgusting she was. He also might not have noticed that the essence of her existence is to awaken natural magic and allow him to take it away. Emotionally, she could not imagine that on this day she would see how her faithful student would be dragged alive into some kind of emptiness, and also that her own teacher, who took care of her all her life, wanted to kill her. It was painful for her to watch this. She just cried and told the teacher not to do this, but it was too late. All this energy turned the teacher into a superman, and nothing could stop him from such an act. The teacher was almost finished absorbing her super magic. He also understood that as soon as he finished, he could choose any other one for himself and also try to have her also be a little girl, which would also make him much stronger. After that, he simply took it and threw it on the ground, like unnecessary garbage that was lying under his feet. He also might not have noticed how his magic is now much stronger than before, after all, from that ordinary orange fire, it turned into orange-red, which was much stronger than any ordinary fire. He understood what a wonderful natural magic this was. Now there was no point in him leaving her alive. And he can do whatever he wants with it. Even kill him, feed him, throw him into lava, whatever. The boy realized that as soon as this old man dealt with Sarah, it would be his turn. But why the master of the void still doesn't answer, he definitely couldn't understand. After which, after some time, someone emerged from this very void. He couldn't believe his eyes. The old man saw in front of him how the fourth wall was collapsing, and it was, however, large, but quite enormous in size. The old man did not understand what he was doing at first, but when he already understood, that he just needed to use his magic to check why he wanted to be called upon at this very moment and on such a large scale. After which, out of this very white fog, someone came out. Near this man lay only the tip of an octopus, or rather its meat, which had been chopped off right now. This very man turned out to be better, who killed this very monster. Apparently, this same master of these holes as well as the one who tried to capture him, he could not withstand the strength that he had. The old man couldn't believe it. Don't tell him that this guy dealt with the strongest of the void world, the master of the void. He just said that, damn it, why does this octopus have so many tentacles and spent so much time cutting them all off? He hoped he wasn't late to the party. But seeing the old man and also the wounded sulfur, which was most likely already half dead, perhaps it was a bad decision to mess around with that octopus for so long. The guy couldn't understand why the director is here next to her, and she's crippled right now, and he's not helping her in any way. He realized that who did this to the lady and also to his teacher, to which he said that it was he who did it, the old Acer after which he proves that it was definitely he who sat down and decided to push her straight towards him. Yuji simply could not understand how the old man could treat her so cruelly. The boy immediately felt that something was wrong with her because she had no natural energy, so he decided to ask the old man if he had really taken away this very natural energy. He said that was true, but he should feel proud of his master. After all, it was she who laid her hand to his future victory over the apostle. The old man decided to tell this old man that even if 300 years ago, in a battle with an eagle, he realized that ordinary natural magic, no matter how much there was, could not overcome the apostle. Therefore, he decided to say that he needed even more strength than he even had now. And thanks to what he understood, for this he needed high-level magic and energy stopped by the Apostle, so he spent his strength to teach sulfur, as well as coke, or else get the energy of the Apostle. While the boy was trying to simply wipe away the tears that were from her eyes, he was really sorry that she had to suffer so much now. 
The old man only said that today he had finally become stronger, and the day when he would obtain the magic of the highest level of the heavenly plane and the energy of the apostle of hellfire had arrived. And now he wants to master something else, possessing many unique abilities. He is again ready for battle with the apostles. Having laughed, he perceived himself as the gods, although in fact he was still that madman. He understood that now he had no choice but to kill this old man, and he also heard what he said, but before that he still needed to deal with them with scum. Yuji saw perfectly well how that dragon was in pain, and he is now suffering from the fact that so many bullets flew at him, he can't do anything about it. The old man just continued to say that now with him and his heaven and hell, so he no longer needs them after which he decided to show his strength to these two. You'll make them regret that they ever decided to attack him. Yuji understood that, hey, if that's what he wanted, then let them compete with each other, which means he's relying on these splashes as well as everything that surrounds him. How funny and disgusting Yuji thought. After all, he's never seen anything like this before, that any... Then a person there dared to turn to such magical things. He said that since this was the case, he would spare no effort. After which he decided to simply answer all these magical things that he wanted to use on him. Also, her fiancé does not notice that he is too weak for him. In fact, he does not understand how unequal they are in strength, since he is the same apostle who will kill him with his own hands. The magician who owns and void gates said that this guy is so strong. He's really a gray student. Or maybe he's stronger than someone. You just tell the old man that he doesn't look like a person from a famous family. And he should also know that he can even use Sylph. It seemed interesting to him. But he also didn't understand who he was then. To which Yuji responded only with contempt for him. And said that let him guess who he is. After which he prepared to do something, something very super fast on the right, all his strength is now on his feet, like the good old days. He asked him to guess, if he did, he would receive a prize. The old man only saw how quickly he began to move and wanted to use all the magic he could have on him. With me, he decided to make a shield around himself to cover the enemies around him. Also, when he decided to create seven pancake spikes to defeat this guy, who imagined himself to be a superman, he just wanted to end it all quickly. It was not difficult for him to fight off all these thorns and to think that he could be so weak. After which he decided to attack everything around here, and he was very good at it. Pebbles like these can't cause him much harm, and the magic he uses is just a dummy, because a real magician doesn't know what it's like to be strong. The boy decided to create a whirlwind that would defeat his enemy. The old man could not even imagine that with the help of an ordinary sword you can disperse so much that you can create a whirlwind, because he didn't even use the elements. He simply created a whirlwind with his physical strength without any magical power. The boy forgot to say that if he doesn't guess right, then in that case, a punishment awaits him, which he will experience until the end of his centuries. The old man, even with me, could not understand his barrier. Why is he so strong? You see, he was able to reach him so quickly without any difficulty and even create a vortex that destroyed almost his barrier. Coming closer, he finally began to attack him. Then there was a massive explosion that overwhelmed everything around. Max simply could not imagine what the body was in. If they continue at this pace, then with this spirit, I'm afraid the volcano will explode. He understood that everything was because of this guy and the assessor, and it doesn't matter which of them survives. In any case, you will release him to me, so they'll take the opportunity to sneak out while it lasts. Meanwhile, the guy had already done his job, and this same old man experienced raw despair. He only used blood and could not do anything. Yuji decided to tell him to return his natural magical power, otherwise he will die here, he said, or that he would not return it under any circumstances. 
Laughing, he also said that the stolen natural magic could not be returned back. And the old man could also notice that he really thought that he could defeat him so quickly. The old man decided to use his trump card, saying that he was, in fact, not too naive. After which this magician saw that it was the fire of the underworld, belonging to the mythical apostle. What is this old man, Ace, up to anyway? And this is what I had in mind. After laughing, the old man said that he had really decided that he could defeat him. As soon as he destroyed this very test tube with this fire, he received the temporary power of this very fire, after which he received the extraordinary power that was around him. Looking at Yuji, he said that this is the most powerful power left from the apostle, and he absolutely possesses it. And he was unlucky, because he would be the first to die from such force. Kindling a flame around himself, he said that this is the power of an apostle. Then the spirit could not stand it, and therefore decided to lead it into its spiritual body and wanted to get even with someone like him, since she considered that, in fact, this flame was really dangerous. Deciding to make a storm barrier against this flame, Yuji just looked at it and understood. The fact that even if she protects him is, of course, worthy of praise. But still, he decided to tell the sylph to take the sulfur and urgently leave here. She said no because her main mission is to protect her owner. Yuji realized that she was too worried, so he decided to pat her on the head and tell her not to worry. After all, he is the one. He decided to tell Selv not to worry about him. After all, this light cannot harm him. She couldn't understand what was going on. Why can he be so convinced of this? But I realized that most likely he was right. So she decided to go with Sira and started walking towards the exit. While they were doing this, the old man only said that he did not expect that there would be a person who would care about the safety of his weapon more than for his own life. This is really funny. He now has the power of hellfire, and nothing can stop him right now. The old man said that killing him, and then catching up and killing them, would be a matter of a couple of minutes. While he was an old man, he was only proving that one movement was enough for him to erase everyone from the earth. After the flames gushed over his entire body, the old man only said that, having lived in the world for five hundred years, he finally worked and threw off his shackles and set him on the path to becoming a new apostle. While the old man was talking all this nonsense, the guy told him to stop this blasphemy. After all, he is using this flame incorrectly. After which the old man could not understand how it happened that this flame did not harm him. Yuji decided to collect all the flames that he opened on him into one and he began to turn it over in his hands to collect it all in one pile. The old man could not understand why he could hold the flames of hell with his bare hands. Isn't he human? Even a comparison with the apostles. His strength seems even more powerful than theirs. What are you? he asked Yuji. He said he was just an ordinary student, and just right now he decided to explain that he just wanted to show him something. Approaching a little, he also said that something more important. How will he pay for what he did to his future bride? The old man just says that he couldn't even think that he was him. UJ, just ask this old man. If he wants to survive, then it's better to be quiet and inconspicuous, and also below the water and below the grass. Yuji decided to say that he is just a simple student who is looking for a wife and trying to make money. That's all. That's his main goal. After which the old man, having thoroughly enjoyed these very fiery powders, he could not do anything to Yuji. While he was standing here and having finished all this, he remembered that there was still something important that he had not done. Raising his head, he realized that he needed to go catch up with the phone and hope that Sarah had already woken up. That before that we need to deal with one more matter. The same unicorn who has now suffered greatly from all these manipulations, from this magician, as well as from those adventurers. To him he wanted to help her. He began to heal and also destroy all the ice, 
but at the same time he would like to close all the wounds. The unicorn didn't understand what he wanted to do, but she wanted only one thing, to survive and continue her family, protecting her egg. After he finally freed this very creature, she was finally able to fall to the ground and calm down. The guy said that in the last battle he did not use his powers to the fullest, and he was also afraid of harming the egg if its blows were too powerful. The dragon could not believe her eyes, because she thought that the egg no longer existed. Yuji decided to present this very egg and also tell her not to worry. He hid it in a spatial ring when he was sucked into the void world, so it remained unharmed. And the movie Unicorn was glad that everything was okay with her offspring, and she also couldn't help but say thank you to him. But she also said that she most likely would not be able to take care of him, because she was dying and would not be able to protect him alone, so she wanted Yuji to protect this future family. He immediately understood what she wanted from him. Even though he was here, he still didn't understand why she came here with her egg, but the egg emanates the smell of the apostles, which means it is undoubtedly connected with them. That's why I already promised that she would be calm. He said that he will take care of this egg. This unicorn finally decided to rest in eternal sleep. After all this, volcanoes really began to erupt, and now it was extremely dangerous to be here. Therefore, now near the exit, the sylphs together with Sarah were waiting for the apostle, or rather, Yuji near the exit. Sylphie knew that finally the owner would be able to return, and so it was. She decided to immediately ask if he was okay. Said of course he was fine. That's just how Sarah is. Will she even be able to wake up in such a short time? The spirit said that she was not quite awake yet. She must have overexerted herself and is now in a coma. He told her that, okay, the volcanic eruption would begin soon. First we need to get out of here, and then we'll talk about it. Sylphie said that Sarah's master takes everything too personally. Can she really accept all this when she wakes up? Time passed, and finally she woke up. Two nurses were only discussing what one had heard. It was not the Charlotte clan that was exterminated, the work of the Apostles' minions, and the other could not believe it and said that it was really because her clan was so strong in some way of magic, and these devils set their sights on her. Sarah finally woke up and thought about what she was doing and what happened then, but they just kept saying, these nurses, that who knows, now she's the only one left so small, what a pity for her. Suddenly someone came to this ward and said that it seemed that she had already learned about the murders of her relatives who killed her. In fact, it was a long time ago when she was young, so she remembers very little. The old man said that he and she should have common goals. The old man said that if she wanted revenge, then let her become her student, but she did not understand who he was. To which the old man replied that he forgot to introduce himself, for his name is Asus, the chief preliminary magician of the empire. At that moment she, however, believed that the teacher sincerely wanted to help her take revenge. But she, in fact, had a different picture. As he said, it seems that it can still be useful. It's not for nothing that he taught it for so many years. I remembered all this very absurdly, and I couldn't even think that it was a demon, kidnappers who were trying to steal her natural magic. She did not ask forgiveness for being her father and mother. After all, it seems that she will not be able to complete the mission from communicating with Charlotte's entire mouth. But she definitely understood that since everyone treated her so coldly, except her student. Suddenly, Sylphie noticed something about Sarah's change. The girl said that the master had a problem in his body. Sarah's teacher no longer feels mana, which means that perhaps she is not only unconscious, she may be dying. The guy couldn't believe it. What? How can this happen? Despite her, he realized that her vital energy was fading away at a rapid rate. He definitely didn't expect this. Yuji couldn't understand why there was nothing worthy in this auction. 
Why did he really? It all seemed like a bad dream to her. But nothing could be done about it. After which, after some time, someone opened the door. After finally throwing off his coat, Yuji found himself at the inn with Sylphie and Sarah. By performing restoration magic with his energy, he wanted to make sure that she at least felt less bad than before. The old man did not understand what was going on. Laughing, he said that from the moment he decided to take away her natural magic, she had already died for him. But suddenly he realized that since he could control the flames of hell, then he definitely must have some kind of ability to do so. Therefore, to make your control complete, he thought it was worth stealing his abilities too. To which Yuji only said that he should try to do it, but it wouldn't work out. The old man only said that there should not be a second person in this world capable of controlling the hellfire. <laughs> so why? <laughs> After which he saw something in him. What is this? It just can't be you. Yuji just laughed and said that he finally saw who he was. Let him know that in order not to be detected, he sealed his powers. The old man did not understand how this was even possible to which he answered better that since he really wants to take his powers, he will give him a chance, but whether he can handle it, he doesn't know. Therefore, after deciding to open one of the seals, he decided to open the first level seal. Having freed his power, he decided to create his first technique, Torn. The old man could not understand what was happening at this moment. He saw how this boy was able to master this fire without any problems, and also directed it into his hand at him. He decided to do something about this flame. The old man could not understand how it was even possible that he could control this flame so easily. His strength seemed to be dying, and all this that he had mastered seemed to be unsealing and devouring him. Yuji understood that everything, as Ilfa said, is sulfur in the body. Even her own magic is not carried out. Her power is rapidly fading and cannot be restored in any way. Most likely, this is a consequence of the fact that the old man took away her natural energy. The boy understood that if it continued, the sulfur would never wake up. Sylphia decided to clarify something to the owner, saying that he still had the tamaki that he gave to Master Sarah, didn't he? While he turns around, he couldn't even remember that it was true. She was transmitting her energy to him. It would be better to say that it is so. Exactly. Because you can return the magic to yourself and help her regain her strength. Of course, this will not be enough to return to the previous level. But it's better than nothing. Sylph decided to carefully read the spells about such cases because she didn't want her to get hurt. She who read it said that since there were no magical powers left in the body of the Master of Sulphur, the seal should not be used to transfer it to them. In this case, they will have to use the traditional method described in the ancient books of people, to which Yuji said, Where is this? Where did she even pull out this book? In general, in short, transferring magic with a kiss is necessary. She understood that he could not do this but she said that if they were not connected by the body through the mouth, then saliva would be an intermediary transmitting magic. And also them, to which Yuji immediately shouted, Okay, okay, I understand everything, and will probably start doing all this. Yuji could not even imagine what would happen, and such a situation. But even if this is necessary to save sulfur, he is ready for this. True, it looks like they are taking advantage of her condition. Sylphie said that considering her vital signs, I think she will still be more worried about her magical powers, to which Yuji could not help but agree. The girl also said that quite a long time has passed since the old man took away the gray magic. If we don't hurry up, she will degrade to the level of an ordinary person, and then they will definitely not help her in any way. Yuji knew he had to act now. Therefore, yes, at least there is no direct threat to life, but finding yourself in the place of sulfur can be an ordinary girl, and it will also be quite difficult to accept everything. Therefore, he realized that he agreed. 
it was necessary to save its magical properties. The spirit decided to say that when she went, she would just stand outside and wait. Then she bowed and walked out the door. Well, she also closed the door behind her so as not to hear anything. Yuji came closer to her and said that he didn't have time for someone like him and he needed to hurry up. Gathering his hand into a fist, he realized that no matter what happens next, he will take full responsibility upon himself and make her happy. After which, raising his head higher, he decided to look at her, and in fact, he was very embarrassed. After all, it's one thing to just play along in something like that. But that's another thing. Do it directly. Well, after which, of course, he kissed her, which caused the transfer of magic. It wasn't the wallpaper that was so embarrassed. Although Yuji understood that if he woke up now, he would not be well, and he would fly away from here far and for a long time. Sarah began to wake up little by little as it was finally all over. She couldn't understand what was happening. She was still sleeping. Really? And it seemed to her that she was so warm and pleasant now. She saw that for sure it was a dream. They are no longer alive, and most likely, these are just her hallucinations. Just what the hell is not some kind of dream? She feels everything is quite all right. After which she decided to hit him, and there was a roar from which Syphilis immediately realized that most likely everything went well. Going inside, she saw how the poor owner got hit in the face and she got out of bed, which made her happy. And Yuji at that moment said that it hurt him, of course, but he was glad that she was feeling well. His by chance as well said that he, doesn't he really think, even after that, that since she mentioned it and that he is her fiancé, he can immediately do the same, even if he wants to help. After which she drew attention to the fact that Syrify, what was she writing in the book which she was now directly holding in her hands? Raising her head, she decided to say that she was diligently keeping records of the duration of their kisses and the events that followed them. This answer made the sylph almost blush with shame. She decided to say that what other kisses it was an ambulance. He returned it by force, and such events do not need to be recorded at all. She also decided to yell at Yuji for the fact that it was forever gone and gone, and so that he would quickly forget everything, everything that just happened, and whether he understood her after that. To which Yuji only said with a frightened face that that's how he is. He will obey her and won't even remember it, and also starts talking about what just happened. After which she decided to put down a mug of tea. They all finally calmed down, and she said that, since the old man Assis and Capella, what happened to them in the end? Did they win or lose? How did he eventually manage to get out of there and also take her? Just said that when he ran away from the cave after the elves, he saw Aces and the magician fighting each other at full speed. It was an impressive sight. Who would have thought that they would break off entire cliffs during a fight? The girl could not even imagine that that magician was probably Hassi. She didn't think that he would have the strength to fight Aces. That, just when he saw her Sylve, they started to get out of there. But before the volcano began to erupt, no one else came out of there. Gray understood what it meant, how irony of fate happened. The boy also said that, yes, everything was exactly like that. Master. And her powers and magic returned to her. Clutching this same blanket tightly, she didn't know whether she was confident in this or not. But she understood for sure that even though the student had restored her strength, her current level could not even be called average. So she decided to tell Yuji this, and he had no idea what she would say now. Therefore, after listening to her, he asked what she wanted to tell him. She decided to tell him to take Sylphia with him and leave from here. Yujia decided to ask her why this was so, why he should go from here. To which she said that as soon as the other families learned of the death of Aces and Capella, 
the balance of power in the empire, established in the last hundred years thanks to the balance of power between Aces and the three great families, would be disrupted. And it is precisely because of this that she is afraid that something terrible is about to begin. Eugia listened to her carefully and understood that she was saying that, yes, now there will definitely be a revolution in the country, and everything will have a very sad outcome. She also might not have noticed her current level. So far, it doesn't even reach the level of an average magician. In such a situation, it is very dangerous for all of them to explore behind her. So let them get out of here. After which she heard Yuji say that he refuses to leave and will be with her until the end. She couldn't believe that he wanted to stay with her, since her level was even lower, most likely, than his. And now she cannot be called a master. But she couldn't believe that he would be so devoted to her. But she was also very aware that he even heard what she just said. After all, now they have lost the protection of Aces, and the family is hurting, they won't be left alone so easily. And the family from them has been sharpening its teeth on them for a long time. The boy, of course, understood this and said that if they left here, then in that case she might get hurt. And since she may get hurt, what will happen to her then? Somehow they will all leave together and leave her alone, completely alone. She will be helpless. She will not be able to protect herself. Dana didn't know what to say about this. But Yuji said that he heard her perfectly well. Therefore, they especially cannot afford to stay or leave her alone. She couldn't believe that Yuji was so devoted to her. If they can't escape together, then let them fight together. He also understood that, yes, he is her student, nephew, and also her fiancé. Well, how can he leave her or run away without her? So he retracts everything she just said. From the fact that she heard that he called her wife again, she decided to say that this statement about the groom should not be taken seriously. She said that she also wants to support all the owners and will stand shoulder to shoulder with her. But she really couldn't understand that they were so stupid, since you wanted to stay here. She also snorted that if they were really in danger, then she didn't care about them and let them defend themselves everything. Yuji also couldn't believe that, by the way, Mr. Sarah, before his death, and the unicorn helped him out with her egg. Taking a closer look, she said that. Is it really so? It's not a precious stone after all, but an egg. Yuji decided to say that Capella was identified. The unicorn was not guarding a precious stone at all. It was in her egg. She also decided to say that this is it. Sylvia said that since this egg now belongs to the owner, he needs to be given a name. Yuji agreed in principle because she was right. After all, you can't call it a unicorn egg all the time. The guy didn't know what this egg was called. It didn't fit either. But suddenly, after thinking a little, a brilliant idea came to him. Since he came from the eastern continent, he heard that they usually give children popular names to make it easier to raise. What did they think that? Well, whatever his name will be. To which he said that we are called his Iron Egg. Suddenly, with such a name, she decided to set his hands on fire, because he had never seen anything more stupid. To which Yuji could not understand why the fire suddenly came out of the Iron Egg hotly. Sarah said what she thought. He wanted to make it clear that he didn't like the name, to which Silphium only confirmed this. He decided to say, and if you call him a chimney sweep, for example, like this, after which he decided to light up again even more. He understood why the fire was growing even more. The boy, some unknown person who was all ragged, stood and did not know what to do after that situation. This same guy turned out to be Hassett, but they probably decided that since the owner of the void died, then he would not be able to escape you from there. But he can still use the void field to move through space. Therefore, no one knows that he survived, but he also didn't know what to do. He understood that it was good to be like him, running quickly. 
otherwise I would have ended up like aces. Although, still, it's better not to anger this guy, he thought. I saw how he was able to recognize another cool building. He realized that news of Capella's death could fetch an excellent sum. A week later at the hotel, Soraya read that apparently Hasita was still being recruited. Still, he made it out of the volcano alive, and the news of Capella's death spread everywhere. Also in it is the Capella, as the strongest families numbered. Yes, she couldn't believe it. It's strange that he didn't say anything about sex and its connection with them. What did Sylvia think? Or what did she think? What was the problem? Why is this so? She decided to say, Okay, fine. Even though he doesn't know that the gem is actually a unicorn egg, they should be careful not to give it to anyone. You don't want that. To which Sylvia understood. By the way, they couldn't understand where Yuji went after all the owner says, and he rarely goes out somewhere. He wants to go see the big city market and at the same time find a cure to return magical powers from the series. At this time, the boy went to the market for the first time and did not know that all this time could have changed since the last time he was in the city. Since he was at the academy every time, he was interested in watching it all. He just laughed loudly, looking at all these lovely women walking around this city. There were mostly only girls here. It was very beautiful for his imagination. Also, a little later, he decided to walk a little further, looking at many more interesting things. He realized that, oh, this place is full of cuties, and also cute girls, who even the air is sweet here. This is the most charming place he has seen. Looking a little further, he saw that there was a shop from which one man was coming out, and suddenly he almost forgot that he needed to buy medicine for the master so that he would get better quickly. Coming a little closer, he saw that he would look at what was in this shop. Entering there, he saw one of the beautiful women who was the cashier. She said thank you to him for visiting the Rudder Trading House. Welcome, she said to Yuji. Here she immediately decided to recommend something to him and also ask what the young master wanted to buy. Or a bench helmet or high-strength armor or special magic stones. Well, he said, he wants to buy oriental medicine materials. The boy also said that they were not what he needed. Very rare. She just said that it was nothing, laughed and told him not to worry. After all, there is everything for the gentleman, a trading house of guns. This is a company with the widest range of goods in the entire empire, and therefore he can rest assured that they have a hundred percent what he will find. Well, the guy said, that's great news for him. He could not even imagine that he would be so lucky. He thought that if he was given the opportunity to buy everything he needed here at once, then he wouldn't have to run around to other stores, and he could spend the remaining time on the wonderful girls around him, to which she just looked at his face and thought what was wrong with this gentleman. The gentleman also remembered that he had a list of purchases that he had to make. She decided to tell him to give it to her so she could see what they might have from this list. She looked and thought that she had something from this list, as well as interest and the ingredients it needed. Looking more closely, she saw that for a thousand you could buy dragon grass far-sighted pig. Looking at all this, she became a little embarrassed. I didn't know what to answer if she had such goods, to which Yuji asked, is there really any problem with all this? In fact, the girl thought that there was nothing here. Yes, you can't get these ingredients on the easternmost continent for one thousand's lotus, and this guy came to them like a clothing store and wants to find something that he might need. Well, at least she thought so, but with training so as not to offend the buyer. She said it was nothing, nothing like that, but she decided to say that she was very sorry. But these ingredients are really very rare. I'm afraid you can't find them in their store. She began to understand that this is how it is. He did not even think that the plant 
which is full of the palace of the apostles, is considered very rare in the human world. And if he had known earlier, he would have taken a couple of hundred. Yes, I would take it with me. The girl saw that this young gentleman had a ring. She couldn't believe that, yes, this is exactly it, that in fact such rings are only given to those who have a big business and something like that. Her eyes seemed to sparkle and she realized that this was a spatial ring inlaid with a high-level magic stone. He said that he would then leave from here, to which she said that Mr. Since let him wait a little, she wants to tell him something. As she came closer, she decided to say that since she had just remembered that it was probably possible to buy things at auctions that he might need, and she didn't expect that there could really be such plants at auctions. To which she said with a smile that, once a year, large auctions are held on the black market for the sale of credit, ranging from ghost slaves to the only military means in the world. To which Yuji thought in his head that she was speaking so directly about these anime, believed that he talked so easily about trading in stolen goods, as if they were some kind of trinkets, she showed the very ticket with which you can get to this meeting. She decided to say that if the gentleman was interested in this, she just had the last entrance ticket, and she could give it to him if he came. And he already realized that it would definitely not be possible to quickly get to the eastern continent. Maybe he could really buy the necessary ingredients at the black market auctions, Yuji thought. Well, he said, well, it would be good for him to know a little more about the black market. That's why he said he needed this ticket. After which she said that she was glad that he agreed, because it's great. His total cost is 100 gold, she said. The auction begins today at 7 hour p.m., after which he decided to leave from here. She also decided to remind him that the auction would take place in the south of the city at the Imperial Horses Tavern. It's better to come during the evening. It was clear that when he finally left the tavern, she immediately turned from a smiling mistress into a rude, insatiable girl who understood that it was beneficial for her, that he would come and screw everything up. After which, when she finally served the last client and told him to come again, she was finally able to exhale and realize that she could finally get ready for the auction. Change your clothes a little and also do yourself a nice hairstyle. She wanted to be a beauty who, perhaps, would find herself some richer groom. Her butler also came to her and said, Miss Linda, why did she come? He swears he's already paid for the roof this month. She just laughed and said, Why did she come? But the point is that she wants to catch the big fish, of course. After which evening came, Yuji thought only one thing, the imperial horse, so it must be somewhere near it. But suddenly, when he heard this, someone walked near him and someone hit him. Well, by accident, of course. Or he hit. He started apologizing to him or her. He didn't know who it was yet. He said he didn't do it on purpose. As soon as this same girl was hurt, she decided to calm down a little. The guards began to calm her down, saying, Is he or she okay? after which one of the guards said that what a cheap guy decided to attack their master. Yuji could not imagine that he could get into such a situation, literally in an instant, a couple of seconds. But he also understood what nonsense this was. He just crashed, and he was immediately so angry. Is this some kind of joke? If so, then it's not funny. After which I saw her. That same gentleman or lady decided to raise his hand and thereby tell them to leave him. They all turned to him. How can it be, Mr. Manny, because he was rude to him with his collision? The gentleman decided to say that it seems that he did not do this on purpose, so let them not be distracted and go. They still should. They shouldn't be late yet. They also all said they are. After which they apologized to him for their rudeness. The boy immediately realized that this voice was definitely hiding under the hood. A beauty with an icy heart. 
After standing for a while, they decided to pay attention to him and said that it was okay, it was their mistake. Next time, let them look around. To which he just looked at them again and realized that, having, she was clearly manipulating, or they were very much sucking up to the master who, in fact, was the mistress. After which they began to leave and Yuji seemed very strange to people. A little later, he was finally able to come to the Imperial Steed Tavern. There were a lot of people there and a lot of different personalities, from the usual dressing up from the waiter who looked like Milady, as well as all sorts of witches dressing up. He even thought for a second, Yuji, that this was actually some kind of masquerade. Here he even managed to drink a little beer. Coming here, he felt as if he was alive. They laughed out loud and said that the variety of beers here were simply excellent, and since the auction hasn't started yet, he'll have another drink. While he was drinking, someone spoke behind him. The gentleman who said, Did they hear, they say, the main lot of today's auction is an amazing thing. Whoever they think will get it. They say that they don't even know that many big people have gathered here today. Do you want this precious one, as well as big people? Really, another person suggested. The one at the next table pointed at him, saying, Damn it, this damned king and he came here for such a precious trinket. But what about the next ones, he said. Look there, at that man in the white robe. This is the damned king, and he's just a stone's throw away from the best magicians. These two. True, they were surprised, because they saw not only him, there was also more. One diamond stand. It's been a long time. Who's even here? To which the other was even more surprised that, is it really going to be something cool today? Yuji, however, didn't understand that it seemed that this auction item had attracted the attention of many people. Also, suddenly you can't see them or two big melons come up, who most likely decided to pay attention to him. Until he felt like some kind of balls, he thought who it could be. Looking closely, he saw that it was her, the one from the counter. She decided to tell him what a good meeting it was, and they saw each other again to which Yuji just laughed. A little drunk, he decided to ask her, Why did she come, little sister? To which she just laughed and said that you can't miss the auction, which is held once a year. She also began to press herself closer to him, trying to get him to pay attention to her as much as possible. It was not in vain that she prepared such forms. She also noticed something else. She wanted him to call her Linda Fruits, although she also asked what his name was. After all, little sister is somehow cold and aloof to call her. The guy decided not to tell her not to bother and just call him Yuji. She immediately realized that it was funny. So quickly I was hooked. Let him wait. The auction will begin and he himself will obediently give her the ring after which she began to play further and told him what Yuji was doing. After all, it seems that everything will begin soon. Let them talk about something quickly and it would be better to eat and tell him everything about the auction. Having laughed, the two began to discuss again and say, Isn't this the old man's precious daughter, Shay? To which they were not even in an unexpected place, but next to her probably some important person again. Another said that's probably true. He doesn't know, but probably. Again, some rich guy just fell for her hook. What a pity, of course, but he himself is to blame. Soon, the auction finally began, which included important personalities. I decided to ask, Linda has so many people at the auction. Aren't they afraid that someone will report this to the authorities? to which she just thought and decided to say, laughing, This auction is being held by an old man, whom not a single person in the city is angry with and would not dare to do anything like that. And yes, at this auction not only do all the punks go for themselves, but they also buy little things. When she finally said this, 
Yuji, the same premier man, came onto the stage and decided to introduce all of them to the unexpected things that can be presented on this wonderful black market at such a charming hour, just once a year. He decided to greet everyone, dear guests. These began to represent it all. All the people who were at this auction were and also knew that this auction, as always, would have top quality items. He decided to imagine that tonight's prisoner in their auction series hoped that they were all eager to go home with their precious items. They also said that time does not wait, and they're starting right now. Well, now right before their eyes there will be something unexpectedly cool, and also a rare, very silent rarity. Raising his hair, he finally said that this was not their first lot, the hand of black magic. This is a very rare artifact, and it even twitched a little. Starting price, 500,000 gold. Goes understood that why this pen, capable only of invoking black magic or cursing others, is considered such a value here. Yes, he immediately realized that if he had taken a few such artifacts from the whole world, which are not so difficult to get, he would already be at the top and the richest official in the world. All these people started raising the bet to 55,000, then to 60,000. Well, the last person also said that it was 70,000 more than the price. She decided to tell you better. Besides looking at this auction, there are many more worthwhile things, even if he rarely goes to the auction. But don't let him miss the opportunity to buy something interesting, too. Yuji said that he had indeed come here after all. In the next one, the object, as well as the jewelry, were sticks or something similar. He himself decided to introduce. How about this? They say this precious hairpin was found in a 1,000-year-old cave, and it's too dark. And I wouldn't want everyone to miss this opportunity to get such an item. And finally, how about this? Ring relic of the Hanging City. The Hanging City immediately says that the soul is not good. In fact, after such words, Yuji really couldn't understand why there was nothing worthy at this auction to which this girl only thought about why he doesn't buy anything. If this continues, the ring will have to be taken away by force. She only got angrier and told him to wait. A little more, because there is one more thing, although it is unrealistically expensive, but he will see how much he can put on such a trinket. At the very last item, they decided to present a very expensive little thing, the director, who was standing behind there, decided to imagine that the time had come for what everyone had been waiting for with such impatience, since, let him present with pride that their next, and also last lot. It is a real treasure from their auction, and not everyone did not understand what it was, but they could not help but admire this object. This very item is an ice jasper slot bracelet. Its initial price is two million to which one of the gentlemen immediately taped it with tape and said that he wanted three million for such a thing and would give him a deal. Other people also decided to bet on it and said that three million five hundred, five million five hundred people want this thing more and more. The girl couldn't even imagine why he was still sitting. Was she really mistaken? This boy Yuji actually has no money, that he wants to take nothing. At that moment, when he saw a really good thing that he could buy for himself, he decided to stand up and say his price. He decided to say what his bet was. His first bet starts at 10 million. At such a price, everyone was in the deepest silence, since they could not imagine such money. The girl could not understand that he was so rich that he could just give away 10 million for this little thing at once. This man began to scold saying that 10 million times 10 million is two. Everyone began to admire and also be surprised. Where does he get so much money from? 10 million zelotus is too much. The boy decided to say that 10 million is three. If no one bids higher now, he will close the deal and the item will be his. Still, he couldn't understand that Yuji was more accurate. This young gentleman wanted to bet 10 million and he decided to ask again if he really wanted to bet that amount. 
To which Yuji only agreed that yes, that's exactly what he wants to pay 10 million for such an item. While he stood and waited for him to finally come to his senses and finally make this bet, they decided to think. All of them, these people who looked at this guy who offered 10 million, said that this guy didn't seem like a major. Then where does he not have so much money if he decided to bid at the old man's auction? Without money, cabbage soup is worse than the sun. He will no longer see it, they thought. He decided to say, okay, let him think because then 10 million times, 10 million too, after which another person decided to offer 30 million for one. All the people were incredibly surprised, because 30 million, oh my God, they are also raising the stakes. The girl said it was great. After all, even if he doesn't receive the ring of emptiness, this race will valuable provide him and daddy with a round sum. And he already decided to ask again what it was, something the security guard who had just offered 30 million, well, he decided a little with him. Having looked at them, he decided to think that it seemed that they also came to the auction with a bracelet and a lotus. The boy understood, after which he said that it was a pity for his time. He doesn't really have that much. Therefore, he said that he would not delay with the price. You decide to imagine what 30 million wants, and this is a spatial ring. It was clear that 30 million was also a spatial ring that was highly valued. All the people were in extreme shock as they thought he was crazy. Just crazy. Millions is also the same S-class spatial ring, and it is also inlaid with a top-level magic stone. The manager immediately raised his hand and said 30 million times. When he presented this, the guard decided to ask what they would do, asking the overlord how they would continue to raise the price. To which she said that it was not necessary. Even if the enemy doesn't look like the people here at all, most likely he, like them, learned the real value of the shaman's bracelet and lotus. If he calmly names such a price, it means that he definitely has the means to increase it. She decided to say what was best. Let them wait and see how events develop further. To which, at this very competition, he said that there is. The manager said that he finally shook hands, congratulating the gentleman who, for 30 million and an S-class void ring, received the main treasure of today's auction. And he also said that, a little later he asks, some formalities need to be settled on stage. The girl was so glad that such big money came to her. I'm too fast a money tornado somehow. She was very glad that Yuji, he probably doesn't know how to get backstage. She decided to show him how to get there. He decided to tell her not to bother. Linda, he, he doesn't need to rush. It will fit, for example, right on stage. The girl just told him to wait. After all, you can't just climb over all these little fences here. After all, this is not cultural. Coming closer, he said that all 30 million are in this ring. Let them check it out. To which they said that, okay, they can, of course, check it all. She started shouting something, what he couldn't pay attention to and decided to ask me again what she said there. He can't hear from here. The girl just thought that there was one important rule at this auction. If buyers step onto the stage without permission, this is regarded as a violation of the rules. And it turns out that the person who committed such a violation, the buyer not only must pay for all the higher price lots at the auction, but also him. Any person in the hall can take away what this offender has acquired. After which all these people decided to attack him in order to take this item for themselves. They all started attacking him because he broke the rules, and now they can easily get his money without any reason. A little later, they slowly began to attack this very treasure. One of the men decided to tell the damned king of Zeus that he would outpace them and would be able to take this gem for himself. He decided to say that this jasper bracelet would soon be his. They couldn't believe that this could happen. Approaching a little closer, he decided to tell the combat vehicle the military were also here. 
This same man in the white cloak did not expect that he would be covered in ice, or rather his legs, and he would not be able to pick him up. There is no way these gems are like the king too durable which this girl created. The lady was able to freeze any person who observed this precious item that she hunted so hard for, and she understood that he was, in fact, much more valuable than an ordinary person could imagine. After which I decided to pull off your hood so that I could finally show myself, since there was no one around. After all, they are all frozen in ice and will unfreeze only after she leaves here. As she came closer, she was really delighted that the boy had decided to spend so much money on such a precious stone. But she also thought that it would not be difficult for her to take this very precious stone right now. In fact, she was Milana Isis, one of the best mages of the empire. People call her Ice Lady, a warrior girl. As she got closer, she began to collect this precious item. But suddenly, when she was collecting, someone grabbed her hand, and she did not understand who it could be. Well, this same gentleman said it. Although she, Miss, is very beautiful, but he can't just give it away. It's already the object of some beauty. He said that taking other people's things is wrong. The girl could not understand what was the matter, why the ice blocks had no effect on him. He should have been frozen like everyone else, but instead he moves around with no problem and poses no threat. Just being here, when did he manage to hide? To Missa, she takes someone else's thing, and even without suspicion, it's not polite, in fact, and he decided to punish, and just a little, so that she would understand that taking someone else's property is very bad. After that, she decided to pull her hand out of his hands and also look at him with a dirty look. He decided to say that Mr. Leed is very strong there, so let him collect, as well as Lotus, and leave. She only now realized that he took away this Yasham bracelet so quickly. The guy decided to say that it was so hard for him to get this ice bracelet that could take his magic to a new level. The girl told him that she would not let him go so easily with this precious amulet. Therefore, right now, she wants to make it so that he no longer cares about such an amulet as he did and just obediently gave this jewel to her. They all couldn't believe that this was an ice prison. Most likely, she will now beat everyone who is in the area. Therefore, they wanted to get away from here as quickly as possible. Linda realized, what the hell? After such an icy prison, she will have problems. All those who wanted to escape from here realized that the exit was blocked, and now they could not escape. Right now, in front of these planes, everything was clearing up, like the entire ice pipe was covered with ice. And it was quite terrible to watch such atrocities on her part. But still, she didn't kill anyone or anything like that. She simply decided to lock everyone here so that whoever left with her item would not be able to get out of here. The girl decided to say that only a couple of minutes, and he would never be able to leave here until he obediently gave this item to her. As soon as he turned around, he said, Ho, 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 is this really true or what? The guy standing behind just thought that how is this possible when this sword of his managed to fall into his hands, to which he said that let him give him the sword for a while. The diamond stand decided to say to Yuji, does he really count on this rusty sword that won't do anything to them? After which he decided to make a sound wave under Yuji himself, hitting right under him. Having done this, he only smiled more at what this giant was trying to do. He wishes he could just get out of here. Don't let him make Yuji laugh. He said the first level of the seal, let it open. After that, he decided to spin around and use this very sword to defeat him. At the very moment he decided to strike, he flew very far to the side, right into a wall of stone, which, by the way, destroyed this very ice. All the people could not believe that they were able to defrost this ice so quickly, and not even by some ability, but simply by someone throwing some giant into the wall 
and in this way he was able to cut this very ice. And Linda couldn't believe it. Who the hell is Yuji? Since he has 100 years of powerful techniques, he can most likely defeat any opponent with any probability. Yuji said, Guys, he's in a hurry, so let them hurry up and attack him. Either they attack all at once or else he leaves right now, or it will take a long time for him to leave one by one. But what of such a statement? They were all surprised and realized that even if they attacked seven times, most likely he would cope. They will only get some injuries from this, and they will also not be able to get up from here, and they don't even know what to do in such a situation. So who made exactly this ice prison? She was wary of such words from him. She did not know whether he was bluffing or not. Therefore, I decided to attack alone and point a bunch of ice pins at him in order to pierce him thoroughly so that he would not confess. The girl decided to tell him that she only needed a yam bracelet. But he can keep the ice lotus for himself, and that's all. To which he said that let her forgive him, of course, but he would take both the bracelet and the lotus. She decided to threaten him, but apparently realized that he was either a fool, a fool, or not bluffing, and yet he was so strong. But she only thought about the first option. She also told him that she was giving him one last chance, and that he should give her this ice amulet immediately. To which he thought for a moment and said, That no, it won't do anyway. He refuses such an offer. On the contrary, let him finish quickly, and then he will be able to return home faster than he planned. She didn't understand why he didn't think so much about himself and thought that everything would go according to plan. He really is a fool, she thought. Then nothing can be done, she said. Even if he is offended or not, she will take him by force. Smiling, she already understood that now it would be fun. After all, he can cut all these icicles in just one fell swoop, absorb the energy while all these ice pins flew at him to pierce him. She might not have previously understood why he could talk so carelessly about such a situation. She also thought that this technique, as well as the example, is painless in the fight against him, but she must achieve her goal because she just wants to barricade all his lips, that's all. The girl could not understand what it was. All these hunters also couldn't simply explain why he was able to easily overcome all these icicles, even though they were flying at him at such high speed. How did this happen? They just didn't know what to do if he suddenly wanted to beat them. In fact, he was having fun playing with all this, but he understood that he was really in a hurry and he needed to get to the hotel as soon as possible since most likely the master would complain about him and call him a pervert since he had been delayed for a very long time. The girl was able to understand that he really was not a fool, and she would have to use techniques that would most likely harm him and maybe even kill him. She decided to use the icy deathly hallows. Having used them, all these shortness of breath began to rapidly fall on him like rain of ice. Of course, the usually large icicle also fell on him, to which they only said that the ribbons go from the soul, an ice amulet, that person must have hidden it in his other spatial ring, to which this guard said that there is and he will fulfill it, of course, right now. The boy just said that he really put the ice amulet into the spatial ring, but, in fact, he decided to ask her if she really thought that this could really defeat him. In fact, he didn't just wait until she ordered him to move somewhere far away the day before. The girl couldn't believe how quickly he was able to return right behind her. Turning around, she couldn't even imagine it. He decided to clarify the whole situation a little by saying that she had made a mistake in him and would most likely pay for it. She didn't understand what the animal was thinking, that she didn't expect that he could save so quickly and in general she didn't understand how an ordinary person could move so quickly to avoid such blows. To which Yuji said that, oh well, she reprimanded her for storage so loudly, even a deaf person would have heard it, so he would have been able to leave there without any problems. 
but he also couldn't help but notice, even more so, that a huge piece of ice surrounded by an aura of icy air would not be able to hide such a thing, and it seems that Miss has not yet mastered artificially and hidden attacks. She decided to look him in the eye a little and said that he would pay for not giving her the precious item so easily. To which Yuji just laughed a little and said that whether she was confident in her words and that she wanted to continue this battle was pointless. After all, after he decided to turn directly to her quickly, she didn't even see that the clothes weren't torn and right now she would be without all her underwear and would be completely naked and how disgusting it was and the reception, but still, it was working. Yuji understood that with just the little speed he had mastered, as well as a couple of swings and a sword, he could easily recreate such a ridiculous show. Of course, she was a little unhappy about this, but it was good for him because finally she would be able to get behind him. All the guards, as well as other people who looked at her almost naked. Or maybe, even in this, they only looked at her and admired her beauty. The girl could not believe that she would be so disgraced in front of everyone and simply could not yet think about how this was even possible. The guard who was leaving said that these are the lords, here are her cloaks, and let her dress in it, throwing it on him. And he couldn't believe that he was so fast and could accomplish such an act. She realized that at that moment he committed this crime. The girl immediately realized that this man was not just some ragamuffin who just wanted to show off his abilities. Also, this person is most likely incredible. He thought, she said. Yuji only insisted that there was someone else who wanted to take the Jasper and Bracelet, or the Ice Lotus. He decided to immediately introduce these people, because if not, then he could easily leave here now. They all just shouted and said that no, no, there were no people who wanted to compete with him. Therefore, they said that he could calmly go wherever he wanted. The guard didn't understand what the Lord of Manan needed, whether to follow him, and also to hire several more people to capture him, because he doesn't even know that I couldn't handle it. To which she said that it's not worth it. But the guard asked, Is there really nothing to be done? She said she just realized something, this person. He really is too strong, and she also knows that he only needed another second to destroy her, but he didn't. Therefore, this guy immediately became incredibly strong, and he only hides his power so as not to harm anyone here. And he could easily cut through any ice that she creates, so he once again proves that he cannot be on their level. He is much higher than all of them. I decided to break up all the ice here in the same way and realized that now they could all come out of here. Yuji wanted to thank Linda as well for today. And by the way, yes, he can ask her to help him return this sword to that person. To which she said that of course she would help him return to that person, laughing in front of him. Yuji also couldn't understand what else Linda really was, why she interrupted him, and what he really meant. Laughing at her reaction, he decided to say that it was indeed better to have his hair tied up than now when it was loose, to which she became embarrassed at such a question, and could not believe that he decided to ask exactly such a question. The guy decided to finally say goodbye to everyone. He told them that, okay, he had to go, and he went. And Linda also said that, then let him not forget, come in one more time, and for him she will leave all the materials on the list. All ordinary people could not imagine that this could happen. What is this anyway, they thought? Where is he as well as their heartless beauty, Linda? Now it seems to be split into two. This guy decided to approach the tape and said that really, Miss Linda, what kind of guy is this and where did he come from anyway? To which she just laughed and said that whoever he could be, do you think? Yes. So, she decided to tell them that this guy is so handsome and so rich, and also such a cool guy, of course. This is her future husband. She decided to scream, whether in this life or the next. And even in her next life, 
she will definitely only marry him. At this very moment I began to sneeze three times in a row. He even thought they were remembering him, but he also wondered what teacher Sarah was thinking about. He needs to return home as soon as possible, since, most likely, he will receive deep tool from her, and also from Siffy, who is most likely worried about where he went. Having approached a little further, he still did not know that he could linger for so long. Damn it, he thought. He didn't think she was so stubborn. We need to teach her a lesson. Let him know how long he needs to stay there. And closer he heard these words precisely from this hairpin. He saw some guys beating some boy or girl. He couldn't fully find out but he understood that most likely this someone was clearly in danger and most likely he would be out of sight until the morning, or maybe he wouldn't survive. Who knows? Some guy started lashing out with some things, saying that he doesn't want it in a good way, then let it be in a bad way. When he started to swing, Yuji came over and said, Hey, let him treat the ladies like that. What kind of idiot is he really? He really brought anger to the shores of himself, and of course, he thought that it would be better to teach them a lesson, which this guy doesn't do. Understood who he was, since he came here without any knowledge. They all told him not to stick his nose where it was not needed, because even if he approached them, he should already pay for it. They also told him that if he left now, they would kill him. After such words, he realized that they were definitely not good people. Therefore, you shouldn't hold back, and you can just hit them a little on the back or on the butt so that they understand that doing this is bad. Those who took this lass and overturned this same old man, he was able to bring down several layers of stones from which he could not realistically suffer from such a blow. He became a good example for them all to evaluate the situation and understand that they should not all become arrogant and, moreover, fight with him. Yuji began to grin a little and also mock those who really thought that they could defeat him so easily. So, he decided to ask them again what they were saying about him. The wind was too strong, he no longer heard. Having looked at each other, they only realized that having laughed so much that they had just been talking there to something else, he said that, It's getting dark. It's time for them to leave. Otherwise, they won't rush into the darkness at the scoundrels who are there and will trouble. To which they said, Nothing. He didn't say that he should say yes. In general, they were very scared of this man and ran away from here as a whole crowd, away from him. You see, Speaking with words is true. Well, in short, they rolled out of here and met. I hope not to meet again. Finally, she became quiet and she decided to approach this lady. In fact, he was worried about her, since he had seen her from the very beginning. He said that at the cross, they left. How did she end up in such a situation? After which he immediately saw this face and realized that this was the most familiar one he had met a long time ago. How did she end up here, he thought. Quite a lot of time passed, and they began to worry about Yuji. Where did he go? So much time was requested, it has passed, and Yuji has not returned yet. Has something really happened to him? They still decided that something had been missing from him for a long time. Therefore, they decided to look for him, to which Silpha Risha agreed, since she did not know where the southern master could have disappeared for so long. But suddenly they were about to leave when they heard a knock on the door. Opening the door, she saw Yuji, as well as some girl who was not in the best condition. Now she realized that it was most likely Agi. They finally sat down to eat. Apparently she was hungry. Once I've eaten it, it's all quick. They decided to ask her what happened then and where Alice had gone, to which she said that, more precisely, she suddenly said that she was taking this break from her studies and would return home a little later. And also, from the moment she left, she has not been able to contact her in any way. And so she thinks that she definitely got into some trouble and came to tell the teacher. Saria and Yuji can they help her? 
they will go to her house and look for her. She couldn't believe it because before she left her studies, something unusual happened, except that, no, something clearly happened. She said goodbye with such a face at that moment. What is unusual, sad, she said goodbye to him very much, since she was really very depressed at that moment and did not even come to say goodbye to them when they got into the carriage. That very day, the next morning, they immediately decided to take a carriage for themselves. Yuji could not even imagine that Master Sarah had finally prepared a potion and let her drink it on the way back to the academy. Having handed over this item to her, he decided to say that, of course, it would not be possible to completely restore magical powers instantly, but the speed of recovery would clearly increase from this effect, to which she said that it was a pity that she had to go and report the death of the assessor. It's not that she wanted to go with him, but to investigate at Alice's house. But still, Dana said that he was sure that he should go with Agi, to which he decided to ask, What's wrong with this and if they go together? She looked at her and said that in their current situation, they needed to stay away from the three great families and the people associated with them. Of course, this could be a coincidence, but still. Her full name, Agi Isis, is the same as the general's family and she is afraid that there may be some consequences after this. Yuji couldn't even imagine that this could be the case, but he understood that even if Agi was one of the general's people, it still didn't change the fact that she was his trusted friend. And precisely because of this fact, he will not just leave her to the mercy of fate and tell her that he does not want to be friends with her, simply because her family has a very big magician who can interfere with him. Dana understood that in fact, again, she was a very good person, so she would not have done such a thing, and said that she knew so, because he would say, Okay, well, she needs to come back. Let them be. Be careful along the way with her. After which they finally began to go on a journey. She immediately began to either sleep or call Yuji to rinse her. It was really strange. Why was she lying down like that right here? Well, okay then and he clearly understood that he really wanted to take back the words spoken earlier, that he would be able to ride with her somewhere with her. Yuji also understood that she had come a long way from school to find them. So he remembered that when he said, how did she end up here? As soon as Agi raised her head and looked him straight in the eyes, he immediately realized that she was really unhappy, looking for them all, and did not understand how it happened that she had reached such a state during this time. At that moment she cried a lot and did not know how to justify her feelings for him. She climbed up and began to rejoice that she was finally able to find Yuji, albeit under such circumstances. He couldn't imagine why she was alone, whether she was okay or not injured, to which she immediately realized that it was Yuji after all and she shouldn't behave like that. Therefore, when she went down, she understood everything that she had to do now. Turning back, and also bursting from his arms, she decided to be a little embarrassed in the other direction, while Yuji did not understand what was happening here. Aji decided to say that she was fine, just very worried, and she also had one very important matter that she needed to tell Teacher Dana about. <laughs> she decided to ask Yuji to quickly take her to her. They need to see each other today. What Yuji might not have noticed was that, most likely, those guys were actually mocking her, judging by these wounds, and he realized that fools like them should not even be in a city like this. Yuji decided to talk to her and tell her to feel good, and also that she worked hard since she finally found them. In fact, Yuji was very glad that he found it at that moment when she was alive and everything was fine with her, since he could not imagine what would have happened if he had not come to her and noticed. After all, he still always felt sorry for her and everyone who was in that academy, so he told her to get a good night's sleep today. Also. A couple of days later, the Western Empire, finally, 
They arrived here and right now, and gentlemen, this is the estate of Merlin Lawrence, introduced by one of the chairmen, as well as those people who represented cottages like this one. True, it was abandoned, but still. The girl decided to ask if this was definitely the Lawrence estate. Did they really take a wrong turn here or somewhere, to which he said the butler that there could be no mistake, this house definitely belonged to the Lawrence family. But he said that it was the Lawrence family that had completely disappeared about ten years ago, and the estate was empty and even had a few spiders, which is why it looks like this. And yet, after some time, no one appeared inside the estate for a long time. The girl couldn't believe that they looked up and down. And here it's true. As if no one had been there for a long time, it's not obvious that the address of Alice's family is this place. She also noticed some kind of picture and some kind of sound. Coming closer, she was able to better see the frame in this very picture that stands behind this fabric. The girl and the guy carefully saw what it was. The portrait is most likely Alice's father and mother. After looking carefully at this picture, Yuji realized that he didn't know one thing, whether it was possible to say for sure that the woman in the portrait was not Alice. Yuji could also assume that Alice really moved, but why is there still an old address in the archive? There is only one option left. They will stay here for a couple of days and suddenly they will be able to find out something more, what happened to the Lorenz family estate. The girl said that if they already stayed here, then they started talking about Alice. However, before leaving, Alice asked her for one thing, as well as one thing, to which Yuji asked her what she wanted then and asked for, after which she began to get something. Remembering this, she took out the box and said that she asked her to give this box to Yuji, after which they finally decided to go to the bar and relax, and also have a little snack. Having finally started to look at what could be in this such a box, she realized that Alice had asked him to give him this ring. Eugia understood that the design on the ring, despite the fact that it belonged to the Lawrence family, was whose it was. The girl said that they can't even imagine it to you, because they came to the master cities to find out, but no one had met this chosen one before. Also, the girl who stood behind the bar said that, Oh, isn't this a ring with the Count's family coat of arms, to which they were a little surprised and could not understand what she meant. She decided to say that the owner of this ring, Count Theodore, is a very elegant aristocrat. And she also remembers how wonderful it was that second when he entered their tavern to try their luxurious beer. She also said that even though at that moment she was just packing the lost man with lilies, this did not prevent her from clearly seeing this same ring on his hand. They decided to look at each other and realized that this was not their great chance to find that same count and ask about this ring and whether it really belonged to him. She decided to say that he had his eyes on Lily, not her, and she was so jealous of her that she wanted to kill her. And she decided to ask Yuji if he really thought that Alice's mother's name was Lilis to which he said, that's for sure. I decided to ask her, mentioning that same Lily. Was it really the same Lily that had disappeared from the Lawrence estate to which she said yes, but she didn't think at all that she had disappeared somewhere? She said that she probably ran away with a bullfighter who fell in love at first sight and decided to have a child with her. And they also know how difficult it is for a single woman to raise a child without a husband. She said that perhaps this is so, but where is this Count Theodore now, he decided to ask her. She decided to think about such a question, because she didn't remember it right away. Although his possession somewhere in the east of the empire in Nona or something, in fact, quite far from here actually seemed to her. After which one of the gentlemen asked her if she would serve him beer to him, to which she replied that she would serve him well now. After she realized that they heard this, she decided to ask them, they are not going to go there right, because lately in the southeast of the empire there have been a lot of demons, to which someone said that same guy, where is his beer? 
She turned around sharply and said that she was already carrying it. While the girl said the demons were divorced, Yuji only remembered why they were returning to the issue of motion sickness while traveling. Eh? So the girl decided to ask what they would do now, to which Yuji, only after thinking, realized that most likely the best solution would be nothing. But the girl interrupted Yuji and said that let him teach her to vent her anger. After all, she is really interested in this art of technology, if indeed with demons her skills and techniques are not enough for anything, so she wants to become a little stronger so as not to become a burden for him, but she wants to find Alice with him, so let him teach her. Yuji just thought and said that taking out anger, what kind of technique is this? She decided to explain that her anger and the operation on magic bestowed by her nature are not at all the same thing. This is the internal energy that appears in the process of cultivating the combination of her natural shirts can be rescued with the help of a huge volume, to which Yuji only realized that this is how it is arranged under nodding to her. She also decided to say that he should stand on the table because doesn't he know what it means to vent his anger? Did he defeat Kyle without using these techniques? But of course he's a fool, but it's funny that he was able to do it without it. She said that his natural magic is beyond his control. Yuji just said that, oh, he didn't ask her anything. To which she said that she had answered everything, so let him teach her to vent her anger. Yuji did not understand, after all, what she meant there. Even, listen, he understood her. That, okay, he'll try somehow. Meanwhile, at Aces's house, it was a complete mess, and of course, Sarah could not find what she was looking for. Apart from the hellfire, everything else, one hundred each, had to be collected and stored somewhere here. But for some reason, she can't find it so easily. She didn't understand because someone violated the ban and took everything away. Dana thought that in this case it is especially impossible to allow people to find out about the death of aces, otherwise the empire would be in serious danger. So, taking a deep breath, she realized that there was nothing she could do now. And she also decided to pull out this very elixir that Yuji gave her. She realized that very soon there would be a championship of five schools. Little did she know that it would be interesting if these two managed to find Alice and bring her back here. Meanwhile, they finally set off, further and further in search of her. Something forbidden to the male eye was clearly happening in this carriage. After all, it was unclear what could be going on there. She said it was forbidden to go there. He said that what was wrong with her then, he should definitely try this after which he began to pull up to straighten this very back. The girl looked at him with such a look as if he had clearly done something forbidden with her, after which she decided to hit him so that he would not relax, to which Yuji became even more angry and said that he was actually helping her, awakening anger from the outside, and she was hurting him. What the hell? Even after that, she just started laughing and rumble very hard, telling him to excuse her, she simply couldn't stand it, it was too ticklish, and continued to laugh. After which, he saw Sylphie standing there, and he did not expect this, and told her to help him deal with her. She said that she doesn't see or hear anything, so she doesn't know anything. To which the gentleman said that, what the hell, he should go and cope alone, after which she turned away. After thinking a little, he decided to ask her again whether she wants him to help her, in the end, or not. To which she replied that, of course, she would. Let him try again. To which, by the way, the old man who was driving the cart realized that this guy clearly had a fiery character. He had plenty of strength. After which they finally arrived two weeks later in Nonoi. The girl could not believe that this was the city center of Nyuni. In fact, there was a rough silence here, in which nothing happened, and it was very quiet, as if it was a real ghost town. Although there were people passing by, they were all not talkative and just went about their business, and it was quite creepy, in her opinion. One of the adventurers, 
or some people, simply noticed the carriage and could not understand since when people started driving around in such carriages. The girl decided to tell him that maybe they had the wrong address. Does Alice really live in such an old place? To which Yujia just thought and said that the driver could not have made a mistake, but here even the most ordinary shops are closed, and all this is very strange. In fact, it seemed to Yuji. He also might not understand why there was noise ahead. Let him stop and they'll find out what's going on. Having driven a little closer, they were finally able to arrive at the Adventurer's Guild. There were quite a lot of people here, and they were all either magicians or swordsmen. Well, typical adventurers, in principle, thought Yuji and the girl. She decided to ask this Adventurer's Guild. It turns out there are so many people. But she also noticed that in order to approach, she decided to ask something from this very guild. There is some count here named Theodore. To which she replied that there is. But why are they looking for Count Theodore? The girl wanted to say that in truth, they are looking. After which Yuji closed her mouth and said, the boy told her to wait, please. After all, they will go away for a few words to talk. Stepping back, he decided to tell her that she should think for herself. If Alice's mom really married Theodore, but the horse people think she disappeared, then she didn't want people to know where she was. To which she realized that he was closing her mouth, so simply. She was just about to ask if Alice was here. After which it dawned on her that you were right, so you can't ask directly. Therefore, coming closer, he laughed and decided to tell her this situation. In fact, they found Count Theodore's family ring on the road. So they wanted to return it, and at the same time, could they get some kind of reward for it? To which the girl only confirmed that it was so. Yuji also decided to say, Well, this Count is living with you now. To which she said, that's how it is. She decided to say that his castle is far away in the suburbs. To get there you need to overcome the forest. But no. Also, only something strange has been going on in them lately. I thought, okay. And also decided to tell them that they shouldn't go there right now, even if they wanted to. But if they still decide to go there, she will not beg them to stay, since this is their business. Aggie, however, did not expect that there were demons there. To which she said that it is so. Six months ago, the number of animals here became much larger, and then rumors spread about the appearance of demons, and only recently their traces were actually discovered. Yuji decided to ask her if it was really true that the Adventurer's Guild were demon hunters hired by Count Theodore. To which she said, Although these are the lands of the Count, he did not react at all to the appearance of demons. So this time the reward was announced by the Imperial Society of Adventurers themselves. They understood that this meant that they would actually be rich. After all, she said that whoever killed one monster could get five million. These two immediately got their eyes wide open, and they realized that this was a real money grab. Yuji immediately understood why only adventurers were here, and he also realized that there is a game. Now Alice's stepfather, he can cleanse his possessions of demons, and at the same time receive a tidy sum. And I also wonder if he raised Alice to marry her, laughing. He realized that this was beneficial to him. Agi decided to ask him, but weren't all the demons destroyed a long time ago? Why did they appear again? To which she said that they themselves did not know why this happened. And anyway, what's going on here? But she understood one thing. The detachment of 100 hunters who left today had not yet returned. She understood that he remembers, even before this human civilization, people and demons existed peacefully for quite a long time. But for some reason, war broke out. So the story goes that the 15th Apostle Arma and the 19th Apostle Capasus eventually led in a confrontation between the defenders of people and the supporters of demons. In truth, the battles were over, 
but no one saw either the Arma or the Copas again. Demons also didn't appear in the field of view of people. I already realized that if these two had not fought so clearly, then humanity would not have to be so afraid of the apostles, and it's still unclear what's going on in the forest, also in the forest of Nonia. These same group of adventurers are how they arrived here. They all tried to run away from these. Where exactly? Because they understood that they most likely would not cope with them. One thing was clear. They were clearly weak. All these creatures, as well as the people who were there, were surrounded by those same demons. These people and adventurers were begging for mercy and did not want them to be killed in these places. But one thing was clear. They clearly could not survive here. After all, everything that happened here was a real nightmare. Yuji decided to ask the lady. She did say that she sent a hundred brave men to hunt for demons. This means that there really are a lot of demons there. To which she replied that, no, not really. In fact, there is only one demon there, a werewolf, but he is so strong that it takes an obvious bunch of hunters to shorten him. The boy also realized that a werewolf was a thing. Isn't that something that can be resolved in just a couple of blows to the sword? To which she was surprised and could not understand that a couple of sword strikes were so much. He's confident, she thought about the guy. But really, looking at him, you can't tell that he's some ordinary guy. Although it looks like it, he smiles too much. But Yuji also stated that they, gold-level adventurers or higher, couldn't handle him. Since that was the case, he decided to show off his silver badge. Or rather, even if he is iron and said that this is only at the iron level. But still, can he take this task? To which she looked at him and didn't know what to answer. All the remaining adventurers just laughed at him. After all, it's not for nothing that I graduated from the boy, but he only has an iron rank. Fuck it. She decided to say that this werewolf is very bloodthirsty, and his movements are lightning fast. They say he has shadow magic. He even kills gold-level hunters. Playing. I'm afraid that he won't be able to cope with it, as well as with their iron-clad raiding. Yuji began to understand and thought what kind of werewolf this was. Then such a turn. Aren't those demons with stupid heads and slightly developed limbs like them gone missing for a while and upgraded all the way to shadow magic? After which some man in a raincoat approached the boy and told this guy he was looking at him and didn't understand what was happening at all. It's better to let him take his girlfriend and go back to where they came from. To which he just laughed. But the girl said that she was his girlfriend. She looked so much like him. What he said was that he laughed. What? How shy? Since he reacts to it this way. She decided to say that even if he was preoccupied or seemed to not know what they were talking about, this werewolf was really strong. Maybe they should change the route after all, she told Yuji. Well, in response, he just said that it's unlikely. After all, it's too early to relax. Even if he really has mastery of shadow magic, it still doesn't mean it won't last for a few minutes. So he said that since they knew where the Count's castle was, it was really time for them to go. They also thanked us for the welcome, to which the girl said that, of course, that's what she does here. After which they went into the forest together, and the girl decided to ask Yuji if maybe they would return tomorrow, or it's either too late to be here. Why should they go now? And in general, if something happens, no one will find them here. After which someone was returning in the bushes, and so she decided to ask who was there in the bushes. After which a rabbit crawls out, all six from the heart. She realized that she had only made a mistake. After all, she realized that it was just a hair. But she clearly didn't expect that it was because of this hair that she lost her vigilance, and right now she is being hunted by wolves. Of course, when he was flying, Yuji was able to notice him, and of course, he wanted to help his sister, after which he began to kick him with his feet so that he would fly away from here.
In fact, it was not even a wolf, but a panther, who forgot something here. But still she is here to devour hunters or adventurers. And it was also clear that this was the same shadow magical technique. After all, it's just magic that is capable of creating similar creatures that are now in their glory. That is, a werewolf. Agi decided to ask Yuji what the hell that was, to which he said that only demon could create such a black panther. After that, several more of the same black panthers, which were created from the werewolf monster, were not heard. The guy didn't understand what the joke was and why Agi was screaming like crazy now. Right now, he just sees a bunch of shadows in front of him, which can be kicked with any weapons or hands. But he also saw the very werewolf who spoke. He didn't think they could handle an opponent like the Shadow Panther. This same werewolf got angry and said that, what is it, who recognizes his Black Panther? After which there were more and more of them, and it was as if they were created instantly. The werewolf decided to tell them that he would see that he was not bad. So it's better to let him join them, and the time will come when he will conquer the entire continent and can save his life as well as his girls. It turns out they want to conquer the entire continent, to which Agi said that it seems that's what he said. In fact, he was furious that he was repeating his words and in general he decided to say what these two were even doing, they generally listened to him, to which Yuji only drew attention and said that he, it seems, he cannot join, since he, in general, relates to people and does not really suit him. And he cannot allow him to conquer the entire continent since he lives here. I quite like the way things are going now. The werewolf just laughed loudly and said that he, the little man, was really a very interesting creature and really thought that the two of them could stop him. It seemed funny to him. He only proved once again that if they wanted to know that the entire group of hunters sent in the morning had already been destroyed, and therefore when he destroyed them one by one, he was only glad that new ones would come, who would most likely dream of him. But apparently he was wrong. Yuji, Alyosha praised him, saying, So what? Well done. Let him go take a cucumber from the shelf and what next? This joke clearly angered her, and he only began to get angrier at him. He said that how dare he laugh at him, he will be the founder of a new world, as well as a continent that he cannot understand. A pitiful person, so he finally decided that an ill-mannered person like him would not even become his servant, and he would kill them on the spot after which he decided to send a bunch of panthers at them all, who really wanted to tear him to shreds. Yuji only understood that Agi, let her go forward now, would cope with them, to which she finally realized that she was not useless. See, her time has finally come and she's in business. The werewolf didn't understand what this strange feeling was. Wasn't this girl scared out of her wits? after which she began to concentrate her attention on the weapon, as well as the environment that the creatures now live around her. Then she suddenly opened her eyes and calmly and realized that now she was in concentration and could defeat any enemy who would now attack her. Because of which, of course, I decided to throw everything away and start chopping up the panther. The werewolf could not expect this, since she was able to cut down a bunch of panthers at once. It was something incredible for him. After all, he is usually used to the fact that females are weak creatures and cannot fight like that. But he was apparently mistaken about people. Having caught her breath, she said that, well, that's all. No wonder it pretended to be terribly scared for so long. She was only pretending in order to use the very energy that she herself told her, that same terrible energy. I didn't understand what she meant but I understood one thing. She is too strong, and also realized that this is what they wanted, to lure him out of herself, as well as with her acting. It's coming, he said. That's exactly how it is. Did he really see through them? Oh, what a shame. He just laughed and said, yes, how dare they? 
even if it turns out that from the very beginning they wanted to play a prank on him in order to lure him out. But of course they are fools. He said that of course they are fools, but this is a smart act, on the other hand. Yuji decided to say that in fact, from the very beginning, it was they who, on the way here, figured out how to trick him so that he would fall into their hands. He also understood that if they dealt with him, then not only would they receive a tidy sum, but Alice's father could also marry her off to him. To which Agi said that, let him only dream about it. The werewolf was only angry that they were arrogant people, trying to kill him for the sake of some kind of reward, as well as the girls who wanted to woo him. This sounded stupid to him, but he said that, well, they have manners, of course. But having laughed, he decided to say that even if they want to deal with him, that's all. Okay, but it's too much to deceive him. After which, in his thoughts, he will think that if they had agreed to join him, he might still have spared them. But it's a pity to admit that his proposal is no longer valid. After which he decided to attack them and said that bloody little people let them all die on the spot. After that, Yuji decided to inflict the simplest blow on him so that he could simply fly away somewhere far away so that he would understand how much of a difference they have in strength. He couldn't even imagine that this kid was so strong and he didn't understand what the hell this was. Yuji decided to remind Agi to let her understand a little more. He still needed to ask him something, to which she said that, okay, it would be better to let him try. The werewolf just laughed and said that he understood everything that they wanted from him. He immediately understood the situation and said that they deliberately angered him to find his weak point, right? Well, in that case, he said that he no longer thought that they were so smart but now he definitely wouldn't let them live. After which I decided to make my own shadow magic in order to immediately activate it and show my power to these commoners. He began to cast a spell to cover my paws around the darkness. To open the radiance within, you just need to defeat its enemy. She said it was some kind of nonsense. But what else is this anyway? Yujia decided to assume that most likely this was shadow magic from beyond the grave of the world. It's strange that he even exists here. So he decided to ask who he was and who taught him this. To which he is did not answer and wanted to attack her, saying that he laughed and said that he wanted to find out who he was. Let him first go down to hell and find out for himself. When he tried to hit Yuji, of course it was slow for someone like him, and he just dodged it and said that in principle. Why not? But, true, it will be quite difficult to return. And he also began to dodge over there and realized that he was really too slow, like for a werewolf. Yuji also noticed that there is one annoying guy there who, while he was saying this, change your stance and also attack him from above. Then he hit the ground across the entire radius, from which the soil began to loosen a little, so to speak, outwards. The werewolf could not even imagine what it was. He hasn't even touched him, and he can't continue to fight him at this rate. He understood only one thing. This boy was definitely unusual, and Yuji decided to say that this is what he was thinking. It would be better if he asked him instead of going there like that. Volchara just laughed again and said that he should force him to answer his questions. But when Yuji didn't answer his questions, is that really fair? To which he looked at him and realized that, well, if that's the case, then fine. Taking out his sword Excalibur along with the spirit, he decided to show him his strength, and yet overcome him and also tell him that. Since he doesn't want to do it in a good way, he will have to do it in a bad way. After which he decided to cut it into two halves. Well, how to say, in two halves. In fact, it was just a magical power that simply would not hurt him, but could show him how strong he really was. He decided to make sure that this guy was definitely some kind of abnormal. Since he has such power, he was able to harm him only indirectly, 
otherwise he harmed the entire area around him, and now the forest looks like ruins. The werewolf could not even imagine that this man was so strong. Yuji decided to say that so. Does he want justice, or does he still not want to die? The boy said that he would spare him, but in return, from now on he wants him to carry out all his orders, and also so that let him tell what he is in the end and where he came from, to which he decided to tell him a story. In general, he, well, it's like, they're all demons, but they were preparing to reconquer this continent under the driver's bones. But the prince sent him to the darkness of Akela to illuminate the local situation before the invasion. Right now, believing that these people were much weaker than demons, they wanted to first take over the surrounding area and then return it and report everything. And while he was telling it, he didn't know what to answer. In the end, he also understood in his thoughts that someone knew that they would meet them in yours, and everything would turn out that way. Yuji realized that they wanted to return to the mainland again. Then where is the demon dweller now? he asked the werewolf. He said that in general. Admitting honestly, he took a deep breath and said that one gentleman created a small world for him, gave them all the opportunity to accumulate strength and improve. Eiji couldn't understand. What's the joke then? Why is that gentleman so powerful that he can create new worlds? To which, after these words, he decided to say that the gentleman had emphasized many times that they should not give out information about him. He is the savior and the thankers of their family. And since he realized that he would not tell anything more, he realized that it would be, yeah, better for him to kill him. He still won't tell and further because he believes that people on this planet are truly rotten, to which the girl immediately thought that what the hell was he talking about. Yuji thought, The creator of worlds is right. That means a new world to protect the demon race. It seems this is the work of the army. After all, he has incredible wisdom and more than just magical skills. If it's true he did, then he's not surprised. What's going on here? He also understood why he then allowed them to go out and invade the human world. But suddenly it dawned on me something very important. Aige decided to ask Yuji if he was okay. What happened to them? That very moment, Yuji thought about it and realized that someone had opened the gate of the limit. In general, the gate of the limit is the connection of all worlds with each other. Human, afterlife, heavenly the world of the elements, the palace of the apostles, and so on. What if someone knocked on the door, after which that person answered so that he or she could enter the room? Entering there, Alice said that something had happened, mother, to which the lady told her that that gentleman had sent a man to her with a gift. He is waiting for her in the living room. She thought, okay, she will clean herself up and immediately go downstairs after which she went to the corner of the room to finally clean herself up, albeit in the shower or just change clothes, after which she closed the door and began to change clothes. Also, the rose that was given by that very occasion remained with her. Eugene continued to suspect that, for sure, this world in which demons are hiding had just connected with the human one. One. It's just not clear why this world exudes such a subtle, strange smell. After which, Agi decided to tell him again what happened to him, to which he had since finally come to his senses and told her that he had been thinking a little and just didn't know what to say at that moment. In fact, but still, having decided to think, he said that if he needed to report the situation to A. Kelly and that gentleman, then he would need to open the limit gate, or he would need someone who could send information between the two worlds. I decided to say that that's exactly it, exactly, sir, and he didn't think that he could know such things. They cannot directly return to the demon world, so they need the help of messengers to convey messages. In general, messengers have a piece of the power of the founders of a world, these are people who move freely between worlds, 
as well as between people and one world and another. Yuji understood the whole situation and also knew that this was good. He needs him to take him to one of the feasible ones. Let him convey a few words from him to his ruler, but first they need to go to one more place. After which all three of them began to go to this very place. While they were all walking, Yuji thought that the werewolf might still need him for more than usual, but he didn't know what to do with it. But he also understood more about what he cared about. Where, after all, is Alice's palace now? And he also realized that he needed to go straight and also go in this direction on the map. This way, they will get to the castle. Once they get there, they might be able to do whatever they want. But the werewolf decided to ask the master something. The castle he was talking about, yes, this is the same castle near the coast. To which the girl replied that, of course, only she decided to ask her, how does he know about this castle? To which the werewolf said, this is the castle of their messenger. Aggie was surprised and asked Yuji if Alice was really in that very castle. Then it turns out that the ring is her signal for help, and it turns out that she has already... Yuji understood that she had meaning in her words, but he would not completely want to believe in such a message. If so, he decided better. He decided to take her in his arms and, with his help, run with her all the way to the castle when the werewolf could go around there on his own, because he moves much faster than a person. Taking the girl in his arms, he said, Come on, let's hurry up a little, he told her, after which he flew straight there with her. To which the werewolf knew that they would go forward, the guy shouted, and then he caught up. To which the werewolf said, Of course, he will do so. After a while, he finally got to this place and said that they had arrived, to which the girl said that's good. After all, she really was scared. Moving at such speed that she was essentially in Yuji's arms would have something to tell Alice. Finally, they reached this very castle on the coast. In fact, he was standing quite in such a dangerous place. After all, this area, or rather, the rock, can collapse at any moment in some centuries, and it will be unpleasant if this castle, along with this rock, goes down, straight into the water. Suddenly, Yuji and Agi noticed something and realized that these were someone's steps. At that very moment, the butler came and said, Good evening, gentlemen. He is happy to learn of their arrival at this wonderful castle. He decided to introduce the castle and also told the master and lady. Their master is already waiting for them in the castle. He also noticed that he thought that they would get there a little faster, when in fact they met all his expectations and were able to get there much earlier than he even expected. Therefore, he again suggested that we quickly follow the castle, so that in any case we would not freeze. The girl decided to tell Yuji that this was a trap, really, of that messenger to which he replied that he didn't know for sure. But they wanted to go there themselves, right? So they'll go after him right now to find out what's going on here. To which the girl agreed, because she was calm with her life. She said, Okay, then let's go. Going inside, it turned out to be not so nightmarish as outside, a rather pleasant interior. And also this same butler decided to say that this is so that dear guests, so that they please pass a little further. Let them also follow him, sir, and stagger them in the living room. After walking a little more, Yuji noticed something. There is something wrong with these words. Agi realized that something was wrong here. Or maybe he just imagined it, Yuji. To which the guy replied that it was nothing, he just got distracted for a second and looked at all this wonderful interior. To which the girl said that she thought she should tell him something. Perhaps it's important. And he feels a strange, barely perceptible smell. Approaching a little closer, they finally met the gentleman here, and he decided to say that their guests, or rather, yes, had already arrived here. To which the lady decided to say, okay, he can go and will listen to these young men. 
to which he said that he obeyed and left. Then she finally turned to them and decided to introduce herself to them. She said to them, Good evening, gentlemen. Indeed, she was glad to see these two at their castles, since it is not every time that they meet guests right in front of all these forests. Yuji couldn't believe his eyes and thought that it was Alice and she had grown so much in such a short time. And the girl immediately shouted, Is it really you, Alice? To which she said that not at all. She is Alice's mother. Let them call her Lilis. The girl realized, so they really arrived and did not disappear altogether. The lady decided to ask them where they could have such information, and she also roughly understood that, for sure, the guy who stole her daughter's heart was right in front of her. Eugia is correct. She understands. To which he replied that, where is Alice now? To which she only came closer to him and said that he did not need to worry about this, and he, she, was completely safe. She's just in her room and will come downstairs soon. In the meantime, she decided to flirt a little with the young master, saying that if he wants to take her daughter, she is afraid that nothing will work out, but if he is looking for pleasure for one night, that she herself can help him. To which he already told her that he thinks that most likely he will refuse. Yuji decided to take her hand and show her something he noticed about her. The boy realized that there were too many of her succubi here. The girl couldn't understand. You mean succubi? So she is not Alice's mother. Is she really a messenger? To which she could not understand this, and he said that he was not a messenger. Aggie, Yuji said. She decided to say that she was very interested in how he realized that she was a succubus. After which he began to tell her that they had just approached the castle gates, and they already, you know, that they were already here and also invited her to enter. Only people who know black magic could do this. The abilities of ordinary magicians will not help here, of course. To which she said that maybe she was an unusual magician. He also continued that since this is the case, then how will she explain the fact that ten years have passed and her appearance has remained the same? For her information, people usually get old. It was clear enough. Another thing is that in the picture, when she was exactly the same, she hasn't changed a bit, and the spell she had just used only confirmed his guesses. Then he let go of his hand. Looking at him, she realized that somehow that she was a succubus was indeed true, but Alice was her daughter, and that was a fact. And only she is a purebred succubus, and she is a half-blood. So she also realized that as a reward for the fact that he was able to restrain her charms, she, so be it, would tell him that Alice was in the back room on the second floor. Laughing, she said that she was very surprised at the skill he had. After which he said that he and Aggie would go to the second floor. She decided to say that. A. Hey, she'd better wait here. She's most likely waiting for him and so, let's say, the person Alice most wants to see in front of her now, so she won't disturb them. Well, Yuji said, if that's the case, then fine but he decided to ask again if she was sure about staying here. The succubus decided to have her say so that he wouldn't worry. She won't hurt her. She, the fox, told him to hurry up. After all, it's late. She'll be going to bed soon. Aisha only showed a sign for him to quickly leave here. It's clear. Let him get out of here as quickly as possible. To which Ujiri said that the way she will be careful and if anything happens, let him scream right away. Succubo clearly didn't like the way this Yuji was treating her now. After which, he finally began to get to the second floor and decided to ask, what if she was awake? Having entered one of the doors, he decided to check it and realized that these doors were not locked. Strange. He saw a rather nice little interior and thought that most likely this was where Alice lived. He fell in love with such a room, because he realized that she loves everything cute, 
it seemed cool to him. He also realized that this was the room of the cutie beauty, and he was so excited about their meetings. Soon he noticed something and realized what it was there. I looked closer. He saw the dried roses and realized that this was exactly the rose that he had given to Olesia before going to the Magic Congress. Turning back, hearing some kind of creak coming from the door, he saw something. He saw the goddess who was now in the best dawn of his desires, and he also didn't know what to say. He could not even imagine that such a thing could exist right in front of him at such a period of time. Oh, he thought, but for what? She just asked Yuji what he was doing here. So she decided to ask her how he ended up here. Yuji was a little confused and didn't even know what to say. At such a moment in time, he did not know that such a situation could exist. Said that, oh, uh, Alice, even if she listens to him, he'll explain everything. After all, I just came here. I didn't know that this was her room. Hmm. As she watched him make excuses for the fact that she had just gotten out of the shower, she thought it was good that she came out with a towel and not without. Otherwise, she usually goes straight to the bed like this, and if her mother had not told her that she was visiting now, she would have done so. But suddenly she felt something was wrong. If His Majesty finds out, he will be very angry, said the darkest entity that was hiding behind her. Yuji continued and said that it was true that he and Aki came together in search of her. And now she's waiting downstairs. Can they go down together too? And he was also very worried. He was about her. After which he told them to leave here. The girl said that he shouldn't have come here with the AGI. To which Yuji could not understand why this was so, and in general, where she could have disappeared. She took so long, and why? She decided to say that this ring was simply on hand. She just left it as a souvenir. Chick, I didn't think that they would be able to find her with his help, to which he said, but she left school and didn't send any news. They were all very worried about her. The lady lay there holding her hand and said that she had not sent any news. It means yes to which I thought that it was only in my thoughts that they would quickly leave here. I was so worried about them. She decided to say some harsh words to him so that maybe he would leave, and then he would be safe. She decided to say that she would soon marry a gentleman. Naturally, she doesn't really need them now, and soon she will own untold riches and fame, of course. I think about these words. She said, What a horror, she said and quickly let them leave here before the irreparable happens. While she was talking like that, she was just crying. After all, she could not speak honestly without crying. She really, really regretted these words and didn't know how to justify herself. But Yuji, mind you, decided to say why she talks like that, about it, as if she's lying. Also, then, why is she crying right now? She didn't notice about it right now and only now realized that she... Is he really crying? True. She tried so hard to restrain herself, but it didn't work out. Taking a deep breath, Yuji realized that she was most likely lying now and just wanted them to leave. But what is the reason here? It was clear to him. He decided to approach her and tell her that before you deceive others, you must first deceive yourself. Therefore, he knew that most likely she was not saying this on purpose, or she was being forced. And also he realized that his beloved Alice had a weak acting game. He definitely noticed this even from her very first meeting with him. To which she shouted that this was not so, and it's all because of her. She should not have allowed the AGI to betray that ring to him, and perhaps they would not have been able to find her if the master had discovered them. That. It's better that I've heard about the gentleman's name more than once, although I understood that the butler said the name Mr., and it turned out that it was only after the fire. And then the succubus turns out to be a master after all, but he didn't understand who he was. The gentleman Alice is talking about is the Prince of Darkness, 
the Lord of Demons or something. Alice said that Yuji doesn't understand how dangerous that gentleman is. He is the real demon ruler, and if he knows about her, he is afraid that, alive, he will not let them go as well. Even if he is not there, she still will not be able to go with them, because she is a succubus, and the essence of succubi is the absorption of human lives. And that is why, even if they have a close relationship, they still cannot be together. Saying this, he told her that all this does not matter, because a person, she is a succubus or even a demon, he thinks that. Alice will still become Alice. Therefore, he doesn't care what kind of person he may turn out to be, only the master, he still won't let her be offended. But as for him, this gentleman, he doesn't need to worry yet. Let Alice be ready to leave this place with them right now. After which she said that she, just as she decided to agree, it was finally twelve o'clock at night. This is precisely the time that is cursed for people like demons or succubi. In general, during such a period of time, he will not become a little stronger, and also the gate between the worlds will open right now. Therefore the succubus, who had previously been on the first floor, realized that it was finally twelve o'clock. Agi didn't immediately understand what was wrong with her words, so she decided to ask what, excuse me. Alice said that it was already twelve ox. It was flying by so quickly. Really? To which Yuji replied, Ah, time spent with the beautiful mistress Alice always goes by too quickly. While he was saying this, Alice told him to quickly turn away. She urgently needs to change clothes. He said that, after which she said that, to which she told him to quickly turn away. Otherwise, if he is stupid, they will all get into trouble. To which he replied, Okay, and turned away. Turning away, he understood what was wrong with Alice and what it meant. After which she said that there was no time to explain. It was better that now they would have to fight a tough battle with all this. She finally said that she had already quickly changed her clothes, so he began to turn directly to her to see what she had changed there. Interesting. Turning around, he saw something special in his life, because before that he had never seen anything like this. Such a lovely dress. Yuji couldn't even find himself. Looking at her, she looked simply wonderful. After which she immediately told them to hurry up and finally go to the first floor and catch up with Aji. The guy decided to tell her to stop, after which she could not understand why he stopped her. Yuji finally decided to give her the same ice talisman that he kept especially for her, and also bought on that same black market, saying that he fits just right, to which she asked what it was. Yuji decided to say directly that he bought it at an auction. It goes well with ice magic, so he thought that he would be perfect for her. After looking at it, she said, Thank you, Yuji. She really likes this bracelet. He also noticed that this gift, in addition, it will not wither like Taroza, so he really likes it very much. Confused, she just said that, Okay, okay, let them go. We need to get back to Aggie as soon as possible, quickly. Having opened the doors, they finally went outside and did not understand why there was fog there. This fog came from that very living room. They couldn't even understand why this could be. More precisely, Yuji could not understand, but she already knew very well, and she decided to say where they ended up. Every moment it became colder and colder. Alice decided to tell Yuji that it was a thought labyrinth created by her stepfather, Theodore Pierce. His natural magic changes worlds every midnight at exactly twelve. He can transfer the entire castle to a world created by himself. Eugene began to guess this even before this. Although he understood that this man most likely knew how to control the worlds, and he also understood why he could not feel that the gates of redistribution were opening when the worlds changed. The castle is the outer shell, and the labyrinth of thought is its main filling. That boy immediately realized, Stop! 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 
and it turns out, Agita, that something happened to her. Yuji decided to ask, they urgently need to find Aji from Alice. She knows roughly how this labyrinth works, right? But that she was lost in thought and didn't know how to answer him, since she probably knows approximately, but not exactly. After which she suddenly heard some kind of explosion, or rather, something turned over below. Looking back, she couldn't believe her eyes. She saw someone appear in front of her, and this someone was most likely from her family, and it was truly strange to watch such a thing. In case of danger, she felt that she needed to summon her sword as quickly as possible. Otherwise, she might fall into a trap with Yuji. She could not allow her boyfriend to be in danger. But they didn't realize that she had finally appeared. The succubus decided to remind Olesia that it was already twelve and Alice should go to bed. She decided to remind him that it was time to return to the room and fall asleep, and it was time for the young master to either go to her room or to the living room. She also wanted to remind, otherwise, she herself knows what will happen in this case if she does not listen, to which Alice understood what she meant and wanted to say that she... Eugia decided to tell Alice not to worry about this. He will handle it. The succubus looked at her and realized that she should not listen to her in any way and go to bed. But she only heard what she wanted to tell her mother. To which this girl began to doubt, because she understood that if she starts a conversation with such words, it means that something has changed in her in this short period of time. Alice decided to tell her to forgive her but... She has already decided everything and wants to be with Yuji. And it is from this moment that she wants to leave with him this cage from which she is suffocating. Yuji was even a little embarrassed by these words and only thought that the real Alice was such a cutie. She decided to say that she thought that her mother should understand her feeling now in the end than she and her father too. After which, when she said this again, like that same time again, her hair, only on the other side, they decided to cut with ice. Alice's mom said she's had enough of it and now she will act in her own way, so she thinks. Well, she decided to explain something to her. Since she doesn't want to grow up like a real daughter, she said that she understands her. That's why she doesn't want her to repeat her mistakes. Charm is charm. For them people are two weak beings. Yuji just wanted to say that people just wait so wildly. He's not a person. But she interrupted him and said that, then why does she always secretly sigh about her deceased father? What she couldn't believe was her ears, since she thought that no one would know about this except herself. But since that's the case, she began to get more and more angry from her words, to which Alice said that Yuji was their conversation with her. So let her, let her figure it out on her own. And she said that she had already told her that she shouldn't hang around people. She decided to say that it was too late and she needed to quickly go to bed. Aisha wanted to break all these defenses with her shield ability. Suddenly she noticed something. Mistress. She saw how Aisha imperceptibly became a little stronger. After all, before she couldn't protect herself from all the blows just like that, it was about the guy, she thought, or about something else. The girl simply did not understand how the rope hit her flying icicles. Although she did not use all her strength, but usually this is enough to knock everything to the floor and immobilize it. But what is this? The lady realized that she really deserved the jasper and a bracelet from the ice collection when it ended up on her after which she heard Alice screaming like a mother to her. She decided to say that if she continues to interfere with them, then let her change for herself. She will not stand on ceremony anymore and will speak directly and also attack, so she wants her to be on good terms and let her pass further, after which she also summoned ice icicles, which could also provide a small amount of damage. The lady just laughed and said that her daughter was stupid and that she forgot that her mother was a purebred succubus. That's why I'm not in danger of such magic as this. And she understood that this was all a real trifle compared to her powers. 
after which she finally fully activated her ability and finally became a full-fledged soup, and she decided to say that before there were no possibilities. Well, they will look now, let her watch how the real power of the succubi manifests itself. And she was happy about the fact that she wanted to use more force on her, because she knew that most likely he would not lose stupidly because of this. Yuji understood that now he could not stand aside because having taken this form, she had clearly become two or three times stronger. Therefore, you need to be more careful with Alice and quickly end up with her mother. Meanwhile, Agi called them both, saying where they even got dressed, why there was such a big fog here. While she was thinking, she didn't understand why. As soon as the clock stopped striking, the living room turned into this damned place and the rain disappeared somewhere. Also, some kind of portal soon appeared, which was also similar to the Hasid's empty poppies. Bats flew out of there, clearly hinting that there was also some kind of vampire there. Looking there, she could not understand why the bat was there. Raising her head, she didn't understand why this was happening right now. After which the gentleman finally appeared at his house after midnight. And only after thinking he realized that when one little mouse got into his labyrinth. Ajia could not expect this, because she thought that no one would be here, and she did not say anything at all about the fact that someone might come at midnight. This same Mr. Vampire said that there is no need to be afraid. See, dear mouse, see? Welcome to the labyrinths of thought. Since this little mouse could become one of his right kennels, he realized that his chance to have some fun had finally arrived. Also, he decided to imagine how he is his owner, Pepper Theodore. The cold battle has finally begun, which now the mother, as well as her daughter Alice, will now most likely fight. Yuji decided to play along and said that he didn't think so. After all, she was wrong. He's not who she means at all. To which Alice said that it was too late to beg for mercy. We have to fight right now. She also decided to say that before she gets there, let her want to get even with her daughter. To which she only understood that if she did nothing, then Yuji would disappear along with her. So she needs to do something. After which she saw how the mistress decided to attack her, and said that first she would teach this young rebel a good lesson. Alice began to prepare the sword and understood that she also needed to finally start dealing with her, after which she decided to say that she was not going to get up in front of her, I knelt in front of my mother. Yuji couldn't even say a word, and they were both already fighting. He said that it was better not to let him hear what he wanted to say. But it was already difficult to catch them, since they already wanted to just beat each other. I don't know why but Yuji didn't think these were very funny ideas. She began to use her sound magic. This technique created a shield that generated such an ice wall, and thanks to this, she was able to resist the blow of the ice lances. I looked at all this and realized that this was not enough to stop her. After which, gathering her will into a fist, she decided to attack directly at her from top to bottom. She was very determined in herself and very much wanted to take revenge for the fact that she locked her in the room and did not let her go a single step from the castle. True, I really lacked her strength, but she was confident in herself and also wanted her to fight for the sake of Yuji's happiness with her. But suddenly she noticed something was wrong. She saw that she decided to say that she, you see, did not think that she would really give her a chance to attack her, which is why she decided to take her by the neck so that she couldn't apologize. Of course, she pressed, but not too much, after which she decided to take her away from Yuji so that he could not help her, and also so that she would not think about him, to which Yuji did not expect and said, Where is she taking Alice? Looking closely, he realized that there was enough of this fog and something needed to be done. While he was thinking this, suddenly the Silphium said that, The owner, why doesn't he come to the rescue? And to Alice, to which he said that because it was. 
He was hysterical because he didn't know how to help. Lilith, you see, this is her mother, and maybe his future. What if he doesn't calculate his strength and accidentally knocks it down? What will happen then, I think? That's why he can't help. And he also said yes. How can one even move through such fog? Alice's mom didn't understand why when you try to fly up. Every time it turns out the other way around and you fall down. But she understood that this is why it is called a labyrinth of thought. That is, what you do will be opposite to you. Therefore, you need to think illogically. Alice, I didn't know what to do now because she was literally falling down. But taking the sword harder, she decided to attack her anyway, so that she could break away from it all. Having done this, she immediately decided to run away, and her mother could not do anything and thought it was her first time in the maze. Judging by where she landed, she wouldn't run far. She was also worried about her. The lady also thought that even if she ran away from her, where would they run? While she was asking, Alice hid. She also told the lady that if she really decided to run away, then only endless suffering and complete despair awaited her in the future. That's why she wants to stop her to prevent this. Because she is stupid and doesn't understand this, she wants to stop her using this method. The lady also understood that the fog was getting denser and denser. If she doesn't listen to her stupid girl, he'll show up soon. Then at one point she decided to run away from here. But suddenly something grabbed her, and she didn't understand what was happening here. After which she was covered in all these tentacles that someone was able to catch her. She understood that most likely it was not her mother, and she was now in danger. And she was right because she saw the count, and he said so. Another mouse got into his cage. After that, he began to lift her higher and higher, and she accidentally dropped her sword right into this thick fog. She asked him to let her go. Why did he even think about letting someone like Alice go, but he'll think about it? She didn't understand what was happening when he said that he would allow her to escape. It would be too easy for him, and he also didn't think that he could catch Alice by accident, but he also knew that she shouldn't have appeared in this labyrinth without his knowledge. After all, she decided to resist in the labyrinth of thoughts of which he is the owner. Therefore, he decided to punish her and tie her tighter, so he began to tightly entangle her with these tentacles so that she would fill these damages more tightly and understand that she should not run away anymore. I squeeze her tighter. She just screamed in pain because she was in pain, and she wanted him to stop immediately. The gentleman decided to say that okay, since he would be a future member of that gentleman's family, he would leave her at that for now, and he also wanted to say that if there had been someone else in her place, he would have long ago ended up in the collection of victims of his labyrinth. She decided to say that even if everything really goes as he wants and he really ends up in that gentleman's family, she will still find a way to take revenge on him. The boy thought that even if this was true, would she really be able to do it on her own? He decided to tell her that even if that was the case, she said it, and he immediately remembered one thing that he kept forgetting to tell her. That gentleman only liked her flesh, and that's all. Therefore, he decided to tell her that when she gets to him, he will simply eat her and throw away her current soul and personality. At this wonderful moment for him, he decided to close her completely in these tentacles and tell her that she could take a nap in his dark cage while waiting for this. Then he felt something behind him. He saw a large icicle heading towards him, which he was able to knock down with his tentacles. Because he decided to peel off these same tentacles and protect himself with their help, he accidentally dropped Alice and she fell like a stone. Mr. Vampire could not understand what was going on and what she was doing again. To which she said that he himself doesn't understand, dear. She said that he never mentioned that and said that Alice's soul and personality would be erased and replaced. <laughs> Therefore, those who heard this, she rushed at him and destroyed him right on the spot because she was guarding exactly the one who was now right with her. She couldn't even imagine that he would be such a scoundrel and didn't mention it to her. 
After all, she thought that he just wanted to protect her, but in fact he wants to devour her soul, or rather the gentleman from whom they speak. After she wanted to fight him, he helped her to the ground, and she fell, after which she did not know what to do now. Mr. Vampire only laughed at her that she imagined herself to be someone more than an ordinary succubus, and he also decided to say what was the point of doing this in this world, all creatures except him have their own limit. And if she is so empty-headed, she doesn't understand anything. In other words, there is no person in this world capable of defeating him. Therefore, he will make sure that she remembers this for a long time, and besides, it's worth sacrificing one girl because you can win the favor of that gentleman. She only thought that she gave Alice to that master to make her further external life much better. There is no difference between erasing the soul and death. It's true what he said, master. This is the same thing. After which he decided to take revenge again and decided to bury her directly underground. She was really helpless and didn't stop anything so that they could just torment her. The gentleman says that if the main condition of that gentleman had not been virginity, they would never have given her away. After all, she held on for so many years without touching her. And now nothing can stop him because he understands that they have become too impudent since they decided to attack him and resist his rules. He decided to remind him also that, but nothing, everything should go as usual. Today he will enjoy her seductive body. Alice's mother but only cried and thought in her mind that she would forgive her. Alice, after all, she should have been allowed to do what she wanted, and not that she had to. She simply didn't know that this could happen. If she had known earlier, she would have known long ago. I would have let her go a long time ago. And if God really exists for her, then let her ask to save them from this darkness. And he decided to ask her what was wrong with her face. Was she really scared? After which she saw a purple light of an unusual color. Yes, that Mr. Vampire really has such a purple aura. But it is something else. Finally, Yuji came and said that since everyone was here, he was alive, safe, and landed, then everything was not so bad. And he also looked at them from afar and thought that since he was standing here, he looked at both of them. He thought, well, pay attention to him. The vampire did not understand that he was able to land unharmed in the labyrinth of thought. This is unusual, of course, but after all, there are lucky people. Having decided to look back, he realized that most likely it was Alice who wanted to run away to him, which makes him feel even better, and then everything will kill him perfectly, and the problem will be solved by itself. Having decided to approach, he said, I never thought that there would be a labyrinth garden here. Then he suddenly found himself and felt something approaching him. Looking around, he saw one of the tentacles of some stranger flying towards him. He didn't understand what this obscenity was doing here. He still couldn't understand where it came from, because there was nothing like that from ordinary plants here. Think that there is someone else here besides him, besides the person. After thinking for a while, he decided to cut apart these very tentacles that attacked him. Suddenly, he felt Selefi say something. She said something was wrong here. Yuji decided to ask the spirit what was wrong, why she was different, to which she said that the owner has problems. These shadows divide her and also chew her. The guy couldn't believe it, so they chew it up. This is bad enough, he thought. After which, finally, the fog cleared, and someone from this very shadow began to laugh at him. Finally, the master of vampires appeared and said that shadow magic was created to absorb the most beautiful things. It seems that the spirit of this magic sword is very good-looking, to which Yuji did not understand what he was talking about, but realized that he was clearly not very happy. And here you can see, the boy decided to tell him that he looked very much like the Count of TPS. After all, the portrait that hangs on the wall in the large hall seems to be what the vampire said, as he called it, to Pisa. 
The gentleman just laughed at them and said that he was apparently a daredevil, after which she decided to cut it all with her incredibly powerful as well as magic murder scythes. He told him to wait a little, then he would deal with him, as well as with the little baby, and let him remember something, like before he died. His name is not some kind of TPS, but the magic sword along with the spirit will pass from his hands to his. This is going to be fun. Then he said that his name is Count Piers Theodore. She immediately understood that she needed to take a defensive stance. After all, this is an unusual braid, magical. Therefore, something important needs to be done urgently. Mr. Vampire just laughed because he was able to kill this boy so easily and didn't even grab him. How easy it is for him, he thought. He is truly the most magnificent creature on this planet. But suddenly he thought of something. Why hasn't the scythe hit the ground yet? He remained as he was. Looking closely, he saw the silhouette of this same guy, and he said, Well, that's all he can do. Yujia was not surprised enough and said that it doesn't matter what his name is, be it Tepas or something else, but let him remember only one thing, even though Pierce doesn't matter to him after which he broke this same braid into small pieces. The vampire didn't think that he could be so strong. The boy said that it was rude for the leader of the sword spirit to be a stranger in the face of that person. While Mr. Vampire wanted to look around to see where he was, he suddenly saw that the man had disappeared. Although no, he was standing right in front of him, and Yuji, who had become, said that this was enough, most likely. Although, no, you definitely shouldn't do this. The master could not understand what it was. It was simply impossible how he could break his greatest death scythe. The gentleman decided to ask him in the labyrinth of thoughts, the impact force of all other living beings, except him, is reduced many times over. This is legal. How could he overcome this law and just harm this scythe? To which he said that, apparently, he is the messenger between the worlds, and this place was entirely created by him, he thinks correctly. It was better to ask Mr. Vampire. Even if so, then he has a few questions for him. Where are Alice and Aggie now? To which he looked at him with a rude look, and he didn't even know what to say to him about this. But still, he decided to say that that's the girl's name. Aggie, laughing, he realized that he was now aware, who fell into his trap. He decided to tell him not to worry. He would let them shine together very soon. Yuji didn't understand what he was getting at, but he understood that this guy was up to something wrong again. After which the boy was attacked by some knight who had been standing somewhere in the living room a little earlier. He couldn't understand how he got here in the first place. Having hit him, he understood that this knight was 100% just manipulation. This is really not the most difficult opponent, but the fact that he can manipulate objects can be quite a useful skill. He understood what it was. He had Aggie's axe in his hands, which we were using right now, and it turns out that either he stole this axe from her or did something that he could not even imagine. He decided to ask if the knights in this armor were actually Aggies. And it turns out that they all do too. What did he think? The smell of dead souls comes from them. It turns out that it is so. The boy understood that if Aggie succeeds, she still doesn't have any soul in her, and she's just now an empty shell that is controlled like a puppet. Maybe he didn't come up with it himself, of course, but it seems like Aggie is sitting there which means he controls her. Having looked, having removed this very mask, he was 100% convinced of this. He realized that it was really her, and there should be no mistake. To which this bloodthirsty vampire only laughed more, thinking that this guy lost his girlfriend as quickly as he found her. He decided to show, and yet, what their dedication had brought them to. He sees that he cares about Aji at all, so, if he did not interfere with the engagement of that gentleman and Alice, he would return her soul from the world of the dead. 
So he decided to ask him who he would choose, her or her Alice or Aggie. Alice's mom decided to shout out and said that he didn't listen to him. He definitely won't keep his promise, because if you marry Alice to that gentleman, she will still lose her soul and personality, after which she suffered an electric shock because she decided to tell the truth. The gentleman told her to be quiet and not shout like that without his permission. After all, she is cheap, she talks too much unnecessary things, after which she lost consciousness a little. The vampire understood that in any case he would have to make a deal with him, and even if he did not blame him for not warning him in his labyrinth of thoughts, after which he was surprised by what he saw. He saw what it was. What a suffocating, overwhelming way to look at him. Yuji just laughed and realized that a vampire like him should not exist next to him. So he decided to say that he was choosing. Fourth seal. Withdrawal. The vampire couldn't figure out what. This boy generally talks about what he chooses, but he understood that no, no one from the human race could become so powerful. Therefore, this Mr. Vampire realized that this guy was definitely not a person, and he needed to get out and not hesitate, under no circumstances. After which he began to abandon these two in order to quickly escape from here. Of course, I managed to catch these two in my hands. Mistress Alice said, I apologize to him. She said that she had made a grave mistake then. She very strongly asks him to take Alice and leave here. He told her to relax. After all, he will pull out not only Alice, but they will all be alive and healthy. Yuji also decided to say, what about this graph of TPS? It will make him regret coming to this world. As soon as this count decided to leave here, he only thought that as soon as he got out, he would forever ban this labyrinth of thoughts, and then they would not be able to get out of here. After which he felt flashing lanterns in the distance, as if he realized that the inhuman was already very close. Yuji also said that no matter how much power he had there, he still wouldn't be able to get out. After which, with the help of a shot, he was able to knock him out with that same shot. And right now he has just turned himself into dust. He couldn't understand this vampire. What is this all about in his labyrinth of thoughts? And he is the strongest person. Looking around the circle, he saw a guy who decided to punish him before he left here. More precisely, it won't go anywhere. His death will be right in this labyrinth, which he created with his own hands. The vampire immediately realized that only if his strength did not exceed the limit, he thought as he thought about being the most powerful vampire in this world. Yuji didn't really know how to punish a scoundrel like him. This vampire was clearly alarmed by what he saw in his eyes, the blood that flows before he is still alive. This vampire realized that no, he would not accept his fate and began to separate into the shadows. He decided to hide from him, thought that if his three shadows were with him, he would be able to move freely into any of them, and then he would not be able to catch him. He really won't believe that he alone can cope with all four. I thought it was a vampire, but suddenly he saw something that clearly surprised him. Looking back, he saw that he had dealt with all the shadows and was also right behind him. The boy decided to ask him where he had gone so far. After all, he will need to stay here. The boy who said this was clearly very frightened and did not know what to do now. He said no, he couldn't kill him that easily. To which he then raised him higher and said that maybe I can't, but maybe I can. To which the vampire said that he has nothing, he has a connection in the world of the dead, if he kills him, then the soul of his girl is right there. After that, when he started talking about Aki, Yuji said that firstly. Aji is not his girl, and there is no need to trivialize everything. But secondly, he decided to tell him one important thing before he went home to his dead brothers. The fact is that it coincided that he also has acquaintances in the world of the dead. Therefore, he didn't really care what kind of acquaintances he had. After all, he himself will be able to cope with all this, 
and if necessary, he himself will go there and destroy everyone who will blather on him there. The vampire only thought that this energy was exactly the same as the energy drain of that gentleman when he first appeared to trample the empire. He could not understand that this energy is the source of all life on Earth. Source energy. It just can't be. He decided to tell Harvey. Then he looked down and realized what it was. Now is the time. After which he told him to come out immediately and brought him down right through this portal. Because of this, there, in this castle, where the shell was, there was a massive explosion because this entire portal was completely depleted since all of his mana went to regenerating his bones. As he was thrown straight to the ground with incredible force, the vampire wondered to Harvey if this guy was his acquaintance, after which the same gentleman emerged from the very depths of the earth. Finally get him out to freedom, he decided to check it all out. And as soon as he sat down more comfortably, he thought what was wrong here. And the vampire saw that he really came out. Finally, this vampire, I was able to meet the real king of Tima Harvey. After which he finally met her, and he appeared right in front of him. Harvey immediately realized that it was really him. The vampire decided to mock that guy, because he couldn't handle such power. They say Harvey's character is very bad, and most of all, he doesn't like rude people. What this guy just did really disappointed Harvey. His source energy is great, but he's still a lid. After which he immediately began to fawn over him. His outfit was completely new, not the same as before. He said that he wouldn't be recognized by everyone now. Yuji said to let him leave him alone, not pure power, to which he said that from now on, come on. We haven't seen each other for several thousand years. If he knew that he would become such a rude person, he would trample all his feelings. Oh, the vampires were clearly unhappy and also surprised that he knew him and also that this was not real. He thought what the hell was going on here. Yuji said that it's okay. Let him not make noise. It's a matter of whether he will help. To which he said about the matter, it means that, this is what it is, that he needs his help. Yuji said that if he could help with this, return that person's soul back to the body. Taking a closer look, Harvey said that, of course it could help, but there were a couple of problems with it. He said why did he want to help the common man so much? To which he said, yes, she's just his friend, that's why he would like to help her, and also nothing more than just a friend. Just looking at her face was quite funny so he thought it would be nice to revive her back. He couldn't even say anything that the greatest apostle suddenly decided to make friends with an ordinary person and decided to simply revive her because he liked her face. It was quite strange, but still it was not so easy to understand, he thought. Well, okay, Harvey thought and said, if so, then no problem. But as a reward for his help, he wants a night of passionate love with him. After which Yuji decided to ask him, he didn't confuse anything here at all, to which he said that, oh, and he meant he would be glad to help him. After which he decided to turn to his mother, revive you, and this macho said that he was very happy about the visit of the great Mr. Harvey, he is so magnificent today, to which he said to shut up and let him work a little. Harvey said to scan this body and find a soul that matches it. So he started with the stones and turned over those piles of pages with souls to find the one that belonged to this particular body. And now he finally found what he was looking for. It seems that this is it, he thought. After which he was finally able to revive this very same thing in his soul. She couldn't believe it, you see. She had seen real death. She was able to be reborn simply because of emptiness. Looking at Yuji, Yuji was finally glad to see, almost alive again. Well, at least I could see the soul. She was very happy that finally the end, she could meet Yuji again, because she had seen such things there. Yuji decided to smile in front of her and said that he was very glad that she was finally here again. After which, when she returned and suddenly it started, kissing him right on the lips, 
something he definitely didn't expect. The fact is that in the last seconds before her death, she thought only about him. That's why her emotions played out like this. It was then that they realized what her heart wanted. She realized that she liked Yuji very much and would like to be with him. He couldn't even think of such a thing. But this actually happened. She said that she thought about Yuji that she would never be able to see him again. She decided to think that since she had already died anyway, it would be better to take advantage of the moment and admit everything, and that it doesn't matter whether he loves her or not. The main thing is that she will have no regrets. Yuji simply couldn't understand why she suddenly decided to do this, but she only thought that he must also have already felt what her heart wanted. After which Yuji decided to pretend to be a fool, since, as everyone knows, he pretended to be a fool at the right moment, which means he is not a fool, but he decided to say that he so beautifully and unforcedly expressed the joy of meeting two old friends. Of course, he wanted to say this before. After all, what is she doing to us? What will he think? It's clear that she said he was stupid and ruined the whole romantic atmosphere. She just... To which he said, Okay, okay, let them return to the body as soon as possible. There's no need to linger. She couldn't understand who else he was. After which she saw her own body, which was simply standing still. And at that moment, Yuji didn't know how to convey his emotions, since, after all, she kissed him and it was sincere. The girl said, is it really Yuji? This is her body. She is like this. She is now. He decided to calm you down, telling her to calm down and listen to him. Finally, Aggie. The guy told her that he was too reckless and put her in danger. But now everything is in order. He found the King of Darkness, Harvey. He will allow her to be resurrected directly into his own body. So there should be no problems. The lady asked him if the king of darkness would allow her to be resurrected, after which she said, Yuji, who the hell is he anyway to have such acquaintances? The boy decided to say it anyway. She asked him in advance, because he was not deliberately hiding from all the news that he was in fact an unusual person, but still. He decided to say that he was the one whom they, the people, were very afraid of. He was the first apostle Yulman. When she heard this, she just laughed, because when they say this, he is clearly joking. Laughing, she said that, yes, that's what he says. She decided to say that if she hadn't been to the world of darkness, she definitely wouldn't have believed this nonsense of yours. But since it's like this, she didn't think that the first apostle would be such a miracle as him, laughing further. Coming closer, she just said that, she was truly grateful to him for saving her and said, Thank you so much, Yuji. He could not believe his own eyes because he admitted that he was an apostle and she was not even in fear. On the contrary, she was happy that he was the apostle and for the first time he admitted this to someone and was, however, surprised. Harvey decided to say that, of course, he said that he needed to hurry up a little, but he didn't think that he would slow down any more for me. So he decided to say again, Maybe they will do one important thing first, let it come to life first, and then they will chat. And the whole body. It will end soon, and in this case there will be an unpleasant outcome if she really dies and cannot be resurrected. According to Agim, she finally took over her body, and when I came to him, she didn't know how exactly to do it, but she knew one thing, that thanks to Yuji, she will be able to do this, so she decided to tell him that, about the rest in time, and later let him wait until she is resurrected. Smiling, she only thought that it didn't matter who he was, and the main thing was that he was a person she liked after which she decided to move into Aga's body and began to glow from the fact that, most likely, the spirit began to move into this body. When Aji possessed this body, it was in danger of falling, so Yuji began to hold this body to prevent it from falling to the ground. 
Harvey also decided to say that the resurrection was successful, and now he, in principle, does not have to linger, which Yuji paid attention to and realized that this was most likely the case. But back in Harvey, I decided to tell another small problem. Since soul memory and brain memory cannot function at the same time, after she awakens, she will forget everything that came with them while she was a soul, and Yuji could not understand what he did not say before. To which Harvey said that, oh, 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 but he didn't ask. It's better to let him kiss him, as compensation, to which Yuji said that he forgives, forgives. The demon also decided to tell him that, okay, the matter was better decided, and he would go, he still needed to make an evening mask. Yuji couldn't believe it that Harvey would just let him go and not ask for anything in return. Still, the DJ decided to ask her, and if he has one interesting business, does he want to listen to it? To which Harvey, having decided to listen to him, decided to ask, what kind of business? He decided to say that, although in reality it was not that interesting, he just happened to meet a vampire who could use dark magic to summon souls, and it also smells like the seat post of the herb of immortality, Harwin and Mofavit. So, the seat post is correct. After which, from these words, you realize that it could really be useful to him, or even very tasty, so he decided to do something with it. Coming a little closer, he decided to steal his soul and buy it for himself after which he put it right in his hands and could not imagine how good it was that the spirit of the underground appeared. Harvey didn't understand who was paying the spirits for the dungeon. This is an incredible amount, but he really likes it. The vampire could not imagine and does not know why, but that spirit really likes the underground from the human world. He changed the grass for them in their souls, and that's exactly how, sometimes, he didn't ask. Harvey's head suddenly lit up, which made him realize that he could do something with it that would be useful to him on the farm. To which the spirit said that he really didn't know what to do now, and he also didn't know how to answer his question that he asked him. To which Harvey was taken aback and realized that apparently he really didn't know anything. He decided to say, okay, he's singing, and with him to the world of the dead for identification. To which the spirit of this light said that he spared Mr. Harvey, after which he began to climb onto his throne, from which he came here. In general, he uses it not only as an elevator, but also as an elevator. One thing was clear. Harvey was very pleased to meet him and said to Yuji, Thank you. To which he said that he helped him a lot so this is a big thank you to him. After which this very throne began to descend. Having looked there, he thought that Harvey was a deity born in the world of the dead. But every time he hears about the dungeons, he reacts quite sharply. At best, he is completely out of his mind, but at worst, he has lost his magic. And since this is so, since in the world of the dead there are those who collect this herb, it means that someone this herb it means that someone else has put a stamp on Harvey, and so he is furious. He understood perfectly well what he thought about things in the world of the dead. He would handle things better himself. There was no point in him meddling there. Yuji fully believed that he could entrust this situation completely to Harvey. Wait closer, and also it was finally over, and he wanted to approach the lady and mistress, and also Alice. As they got closer, they were clearly worried about each other, and one thing was clear. If it weren't for him, it might have been too late. Who knows what would have happened if he had not arrived a little earlier. Yuji decided to say that they had finally woken up. After all, they were purebred succubus. Such injuries did not particularly harm her, it turns out. To which she just remained silent and thought that perhaps it was so but she also thought about how to express her gratitude to him. She decided to say so that Mr. Apostle would know that she had brought him a bit of trouble. But he was still ready to help. His nobility will remain with her forever, 
forever and ever. Also, coming closer, he decided to say that, no, slow down, let her talk. She hasn't fully recovered yet, so don't jump up so much over such trifles. She could not believe that the fierce first apostle from worlds and legends suddenly turned out to be so sensitive and short. And also, she understood that these warm hugs were so reminiscent of the Euler, she thought. If it were him, she hoped that Alice would find happiness. But suddenly she realized that if she remembered him every time, she would have died long ago or suffered. Therefore, she had no choice but to grieve for him. After thinking a little, she decided to tell her if she could entrust Alice to him with a calm heart to which he just smiled and realized that perhaps it would be so. And you can, of course. He will protect her for the rest of his life, although he will clearly live longer than an ordinary person. So yes. Also, he said that even if she doesn't do this, he will still take care of her, to which she only said thank you in tears and realized that it was good, then she would be calm. After all, she understood that her daughter would no longer have to depend on others and would no longer have to withstand ridicule and humiliation because she was a half-breed. There is no need to be afraid and suffer. This young boy, he will definitely take care of her. The main thing is that she will find the most important thing, to be with her loved one forever. They finally saw some ruins from the wall that he was. The lady decided to say that the mediator between the worlds, Pierce, was already dead. So, if you need to establish a connection with the magical world, you will have to wait until someone on the other side opens the portal, to which he thought and said that before there was all hope for him. And now, no one knows for sure or will say when the gates will be opened. You can't sit here and just wait. There are still a lot of things in this world that he must deal with. She decided to tell her that it would even be better if she brought this matter to an end. And he, sir, let him take Alice and the others and set off on the way back. Eugia decided to turn around and ask if she was sure she wanted to stay here and see this through. After all, it will be quite difficult alone. To which she said, of course. After all, Pierce died and she needs to explain to them what happened. She also decided to reiterate that if she did not do this, she was afraid that her fellow tribesmen would be in very bad shape. Yuji, having thought about it, decided that since this was the case, then let her do what she wanted. The main thing is that it exists. After all, he wouldn't want to lose his mother-in-law, Alice. For him now, she is like Alice, only older and also he will protect them both, at least try. The guy decided, if so, then let it happen. Here's how. She decided, if so, she decided to be kind. She conveyed this from him to their emperor. The lady did not understand whether it was a magic stone or whether it seemed to her, to which Yuji replied that the first apostle Yuji would tell them so. He killed Pierce with his own hands, and they will all understand who did it and also they will believe her and will not touch her. She only said thank you to the gentleman for the fact that she was happy, that maybe she wouldn't even die when she got there. After which they all boarded the carriage together and went back home. Of course, remembering all those incidents was quite clear, but he also wanted all these memories. Alice and Augie remembered him exactly like this, so that again they would not think that he was an apostle. Those memories were only how they mocked him and talked about what she saw him and what he perceived as a bicycle. He did not want to belong to this gentleman. After which they did something unimaginable to him there. Eugene hoped that she would believe these memories. From that moment on, she was very energetic, and also she was afraid at that moment. After which she decided to wake up and finally she realized that it was just a terrible nightmare. Yuji decided to ask her if she had finally woken up, Alice. She only asked Yuji if he was okay with such memories. Looking closely, she could not believe that such terrible things were happening to him. She thought he was already dead, but it turned out that everything was fine, 
but she couldn't understand what she presented there anyway. You see, he adjusted the memories a little, but asking what happened to her, Alice, he decided what had happened, after which she climbed higher on him and decided to hug him tightly, as if she loved him very much. Also, she said that it was all true. She's still alive, and he's still alive too, and she is glad that everything happened so well, and Yuji was so glad that she was happy to see her. He also told Alice to calm down at first, and then talk. Although, obviously, he didn't mind, let her, of course, sit a little longer in this position. Meanwhile, in the magical world, Madam, Alice's mother, finally arrived from here and wanted to report them to him, the king. More precisely, everything was said to the sir. We decided to come over. He finally decided to ask her, let her be it, tell him what happened. To which she told, and he understood what it meant, Pierce was killed by M.M. She decided to ask her again, is Yulman really the first apostle? Yes, but this, by the way, was the emperor of the world of darkness, Akela. To which she said that, yes, that's true, Pierre. The fact is that the first apostle Yulman killed him, not just like that, but because he threatened him. So he couldn't restrain himself and did it. After which the king decided to say that this was complete nonsense. After all, he wanted to say that no one had ever seen the first apostle alive, and it is not a fact that he even exists. This is just a pathetic legend. Why would he suddenly show up and personally kill Pierce? Also some kind of wizard. He became interested because this was all unfounded and groundless. Pierce was strong only in the world of his thoughts. Outside of it, he was a complete non-entity. And the girl probably learned the cruel truth about the price that Alice would have to pay in order to become closer to that gentleman. She decided to expose him and kill him. It turns out, Mr. Akella, he believes that if you don't torture her, then if you don't do this, she won't be a good girl and won't confess herself. The guards just laughed. After all, I didn't know what they couldn't do with her body, and also what kind of torture there might be. One thing was clear. He thinks so. The executioners, after which she decided to tell them to wait a little. After all, the lady is not finished yet. She has evidence that will show that she is telling the truth. Let the gentleman look at them first, and then make a decision. The magician could not understand what other evidence there was. What she said was that the first apostle asked her to give this thing to Mr. Akella. He decided to ask the gentleman. They don't know what this thing is. This stone he is worried about. After all, it can to which he interrupted him and told him to take it quickly. After all, it's nonsense how much magical power one magic stone can contain, but also whether this power can hurt Akela himself. He decided to say that indeed, in vain. He's worried. He understood that the blood of a dragon flowed in the veins of the great ocean. He is the most powerful in history. Decided to finally take this very stone, those who looked at him, he understood that indeed he could be really unusual. Suddenly he decided to sparkle and burst into flames, after which he could not understand what this feeling was. The light became brighter and brighter from such a small stone as this one. Mac was a little out of it, but from what he saw, it was an incredibly powerful stone. All the guards did not understand what was already happening, what kind of power this was. It was simply terrifying. After which it was all over, and the magician decided to ask the gentleman if he was okay after this. To which he replied that he didn't know for sure, but he clearly felt something too heavy in his chest. And he also thought that this force was more powerful than even that gentleman in his condition. He has no chance against someone like him. The guy decided that it seemed that Lilith had not lied, the first apostle actually killed Pierce. All these statements were asked of her, and he realized that nothing was wrong. It was not her fault, and he also thought that they allowed him to freely return back. I'm afraid they're protecting her on purpose. 
The girl said that since Pierce had already died today, she herself would look after him locally and also decided to say thank you to him, sir. In general, before her impeccable plan finally comes true, Lilith must first be calmed down. Yuji decided to tell her not to be afraid, because everything she remembers really happened. Meanwhile, while they were not talking, Aigi was knocked out. The guy said they were still alive and everything was fine. When Agi woke up, she saw such an unusual picture. She's had worse, of course. But when she saw this, she realized that most likely she would remember this picture for a long time. So I decided to stop quickly. It was she who said that he wanted to do this to Alice. What is he? A fucking pervert. And to which Yuji replied that Agi should calm down, because she, too, had already woken up. Ajia decided to say that even if she hadn't woken up here, then this would have happened here if she, let's say, Alice, you shouldn't let out these antics to this pervert. To which she said that, yes, in general, she doesn't mind. Agi was a little freaked out by this and realized that her sister needed to be saved. Otherwise, everything would be bad. Soon. Finally, I was not seated in my place or at home. Lee, about what just happened here, they were really a little shocked by each other and looked in other directions so as not to embarrass each other. Meanwhile, the girl could not understand why deception was always felt. I'm angry that the atmosphere between Yuji and Alice is somehow strange. And also this. She realized that for some reason, when she sees how close they are, her soul is very heavy. The girl realized that she really liked this guy, after which she decided to come to her senses, thinking that it was not some kind of nonsense, she had made a mistake somewhere, to which Alice saw and could not understand what was happening to her. So I decided to ask, is everything okay with her? After all, if it weren't for her, then everything could have turned out differently, and she also helped her a lot. So, thanks for looking for her to which when she saw that she had finally turned her attention to her, she said that she understood, and it was not this pervert, Alice, that she liked. The girl said that Alice, what a cutie she is, she likes it anyway. This means that Alice could not say the same thing, although she did not understand what she was talking about. She definitely means it. So I had to ask what he was saying, and what Yuji said was that, Alice's announcement was finally for himself, too. This is quite a bold decision, he thought. The lady couldn't believe it. Oh, she forgot something. She decided to ask how they finally got out, and where is her mother now? After which Agia said that she seemed to have seen that vampire from the portrait in the castle and immediately passed out. What actually happened there? Yuji decided to tell Agi that the vampire she saw would attack them all, but let her relax already, because with Lilith, let her relax, since everything is fine with her mother, and that vampire is already dead. Alice couldn't believe that Pierce had died. Did his mother really kill him? She thought. After all, he definitely hid the fact that he would have to erase her soul for the sake of that gentleman. Yes? My mother probably found out about this and decided to punish him. Think about it. She decided that mom was definitely afraid you would entangle her in the matter and left them, avoiding them. But they killed that gentleman's close servant. He definitely won't forgive them so easily. To which Jersey at that moment thought that this was certainly full of factual errors. But the main points coincide, so it's normal, so he won't ask. And Alice is so small. When does he think about what then, the gentleman thought. Watching her think and be embarrassed at that moment was, indeed, a very amazing feeling. She thought that she didn't know what the problem was. But I understood that Yuji. Since things had taken this turn, she needed to tell him something. The girl decided to tell you that by killing Pierce, they became blood enemies of one, a very scary person. This is one of those great apostles standing at the top of this world. He decided to say, is this really one of those apostles? 
How strong is he? To which he said that now she is not joking, and he asks him to be very strict about this, sincerely. The fact is that they will have to confront this twelfth apostle, the ruler of the polar night, Kobazes. She also decided to say that this same apostle was a super being. Standing on the same level, she knew for sure that nothing would work out for them. They are doomed. To which Yuji said that there was something that he had been hiding from her for a very long time. In fact, he is the first apostle Yulman, and he hid this from her all the time so that she would not be scared. That's why he decided to confess right now. Looking at him, she was shocked and did not know what to feel now. Anger or admiration or something else. Meanwhile, I was thinking about how she wouldn't kill him, after which she started screaming. He can't even imagine being serious right now. Now his jokes are definitely inappropriate. To which Yuji said that he was not even joking. He is truly the first apostle. Girl, someone there said sorry to bother you, but there are two of them. Unless he feels how cold it has become here, Aji said. Having looked at her, they were immediately convinced that some kind of cold was indeed emanating from her, and very large, in fact. They both looked at her and did not understand what was the matter. Why did Aki suddenly feel like ice? Coming closer, they decided to take a closer look at what was happening to her. Alice decided to ask her Agi what was going on with her now. Did Pierce really manage to cast some kind of spell on her? To which Yuji realized that this was neither magic nor a spell. This is pure dark energy. To which Alice was surprised that dark energy. Where did she even get it from? After which she only began to freeze little by little, each time more and more. Yuji thought that Aga's soul had undergone baptism and in the dark energy of the underworld, some of this energy penetrated her body and remained inside. That is, it turns out that if he doesn't urgently get her out of Aga, he's afraid that she will turn into a walking dead man or something similar. Meanwhile, she suffered more and more from this conduct of some kind of dark energy transition. The boy understood that his source energy would not be enough to dispel this dark magic. But for Aga, the energy of the source poses an even greater threat than the dark one. And also... He couldn't even imagine. Damn, what needs to be done in the end, he thought. Alice decided to check her temperature and saw that her body temperature was dropping, and now she was getting colder due to the fact that it was dropping to minus. Yuji suddenly realized that stop and somehow managed to hold back the dark energy, taking Alice's hand first to check something. He realized that this smell, is this really what he needs now? Yuji decided to tell Alice that she was talking about the underground, to which she said that since childhood, her mother made her a bathtub with a seat post and said it would warm her body, and it also increases, slightly therefore, female attractiveness. He realized that Harvey was definitely born into the dark energy of the afterlife. He is afraid of the seat post which means that dark energy is afraid of this grass, it turns out. Alice let her hug Aji, as tight and strong as possible, but she didn't understand how it could help. But I think that this is correct, and it turns out to be as close as possible. As she got closer, she decided to ask Yuji. That's normal. To which he said that it really works. Let her sit like this right now until they arrive somewhere. The boy understood that it was still not enough, and he needed to come up with something different, as well as something new. After thinking about it, he decided to tell him the nearest big city, to which he decided to ask the nearest one in Astana. If they speed up, they will arrive before sunset. Yuji said that's good, and now Astan temporarily becomes their target. He said that, but the rest is just conducting selections for the pentagram. He's afraid all the departments with adequate prices are jam-packed. The guy said, Well, then drop them off at the most luxurious, most sophisticated hotel, and let's say he makes it before sunset. 
his fee will be doubled. To which he heard twice, Yes, no problem. After which he began to destroy, as I don't know who, he connected the second engine in his head, so to say that the time has seemed, someone is real, coachman, passengers, fasten your seat belts, he is taking off to the Cosmodrome. Finally, in the evening, we reach the city of Astan. They understood that they had arrived at the most luxurious hotel in Astana. There were quite elegant personalities here, and also, like the rules, they came to the most luxurious hotel, because they thought that if they came here, there would be a lot of space, as not everyone can afford expensive rooms. He decided to tell them to wait for him here, okay? He will go with them, number, and return. To which Alice said that, okay, she'll wait. Coming closer, he said that he needed a double room with bathrooms. Lady, I don't know how to help, because unfortunately, it's a pity, but this week too many magicians arrived at the selection for the Magic Academy. Now the situation with numbers is very difficult, she said, and only the Imperial Suite remains. To which he reacted only one number. This is luck, of course but I thought that he understood that it would be possible to be in the same room with Alice. Not bad. He said, well, well, they can't do anything. Therefore, they will have to make room a little and also Alice and Aga, so they take the last one, to which someone back there said that he is taking this imperial suite. This guy said, why, he, she froze there. Let him draw up the documents and move them in. Looking at them, she said that, sir, she asked for forgiveness, but this young man was the first. To which he said that he was the first to hit. So what? He has enough money to do this. He's worth something and he's been standing here, dumbfounded, for an entire hour. It was clear that what was said earlier, that 500 gold per night is true. He is a VIP client of their hotel, and he and the director are friends. So she immediately, just in case, understood what needed to be done, to which she said that it was actually 2,000, not 500, after which she decided to hit the table and say that isn't it usually 500 gold, to which she said no, now the situation with numbers is complicated, so no, he's generally an aristocrat, how can he disgrace himself in front of some wretched boy, to which she later said, okay, 2,000, then 2,000. But I was thinking about where these two annoying characters came from. If I have to look for the hotel again, it's a lot of time, and I can't wait any longer. So he decided to say what he was saying. After which someone behind there decided to say that someone was bothering her little brothers. It was better to move in. They were tired of living or something. Turning back, I didn't expect to see her. Yuji didn't expect to meet her, and it was Linda. She decided to go up to him and tell him that she was very happy to see little brother Yuji. So they met again. To which he looked at her and said that, Miss Linda, is it really her? She just said that since he already knows who she is, it's better not to catch her eye if she doesn't want it. To which he shouted that he understood. I understand that they are already leaving. They can look for a few more hotels. Yuji decided to ask her, Linda, how did she end up here so quickly, and somehow unexpectedly, because he said that this hotel belongs to her family? She also said that let him live in the last imperial suite as a brother, don't take money, and also let him live as long as he wants, to which she said that of course she understood Miss. He could not even imagine that there could be such luck, but still such. He wanted to ask, but there really was no need. You see, they were already able to come here and so to speak. He decided to say that she helped him and was already very touched by this. They still have a business here. You can't constantly bring them losses. To which she said that little brother Yuji, such behavior is too polite. To which he thought, ha, huh, well, have they already moved to the level where one's own and someone else's are not divided? But still, he wanted to ask her, it would be better if he asked her for help in another matter. 
Where can you find as much hanging chick for sale nearby as possible, very urgently needed? To which she said that underground this feeling is a rare medicinal herb and in ordinary pharmacies, although it is available, it is definitely not first class. Okay, if Yuji's brothers need to be put on her, then she is always ready to help, to which Yuji said that it's great if she can, then let the restorative powers of Max Potion also be needed, and then he will give the money, of course. Meanwhile, Alice and she were sitting in the living room and didn't know what to do, where Yuji was. She couldn't understand why Yuji hadn't returned yet, because enough time had already passed, from which it became worse and worse over time, each time although she sat on Alice's lap. Little by little, the skin from her neck began to become more and more covered. Alice couldn't stand it and decided to run up to Yuji to say that she was getting worse and worse. Linda herself was about to meet this girl and couldn't believe that she decided to run up to Yuji. She didn't expect that it turns out to be her. This is the lady of Yuji's heart, and she is glad to meet her. To which Alice said, Who is she? Mr. Yuji decided to introduce Alice to Linda, so to speak. She is business smart. That time, only with her help was he able to get a new ice bracelet, which now he asked her to buy them seat posts for Ica, to which she said that she was Alice and was very glad to meet Miss Linda. She just laughed and said, Yes, Alice, she seemed to be in a hurry just now. Something happened. Although I thought that, although she was really very cute, she was not inferior to her at all, to which she told Yuji to quickly take the Aggie, and he could no longer cope with this dark energy. It's better to say that even her, I, and you are no longer being helped. She said they weren't helping. She saw how the energy he was talking about began to creep up to her neck, to which he said that Linda, quickly look for the underground ones and buy everything you can and immediately go to their room. Let him hurry. It's very urgent. To which I must say that I understood why, but will hurry and try to forget them as quickly as possible. After that, the butler listened to Eugene, who told him to quickly take them to the room, after which he decided to put it in the bathroom and filled it with hot water, so that the more heat the better. He said that this would make things much easier. The boy also thought that it seemed that dark energy could not be eliminated at once. For the next few days you need to soak in the bathroom alone. Every day they will change the underground. Also, when they finally arrived, they were alone. She wanted to ask Yuji something. She decided to say his friend was still there. She will take a closer look and let him be a guest. He was finally able to come and see her again and Linda was glad that Yuji came alone. The girl asked her brother Yuji how his friend was doing, to which he said that she was much better, all thanks to her help, and also that she was able to quickly find these same herbs. She said that since she helped little brother Yuji, that means. The lady wants to hear back and said if little brother Yuji can help her with anything. There is also a small chapter called Yuji's Little Theater, and now, Yuji says, hey, everyone, and today, he managed to invite a piece to the living room, to which he said that, hello, everyone, he is gouache. Yuji decided to ask, as far as he understood, he is tall, rich, and handsome, if he could share the secret of his success, to which he said that, no, not at all, to which he said that, yes, well, how is this possible? There are a lot of attractive girls hanging around him, and he is not rich, not successful. In general, he is from a different magician. Therefore, to be honest, it was a rather unexpected question. He responded by saying that it seemed like he was not the only one, right? To which he said that they left, not to the side, and it all went wrong. So let's change the subject, and what will he say, as you say, Yuji? Well, of course, such continuations. And now Yuji said that, of course, why do we need to help Miss Linda, too? She immediately noticed that Yuji hadn't even figured out what needed to be done at first, but had already agreed, 
to which he said that, of course, because the ice bracelet and the dungeon are entirely her merit, so he will help her whatever she needs. The girl decided to think and said that last time she lured him to the auction in order to steal the ring from his hand. And now he is so grateful to her. It's true. She was embarrassed now, and she doesn't feel very good now after this. So I decided to ask her. At Linda's, let her talk. There's nothing to be embarrassed about here. It's her problem. Now his problems, and he will definitely help her to which she looked at him and just wanted to say, when suddenly she was called, they say that Miss Linda, you are late. When he saw him, he said that you urgently need to go, right now, Miss Linda. You see, as he understood, the Lord of the Neck received an invitation and had already gone to the banquet, telling them to quickly get out of Zhao Shan. Linda thought so, although she could not imagine that he could do it so quickly. I decided to ask her, why so quickly? She decided to tell little brother Yuji they were in big trouble and to come after her quickly, to which he once again wanted to ask, what, what is this all about? What urgent thing happened? He doesn't understand anything. Soon they finally got into the carriage, and she said that as quickly as possible let them take them to the banquet for which her father had left, and livelier, to which he said that, but the gentleman found him and told him not to. To which she said to stop talking. This is her decision, and she is responsible for it. After that, of course, they went and said that, Linda, what's going on with her in the end? She was thinking about Yuji's brother. She asks him to save her father, which he couldn't understand, her father. And so from what? She decided to say that he still remembered this old man she told him about. This is her father, because he said that, well, she is the daughter of that bandit, the leader of the auction organization, or something. To which she said that was exactly so, only his status as the head of the mafia would soon pass into the wrong hands, and most importantly, without their help, he is unlikely to survive tonight. Yuji couldn't understand why, after Linda started interrupting him again, she said that if he didn't listen, it's better to get the whole essence of events. And then he asks, The fact is that the revenge south of the capital of the empire and north of the Horst are traditionally called the Zhao Shan Belts. Her father is the leader among the mafiosi of this belt, but in truth, he enlisted the support of only one of the three large clans of the Broom Chapel, and with them to build underground trade routes, and thus gained control over these regions. She also could not imagine what could happen before such destruction in their clan, but since rumors appeared about the death of the main chapel in the volcano, the new head of the clan turned away from his majesty, that is, his father, and began to support the capital gang that moved to them. She also said that the laws of the mafia are such that there cannot be two tigers on the same mountain, and when a new one comes, the old one must die. To which Yuji said that isn't the old man she the head of the local mafia. He must have a lot of people under his command, and why? He is afraid of the newcomer. To which she said that his bandits were also not stupid, and when they saw that their father had no support left, they became close to the gang that arrived. That's why she's worried because the leader of the new gang has long been hatching plans to overthrow his father. And this banquet is just a feast before the subsequent execution. And it turns out that her father hoped that she would be able to escape, but she simply cannot afford to wait and remain silent, and also watch as he is killed. She understands that there was no need to involve him in this dirty and dangerous business, but besides himself... She really doesn't have anyone who can help with this. Yuji understood everything, so he realized that he would have to help her, and in return she would simply smile and enjoy hugging her father, so he wants to help her. He decided to say that he understood the situation. Okay, let her relax while there is no one who will touch her, and also not the head of the mafia, that is, 
her father will not even lay a finger on her while he is nearby. They finally arrived at an estate in the suburbs. The butler as well as the shepherd said that they were there and now they could go there. But then Lenta immediately felt something was clearly wrong. She saw how these bunch of all sorts of people who were most likely from someone else's gang met her. Apparently they really expected that she would be next. She was serious about herself and did not show that she was somehow scared, although everything inside her was really twisted and she was very afraid. They were all really formidable, but Yuji didn't want to show himself at all. So he just walked along with her on his own and smiled at everyone, so to speak, giving everyone a welcoming look. After which she finally opened the doors and decided to see what was going on here. She saw her father sitting at the festive table and they all turned their attention to her. The father was surprised that Linda was even doing here, and she told him not to worry about it. He decided to ask why she came. He sent a man to warn her that she needed to run away. While they were arguing, Yuji was only thinking about how an old man who was so healthy and suddenly gave birth to such a beautiful daughter again. But he also saw something beautiful and was surprised at how great the food was. He understood that it had been a long time since he had eaten anything special on the way before the journey, and this had not happened for a long time. Therefore, while they were not arguing, he was also eating. Linda told her father that she was his daughter and how she could abandon her father at the most important moment of his life. To avoid this is not in her essence, but she will never do this because she is very worried about him. Then he said that it was well said, Miss Linda. He said that it's not for nothing that she is the daughter of an old man and she has a lot of energy. That's why he said that he had invited your whole family to this wonderful feast, so he didn't have to send for her on time. Of course, he doesn't want to seem rude, but it's too long since they dared to show up. While he was talking, he decided to ask Linda what kind of magnificent drink this is. It's some kind of juice, he said correctly, but for some reason it seemed to him to have a strange taste, to which she said that Yuji is a fruit wine from the Western continent. It's fast from him, and they are it, and it's better not to drink a lot of it, otherwise he will quickly get drunk, to which he already decided to ask her again about the wine. That means yes. He said it was an excellent wine with a little hiccup, after which he began to continue drinking as people who looked at him understood that this guy was laughing. They took a sip and was already drunk, and of course he's a funny little guy. One said, and the other only confirmed that he would still dare to interrupt them if he was already drunk and knee-deep. Of course, ha-ha, he laughed too. Yuji looked at them and didn't understand why he wasn't laughing, or had he just heard a funny joke. And also soon he felt some kind of blow from himself. It was quite painful. It showed him, but he didn't really understand anything. After which Yuji flew quite far away in a drunken state. Linda decided to scream because, what is he doing, Yuji? He's generally okay. Again, the small Yulman Theater. Yuji looked and realized why he was still here, but he said that, hello everyone, because he is a Gaufashai. He decided to say that anyway. Let them return to the topic of their relationships with girls, to which Yuji thought, why did he suddenly become more active here? To which he thought that that handsome and strong man like the Jalaiman should already have a lot of experience in this, to which he said that this is not entirely true. The boy said, what about kissing and everything like that? To which he said, well, to tell the truth, he only had this happen twice in this short period of time. He said that they saw how he painted over their not strongest brother to which he said what kind of strange feeling suddenly visited him. Back to the main point, he was beaten, and now he was essentially on the floor and couldn't do anything about it. This giant, or else, was thinking what he should do if he really suffered so much from such blows. He said that, damn, he hates people who interrupt him the most, and he turned out to be exactly that person. 
and Linda decided to say that he was a scumbag and decided to attack the drunken Yuji, after which someone decided to attack her from the side. Father, I immediately understood this and decided to protect her, and so that this would not happen. After which he made a supreme hurricane, all the waiters were in shock and did not know what to do in such situations. After all, they were ordinary workers who only worked here at night. They only thought that they were already regretting going. Even a triple fee for this, and the other, by the way, did not regret it. One guy just looked at it all and sipped wine and did not understand what was happening here. But he knew that the old man thought that they did not expect to eat tonight, right? While he was watching them fight, suddenly someone approached him. It was a girl who said to give way to the young people. After all, the old man, Neck, he understands everything perfectly well and should not interfere with them. To which the dear one said that in their world the weak always submit to the strong, and he has lost his support. So don't blame them. The third decided to attack him from above and tell him why they were even with him. With that, they must finish it off and be done with it then. After which, when he wanted to hit, he was able to dodge this blow. He understood that it couldn't be that simple. It was not for nothing that he was the head of the mafia. Therefore, he decided to say that he treated them well. If they want to take his life, then please, not his daughter, let them not touch him. To which they said that even if they apologize, the old man ordered from above to wipe everyone off the face of the earth. That is, this also applies to the girl. After thinking carefully, he decided to say that he would wipe his family off the face of the earth. He decided to tell Linda to stand aside for now, to which she wanted to tell her father not to tense up and start fighting alone. The guy wanted to show himself, because he might not survive anymore, but he wanted him to be able to protect his family. They decided to take out their swords and also defend themselves, since they understood that most likely things smelled like frying. He decided to attack them as hard as possible in order to end this all quickly. First, he defeated the first guy with one regular blow, while the other one swung at him. Then hit the sword with a low hook, breaking it into pieces using a normal hand. Then throw away that garbage. Well, also put this guy down so that he doesn't get back on his feet longer. They didn't understand how he could fight so well alone, but it was still clear that he was worthy of his past. He expected an attack, but he also expected them to be weaker than he thought. After all, if they turn out to be much stronger, then in this case he will not be able to resist them with anything. The one who was on the master's side realized that he was not really good. It was not for nothing that he became the head of the mafia to which Linda only confirmed his words, because Dad is really cool. Fu decided to say that these idiots can't do anything. They're just a bunch of disabled people. To which he said that, Mr. Hu, does he really want to fight him himself? He decided to introduce himself to him, more precisely, what he will become. It was his opponent. Come on, he suggested. He'll teach him a lesson himself once. He's got a pretty good trick up his sleeve. One of the boys realized what it was. Finally, he stood up and decided, show him what he learned in a couple of temporary days. The gentleman decided to throw a couple of knife throws to see how strong he was. By doing this before they flew, he was able to catch them with his hands and this was understandable. Only one of them was obviously too fast. And also, when the other one was flying, it actually just ricocheted off his stoves. Linda's father was incredibly shocked by how protected his skin was. He said that it wasn't a blow. It was just a small bruise, nothing more. The gentleman understood that since he was so sorry, who would regret that he was the head of the mafia with his power? After which he moved with incredible speed and said that maybe he would leave him alive. Well, of course, he doesn't promise. After all, he hit him with all his strength. Although, perhaps, it was still a little too strong, so as not to directly finish him off. Linda just shouted at him to be careful, 
but it was too late. She was just very worried about him. While he flew away, Yuji managed to catch him so that he would not crash into something, so as not to break everything for himself. Supporting him at such a speed, he was still able to stop him. This very head understood what it was. This boy, not such a simple guy. Since I was able to catch him so quickly. Or maybe he just thought Yuji said he was fine. Actually, then he hiccuped and said that, Lin, Dad. All the guys who looked at it from the outside understood that he was not, but the guy was heard calling the old man Dad. For some reason, he had not heard that he had a son. To something else, he said, what's there to think about? This is his son-in-law. A stranger would not go with him to a deadly feast. To which, when she heard that taking it meant that she would be his future wife, she was very worried about these words. To which Kuchar said that something was wrong. The media immediately looks at it all like that. He just wondered what was wrong with this guy. He punched him in the face as best he could. Survive after this. It would be necessary to move so well, too. He should have thought to find out more about what he is capable of. He decided to say that, hey, they give them another chance and let them get rid of them. To which they said, thank you, sir, although they will try to do it in the best possible way. After which he decided to attack him from behind with incredible speed. He thought that Wolf would be happy to complete this task. He realized that his killing intent was too high, so he decided that he would obviously be the one to suffer right now. This is exactly how he was cut into two halves of his body more than once, which is why he died. He understood that Alice would not like this if she saw this. After which he thought, Alice. Who is she? This guy thought dying. He could not even imagine that he could cut his colleague in half so quickly. They were all incredibly shocked by this. Linda couldn't believe that he could kill enemies so fast. He decided to ask if she saw how he killed the indestructible wolf with one blow, to which she said that, of course she saw it. Yes, who is he after all? To which he said, that's what he said, and laughed. After all, he had never seen such a strong thirst to kill. He just stinks of blood. This is really very unpleasant. Alice definitely wouldn't like this. And Sulphur, too. Yes, and he noticed that, yes, all three of them guys also reeked strongly of the same smell. Alice wouldn't like them either. They understood that it was worth killing him and attacking altogether. In this case, they have a chance. After which, attacking him all at once, they wanted to kill him as quickly as possible so that he would not interfere with them. But as a result, he cut off all four, even in literally four blows, one for each. He understood that this guy was incredibly strong, since he can cut anyone apart so easily. Linda and her father could not understand how strong this guy was. He just said that, Foo, well, this is how it turns out much cleaner in this establishment. The leader decided to ask the boy if he even knew who he was going against right now. She said that he knows himself from another weakling and also from a smell that he doesn't really like. After all, it definitely gives me even more of the same feeling as they do. So he wouldn't hold back against someone like him. Linda's father could not believe that the King of the Blade, the Indomitable Sword, these and other incredibly powerful techniques, they were simply legendary to which Linda just sparkled her eyes and realized that, after all, she knows how to choose men correctly. Finally, they were left alone, and this leader could not even imagine what he would do to someone like him, who had defeated all his minions. The head decided to ask him if he understood this guy, in order to understand a little what kind of enemy he had just made for himself to which he already answered that he seemed to look a little familiar. Okay, he's too cruel. Alice would be scared of someone like him. After he finished speaking, he decided to move very quickly and seemed to disappear right in front of him. And in fact, he ended up behind, 
what the head only realized now, because with his incredible speed he could not recognize another speed that was faster than him. The head saw how he ended up right behind him, so I decided to stop him a little. He decided to grab his sword and say that such a trinket, some kind of sword, wouldn't help him against him. To which Yuji realized that, wow, he didn't just kill him for nothing. This seemed quite surprising to him. The gentleman realized that this guy was clearly some kind of arrogant person. Therefore, he understood that he should be punished a little or, rather, punished by death. He said he better stop being arrogant. Then he hit him with his head so that he would fly away from here. But the boy realized that right now he would do something that he shouldn't. Although, to tell the truth, he didn't realize much, since he actually cut off his head from one wine. Now he stupidly moves on instinct, which is almost why right now he wasn't very mentally strong. But he couldn't control his powers either. This thug only said that although he did not fully understand what kind of powers he had, but since he had already decided to compete with him, he would regret it for the rest of his life. Not only Mr. Capella has his back, mind you. Yuji even said there that he was muttering behind his back. The head simply didn't understand. He thought that a normal person's cherry would have split long ago from such tension and strength and it behaves as if nothing had happened. Looks like I need to be tougher with him, he thought. He decided that right now he would have the opportunity to find out who he was by laughing, after which he decided to unleash his powers and turn himself several times stronger than he is now. The gentleman decided to cover his daughter with the help of his shield, and even then he could not cope with it, but it slowly began to crack. The Gi couldn't believe it. This can't be true. He understood that he was an incredible monster. This leader only laughed at how he had turned into an even bigger monster than before. Although this is his technique, it is actually superhuman. The leader said that it's great. He's got it. And right now he's stronger than anyone else can imagine. The boy decided to tell this guy if he knew how lucky he was. Before his death, he will be able to see his true appearance, because Yuji will say why he is the one who feels so bad. To which he said that then we need to open up a little something. Before this leader wanted to hit him with all his strength, Yuji decided to open his first seal. He didn't realize that he also had more strength, he thought after he said those words. To which he became a little stronger, well, one hundred times and now he could defeat him with ease. But this is no level support of forces. He just decided to open part of his forces from his apostle. He didn't understand how this was possible. He was able to destroy his armor, and just by holding his hand, blood flowed from his stone skin. He could not even imagine that he had already become a beast, but this was not enough. After Yuji threw him far enough, he realized that this guy was even more of a monster than himself. Yuji became a little cold-blooded after opening the first seal, and he also didn't know what to do with him right now. The leader didn't even know that he was a better monster already. He will run away right now, then later he will regret that he died so early. He knew that, damn it. Even before he became stronger, he was already faster than him. There's no escaping him now. The guy realized that with the two of them standing there, he could do something incredibly fast to you, and because of it, he could escape. He remembered that he only needed to take both of them hostage, and then he could let him go and he would escape. He decided to throw the old man further away so that he would get out of the way, and he wanted to pick up Linda in order to take her hostage. She already understood that the guy didn't care what he was. He decided to say that if he didn't let him leave today, he would definitely kill his future wife. To which she just laughed and said that he was adored, my friend, because she is not Yuji's wife at all, and not even his girlfriend, at most a friend, an ordinary friend. To which he realized that why was she blathering there anyway? She was trying to deceive him. She had it in her head, 
If he didn't want to save her, they would both regret it. After which, when he saw that he had decided to take a hostage, he turned into words against an immense monster who would kill anyone who now does not do what he wants. He decided to say that he dares to threaten him directly now, someone else's life. The leader did not know that he could be so strong, because now he understood that if not the hostage, then he would have killed him on the spot. To which he said that yes, he is smart, and he really is threatening him now, and he understood that there was nothing to lose, there was no turning back. He decided to tell the sylph to immediately summon and kill him on the spot. The guy just decided to make an airflow, after which he went straight to this chapter, after which he began to die from such a blow. Linda didn't know what to do. Still, she has a place in his heart only for Alice. But for him she is just a fleeting acquaintance and means nothing to her. And if anyone should be blamed, she should blame herself for not meeting him earlier. At that moment he probably killed them both. After the explosion, everything here in its path was too very dangerous. Everything in the building was just a hole. Everyone could not imagine what had happened, what had just happened, what had happened at all. He seemed to hear the boss's screams. They all could not imagine how this was even possible. The father was very worried about Linda and did not know where she was. But suddenly he saw that she was not harmed at all. And the fact is that the sylph is a spirit, so she knows who to attack and who is not worth it, so she just put a shield on him before and also simply bypassed her, killing only that bastard. Linda did not understand what was happening and did not understand how she could even survive after this. She asked if she was still alive, to which her father paid attention and realized that he used the sword to perform a technique based on the influence of the heart, he did not leave a wet spot on Hu without hurting her. Yuji told her to forgive him, because he hick, he scared her. Most likely, is she okay? And in general, should she not be afraid of him after that? To which Linda just looked at him with admiration and said that she underestimated him before. What kind of miracle is he doing? legendary things with his sword. This is even more than a miracle, after which he decided to hug her as an apology and tell her that everything was fine. Having hugged her, he decided to say that they would no longer dare to plot this from Sulina, seeing that they were only afraid of him even more at all of them, and understood that, most likely, no, they would not. He decided to ask them. They understood him well. After all, Today Linda is her person. If anyone wants to kill her, then he will become his enemy. And so, if one of them thinks that he has a lot of health, let him come up and try. Long burp. In fact, even though he was drinking and saying all this, in his drunken state it was clear that he was speaking from the heart, so she was upset by such words. And then, finally, they returned back to the hotel. When he returned back, he didn't remember anything and was only thinking about, oh, why are both of his arms hurting so much? And he realized that he couldn't move anymore. Looking to the right, he saw Uff Silphy running into his bed again or something. And on the other side, he saw, oh, so it's Linda. She looks a little strange, actually. Okay, although after thinking for a while, he realized something. Wait a minute. What were they doing here last night after all? Trying to remember, he remembers exactly that yesterday he and Linda went to a feast in a rich house and tried to convince the bandit leader to let her father go. And in my opinion, all this happened in a fog. And then he, it seems, drank a glass of this strange juice. And then Linda said something else. Linda finally woke up and said, Oh, is he really awake now? And she said to the owner, why has he been mumbling there since the very morning? He decided to think, because he should think about everything first before telling them anything. If he's not mistaken, he got pretty drunk yesterday, so it turns out he doesn't remember anything. Well, he looked down and saw people in a carriage, so it wasn't all that bad, I guess. But still, 
He thought that everything seemed to be fine and good with the city. At least he had not destroyed everything to the ground, as in the hanging city. Suddenly he felt something else, someone's hand, which reached out to hug him. Linda decided to come up to him and hug him from behind, saying that he better understands the words that he told her yesterday, which are now very important for her. And then, however, he was in Africa a little, and he decided to ask her what he told her yesterday. Mrs. Linda said that Yuji then said that today she is his person, after which the Sylphie writes down everything, even when she is in the sword state, and she said that she definitely has everything written down here. Yuji decided to say, wait a minute, how did he finish that glass yesterday? He doesn't remember anything else at all, yes. She decided to say that there was no need to say anything, Yuji. Linda said that she knew that he would take back his words. It's a pity, of course, that she already believed in them, but she said that she would not insist that he be held responsible for this. She will wait for the day when he himself wants to accept her. On that very day and all this that happened last night, they cleaned it all up, and they said to be careful and let them carry it there. In short, put it behind the seat after that. And suddenly they noticed that they had guests, to whom he was very glad. As he previously called him, Father, he said that Mr. Yuji hoped that they all had a good rest after yesterday. The boy said yes, very well, laughing at his dialogue. He decided to state that he helped him a lot last night, Mr. Yuji, to which he laughed and said that he was very glad that everything ended well and thought that, although he didn't remember anything at all, everything seemed to work out. The gentleman decided to tell Yuji that he, the remaining people, are fully grateful to him for his help. Everyone discussed everything, it was decided, and he should become the head of the Zhaoshan Mafia. To which Yuji could not expect this and said that, no, no, running the Mafia would be too troublesome for him. He's not interested in that kind of thing. To which he said that, if he really didn't want to delve into this at all, he could just go along with them, and he wouldn't have to do anything. He will also take care of business, and they will also take care of everyone. It's just that he will be a part, as well as the head, and will be responsible for them, simply. Linda shouted and told Yuji to agree, and let him truly become him. And also, she said that now, because everyone knows that she is her person, and it won't be very good if he doesn't agree. She began to feel sad, and he immediately saw it and said that, Okay, okay, he already agrees, just let her not cry, and now he can't. After all, when young babies cry, he really feels a little uneasy. Well, she was glad. He told her that she knew that he was the best person in the world, to which the old man showed that he was handsome, baby, and he thought that it seemed like he was back in the sticky, troublesome bullshit, and he hoped that it wouldn't go too far. Also after a while, two weeks later, Bimo Castle. A little time later, that same Kyle met you at the same academy, along with some strangers. He decided to ask, is it done? To which he said that she did everything as he said, Uncle. Princess Luna already had her things. She didn't suspect anything. But what Uncle said was great. In the meantime, let him be more diligent in the laboratory. Let him work on his experiments there. To which he said that there is. Looking at the note that his postal bird had just brought, he was surprised at what was written there. His young man said, What is it, Uncle? To which he said, Who? The mafia leader they chose is already dead. They looked in surprise. He could not believe that he could die. Could it be that Capella, who was secretly covering up their affairs, sensed something? To which he said that this non-entity was being told that someone killed him in a 1.1 fight, and it is still not clear what kind of person did it. It was clear to him that, after all, this non-entity was their prototype, people endowed with superpowers, cultivation. How did this happen? The uncle decided to tell his nephew that, okay, better. 
I will consider this a manufacturing defect. He died like that. Nothing can be done. Also, he was generally the imperial sage, and Chester is sick. The man decided to say that they needed to track his killer. Soon he will be on the altar of five stars. To which Kyle replied that, after all, if it weren't for this girl, this time he would have represented the Imperial Institute at the competition. So he asked his uncle when they could return the safe. Can they really afford to keep the family's main jewel in the hands of this rubbish? To which the uncle said, and it's all him, and he allowed him to take Siffy. That's why he has no business here. Grandfather decided to say that he understood that Asus was protecting him in this matter too, and there was no need to rush at all. He must also understand that there has been no news from the old man lately. The search continues. In the meantime, I heard that Sarah Charlotte is using the duties of the director of the academy. Oh yes, also for those who have forgotten, Asus was the director of the academy, and it turns out that Messers killed him. More precisely, better, but his death was hidden. Uncle decided to say that very soon Asus will understand that he cannot protect anyone at all, laughing at the end. Meanwhile, Sulphur was on some mountain, which most likely either was some kind of hike for the students, or she was simply resting here in the wild. Someone decided to ask the director if everyone had already rested enough because she said that it's good then inform everyone that they are continuing the hike. Having looked closely at how the birds were flying, she was only thinking about how Yuji was doing. After all, if you think about it like that, a whole month has already passed, and she doesn't even know whether her stupid student found Alice or there was no news at all from him, and she makes her think that he worries her, of course. Meanwhile, Yuji hugged Agi, who finally woke up. He only asked her to stop and he couldn't do it anymore, and she just continued to scream, saying that he was useless, he was dead, even though she had been stuck in the room for an eternity, she wanted to check on him how much she had recovered, but he couldn't stand it even for a minute, he was already suffocating. After which she decided to say that, well, what kind of cold covered her body then it seems like it's something difficult, she thought, to which he decided to wait until the Silphy wiped his nose after the blood that had flowed from him before answering. Alice decided to say that it was the dark energy of the underworld that influenced her so much. She decided to explain that Pierce was also familiar as a vampire of the underworld. It was probably he who left that dark energy in her body. To which Aggie said, this is what it was, she remembers during a fight with this empire, she felt that her body was getting colder and colder. Apparently he was already trying his tricks then. To which Yuji said that since her body was almost cleared of dark energy, it was time for them to return to the academy. Why is it time to return? They spent so much time here and haven't even had a good time yet. Maybe she suggested going for a walk through the streets before leaving. To which Yuji thought and realized that this could be an option. Plus, Aggie decided to offer something, saying that it would not delay them for long and would not affect the time of their journey in any way. She also said that she heard people at the hotel praising the local evening market. It's nearby and it's a lot of fun, and she decided to ask if he wants to go on a romantic date with Alice A. To which Yuji said that if that's the case, of course they'll stay for another evening, which Alice couldn't expect from such a thing that she wasn't asked and she'd just go on a date with him, although she wasn't against it, of course, but still. After which evening finally came and it was quite noisy here, but there were a lot of people passing by them. It was quite fun, even Alice decided to ask, and only the two of them, but maybe about, and where do Sylvia and Aggie get to? to which he said that there was such a thing. They said that they were very busy right now, so they let them go for a walk together, and they seemed to have to come to the, that in his mind he thought that great job, Aggie. Meanwhile, 
The two of them were watching from behind, and Agi even said that Alice had not been in a good mood these days, so let her take the moment and relax her thoroughly. They had fun together, walked around their home, bought cotton candy, and also had fun together. They all laugh very hard about what kind of tricks there are and all that kind of evening. They looked at each other with beauty and also looked at a bunch of brilliantly and also light bulbs. It was just a wonderful evening. They were very strong together and had a good time together. Yuji, of course, was glad that Alice was really very happy that evening. After all, at least now she had smiled all the time lately. But he also looked at her and said, Alice has something wrong in her soul, to which she looked at him and wondered what it was. He decided to say that she still walks alone and is so sad they are all worried about her, to which he replied that no, she was completely fine. She was just a little nervous when Aggie felt bad. And so she feels quite well and is even glad that everything turned out this way, but the truth was still a little scary about that very last apostle who was all behind them, but she did not dare to tell him this. Taking him at his word, she thought that she was just thinking that one day the twelfth apostle would come after them to settle scores, that they would oppose him while they would fight him. She was really a little worried about this and the revenge of the legendary apostle, and not being too weak to fight him to which he decided to reassure Alice again. He told her, and he also decided to tell her to believe him instead of worrying about a place that is unclear when it will happen, let them better enjoy the joy that they have now, and yes, he is not weak, as she thought to herself. At that moment she looked at Yuji and didn't understand where he got such self-confidence. At that moment she told him that he was right. The main thing is to be with the person you love, and even if you have to die for this, but she is not afraid now. After which she wanted only one kiss from her betrothed, to which he immediately drew attention to this and was surprised at first, but then understood what she wanted. He didn't think that it could be so fast. This situation was clearly not for him, but he really wanted to, but was afraid of really ruining everything. Therefore, he understood that this was really the moment when he should do it himself. He decided to pluck up a little courage and began to do this when suddenly they heard a stranger's voice who said that they never thought that they would see such a beautiful, innocent girl at the market. After which this voice ruined the whole moment, and he continued to do so, because it was a wise decision to run away together to have fun. He decided to introduce himself that here he was in front of them, their humble servant, Groot of the Imperial Academy of Magic, fourth year, Trump class. Can he invite her to spend this wonderful evening with him, miss? To which she did not expect this and asked the student, so the Imperial Academy, it turns out, right? To which he said correctly, miss. And so it is. This is how a coincidence happens. Yuji looked at this and said that they too were students of the Imperial Academy of Magic, with such a look that he wanted, as if he could just destroy them now, because he could simply by his presence ruin the most important moment of his life, perhaps. The boy just thought what this student was doing with such a beauty like her. This soil decided to say that he was talking to this beautiful girl, and not to him, the idiot, and let him know his place. It's better to move away from her. To which he realized that he wanted to aggression him. So Alice told Eugene not to worry about it. He was just a fool. But not both decided to come up to him and also say that he at least knew who they were. They came to the selections for school competitions, and now they will participate in the pentagram itself. He also told the other that their captain was generally recognized as the strongest in their school. To which he said the strongest, which means yes, that's how it is. He decided to ask if he wanted problems or something, since he was talking to him like that. Yuji said, huh, laughing. He decided to say that they were scammers. In fact, they dared to hide behind the name of the Great Imperial Academy of Magic. 
Although you want to deceive everyone, let them do it, of course, but he won't believe them. Alice said that they were liars or something, to which she said that, of course. After all, who will look at these clowns? They only wear uniforms at the academy, and it's a long way from Astana to their academy. Who would even think of walking around here in uniform? To which Alice thought that it was indeed true. No one would just walk around the city in uniform. The boy got even more angry and said that, how dare he, without evaluating him and calling him a fraudster. Then he said that he was now a corpse. After which she told him to take care of himself. Well, as you know, he naturally disappeared and quickly got close to him in order to quietly throw him away from here so that he would not reveal himself as the most powerful magician in the academy. Well, really, he couldn't do it quietly. Therefore, I decided to throw him not at all quietly away from here, from which he flew far enough away from Yuji and all his students. He said that they are saying that they are scammers. So yes, how can the strongest student of their academy be such a weakling like him? At this moment, in fact, Yuji did not act in the best way, because he understood how much difference they had in strength, but he decided to show off to Alice and say whether she saw how cool it was or not. To which he also said that Alice, she really doesn't have to worry about anything, because the first of the twelve apostles is true. In general, he did this to prove to her that he was really strong and truly an apostle. But sure, it was a pretty, pretty brutal experience, but it didn't knock him back that much. Although for a magician he must survive such a blow. And while they were calling the director, they saw her and said that, Hey, what are you three doing here? After which one of the students told the director to punish him. After all, this guy beat up Groot, their commander. After looking there for a bit, he said, Why else did they run to complain? Then suddenly the director saw it there and said that he was a fool. After all, he saw the beautiful Sulphur, who said that she thought they would have a very long conversation. He couldn't expect it to be Master Sarah. Alice said that this is Teacher Sarah. It's impossible that we wouldn't meet in such a place. After which they finally came to the academy and began to talk among themselves. Yuji began to make excuses for her and tell Master Sarah not to be so angry with him. But she said that how could she not be angry when they said that they would go look for Alice, but disappeared for a whole month? Moreover, he sits and worries about them until the whole empire is having fun here, that is. To which Yuji said in response that they were just thinking about returning to the academy. It's true. She said that where did he end up going to look for Alice? She went to Lorenz's estate, but everything had gone downhill a long time ago. Yuji, most likely Alice took his futolka. The guy understood what was so familiar. He realized that Alice did not want him to reveal the whole truth. Well, good. You see, they spent a lot of effort to solve all this. This is even hard to believe, in fact. So he decided to lie saying that Alice, Alice's family, basically moved to a secluded place in the east, so they only needed time, and she knows that he gets sick on the train, that's why they were delayed. After thinking a little, and in principle, he told the truth. He said that it's okay, they returned alive and healthy, that's the main thing. Then someone knocked on the door. The chairman came in, and they all came in here to talk to the director. Sarah decided to ask how Groot was doing, to which they said that no threats to life had been identified, but he was seriously injured and would not be able to continue his journey. And of course he won't take part in the competition. The director was very happy that Yuji was able to cripple her student, and because of this he ruined everything. That's what she thought. Well, she said, it's very, very unfortunate. This is all because of what happened. Who could allow this to happen? Oh, oh, oh. Yuji clearly understood what he was doing right away. Who would have thought that in Asta you could meet a person dressed in the uniform of their academy? Their team passed the most difficult test and became the best, thanks to the guys who had to represent their academy at the highest competition. 
Of course, they were wearing uniforms. Oh, Alice decided to ask what kind of pentagram this is anyway. Well, what did she say that the pentagram is a great celebration for the entire continent, held once every three years between the five best academies? In general, it is held in honor of the great heroes of the past, ancient seals and all that. But essentially, it is a competition in the magical arts. Only two weeks left before the start of the competition, and their best team was out of action. One of the chairmen said that since such a thing can give a student a chance to replace him coolly and perform, he seems to be a capable fighter. To which she looked and asked maybe this was good news, although they really didn't expect that he would be with them. One of the students immediately refused and said that they would allow this guy to join their team. Alice just remained silent and came up with something. The girl said that, if possible, she would like to participate in the competition together with Yuji, to which they said what? They all couldn't bear it. They even said that, as a joke, each school only has three slots in the competition, and they really decided to choose the first first graders they came across and replace them. To which she said that since it is so, she decided to ask them if she would prove to everyone that she was stronger than them. In this case, then she will be able to replace them in competitions. The boy could not believe what the girl was saying that she would be stronger than all of them taken. The young man told her that she greatly underestimated people like them because she was just a freshman. Dana didn't understand why Alice decided to do this, because she's usually very quiet and calm. Why is she suddenly so impulsive today and gets into trouble? Does she really want to protect her stupid student? The girl said that since she was ready to arrange a fight with them and try to find out the strengths of each of them, to which the boy responded by wondering why this was so. She decided to say that if this does not suit them, then in this case they will not automatically lose and will not participate in these competitions. To which it would be better to say that in this case he wants to offer something interesting. He decided to say if Aggie could take part in this fight. By the way, where am I now, in fact? She was now Sylphie in the city, and they didn't know where Yuji and Alice had gone. Soon the next morning, she finally found out what was really happening. She decided to say that they just went out for a little walk around the market with the Sylphie and so much had happened in such a short time. She also said that as soon as she returned from something, she suddenly had to challenge the senior students to a fight. And after that, she also found out that she would have to participate in some kind of competition, but she was out of luck. At that moment, Alice thought that she was saying one thing, and she herself was not at all averse to waving her hands. Elisa decided to tell her that participating in the competition is a great experience. Vita can compete with the best among the best and hone her skills in practice. And also, yes, the reward is good. If they miss this, they will greatly regret it later. To which she said that she really would like to know how strong she is now, and if she suddenly wins, they can get his permission. Alice didn't understand who she was talking about, so she decided to ask who she was talking about what to do and laughed and said that it was nothing. She decided to say that their things would soon be packed and Yuji was still not visible. She told her that Yuji had left since the morning and said that before leaving he needed to say one loud thing to a local friend. The girl didn't expect anything to suddenly happen when he managed to make friends here. After which he suddenly stood behind him and said that he heard it here, she thought it was strange that he had friends here. When he heard it, she was a little scared of it, to be honest. Frightened, she just screamed and said where he came from. The pervert scared her to death. Why did Alice laugh a little, and Yuji also said that he was also to blame? Dana decided to ask if everyone was ready and they needed to go to the competition right now. To which they replied that, yes, everything seemed to be fine, then she said they could leave right now. Naturally, several corrections were sent from different academies.
Meanwhile, Linda only missed Yuji and understood that she had probably caused so much suffering before and that God wanted to punish her for causing her to experience such suffering. She just couldn't understand where her Yuji had gone. Let him not forget, please, that Lita is always waiting for her here. The girl also decided to tell her father that he should do all these dirty things. She wants to leave them. If she still can't quit, she's going to solve them the way she wants. Well, the father did not mind and said that it was good, but he accepts her decision and can do whatever she prefers to be necessary. Meanwhile, she correctly set off beyond the horizons of the city and began to ride right in some mountains. Dana decided to tell them that it was still quite far away and that it would be a long way to get to him. If they had any questions about magic, let them ask her right now. She would try to help them as much as possible and explain everything. Yuji immediately decided to say that he had no questions about magic, but he had some others. He had heard that there was a strange legend about magic seals in Fenmo. It turns out that the pentagram appeared because of them. She decided to say that it's good that no one can hear them. If someone found out, then that her student doesn't know such basic things and would be laughed at right now. So she said that, Okay, since they're on the way anyway, let him tell this a short story to cut down on time. The fact is that at the point of contact between their empire and the royal Kenisma and the Maidan, there is a city called Martha, otherwise known on their mainland as Fen. In general, according to legend, around the year 2000, the existence of the human race, a huge beast appeared here, similar to a mountain ram, all of itself burning with a black flame, but it was not at all like ordinary magical creatures. It had an intellect much higher than that of a human, and it was impossible to kill it if not try in general. He almost sent humanity, who had so laboriously turned the continent away from magical creatures, back into oblivion. People called this incredible creepy creature a demon. Yuji began to understand this story a little and decided to ask if this demon then they really exist. But what happened next? Which of the apostles destroyed him? He also understood the thoughts that the damn thing acted stupidly. He needs to be calmer. Something he is actually behaving unreasonably. The AG girl said that what other apostles were there, because at that time people themselves dealt with this demon, to which Alice said, does she really know this legend too? The lady said that of course she knows, and it seems that she heard mom tell her this story as a child, but she doesn't remember the details at all, just something vague. Dano decided to say that at that time, the five most powerful magicians on the continent were accused of casting the most powerful entangling spell, the pentagram. In the end, they imprisoned him underground. And also after this, five magicians agreed to meet in Moon every three years and check whether the pentagram is intact after they died. Their children lived out the tradition and it eventually evolved into the current celebration and competition. Now Yuji realized what it was. This is how a terrible demon is now trapped somewhere under Martha. Teacher Sarah said that this is a legend. Whether this is true or not, they are unlikely to find out. After which you will say that, okay, now it's time for them to start preparing. There is little time. Meanwhile, in some nice building with a good view, Her Majesty decided to ask if the Imperial Magic Academy had not yet arrived in their place, to which the girl said that Her Majesty had not yet received news today, so most likely they had not arrived yet. She said not to worry. It's a common question, if anything happens. And suddenly she saw that they had arrived after all. Alice decided to whisper in his ear to register and take the keys. And also so that Yuji immediately carries Aggie on the bed and she will not be well. Well, he just nodded and realized that it was good. The lady decided to say that she was currently providing her services to two participants in the competition of the Imperial Academies of Magic. And who else are they? To which the other two said that guests flooded the city during the celebration. 
Therefore, hotels have allocated two floors for participants with competitive teams, and the rest, too, accept clients as usual. The girl decided to think that there are so many girls around. This is not very good, in fact. After which Yuji accidentally sneezed, realizing that someone definitely remembers him, but it was not clear to him who. After which they all dispersed in all directions. Agi decided to say that he was a pervert. Was it really not enough for Alice alone to leave the other beautiful girls before she immediately became dumbfounded in front of them? Which he didn't expect at all. He said, let them talk nonsense. He was just looking around, that's all. To which she said to be afraid of her and very much, since she doesn't want the whole truth to be on Alice's top. Meanwhile, Alice decided to introduce herself and say that they were members of the competitive brigade and they were from the empire of the Imperial Academy of Magic of the Frame Empire. May she be kind. Yes, they have keys to their rooms, to which she was surprised and did not even realize right away that the Imperial Academy was Frame. After waiting a little, she saw something else that proved what Alice had just said. She was able to see the director of their academy, and Sarah also decided to ask if they had any problems, to which she said no, everything was fine. After which I decided to say that everyone is welcome to their town. Marta, she has already registered them. Here are their keys to the rooms. Well, I must say that it's excellent. Thanks, her. So they arrive, unpack their luggage, and then invite everyone to dinner with sweets to which the Aggies immediately lit up, because sweets, that is, yes, cool, although suddenly she began to think about it, to which Alice decided to ask what was wrong with Yuji. Looking down, he saw how the sylph also wanted to eat sweets. Of course, it was like it was filled with all these academic people. Clicked. There was a long line and it was very difficult to get into any restaurant. Dana did not expect that the hotel said that business was going well at this canteen. What is needed, I didn't think that they would spend half a day in line just to eat. Finally, they brought their luxurious dishes, for which they could at least lick their fingers. And she told her that the dish seemed really okay, although he wouldn't be able to tell from Yuji's face. Looking a little carefully, he saw that Sylphiae didn't want to eat it at all now. It's strange that she doesn't want to eat, although she's usually so cheerful about food. Having tried it, Agi said that this dish has a strange taste, like the most ordinary one, but then it's astringency. I decided to bring it a little closer and realized what kind of smell this dish had. To which one of the neighboring tables, a man, decided to say that it was their first time. Well, everything is very simple here. Those who come here for the first time always react this way. And not only with their appearance they let us know that this was definitely not the case here, but they said that the specialty here is that their dishes contain medicinal herbs. They strengthen the body and satisfy the feeling of hunger. He decided to say that this was new to most people, but when they finish eating they feel that both body and spirit have been nourished with strength as well as vigor, and they will want to eat again and again. From such words, Agi realized that even both of them valued her, and so I'll say, well, then she'll try, after which I decided to stop her so that she would not make a mistake. The boy told him not to touch anything, and there is poison in the dishes, but one day she will become dependent on these dishes. That same buyer did not understand what he was saying, from what translation it should be poison. Magic was very scared because she had just swallowed a piece before and thought that she was going to die, to which Alice was worried about her, but Yuji managed to reassure her that this is not the poison that immediately leads to death. You need to eat a large amount for this to happen, after which someone decided to bother Yuji, asking him if he could do it. The gentleman who paid attention decided to say that he had just heard him pronounce that there is poison in people, and now I dare to taste them myself. 
he decided to ask if they could explain why they had come to this conclusion in the first place. This young gentleman, his name is Laser. Looking closely, Yuji was actually shocked that such a person was near him, although in reality he had nothing to say to him. Well, after thinking a little, he decided that, okay, in fact, everything is very simple. They know everything with him, to me, a break and a raincoat. But who among them knows that their juice can be used to produce poison that can cause addiction in humans? After all, everything is quite simple here. When taken inside in a short, urgent period, it allows a person to fall into euphoria. But with frequent use, it causes darkening of the skin, depletion of a person's muscles, desiccation of spirit and body, prolonged depression and withdrawal symptoms begin, after which the person craves only one thing, to taste the poison again. To which this man said that he, he just did something wrong. If you decide to show it, he will say that this is the blue liquid, and I top myself. Any oil, it does not mix with water. If they go to the kitchen right now, I'm sure they'll find a lot of interesting things there. To which all the guests decided to get up from the table and said that the bastards they put poison in the dish so that they think about their eatery so that they die here and try all the dishes of the other. I'll just tell you the main one. Quickly let them be the chef. After which the boss came and said what was going on here. Who dares to make a scandal in his establishment and they also know that he is. He looked carefully at the Lord at the laser and then decided to calm down a little. I decided to say that he was also asking if something was going on at all, and if this guy hadn't discovered that in people they would all be dead here. After he heard what this guy said, he began to sweat sharply and realized what kind of poison it was. What kind of poison is this? This is complete nonsense. He decided to say that, hey, don't let them believe him, because his words are not true. He probably just wants to open a restaurant too and is jealous of his business. Scoundrel, ready to use any means to harm them. Age decided to scream and say what he was talking about. Whether he believes it or not, she'll rip his tongue out if he says another word. After which those boys were not at a loss and very quickly found this poison, and there was quite a lot of it. They quickly found this poison and decided to say, well, how will he even explain this? Then just don't say that it's not his, since he's been eating here for three months already. Somehow, he is very familiar with this taste. They both decided to tell the guards not to let him go, let them detain him and not let him leave, because he said that, no, no, this cannot happen. He told her to Mr. Laser. He really didn't want to poison anyone. Looking at his pathetic excuses, he realized that he was not worthy of being the master of this restaurant. Then he pointed his sword at him and hit him. They both thought that he had killed him. Did he really kill him? The gentleman stated that he apologizes, but he and his family invested in this canteen. They didn't think that this fat man would do his dark deeds behind their backs. Today he personally punished him for his great-grandfather's deeds. She told everyone that the laser is from the kingdom of Kenneth. The gentleman decided to praise the young man, saying that, to be honest, he had no idea and was pleasantly surprised when he was able to identify the poison with his knowledge. Obviously, he has a knack for botany, young man. After which the speech laughed and said that she really wanted to invite him to Canis with him to which he said that it was not interesting. Eugia said that he smelled of the same rubbish and he destroyed the main witness in a second. And if everything had worked out, then he was the person who started all these poisonings. Having only laughed a little, he could not even imagine that this boy would be able to identify him as a participant, or rather, the main participant in these atrocities. Therefore, looking at him again, he decided to say that he refused him, and moreover he said that the words he was saying were not worth it. Isn't he afraid now that he can do anything now? He decided to say that he would never leave this dining room again.
after which someone decided to stab him with this same blade, which was flying right behind his back. Of course, Alice and Age were afraid for him, because they didn't know what he would do now. But it was not the gentleman himself who said this, but someone else, and he decided to ask who he was. After which someone approached them and said that now the city of Marta is under the jurisdiction of the Fram Empire, and she doesn't think that a representative of the kingdom of Kenneth should arrange prices here, much less kill people. Therefore I decided to say that, yes, Prince Laser is himself. And I couldn't even think that it was him. The gentleman decided to say that their highness Luna was absolutely wrong. Nogi couldn't believe that Your Highness Luna was the second heir to the throne of their empire, to which Dana understood that she was second, yes, but in essence there was no difference with first place. After all, everyone has long known that all that the first heir, Prince Mars, is capable of is drinking and overeating. Luna decided to tell him not to follow her, and also not to stutter in front of her. After all, they came to defend the honor of the empire on the pentagram, and he opens his hands and wants to start a war between two countries. To which the boy said that the princess, of course, loves to joke. He came to watch the competition for you, and their wedding has already been announced. Well, what kind of war can there be, for mercy's sake, he said. Cyril couldn't understand only one thing. What a fucking wedding! She decided to ask Luna. She is, after all, the generally recognized heir to the imperial throne, and if you marry her to King Kenneth, it will work. To which she interrupted her and told her to forgive the Grey One, but she did not have time to convince her. She will explain everything a little later. Yes, she just didn't understand what to say to her, but what did Yuji say to her not to worry about it? The guy said that he definitely wouldn't live long. I think a couple of days will pass after the wedding, and Luna will already be a widow. Hearing this, the gentleman decided to ask Yuji what he was saying there. Also, the girls who defended her also could not understand what this boy had just said with his tongue. The gentleman said that he had just taken pity on him in the presence of Princess Luna and did not take his life, but he was simply with a madwoman and did not value her at all. So let him change only for himself, that he decided to anger him even more. After which Yuji said what Prince Laser means. That's right, he would advise him to be calmer, otherwise he might not be able to hold back either. After all, he often wakes up in a cold sweat from nightmares. He doesn't have enough air or what. Yes, and it puts pressure on your chest, although your heart suddenly beats much faster. And also, as soon as you get a little excited, blood comes out, Yuji said correctly. The gentleman could not understand where. How does he even know this? To which he said, well, what next? It smells very strongly of medicine, and every medicine, as you know, has side effects. He decided to ask again, does he look like a fool for feeding him strange drugs? He would have fooled him less and simply overexerted himself or was tired, that's all. The guy understood and thought about what he said, which is true. He has several hundred polar bears trying various medicines. If there is poison somewhere, it's definitely not in him. Yuji decided to say that yes, yes, of course, at least he himself believes in it, all medications have side effects, and they don't necessarily start working immediately. Even if it is residue from the ingredients used, even if it is dust raised during the creation of the powder, everything contains some poison. The prince only became angrier and realized that this guy was getting on his nerves. But it's better to continue saying that the danger of some poisons does not appear in the very first minutes, but it accumulates, collects in the body, and when symptoms appear, then it's already very close. The boy didn't understand what the hell. After all, he created thousands of drugs, and now he doesn't even know which of them is the problem. So he decided to suddenly ask him to save him, 
to which he said that why would that be? He decided to understand that since he understood from one smell what the servants were poisoned with, he would be able to find out everything and, if he saved him, he would give him everything he wanted. He'll get it right away, or he'll have to blame himself. This answer definitely took him by surprise. The girls decided to approach him, and to be honest, they surprised him. After all, Alice, yes, let him go out first and have dinner. It's impossible. Something is bound to happen. To which O.K. said, she confirmed that Yuji should move away from here. His Majesty himself will beat this guy's head off so that he begins to obey him. To which the guards decided to tell His Majesty to bring something better. Let them think carefully. Maybe this guy is just talking nonsense. Or maybe it would be better to first return his palace and come for examination and pretend doctors. To which he said not to shut up already. He knows whether there is poison in it or not. Tell Yuji that he just needs to save him from the poison, and he promises the honor of the second prince of the kingdom of Kennis. Gold, handsome man, titles, everything he wants and can get. To which he said that he could get whatever he wanted, so yes. He decided to ask, is it really all he wants? Therefore, since this is the case, he wants him to break off his engagement with Luna himself. For this he will receive a recipe for getting rid of his poison. Will it do? he asked the gentleman. To which he shouted that he wanted him to cancel the wedding with Luna. He said he would never do such a thing. And Sarah immediately realized that now the Fram Empire was in turmoil inside, and outside there was aggression and quarrels. And if the moon refuses the wedding, the outbreak of war is more than likely. But if the laser itself breaks it, this is just a great option. Therefore Dana realized that her stupid student can sometimes really use his brain. So, she said that he doesn't want it the way he wants it, whatever he wants. To which the gentleman replied that if only he could cure him, fine, he agreed to cancel the wedding. After which he said that there are two recipes here. One will help the laser get rid of the poison, the other is for all the visitors to this eatery who managed to eat here. He gave one to them, and they thanked him for saving them from the poison. And he also said that this remedy will help get rid of the poison, but will strike some organs as soon as the engagement is officially canceled. He will give him the second part of the prescription for a medicine useful for the internal organs. To which he said that what else is this? He does not believe the prince's promises. Yuji just smiled and said that it was just in case. The prince took this recipe and said that he was canceling the wedding, as they had agreed. But as for the things that happened in this dining room, although he was not aware, he will compensate for all the losses suffered by the citizens of the empire. After which, he finally went home. All he thought was that he was the disciple of the rotten witch Yuji, right? The boy immediately understood that it would be better if his medicine helped him too, otherwise they would find out how the deception of the royals would end. And soon everything became dark and everything was extremely ready for the holiday. Luna didn't realize that it was her helpless brother's idea. He found a certain strange gentleman who invited her to marry Prince Leather in exchange for asylum in the kingdom of Kennis. She decided to say that she already knows three clans. The mystery has come together in the hands of the father, or the happiness of the country's power is controlled by General Isis. The royal family is now in danger. This is why her father cares about her the most, and only thinks that she is better off hiding in the kingdom of Kennis than remaining in danger in a collapsing empire. To which she said that the emperor doesn't know who this leaser is. The lady said that Lezer has a pretty good reputation, and if she had not sent people to find out more about him, they would never have known about his evil and deceit. Yeah, she said, doesn't that mean they just sold her? To which Luna said that she agreed with that gentleman's assumption. If she manages to strengthen her position in the kingdom, then she will be able to use the country's military power to help the imperial family. So, thanks to Dana, as well as her student, she is able to get rid of the troubles and the engagement. 
but in this way the royal family crisis returns to its original point. She asks, By the way, Sarah, where is teacher Asus now? I haven't heard from him for three months now. It's true, she said. She's afraid that now only the teacher can help them. To which she said that Asus died of illness. She couldn't believe it, because she had never even heard of it. The girl said that all this time his letters were written to her, and she could not allow the world to know this news. After which Luna realized that the power of Asus frightened the three main clans. As soon as they learn of his death, a big war for the Empire will begin. Members of the royal family will be killed. And so she told everything so that the moon could go with her. Let her leave this empire together, Fram. To which Luna said not to worry, because she shouldn't worry about her. She already has one way to settle everything. Dana didn't understand what. However, to which Luna replied that it was okay for her, let her trust her little sister Luna. Let him wait for the right moment, and she will tell her everything. To which she agreed with this, but thought that the moon would not make noise for no reason. If she says she has a way, then she has it. That's right, Dana thought. The master decided to tell Yuji that she would go to see Luna off. To which he said that they had already finished chatting. He did not expect the conversation to happen so quickly at such a speed. Luna decided to thank him and said thank you very much for today to which Yuji said that there is no need for gratitude. As Sarah's student, it was his responsibility to help her solve the problem. From such words, Dana even became a little embarrassed and thought that it was true. She was so cool. And Luna looked at how this Sarah reacted, and she realized that, by the way, since he himself reminded, she had heard rumors that Sarah had a fiancé, who is also her student. Is this about him, or what? Judging by Danny's reaction, perhaps this is so. After which she decided to go together with her servants. They decided to ask the Majesty what they should do now. After walking a little more time, she realized that it's worth acting a little and now let them think that her today's meeting with Sarah did not take place, and let them act according to the plan. To which they said, they are and will carry out the order. Meanwhile, in the evening, that guy finally came home and started experimenting. He only calculated that saying after three minutes, then pour it here and then strictly control the amount correctly. Well, or when completed, it takes on a dark red or brown color. That's what he said, sir. To which the guards, uh, thought that his majesty, he was sure that there was definitely nothing wrong with this medicine to which he understood that he carefully studied the recipes and independently let people who were well-versed in milk test it. In addition, he made it himself. What? Realizing that most likely it was normal, he began to drink it. After which, as soon as he drank it, his heart began to flounder a little as well as his liver. He said, of course, it was better that the body might interfere a little, but not to the same extent. He almost fell from pain. The gentleman understood that it was not for nothing that this guy did not delight everyone at the Magic Congress. With one sip, the fire in his chest went out. The security decided to say that, since the medicine was real, the engagement was canceled. To which he said to cancel the engagement. Ha! He laughed. He said that today he will threaten him with canceling the engagement and tomorrow there will be other people who will threaten him with something else. Somehow, he stooped to this. He also said that he had already sent a person to deal with this in person. However, due to the fact that there are a lot of people around during the day and it was difficult for him to do this publicly and for some insignificant worm, but to accept, disgrace the prince, forcing him to beg for the recipe of the medicine, he wants him to regret it. How, that very evening, someone finally came to the hotel to punish Yuji. A ninja entered unnoticed and wanted to complete his task and kill the target he was given. As, in principle, it was expected, this very goal is considered to be Mr. Yuji. 
she decided to simply take the handkerchief with the poison and kill him quietly. But suddenly she didn't expect something. Although until this moment Yuji had a wonderful dream, Alice's church, and she says that she wants to return with him to the palace of the apostles and make a whole crowd of little apostles. To which she asked him if he agreed with this. Yuji happily said that he agreed, and only for it, he will remember this moment all his life. Taking Alice in his arms, he said, Let's hurry back and do them. Although Alice suddenly turned into a master and she said, Wait a second. Not like that, Sarah said. Although Yuji didn't understand why she was ruining such a moment, even in his dreams, out of fear that he had cheated and the leaves were gray, he was even a little surprised by this, and also scared. It was at this moment when he got scared that he saw this same adventurer who wanted to do something with a handkerchief. Reacting, he, of course, grabbed her hand to prevent her from doing anything stupid, after which he decided to turn the situation into something that wasn't the most ridiculous for someone like her, or he, it's unclear who this person is, but he decided to just grab her on the bed so that she wouldn't twitch and admitted that she was like that at all. Yuji decided to ask one important question. Who is he? Who is he? After which this same I love you ninja, judging by the cape, decided to run away because he didn't know what to do. He was not the best in the situation. While he was twisting and already thinking about what if this man in a black suit wears a mask and does not look in the face. He also carries poisons and drugs with him and breaks out into other people's rooms in the middle of the night. Ugh, said Yuji. Was he really lucky to meet that same legendary assassin, a professional killer? I couldn't believe my luck. Also, this ninja didn't understand what was wrong with this guy at all, that he wasn't afraid of her at all. She decided to invite him. They whispered that she was not for it, and his life was here, and let him not resist and be a good boy, and follow her so that she could take him somewhere. To which he said, Wait a minute. He's the one who caught her now, and not the other way around. After which he felt that someone had thrown that same blade at him again, and, judging by the fact that he was under some kind of spell, it was the most homing. Therefore he decided to evade him, thereby releasing the assassin, to which the assassin said that he just accidentally grabbed her. This man understood that he had impressive abilities, but according to her information, magic was not about him. Olesya, in the blink of an eye, all this happened. <laughs> Yuji only said that he was surprised by the assassin's magical abilities. To be honest, this was the first time he had seen a living professional killer. The assassin just wonders, what the hell, the blink of an eye has no effect against him at all. He just said, but she said she wouldn't kill him, right? He said to her, why would she grab him then, who he is after all? After which she decided to attack him with blades. Of course, Yuji, he was just able to fight them all off without any strain or once again bothered to understand that most likely he was most likely right behind him, since it's a cold weapon. The assassin realized that it seemed there were serious errors in the report. His abilities were incredible. It was better for them to disperse on good terms before the noise arose. He only said that he wanted to escape, but he would not advise him to do this. He decided to tell her to behave well and let her tell where she was from and who sent him. Seeing that he could definitely control magic, she realized that she was now in grave danger. This is a long-lost martial art. After which he decided to hit her so that she would immediately surrender to him, since he needed information about who sent him to him. Why did he decide to tear the entire suit of this same assassin? He also, of course, found out that, ah, 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 I, she wanted to kidnap him, but now she doesn't want to reveal it. Who is she? Then let her not be angry if he acts with force. By the way, the guy was surprised by what he saw, in fact. Is it really true that such beauties are hired as assassins? By the way, it was Anka, the killer, 
X231, after which Sarah came in to him, and in the meantime Yuji said that let her get dressed first. She also screamed, saying that there was one in her room late at night, after which Yuji, meanwhile, changed his clothes and gave her his clothes so that she could get dressed and tell him everything. And I couldn't imagine what would happen now. He said he was a master. And here's the thing, let her listen first, and he will explain everything now. After which I saw how she had a blazing fire. Louder and louder he just said that he would explain everything, honestly. She just laughed a little and realized that he would not live. After which she said that there was no point in fluttering her tongue, let her accept her death with dignity. And while she wanted to fight with him, the girl was able to escape from here, a little, of course, in an unusual outfit, now more precisely without it, but she still managed. Meanwhile, Yuji told them to calm down and figure it out. After this event, she immediately returned to the Kennis Consulate, and the gentleman could not understand. Where was the one whom she was supposed to bring? To which she will say, Na failed the mission and the goal too much. She could not defeat him so easily. That the prince just shouted and said that she was even talking about such things. He's a non-entity. Where did he get such strength? To which she said that it seems that he has incredible powers, perhaps even legendary and it was clear that she really couldn't cope alone, even with assistance. Only our gentleman would say that's enough. He decided to think that in the Empire there are now only four people with legendary powers. They have three in Kenya. So let her tell you where this dead guy got his legendary powers, huh? The master understood that an assassin named Anka was being sent to him, only better than them, mercenaries who had no failures. How did she screw up so easily? Maybe there is someone stronger behind this guy. While the neighbor was sitting in one place, suddenly she saw that the gentleman had thrown her a bottle. She decided to ask Mr. Prince what it was all about, to which he said that how could a failed mission go unpunished? These are his newest trial drugs. Let her drink it and survive. So be it. Spare her. The girl decided to just think, because she didn't know what was in this bottle, but she realized that, thank him, Mr. Prince, for his generosity. After which she began to drink it, which made him angry, because he didn't know what would happen if she drank it. The boy decided to ask His Highness the Prince what the antidote was, to which he looked at him and did not understand what he was talking about. What else is right, eh? although he realized that a lot of parasites still dare to call themselves students and pharmacists. So many people have been researching for so long and still have not been able to find the cause of the disease. He was mad and didn't know what to do, so he cursed all those pharmacists and also the guy who didn't give him the antidote afterwards. Suddenly he felt as if he was getting worse. The boy decided to ask his highness if he was okay, but what did he say? so that they would prepare the pigeons for flight, he needed to send an urgent letter to his father. The gentleman realized what he had done, a big mistake. This time he screwed up himself, broke up this filthy wedding in exchange for an antidote. He already knows that he is being covered. Let him not doubt it, Yuji. Meanwhile, again in this very palace, Yuji was finally able to wake up in such a good mood. Well, he also remembers what he did yesterday, and so he decided to ask her. Maybe she was thirsty. He decided to give her a cup of tea. She even ignored him because of that incident yesterday. She decided to tell them that they were already investigating the identity and goals of the assassin and hope, after the competition, they would be able to find out something about him. And it doesn't matter who their opponent is or what their goal was. The main task is to strengthen the precautions and also have to make sure that their performance should be secret and no one can influence it. And the lady also understood that individual combat training was almost over and the day of the competition was already approaching, so today they would decide on tactics. They both understood and knew that they would obey Master Seru. 
The girl said that five schools of the Imperial Academies, as well as the Mahi and Fram Institute of Magical Cultivation, would also participate in the competition. Here is the study of demons of the United State of Manjur, as well as the High School of Magic and the Research Institute of Magic of the Kingdom of Kinis. Well, the total will be 15 participants. Also, in general, that such a competition is not a one-on-one -on -one fight at all, and they will all be simultaneously thrown into a huge four-level labyrinth from a bird's-eye view. This labyrinth is a huge pentagram knitted in a cylinder, and at different levels it is turned with sharp corners in different directions. Five teams' randomly participants are distributed among its levels, one for each. The goal is to capture the key to the door leading to the next level. It is hidden somewhere in the middle of the level. This is the only way to move to another floor. That is, in fact, in order to rise to the fourth level, you need to connect all three keys from the previous levels. The team that manages to do this will win the competition. However, so they and the other two teachers consulted about their tactics. If anyone has an objection, let them lay it out right now, since then it will be too late. Sarah also wanted to say that now Alice is the strongest of them all. So she thinks she needs to go to the hardest third level. Further, Aji is a crazy fighter and there is no need to worry that she lacks magical powers so she is on the second level. Well, as for Yuji, Sarah said that he has special cases and decided not to say anything about him. Of course it is clear that this is because yesterday she caught him with such a good person. Because of this, she is now angry on him. Yes. She said that the future is not the most important element of their team. He will have to go to the first level. Aggie immediately realized that even though Yuji had never shown how strong he was, the series master must have had his reasons for it. After all, she won't say that it was he who taught her. But it seems that everyone doesn't really believe in his powers. Alice decided to say that if Yuji had a sylph, he would be able to defeat the participants of other schools, because it was true. This is exactly what Mrs. Dana wanted to say, given that students cannot carry living objects with them. There will be a check before we start. Now everyone knows that the magic sword and the sick have a soul, so Sylve will have to stay at home. Alice decided to say that if so, maybe it would be better then. What should you say to make Alice relax? Right now, I don't even think about it. She has one way to help Yuji become stronger. This makes Yuji a little priophile because he knows what will happen if they are left alone. This means that he will die. So soon they started walking into the room, after which the embarrassed Sarah told him not to twitch and let him start pushing already. It's for his own good. Because he said, eh, not yet, that's all. He simply lay on his knees as they simply transferred energy to each other to create balance. More precisely, since Sarah had already recovered a long time ago, she decided to give Yuji what he gave to her when she lost all her magical power. She said that she had strength, she had done a lot for him, but no, she couldn't stand it anymore, she said. And Yuji couldn't understand what she was even talking about, so she decided to hit her. Soon, the day finally began. Competition in the pentagram. Of course, many participants came that day, and many of them were much stronger than others. Therefore, they relied only on their strength. Sarah said that the exit to the arena was ahead. From now on, they will be able to rely only on themselves. Aji said, A little Yuji, he really gave an antidote to this principle or whoever he is. The boy replied, What am I? Sarah said that the moon had already received from the broadcast about the breakup of the wedding. So he gave him the antidote just like they agreed. After which Agia said, It's in vain. He wanted to kill him. To which he thought that it was not so easy for him to kill, so it didn't matter. Sarah saw Chester coming. Hurts. Sage Emperor Chester is in pain, at their service. He decided to introduce himself. What, what a beauty. 
These are representatives from the Imperial Academy of Magic, right? He said. After all, they haven't seen each other for a long time, and the fiery maiden Miss Charlotte is still as bright and beautiful, he praised her. Well, she said that being an imperial sage, he should throw himself into research. What did he forget at this entertaining commercial event? Alice realized that Chester was ill. He's an acquaintance, it turns out, Kayla. To which this gentleman only laughed and said that recently he had been interested in the history of the sealed city of Labyrinth. The same is closed at normal times and they themselves know that they open once every three years. So I decided not to miss this opportunity and come here. Meanwhile, the one who was in the hood, that is Kyle, was very angry that he could see Yuji, as well as the sword that belongs to him. They decided to say that he definitely heard that they changed the composition of the team and halfway through there is now a certain member named Yuji among the participants. To which he was a little embarrassed. After all, I didn't think that he would be noticed so easily. Uncle Kyle looked at Yuji and immediately realized that there was power in his eyes. Therefore, he did not provoke him, but it was also interesting to study. Madam Master decided to say that it was time for them to go to the arena, to which he said that it's good, then he won't detain them any longer and see you at the podium, Miss Charlotte. To be honest, she was really a little surprised by his presence, but she also knew that he was up to something, or that he really was such a good-natured person. She couldn't quite decide. After that, they finally began to go to their places. But suddenly this same gentleman decided to take Yuji by the shoulder. He said that he would be kind enough to support her while Sylphie was at home. From this, he, in principle, imagined that. Since he is from the family, he will. More precisely, he knows that he now has the spirit of self, and one thing was not clear. Why is it beneficial for him to keep Sylph? And then, finally, all the directors and those who judged this most wonderful festival were in their places and awaiting the next game, which should begin any minute as soon as all the participants entered the test arena. The commentator decided to start a conversation and say that, before the start of the competition, the hosting party received two pieces of news, and they want to ask everyone for forgiveness. After all, the first of the news is that the leaders of the Imperial Academy of Magic and the Institute of Magic of the Kingdom of Kinesa have urgent matters, and they will not be able to participate. And also, therefore, the leading two teams are being replaced. She would speak from the Imperial Academy of Magic. While she was actually saying this, Sarah was worried. Where did the moon go? the first and lovely lady princess and her majesty, Luna. Sarah couldn't believe that Luna would participate in this battle, more precisely, at this festival. They were all very happy and understood that. Is their princess really just super, said another. This will be the first time the princess has competed. Meanwhile, Sarah decided to tell the director Corker what was going on here. Why is she in the arena right now? I wanted to tell her that Mr. Director, the initially chosen leader, something was wrong with his health, and the moon was just a certified student of their school, so I had to put it there. To which she said, oh, what is he really saying? As the commentator continued to say that, what if the magic of the kingdom of Kinesa changes its leader to? Prince Kenny's, His Highness the Laser. They all started looking at her and they realized that apparently the director was not the only one, and to which she told them not to look at her with such a malicious look. After all, she has exactly the same situation. Commentator Lesha screamed and was delighted that this time the competition would be fully broadcast on the big screen. With these little drones, each participant will be followed by these teledrones, filming the entire process of their battle. The image of all 15 participants had already appeared on their screen. Oh, really? A student from the academy? Let him not touch the drones, please. Finally, this drone, by the way, which is monitoring Yujiev, also entered the first level arena. 
Yuji couldn't imagine seeing such a strange thing for the first time, after which they began to teleport. The presenters also say that 15 participants have taken their places. And now the competition is completely officially open. Right now, the competition has already begun. All participants went inside the maze and in the process of searching for keys to another level. And we will all have to face low-level magical creatures and, towards the end, rents from other magical schools. And then, after that, as the tests began, an hour later passed when the first level room with the key was found. The girl was glad that she had finally found him. But suddenly someone told her that, Oh, I kept walking in circles, but the key turns out to be here. He already said it, and then there's a cute girl to boot. Yes, he asked her. She was silent and did not know what to answer him, because she did not know that he was capable. But there was one thing that I needed to try to attack, so I decided to call on the magic of the whirlwind. Then she screamed that the key will be only hers, since she was the first to find it. After which someone grabbed her, either with a tongue or with tentacles. It was unclear to her, but it was clear that she would not be able to move. At that moment he was able to throw her very far from here. Then she decided to snap her fingers to do something. The boy, however, did not understand what she wanted to do, but he was very interested and he also understood that this was a big frog that began to eat such a lovely lady very much. Although he won't eat it, of course. He would just absorb her energy and then spit her out, so that she would simply be helpless for the rest of the entire ordeal. Although he did not expect to see a level B magical beast, since it was not thanks to him that he got here, but he somehow ended up here himself. Apparently, this is one of the first-level defense systems, Yuji thought. It was clear that she most likely would not be able to cope, and yet the process of absorbing mana was happening right now. They were all worried and said to come here to help as soon as possible. Since the saliva of the giant frog is poisonous, an antidote is urgently needed. The commentator said that, what a pity! Just one step from the treasured key and the fairy from the Royal Institute of Magic fell into the clutches of the guarding magical guard. One of the commentators understood that each participant needed to create a special inscription, kindly provided by their school. If they could no longer continue the competition, they would be immediately evacuated. She also noticed that there is no point in relaxing because that unlucky student of yours will be taken to the hospital before he runs out of oxygen and will be as good as new. To which she replied that it would be better if they took care of themselves, since he wouldn't cut off their oxygen. To which he replied that anyway, her student was about to leave. What was the point of running up there? To which she sulfur said what she meant by that. The boy who was sitting next to them said that the giant left had a heightened sense of its territory, so by moving it and bending it, they also tidied it up so that it would properly guard the key. To try something like this, you need the well-coordinated work of at least two magicians. The lady felt a little sorry for him, because she sees, you see, that only he, poor thing, remained on the first level, and not enough so that he can get the key, they will automatically move to the next level and he himself will be evacuated. To which Sarah said that they still don't know what will happen next, so she told her to just watch. The commentator just said that, wow, this is simply incredible, this incredible feeling of fighting for the keys. It was clearly evident that the owner of the first level key was a participant from the Imperial Academy of Magic, Yuji, in some incomprehensible way. The giant lion didn't attack him, and incredibly, it just sits next to him and looks at him. They both didn't expect this outcome, that she would just stand there and do nothing at the sight of him. They all didn't understand what was going on. What else is this? This is the most incredible, cruel giant kick. Why is she just standing there? He decided to say that this was a hoax, some organizers were helping the participant, scammers or something. 
The guy decided to look at the frog and said that he would take it. He didn't mind, while she was completely sweating and didn't even know what to do at that moment. He decided to ask the frog again. He definitely doesn't want to stop him from taking the key. After which the frog could not withstand such a load on its frog brain and simply passed out. The commentator was shocked and said that the giant bog was defeated. What did the incredible Yuji do to her? But Yuji really didn't do anything. He just asked, and that's it. And she just passed out. Apparently, she lost consciousness. It's not clear why. He told her that he was a good boy and that he should know his place. After which, she decided to say that the winner of the first floor becomes a participant from the Imperial Academy of Magic. Now, let's move to another floor and find out what is happening on the higher level. The boy didn't know what to do because he didn't understand who would tell him. Is this true or not? What did he do in the end that put a giant frog on his back? And they also said that this guy was not a warrior at all, that he was not even strong in basic magic, and that he got into the competition by accident. Did they really mean that he was incredibly weak in this regard? To which one of the boys shouted and said that he was saying, how did it happen that he didn't come across a single animal on the way to the key? Luck or something. Someone is helping him behind the scenes. What are the students of the first level of their pentagrams the weakest? Let them take a better look at what's happening on the third floor. Of course, the third level, the room with the key, everything was in order. And it was clear that the level A magical creatures, the flaming bear, the key keeper at the third level had been defeated. It was an incredible feeling that creatures such as a bear could be defeated so quickly by some disciple who summoned a stone monster. This stone monster, the commentator said, is clearly powerful, and whoever controls it is clearly a skilled magician. The person who was the most skilled magician was a laser and, it seems, competed in championships this year. It will become their institute of magic. All the girls just screamed with joy for him and said that, Oh, Prince Laser, how handsome he is, that he could defeat the bear so quickly. The gentleman could not understand why the stone monster was so strong. It turns out, most likely, due to the concentration of magic. Kill the level A magical beast with one blow. This is incredible power. One thing was clear. This was not fair, no matter how you looked at it. Laser is an experienced mock with excellent skills. This is too much for students at school. Beyond. To which the old man said that they are prohibited from having excellent natural abilities. He, like the princess, is an active student at the Institute of Magic. There are no problems with his participation in the competition. This guy almost took the keys. When suddenly, someone wanted to write on him, and this magic belonged to one of the main people, these are arenas. After which, of course, this Jellum began to defend himself and said, this gentleman never thought that they would meet here. He didn't expect to meet a familiar person who was right on his level. It is quite an honor for him to meet his ex. It turns out to be a contract, because he was finally able to meet his precious princess. Dana didn't even understand Luna what she would do now. Meanwhile, second level, room, with a key. It was clear that at this level there were many all kinds of living and poisonous animals that were dangerous. The boys didn't understand what to do. What do they need? All they need is the fact that one called the other an idiot. After all, in their school there was no object, and magical animals, this thing cannot be cut, you need to use fire. They argued about this, to which the other said that let him say what he wants. But still, he is not sure that if he is burned with fire, it will be the right decision, after which he saw why she cut him then, to which the other said that he knows where he is from. The mistress decided to ask Sarah if this was her student, the tanned girl, and what kind of magic she uses in general to which she said that it was a shame to say, but she only mastered entry-level wind magic. 
However, she has something of a berserker in her blood and she seems to be using it right now. The mistress decided to tell her that she did not think she would see this with her own eyes. A little further on, this kid didn't know what to do, and he just said that, damn, they still don't end, he. After which he was attacked from behind by monsters, and what he couldn't expect. Looking at the fact that these worms disappeared, one thing was clear. Either they lost, or they were too fast. After that, they all naturally crowded onto the Aga, and she realized that she was left completely alone. The girl screamed and said that, since this is the case, she will not relax and will fight to the fullest. Well, of course, there are quite a lot of them, so one of them grabbed her hand. And what she couldn't expect and not how she could cut me off alone. She just pumped up, what the hell, these snakes or leeches, what? They piss her off. After which she saw that one of them wanted to devour her, and she only thought that, well, it's disgusting that it will also end up there. What, as soon as I wanted to devour this skull, someone decided to launch a fireball directly at this monster. One thing was clear to her. This guy was either mad, or he was definitely some kind of idiot who could still be looked for, and also a rather large fog arose after that. But she understood that this was the most perverted person in time. So she greeted Yuji and said that thanks to him, she was standing on her feet again. The boys could no longer understand, after all, what a powerful fireball he had launched. Medium-level magic. This power, of course, there's something wrong with his eyes. Or they said that this guy actually ended up here by accident, right? Another decided to say that he was her student, because he didn't even know basic magic. This is pure cheating. To which she said that she had taken all his void rings. Yes, and the guards at the entrance carefully checked everyone to see how he could deceive them then. When Sarah said that, but she didn't teach him mid-level magic at all, what happens in the end somehow, still, she couldn't understand it. While she was thinking about this, Yuji wanted to help her, the golden wound, and told her this. How is she even feeling? Will you be able to continue the fight? Uh, she decided to ask Yuji, does he really doubt her powers? Suddenly there was a quiet silence, as if nothing was happening around at all. One thing was clear, that you, the worms, want to come back, so when he met them, he decided to ask, are they not dead yet, or what, from such a fireball? Therefore, okay, this is nice, a good opportunity to avenge the AGI only with physical damage. A few minutes before the third level, having decided to try to defeat this very golem, Luna did not expect that her sword would not cope with this, and she understood that it could not be pierced. No way even with her speed, after which he decided to attack her. Of course, when he wanted to attack her, she was able to use her flash as well as lightning to return to her original location. She understood that this golem was most likely incredibly strong, since it was able to withstand her blows with the help of her abilities. In fact, she didn't know what to do in such situations. The commentator only said that, Although Princess Luna escaped the blows of the stone monster, her weapon was broken so she would not be able to fight at full strength. The gentleman decided to ask how she felt, Her Highness the Princess, if she had already realized the difference between their powers, she asked to leave the pentagram on her own. After all, he doesn't want to hurt the lady who destroyed his heart by agreeing to terminate the contract. All the girls admired him and said only that he was their wise Prince Laser, a true gentleman, although they were not at all embarrassed that he was talking about some kind of contract. This made her more and more angry, and she couldn't even imagine how to take revenge on scoundrels like him, who not only didn't fight himself, but also used his golem technique against her. Of course, this was not prohibited, but it is still vile. After which she decided, imagining that he would start taunting her until she activated another ability. 
One of the directors realized that the legendary lightning swords of Asia had long been lost. This made Mrs. Dana understand that right now she didn't know what to say. She was simply fascinated by what the outcome of the battle might be. One thing was clear. The lightning-fast Asaya and the Sylph, two magical weapons of the legendary King Anisu. Only the lightning axis does not have a soul, so it can be rented. And this angered the lady, because since such a sword has no soul, it can be taken into the arena, but it can also be used much more powerfully. After all, it gives, as it seems to her, about 70% of the victory. Naturally, it was understood that this was the ace in the hole that Luna was talking about. Is this really a Saya? But even with this incredible thing, it will be very difficult, and difficult. It was also clear to the gentleman that she was not going to give up so easily, since she had decided to attack him with such a weapon. Having looked at all this, the gentleman did not even know what to say to her, to which she immediately replied that now it was his turn to pay her bills. The prince said that Her Majesty Luna is so domineering that she decided to throw around such words. Well, he thought, I hope she doesn't refuse surprises that are unpleasant for her. The lady could not expect such a trick from such a scoundrel as he, although he is a scoundrel. Starting to attack these very hands, which were completely made of clay, she decided that it would be the best solution to pierce them right through. Having tried to do something, first, he began to put this sword into himself, and second, it was dirt, which he could fully attack from it. And one thing was clear, most likely, it would be very difficult for her to get out of here. The gentleman just laughed and said that it was useless. These stones can absorb magical power, and her attacks will only make them more powerful. She began to get angry and realized that even the legendary weapon could not help her at the moment, so that she can be a good girl and not make unnecessary movements. But it was also clear that some unknown portal had appeared, which was clearly not on the master's side. Having paid attention to this mystical portal, he could not understand where it came from and why it was here, above his head. After which, huge ice began to peek out from this very portal and decided to fall directly on him. The girl couldn't believe that ice. Yes, of course, it was unusual, but not yet ordinary, when this ice began to talk and someone told her to quickly give her hand. The lady could not believe what the ice said so that, while its magical power had not yet managed to do anything at the speedometer, it was necessary to do it quickly before these stones began to move even faster. The girl decided to give these crystals her hand, and then, because of those crystals, a hand was pulled out that helped this very moon free herself from here. She began to transform back into her body, and of course, this same princess turned out to be Alice, who decided to help Luna get out of this trap. The lady couldn't believe that it was actually her, Sarah's student. The prince became furious and said that who dared to step on such a huge block of ice right in front of him. Looking at this, he also saw that Miss Luna had managed to escape, and there was a pile of ice in that place, which he realized that most likely this was the intervention of one of the participants. It was clear that this someone clearly had good ice magic. Having looked at the circle, he could not understand where she had gone. He did not feel her. And of course, at the back, those two rubber bands that were there, they were able to pierce it. All that was clear was that because of this small piece of ice, there could be a portal. Suddenly, at the dimensions that Alice was able to create. He couldn't believe what the hell this was because... How was this even possible? Turning around, he saw the two of them. The commentator said that Mr. Laser was pierced in the chest by Princess Luna's sword, and Mr. Also could not understand why he could not sense her magical power, to which he smiled and learned how to manage it. The commentator again stated that Princess Luna, a competitor from the Imperial Magic Academy, Alice, helped save herself from the prince and successfully attack him from behind. 
They all just couldn't understand why the hell Princess Laser had just been killed. It couldn't be anyone else. They didn't understand what kind of girl with silver hair she was. After all, she disappeared somewhere from the very beginning of the competition and only now she unexpectedly appeared in the ring. Sarah was only happy with this outcome of events and said that Alice did a great job. What the director couldn't understand was that although ice crystals have incredibly high protection, but they can absorb light and selectively reflect it. If you look carefully, you can confuse this with the disappearance of objects. Now she slowly began to understand that, but something else is important here. She was able to limit the spread of magical powers using ice crystals. No one would be able to feel it. The lady realized that this was a girl, although she was just studying in her first year. Do they really have such outstanding students? From herself, to which the gray one replied that yes, Although her talent is not the same as their laser prince, she is really very hardworking. Meanwhile, the prince turned into a lump of clay. He sensed that she had blocked her magical powers so that he could not feel them. Surprisingly, he thought, but she doesn't think she's already won, right? The princess couldn't believe it. She saw how he was able to quietly turn into clay and was now directly melting. One thing was clear. Either this was a substitution, or he had already run away a long time ago. Determined to be safe, they decided to look around to see if he was nearby, after which we saw two already, or maybe even three princes. One thing was clear. They were surrounded by clones, and one of them, the only real one. The commentator stated that more than a hundred lasers appeared in the hall. Alice and Luna were surrounded by clones, it's quite interesting to watch this. All the guys admired that this was their magnificent laser, how good it was. This, yes, said another, and a third said that this is actually cool. While Sarah was worried about the two of them, because she couldn't understand what would happen to Alice and Luna, Alice couldn't believe that they still lacked this, a whole crowd of doubles. How will they determine which of them is real? to which Luna replied that she did not think that he would be so prudent. As soon as the laser found the doubles in the labyrinth, they followed it everywhere. It was only clear that they were now in a very dangerous situation, which perhaps no one would help them unless it was ours. The boy, although he was a clown, was glad to see that. Yes, they were trying very hard to defeat him, but they weren't succeeding. So he decided to ask why she was so excited. Nothing works out for them. And now he's worried. The girl now understands that she has gotten herself into the worst possible situation, and now she only has to defend herself very rarely. Alice decided to do her magic and surround everything that surrounds them with ice, and it seemed to work. At first, they all froze. The girl said that she had already seized the moment and found the real one while there was still time. She decided to tell her to hurry up this matter because she would not hold them all for long. The commentators just said that it's just fascinating to watch it all. Contestant Alice was able to use her ice magic to freeze the laser prince and all of his doppelgangers. Mr. Director was just thinking about the fact that she controls ice magic over such a large area. This girl has great reflexes and control. In fact, he thought she might be even better than he imagined. And Luna and Alice realize that, damn it, all the doubles have a piece of his magic. Finding the real one is almost impossible, except to cut each of them for yourself. But one thing was clear. If you cut them and they are freed, then they will split into two more. Therefore, they had to find the only one the first time, and they definitely didn't have time to check everyone. So she started thinking about how to do this. But suddenly she realized that if this was the case, she needed to use her blade. She decided to destroy everyone except her and Alice's bodies, after which she began to undermine everything around her, except for both of them. The girl could not do anything, and she only covered it up. She didn't know what she was doing. This is Luna, 
but she understood that she seemed to be fine, but it was quite difficult to stay on her feet after such things. They couldn't understand. The director decided to say that it looked like she had used her sword at full strength. This could be bad for the arena and also bad for both of them. The commentator just looked at it and realized that it was all just drop-dead gorgeous. All the kids simply couldn't understand what was going on here. This is simply amazing. The incredible power of Asia's legendary lightning weapon. Commentator Lesha said that under the power of the legendary weapon, not a single double of the laser participant managed to avoid it and did not run away. This cunning technique will determine the winner of the fight. Oh, did she really overdo it? With this blow, too thick a fog arose, due to which almost nothing was visible. In fact, at that moment, Luna still didn't understand what that smell was. No, it's not fog at all, but I realized it only now. Luna understood that this was what the laser was most powerful at. This is poison. Damn, there wasn't enough poisonous fog yet, I thought. The girl understood that most likely he was either behind her or above her. So I decided to turn around. And it turns out she was not mistaken, because he really was for her day. He wanted to attack her from the most poisonous fog. Looking at this, she wanted to react quickly. Looking back, she was able to deflect it with her sword and prevented him from harming herself. But it was very dangerous for her to be so relaxed. The gentleman decided to say what a pity. After all, if she really could block him with her magic weapon, he would definitely get her into trouble. She was only angry and understood that he was a scoundrel and just got rid of his magical powers in order to avoid blocking. After which he realized that she was much weaker, simply because of this blow. So right now he was able to easily parry her blows, and she simply rolled back. Alice was very worried about her, so I decided to call and ask if she was okay, after which she realized that she had a disgusting feeling now, since now they are in the best position, and they would like to end this all as quickly as possible. It didn't mean anything. She noticed something unimportant. This feeling may seem familiar to her. She immediately felt that she did not have the strength to fight, and she realized that most likely it was either poison or she had simply overdone it with magic. The mistress said that there was no point in trying. His poison had already penetrated her body, and now she was simply powerless against him. The girl could not understand whether this poison was really so burning, and now it was simply absorbing all her strength. He just laughed and said that now he had exactly the moment that he had been waiting for so long. Only now he said that he needed to deal with these annoying screw things so that he would not be disturbed by others who were looking after them. The commentator couldn't believe what happened at all. The image from all three dash drones disappeared. Could it be a technical problem, she thought. Sir, he just told her to look at him before he did something irreparable. After all, he said that the people outside would only hear this tragic news. Princess Luna accidentally died in a tree stump during the competition due to a problem with her equipment, to which she said, in order to get rid of her, they even managed to bribe the prince. Is it really that pathetic? She couldn't understand what he said, so she wouldn't say something stupid. This is just their struggle as competitors. And as for the problems with equipment that occurred after the drones broke down, she decided to say that this was just a small amendment for their circus, and he decided to say that he didn't see it at all. But suddenly he realized something, that something was still wrong. Someone was coming here too quickly. Alice also saw and felt it the same way. She heard some kind of explosion that was not far from her. This one caught her. And one thing was clear, that this fog was definitely not without reason and it was dispersing them all. And also, one of the participants was still able to get closer to them, since someone was still able to kill that same worm. The master could not understand, the leech of the magical beast, what he was even doing here, at this level. 
After which Alice saw and also heard someone talking, when suddenly she saw. The fact is that Yuji was able to cut through from the second level to the third, and he just wanted to try a little to bring the fire magic to a critical point. Who knew that he could destroy the floor, and Aggie only complained that why would he need the keys for such a club? Also, Alice couldn't expect to see him at this level so quickly. Sarah understood that the moon was in danger now, since most likely that freak had decided to plan something, and she realized that if the camera didn't turn on right away, in that case, she would go there. Therefore, she decided to tell everyone that she was going to the pentagram and no one dared to stop her. To which the director told Sarah to calm down and say that it was just some problem with the teledrones and that's all. To which he replied that, of course, all the teledrones on the third level went out at one moment. She should check that this is normal. Mr. Director told her to wait a little. After all, it seems that a picture has appeared from the third level. And in that image, it looks like someone else appeared there. To which she realized that it was Yuji coming out. That's great, and Luna is fine. Then she shouldn't worry, she thought. The boy decided to say that he was able to break through the floor of the labyrinth. It's true. It's generally normal. It was clear to him that his ears would not indicate his thickness, but even high-level magic will not destroy this magical barrier installed inside the floor all at once. This guy is clearly unusual. The magic of compression. It just sounds easy. And if you try to complete it, if the compression fails, the response magical impulse will be terrible. This gray student has much more power than they all thought. Finally, Yuji and Agi were able to come to the rescue of Alice and Luna. Why, the gentleman was not very happy. Yuji didn't expect that he could find them so quickly. His Majesty Laser and Princess Luna. Aki just said that it smells so nice here. To which Alice said that Agi, all the air here is poisoned. To which she said that really. The girl decided to approach the guy and said what to do now. She seems to be getting better and finding it difficult to breathe. This is because she was breathing herself, and it was really funny for the gentleman to look at this, although he did not show it. But he understood that he didn't think that anyone else would bother them. But for some reason, these two burst into them. One thing was clear. First, you need to find an opportunity to deal with the two teledrones and the ones following them. Therefore, the gentleman realized that if the real cause of all the problems was revealed and he could no longer be separated from them, after which he began to slightly change his form. And now he had his greatest spear with which he could fight. Aige couldn't believe that she had to fight now. Yes, she feels the poison spreading throughout her body, to which Yuji said that he would sort it out, don't let her worry about it. Then he looked at how this prince decided to attack him and realized that this was another prince who believed in himself and now he wants to attack him. Once again, to do something with the moon there. Yuji. One thing was clear. I wondered whether he could harm him or not. But he also wanted not to show that he was so weak, but also strong. Therefore, I just decided to slightly ricochet them, so to speak, so that they could go somewhere away from him. The gentleman only thought that he could still use magic, but, well, at least this guy has a good immunity to poison, as far as he can see. How long can he last here? The prince became curious about this. The boy also noticed that the smell became sharper. Is it really all because of the spear? After which he saw the same spear flying at him right in his face, because of which, if he can avoid it, then it's not a fact, of course. But well, he decided to take the hit. Yuji decided to simply stop him with his hand so that he would not harm his face. Alice and Aki looked at this, couldn't believe that Yuji was so strong, since they really don't remember anything due to him erasing their memories like when he was an apostle. Therefore, it is understandable why they are surprised every time. But Luna sees for the first time how strong Yuji is. The boy, however, was too self-confident. 
since he thinks he can defeat this young man, and he just looked at what kind of spear it was. It's kind of cool. The gentleman only sought this and said that then he would try something more powerful than a spear. He decided to activate it, as he liked this technique. The crystal that is about to explode along with this spear is right next to him. Yuji looked and saw how I began to spread throughout his entire arm, as well as throughout his body. Of course, it didn't bother him a little, but the smoke was unpleasant. He just coughed and thought about who this gentleman was, so much so that the gentleman said that he should not bring him so close. Ha ha ha, this is his particular poison. It dissolves magical powers. Now he is definitely finished. To which Yuji once again thought about what he meant about magical powers. That is, he must have run out of them, the guy thought. He decided to ask again, which means he is bursting with magic. So this is how it works, which means what his secret technique is. Quite interesting, it seemed to the guy. What princes could not look at? How is this even possible? He is poisoned. No one would be able to use magic after he should already have complete paralysis of his entire body. Nobody except. After which he remembered what his maid said, that he might even be legendary, he might have powers. To which the gentleman remembered and said that what she said was really true. Does he really have a legendary level? And now he like this is really some kind of trifle. Yuji suddenly remembered something. The boy decided to remind the prince that the potion he used, sent by a new assassin, had the same smell. Therefore, he could assume that it means that he sent an assassin, and he, you see, cured him of the poison. And he not only did not want to thank him, but also tried to kill him. The gentleman decided to say that he did not think that he would be in the league at the legendary level. He didn't completely underestimate him and therefore his legendary powers. He suggested contrasting it with something equally legendary, after which he activated a bunch of blocks of stones that came out of these portals, which were most likely aimed at Yuji. Yuji understood that he now needed to fight so as not to destroy him, but also to make sure that no one got hurt. The gentleman said that, oops, it seems he has already lost some of his strength. Therefore, he decided to say that he should teach him a little lesson before he destroys him, after which he was able to cope with these piles of boulders that were flying straight at him. Then after that, he noticed that there was also something above and there were some open portals there. After looking closely, he realized that most likely it was. Teledrones, which he most likely destroys so that no one can see how strong he is, or he does it for another reason. After listening a lot, the gentleman decided to say that finally no one else would interfere and it was time to move on to the main thing. He decided to use a certain poison. He said that it was necessary to defeat the same legendary opponent, or another legendary opponent. You just need to become stronger, thought the voice in one in the legend and everything will work out. After a while, he felt a little strength that these same cones added. The prince was already gradually turning into a madman and said that they were respecting him, threatening him, and forcing him to break off the engagement. He was paying for this in his life. He was Yuji and also Princess Luna and two more girls who were bothering him. They would all die here today. He couldn't understand how crazy he was since he decided to come to such a conclusion. And he also noticed that the black energy, it turns out to be connected with him too. Yuji also told him that they are now in the competition, and there are all the seals on them that will not let them die as he wants to do this. To which he shouted and said that he was a fool. He had already prepared everything a long time ago, and was right now in the pentagram from the seal, and there was no point anymore. They ran into themselves. If it weren't for the cancellation of their wedding, he would have saved Luna her worthless life. But now he, he's dead. He ruined everything. To which the moon heard all this and said that if she were to marry such a vile man, it would be better to actually die here. Looking suddenly, he saw that the moon had decided to get to the key and end it all.
Mr. Prince could not believe it because he understood that I had already been inside the moon a long time ago. How can it still move right now? To which the girl replied something that he would use as a poison in the competition, obvious to anyone. So she sent a man to steal the recipe and create an antidote naturally. To which he began to get even more angry and said that Con Merck had a girl to look for who still needed neither shame nor conscience to spoil his plans. He knew that there was no need to propose marriage to her at all. He should have declared war and destroyed everyone at once. Yuji just laughed a little and said that he was a good fellow, laser. If there was anything else he wanted to say, then let him show it while there is time. What he didn't expect to see was this very drone. It's not a flywheel. It's still in his hands right now. And what did he say? That it was just that teledrone? He laughed and said that when one of the eliminated participants was taken away, the telegram also wanted to fly away. But why should it disappear? So he put it in his pocket and wanted to explore it a little when there was time. Right now, the very same spectators who he hid were looking at him. They were all screaming. A sound was coming from the camera that I hope everyone clearly saw and heard this magnificent speech, bravo. Of course, although all the spectators who looked at him were, to put it mildly, not very delighted. After all, they now understood that it turned out that the prince was a laser, and he was also a scoundrel. Well, what else can I say, that he was deceiving them all the time and was simply some kind of horror? After which the old man stood up and said that the competition was over, immediately let him evacuate all the participants and, from the pentagram, let them check the magic circle making sure that the seals of the participants are still valid. The commentator screamed and said that this is truly outrageous. The second prince of Kennis, merging with his virtues, turns out to be such a bastard. A wave of emotions caused by the self-exposure of the laser prince is much stronger than the desire to find out who won the competition. And it turns out that the body from the pentagram has already announced the end of the competition, they are preparing to evacuate all the participants from the maze, to which the gentleman only said that he is a bastard since he decided to take out a camera and point it right at the moment when he was telling his plan. The gentleman said that he would definitely finish him off. He would do it right here on the spot, to which Yuji said that he should come immediately, and also the camera was still filming it all. Luna could not admire how Yuji could just set him up, leaving only one spare teledrone. Lunar only in her thoughts thanked the students, the gray ones, for saving her current life from being locked up, as well as from contractual conditions. But she also understood that such a result was not enough to change the fate of the empire. Therefore, having opened the gate, she decided to say that since this happened, the gray one would forgive her, because this was necessary for the future of the empire, and she had no other choice. After Luna entered that unknown room, something sudden happened and the directors were alarmed. Sarah decided to ask whether the mechanisms on the fourth level could be so noisy, to which he said that no at all. This sound is not related to the labyrinth. These are seals. He decided to explain that, in fact, it was impossible to pass through the fourth level of the labyrinth. Simply opening the door will throw him out of the maze. Simple, but if you open not the doors, but the magical barrier of seals. In this case, it will be possible to open the doors. The demon who almost destroyed humanity, he will be released from there. The gentleman could not understand, although he most likely understood that this was the exit from the labyrinth. Therefore, he decided to escape there and said that even if they don't think of escaping, today they will all die right here, and no one will dare to escape from here. When he finally decided to attack from behind in order to finish off Luna, and so that she would finally be unable to do anything, Yuji saw something terrible because it's not for nothing that they say that these doors could be sealed. Meanwhile, the gentleman only screamed in pain, saying that there could not be a demon. After looking closely, he realized that he 
really was a demon, and right now this very demon was Lady Luna. He tried to escape and said that everyone should help him, and that he should not be allowed to die since he is a prince. Of course, this demon moved into the moon precisely from the moment she opened the gate, since he was simply sealed there, because there was a nasty room there. I felt something with sulfur, because everyone understood that something was clearly wrong there. She decided to worry about them and go after them. The director decided to ask sulfur where she was going, to which she shouted that Yuji and everyone else were still in the labyrinth and she had to get them out of there. Since the camera was still on and everything was visible, Yuji understood that most likely people would run somewhere, and so it was. They rather wanted to run away, they said, because the demon would come out of the labyrinth and destroy them. Meanwhile, Kai and his uncle stood still. The gentleman decided to say that the laser and Luna performed their roles as their pawns just perfectly. And in fact, right now they will have to go. They need to complete the next step of their plan. Yuji looked straight at the demon who soon looked at him, and one thing was clear. Agi and Alice were clearly worried about him and in his condition, because at any moment the demon could attack him. Alice said that it seems that something wrong is happening to Luna, to which Agi replied that Yuji should hurry up and go to them, and also be careful. Sir, I knew that she seemed to be looking for something, and it was something important for her. Just this. Looking back, he noticed how she was looking at Alice very intensely. It turns out that her main goal is to gain her powers or something else. Therefore, he didn't even notice how quickly she ran past him and ran straight to attack Alice. The boy understood that, damn it. I was still in both of them, so they would be able to move quickly. Something needs to be done. The demon was already approaching Alice, as she could not do anything or just stand still, even if there was something or someone. Yuji began to run faster and said to activate the second level seal after which he became naturally faster than her, and she didn't realize how much she couldn't underestimate Mr. Yuji. He decided to understand that she was now extremely dangerous. After all, the demon does not know how strong he can be. Therefore, now he will need to use the power with which he sealed, deciding to finally defeat her. He was still able to save Alice. Of course he couldn't do much damage to her, since she simply went far back. She just said some kind of thing doesn't sculpt. They say the Star Clan is killing. Alice decided to tell Yuji that it seemed that she, or Luna, had been possessed by that sealed demon. And right now she is not in control of herself, because she is not in control with her consciousness. And of course, he understood this. Therefore, smiling, he understood that if it was a demon, then he needed to act quickly. After which they sprint sharply with her and said that stopping is more interesting, more interesting. This is because demons have possessed her. She has become so strong. I wonder what he is like in himself. Yujia decided to think that since he ate the legendary ball, he could not fully manifest himself. She's just that strong, not bad. After he was able to repel her blows, he decided to put all his strength into one blow in order, so to speak, to destroy the demon. But it is the demon who needs to try to destroy, and not the physical shell. Of course, she didn't like it, literally at all. But that's why she wanted to finish off this guy first, and then that girl. But she couldn't burn the fact that right now he would put such superpower directly into her stomach. He decided to say that they were still not finished and the battle had just begun. Although the girl understood that the difference in strength was too great, she could not think that she could be so weak against him. The boy decided to use his powers more and more and decided to open the fourth level seal, since he very much understood that now the enemy with whom he is fighting will clearly be stronger than everyone else with whom he is fighting, since this is the demon that was summoned. Since he was able to be called here and the seals were kept here, he could, during this time, become much stronger than before. 
The girls clearly had one thing in mind, that Yuji was actually clearly stronger than they imagined, since mastering such fire, as well as fighting on the table, quickly, clearly, they did not evaluate the guy. They couldn't believe she had disappeared, to which he said that he was probably trying to find a new refuge. But he decided to say that first he needed to take them out, and then he would return and look there, to which they would say that, no, they would go with him. Having decided to explain that this was dangerous, Alice said that these were demons. Who knows what could happen? If he goes there, it's too dangerous. To which he told her to relax. Nothing would happen to him. Having calmed her down, he decided to hug her and tell her that, you see, he had already told her. He is the first apostle and he has the strength to resist standing as a demon and protect her and sulfur and, in general, humanity, to which she just smiled and also hugged him, saying that even at such a moment he was talking all sorts of nonsense. He said it was fine. Let them get out. It's time to get back to the series. To which, how can I tell her, the laser has already said that their teleporters are broken. How can they get back? Because he said it was no big deal. After all, this is just the magic of transference. Isn't it difficult? They are new to them right now, and the problem is solved. And he also insisted that first we need to remove the poison from them. By the way, judging by the venom of Mr. Prince, I decided to tell them to stand a little and wait for him a little. After all, he is a prince after all. And let them save him and take him with them. He asked them with all his dark heart, to which Yuji and Alice looked at him, and the boy also realized... Ah, 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 but they almost forgot about him, Brother Laser. Sarah finally found the entrance to the labyrinth and said, Who is this? Why can't you enter the labyrinth? She decided to say that this was actually happening, to which one of her colleagues said that all this shaking had completely destroyed the entrance to the labyrinth. All the seals leading into the labyrinth have broken. And so, right now, all the participants except those on the third floor, have already gotten out of there safely. Sarah couldn't believe it, and it turns out that now only Alice and the others are in the maze. The teleport portal has been activated, from which people generally come out. Sarah decided to look, and again, someone got out of there. She saw Alice and Aggie get out. Deciding to get closer, they decided to say that the teacher was Sarah. She said that she was very worried about them and said that it was great that they were alive and well and everything was fine with them. Meanwhile, that same gentleman was only saying that they should save him, please. Looking at it, she realized that it was there too. Where are Yuji and Luna? To which Alice said that the moon is her. Well, in general, she is not in the best condition and it was better to go save her. Sarah could assume that the ace in the hole that Luna was talking about was probably demon resurrection. She apparently thinks that his powers will be able to stop the crisis in the Empire, and it turns out that her stupid student thinks that he can defeat the demon alone. So I ran to them. She just thought that what a fool her student was. Yes, yes, what's wrong with him, Sarah thought. Why are they doing what they want? Nothing will help him at all. Having already descended lower, he decided to walk at a slow pace. And he was also wondering what was behind this door. Walking a little further, he came across some kind of ring, and it beeped. After which he was surprised that, most likely, this ring belongs to Lady Luna. Well, this is most likely the Ring of the Moon, Yuji thought. How could she drop it like that? Looking closely, he saw a cloth that was now flying quite strangely, he thought. But now it was clear why she was flying, since now the moon was really doing something incredibly strange. Yuji just thought that, oh, oh, what a situation. He needs to help her right now. Otherwise, she will do something clearly unusual, and it will not benefit him. The boy understood that this was indeed true. The boy simply admired how it all looked. Cool, all the other masters worked hard on such a monster, as well as on such a shelter. 
This is really surprising, Yuji thought. It was also clear that he noticed him. Well, it was also clear that right now Alice was saying some unknown words that were incomprehensible to his language. Right now he was thinking about what looked like, wow, the inscriptions were jammed. I, Anaga, it seems, in that legendary rite of imprisonment, not only five magicians took part, but also one Naga. In general, naked winters are similar to mythical creatures in Hinduism. Having decided to pay attention, the demon decided to say that she was ready to open the seals in a second, and he would just stand and watch, not even wanting to interfere with her. He said that, no, no, in general, he would look at it a little more in the end. When will the princess's body be so clearly visible? To which the demon who possessed the moon only laughed loudly and said that they are mortals, and indeed sometimes very funny. He hopes that he will not regret his stupidity later. After which he finally completed his processes of restoring the demon into his main body. And finally, after this moment, he was able to finally wait when right now that same spirit came out of the moon and she was now simply unconscious. It was after this moment that he was finally able to wait until that same spirit came out of the moon right now and she was now simply unconscious. Of course, having taken off his jacket, he decided to dress her so that when she woke up, she would not realize that she had undressed on her own. And he also understood that right now he was really in such danger that he was no longer afraid for himself, but for her, since most likely she would be injured if he did nothing. The demon that was released on the backbone admitted that it is considered the most incredible one that has just awakened. He said that he had finally returned to his axis and would sit whatever he wanted. He also said that from now on, no one in the world can stop him, and he wants every creature on the planet to answer for the way they treated him, and now he wants this guy named Yuji to be the first on his list. After which he decided to fly up to him, and the demon could not even imagine that this boy could fly. Deciding to annoy him a little, he said, Who else is he? Well, he finally made him wait, to which the demon said that at least he knows who he's talking to, right now with that tone, after which he decided to immediately punish this small animal, which I don't even know what it is, a deity, or what a demonic force is. The guy knew for sure that, wow, he had a lot of vitality, and that means he will live long enough, he thought. Then suddenly there were two of them, Yuji found it quite interesting, although now it is clear that there is not just one of them, but even more. A rather interesting test awaits Yuji. The demon decided to ask the young guy how he managed to get such power. An ordinary mortal could not have such power. He'd better look at it. He wanted to ask the demon if he knew what the fire of the underworld was. Then I decided to point it directly at him so that he would understand what it was all about. Because of such incidents, this one blow, all his clones, everything that he had accumulated for so long, he turned from a huge demon into a small demon that was incapable of anything. And now he didn't understand, because it was impossible. Is he really an apostle with such power? Because he told her so. How did you know that he had already fought with the apostles? Or to which the demon said that once five years of people and one naga imprisoned him in the prison of the blood of Garos. So, but what's the matter? Yuji said. He decided to ask how he was able to get out of the prison of blood and what was wrong with Garas. Doesn't he keep track of all this or something? Yuji laughed. To which the demon said that Garos was already dead. The boy could not expect such an answer to this question. He could do anything, but this. Yuji didn't understand at all. How is this possible? Because he was one of the apostles. The apostles will even die of old age. After many, many years, I couldn't be reborn. This can't happen, Yuji simply thought. He died, that means yes. To which the demon said that he did not know what ultimately happened there. 
but one day he just suddenly stopped feeling his strength. Maintaining the prison of blood also became more and more difficult for him. It took thousands of years to break through the wall of the blood prison, to escape back here. Yuji did not understand whether the life of the apostle was not Shakayama. I never even heard of the apostles dying. To which he said that, but even Apostle Karas would take time to overcome him. Yuji decided to say that, in fact, Garros was only the eighth apostle. The guy understood that if Garros was the eighth apostle, then what kind of apostle Yuji was? Yuji smiled and just wanted to tell him not to faint right away, and calm down a little before that. He decided to say that he was the first apostle, after which he began to burn him with his flame. Yuji thought that since the fire of the underworld only destroys the physical shell of the demon and cannot prevent its power from moving into another body, but at least in the short term this demon will not harm anyone else. So, the boy thought, the next question is how can they get out of here? Otherwise they got in without any problems. But now the problem is how to get out. They finally decided to get closer and look at the moon in order. He doesn't even think that probably in order to prevent the demon from returning to the human world again, no returning seal is provided here. The gates of space here open in one direction. It turns out that they are stuck here for a long time. It also means that that sign left letters here, which means he was here and his body is not visible around, which means he found another way to get out of here. So he thought, okay, He'll just have to try it and see if he can punch his way up the wall. Having finally decided to use his projectile, he decided to simply shoot upward to get out of here along with the moon. This best one made its way through all the walls, which made its way through the entire ground to the top. And in the end, finally, he was able to get out from where the water was flowing. Yuji decided to look around and make sure that they were in their world but he understood that the river could not just appear in this place. Therefore, one thing was clear. What is implicit is not their world, and now they are either in another dimension, from which they are unlikely to be able to return back, just like that. Meanwhile, these same accompanying people realized that something seemed to have happened on the third level of the labyrinth. They decided to examine everything. One of the gentlemen told them to look at both possibilities. There is someone else here, left, and he also said that they should check every corner to find every single student. Of course, the gentleman also decided to explore something and look everywhere. He was able to discover one of the important clues. When they had finally cleared away all the rubble that was here, they wanted to see if anyone had come through that door. But the director realized that this is what he suspected. Sarah decided to ask the old man what was the matter, to which he said that this is the power. It was here. The seal is intact. It has become even more stable than before, to which Gray could not believe that this even meant. The old man said that based on the powerful force they sensed earlier, the seal should have already been broken. However, this situation is no longer the same as it was before. The director also stated that the fact that someone removed the seal and sealed the demon again obviously means something, most likely. The video turns out, the magic that can seal a demon requires a sacrifice, and since it works again, and Sarah's student is nowhere to be seen, it is most likely that. Alice couldn't believe it. After all, this simply cannot be. She couldn't believe that Yuji would die so easily because he ran in there and did this to himself and sealed them both there so that the theme couldn't escape. Because of hysteria, she began to scream, What, Yujik? Where is he? Is he alive? Most likely? Let him just go out and not make them worry. To which everyone told her to stop screaming. Alice, she understands that she is worried about him, but she shouldn't do it. After all, she knows that most likely he is definitely alive. Alice could not understand how she could know for sure that he was probably alive. To which Selfa replied that it was true, 
because according to the contract, she can only exist due to the fact that the master is alive, or rather, she can turn into a human species thanks to him. Alice couldn't believe that, unless it was true, they would have to wait so long, to which they said that, of course. Or she has already forgotten that she is also connected to Yuji by a contract, so she can sense whether he is alive or not. And yet, right now she doesn't know his location, but, but he is definitely alive, he said, and is fighting somewhere at the moment. Also at that moment he was running away from her, because he says that she is too aggressive and will let him explain everything. What was she like, naked? And he gave her the jacket. She said he was a fucking pervert and she wasn't going to just listen to him. The thing is that she will say that when she woke up, she found herself completely naked and alone with him, and his pants were already half down. How else is she supposed to understand this situation? To which he said that she said that he was undressing because he picked her up from the bottom of the lake, and all his clothes became wet. To which she said that was bullshit. She was definitely inside the maze. How did she end up at the bottom of the lake? The girl is definitely a girl, but wait, suddenly she realized something. She remembered how, in a vague memory, she was able to defeat the laser prince. Looking at herself, she thought that she had freed the demon and cut off the prince's hand with a laser. She decided to remember that it simply couldn't be you. She was deceived. From the very beginning, there was no magic that could control the demon. The demon's power is simply beyond the control of ordinary people. The girl realized that she was simply confused by the story that the power of the demon could save the fate of the empire. She single-handedly freed the demon and the destroyer of the world. And also, she is Sarah's father. Everyone will die because of her. After which, when he saw that she had finally calmed down and began to worry about the fact that she was now a demon, he decided to tell her to calm down immediately. After all, he decided to tell her that she was a demon and was not released. No one will die because of her and she hasn't done anything irreparable, so let her calm down right now. Because she cried and said that the demon was not released, no one died. He answered that, of course, yes. She just cut off the man's hand under the face with a laser. It's not a big problem. So don't blame yourself, he told Luna. She laughed and said it was good. Yuji knew only one thing, that he was finally able to calm her down and everything was finally settled. However, a little later, there was a rough silence, from which everything then began to turn a little. To which Luna decided to say that, however, how much longer was he going to paw her by the shoulders? To which Yuji did not immediately understand. He said he didn't mean to. He's just trying to calm you down, that's all. After which he, I repeat, however, slips by accident and heads straight forward. After which he realizes that he definitely did not expect this from his legs. Never in his life had he fallen as much as he did at that moment when he and Alice fought together for the first time. Once again, it was clearly clear that she wanted to say that he had waited a little and did not fall right on top of her like that. Why did she already want to say these very words? that he was a pervert. Yujia also began to understand that he really didn't like such accidents, since most likely, right now, when he fell on her, he would feel a good sensation, and then he would be beaten half to death. Of course, he really didn't want to get to that point. Luna was telling him that she had had enough, she should just kill him on the spot. Eugene Su. Soen said that if he says that it was just an accident and apologizes to her again, she will ask him, after which lightning began to appear in this very place, and she said that conversations were useless, they would simply let them go to hell, a damn perversion, and at that moment Yuji, although he didn't suffer so much, but he understood that he still received spiritual pain, and at that moment Alice herself said that unexpectedly, she felt that Yuji was really alive and well, to which Sarah said that something clearly happened there, something that always happens to them. 
At this moment, he decided to ask if she had changed her clothes yet, to which he replied not to even think about looking in her direction. Damn pervert. She also understood that she still needed to solve the main problems first, and she will be able to get even with this pervert later. But she understood that all the same. Where did they end up? And what is this place anyway? Are they still in the labyrinth or not anymore? G decided to say that it is still unknown, but they must be no longer on their mainland. This is a completely different world that they found themselves in, because they were sealed by its gates, but the girl could not understand that such a thing could even exist. She decided to say that if they were not on their mainland, did they really end up in the east? Who will believe this nonsense? Then someone ended up in the bushes. Everyone looked at him and saw a small troll, or goblin. It was very incredible. The little goblins actually seemed a little scary to her. The girl decided to hide behind Yuji's back and said that this was a monster, to which this little goblin said that there was now some girl standing behind this guy who wanted to devour the guy. Can't be. Yuji had decided to tell her to calm down and see that this is not a demon, an ordinary goblin, to which she said, a goblin demon. He decided to explain that it was the decline of past human civilizations. Most of the demons moved to the magical world. Only a small part of them remained on the mainland with people, so Luna did not recognize this goblin. He generally tried to say something but communicate in his own language. The guy understood that he seemed to want them to follow him, right? To listen to him, he decided to say that, okay, they were going with him, which the girl did not expect and told him to wait a little. Does he really want to blindly follow this strange creature? Yuji decided to say that they had no other choice. They are not here with the people or the area. They are unfamiliar. They need to find someone, make contact, figure out the situation, and they also need to find a place to live. Well, one thing is clear. It's time to find something suitable for her. You can't wear his clothes forever. Or that she really likes walking in it so much. To which she will say, what else? Let him move forward more quickly. Finally, they saw some kind of settlement in the distance, which was closed on all sides, and inside, apparently, there was some kind of village. Approaching a little closer, they were able to discover some kind of fortress, which was clearly in good condition. Yuji didn't expect them to come across a village. He found it quite interesting to see this. Naturally, he had never been to other worlds, although no, I have. This goblin began to chatter in his own language to his brother, saying that he had most likely found some people or creatures that he had not seen before and said that they were with him to which he shouted something about himself, and it was really unclear what he was talking about. Well, what was clear was that he said that they could pass, and only let him. Most likely, he will keep it to himself so that they do not attack their tribe. The owner understood that there were actually a lot of different goblins here, and they were all looking at these two people. Although, according to their feelings, they probably thought that these were some unknown monsters. The girl decided to tell Yuji that they would just come in and follow them. Isn't that strange at all? Yuji understood that she would relax. He is completely responsible for her safety to Sarah. Therefore, it will protect if something happens. Finally, they all came together to some main building, which was in the center of the city. This young man was talking about something with an old man. Apparently, he said that he found them near a lake with water and said that they were some unknown creatures. Still, he decided to say that he had brought two runaway slaves from the wild beasts, probably. But it seems someone cut off their ears, to which he decided to say, slaves and beasts. I thought that he didn't understand the modern magical language here, which he didn't. No one who could speak village magic. The old man immediately noticed that these were not animals with ears. He decided to hit the goblin and say that, Oh, he's a cretin. 
these are not some animals at all. And he said, it can't be. These are not beast-eared creatures. The gentleman said that a long time ago in his travels to foreign lands, he saw creatures with such an appearance. He recognizes them, noble creatures. One thing was clear, that these were succubi. They couldn't believe the succubi. They were, in fact, a person. That's right, succubi, said the old man. In their family, all the men are majestic and the women are beautiful. Men, succubi, love to bear their torsos to attract the other sex. And don't be surprised, he told everyone, that this girl is wearing so much she doesn't have underwear at all, according to legend, because she achieves great attractiveness. Now this is popular with them. The goblin girls just looked at them and said that there really was nothing. A dirty girl, a succubus, said the goblin girl. The lady clearly understood that it seemed to her, or that they were looking at her strangely. The goblin decided to tell the elder, It's true, succubi. They don't understand anything they say. To which he said, What are they saying? That some of the succubi still insist on using the ancient magical language. You need to try to communicate with them like that. Deciding to approach, he decided to communicate in the ancient magical language. They say that he is all in the deck, and the last tribe of goblins in the second sage. Yuji said, Wow, finally someone to talk to. He said that he wanted to know if he knew where the emperor was now. To which he said that Mr. Emperor is now studying and he will think about it. Wow, he just opened his mouth and is already trying to find out about the emperor. Yes, he is undoubtedly from the upper classes of succubi, said the old man. Yuji also decided to ask, Where is this Gao Cheng anyway? Is it far from here? To which the goblin replied that if he wanted to go to Gao Sheng, he would have to go through the lands of the wild animals, and if they did not object, he would send a ranger with them. He would have carried them through. To which Julia just thought, Pathfinder, who is this anyway? The girl said, Wait a minute, what is he even talking about? Yuji said nothing, he was just asking about the road. But suddenly someone ran up to them, some other goblin, who was in a hurry to get to the headman. Running closer, he said, Trouble, headman, trouble. He said that the ogre broke into the village and now he is somewhere near them, to which the elder did not expect this. I heard the news because they will not be able to cope with him. Therefore he could not believe how this was even possible. He replied that he said that he destroyed the gate and rather began to flee from there. Obviously it was very small, so there is no way they can cope with it only if the army, even some brave men who wanted to beat him, they could not do anything. In fact, he swatted them down like flies. This is, they all said not to be cowards, and all together, they all wanted to fight for their tribe. It was clearly clear, but he was clearly stronger than all of them. Whatever one may say, it was still clear. Having hit the ground, he was simply able to destroy everything under them and kill them. Some of them were simply injured, but it is unknown what happened to others. In general, he tried to survive and quickly came here. He began to destroy everything in his path for you. The girl could not even imagine that the goblin was unlucky. In fact, what kind of strange monster was this? To which Yuji said that a real ogre. How could that be interesting? Probably. Luna said that the ogre. And what should they do now? to which she already told her, well, just kill, probably. What was clear was that he began to eat all the other goblins to feed himself. Better said that it seems they are unlikely to provide them with a guide so they will do what the girl said that they will just take it and leave, he doesn't want to help them at all. To which he said that in the end, it's their business. Why should they arbitrarily interfere in all this? to which this same goblin ran up to him and said that the gentleman should help them. Please, he asked with all his strength. 
The elder only said that he was asking him to save their village and all of them because they may be the last tribe of goblins in the nearest mainland of their area. He just looked at it all and realized that he definitely didn't expect this. The girl who noticed this said that it seemed like he was begging him to help, to which Yuji said that it's not that at all, that she's the head man, she's just accompanying them on a hike, that's all. And the fact that there's a huge ogre in the background doesn't mean anything. The girl asked Yuji, but if he is seeing them off, then why is he crying? Is he sure of this? To which he will say that because he is a very gentle and kind elder, he is so good-natured, and that is why he is crying. He said that he himself would very much like to help, but they are now in another world and it is better for them to stay away from all this and be much quieter, and also that, to his great regret, he will not be able to help them in any way. After which he, hearing something in the cage, he said, Save. Some girl asked for help and said that she should be saved. He heard this soft look. This girl decided to ask what it was all about. Yuji understood that it was the voice of a little girl who wants to be saved, and he cannot refuse such a thing. More and more to ask to save her. The ogre wanted to take a look and directly destroy them. Destroying the cage. He saw that now right in front of him there was a small victim with ears. He already wanted to devour her. She was very afraid of the ogre and did not know what to do. She just screamed and said that, No, no one is needed. Please save her, she said. I couldn't control my feelings and decided to help this little girl. Looking, she saw a gentleman who fiercely wanted to save her from this giant. He was truly handsome and she couldn't even think about anything else but him a savior who might be willing to sacrifice himself to save someone like her. Luna saw him standing here just a second ago, but he had already disappeared. The headman didn't understand why, when he asked him, he did nothing, and when he heard something, the girl was in danger, he ran immediately and saved her. Is he not worthy of kindness or something? Yuji was able to simply cut his face into two parts, causing him to die instantly. Coming closer, hugging this girl, he decided to tell her if she was okay, after which all the goblins saw that this main giant had been destroyed. They could not believe that the ogre had been defeated. Everyone shouted how great it was. They are finally safe. He looked carefully and realized that where such a kitty came from in the first place, to which she became embarrassed and said that no, no, she was not a kitty at all, but a lemur. Yuji didn't understand why the lemur was here in the first place, but since that was the case, he decided to ask again. So, her name is Lemur, right? To which the girl Luna looked at him and thought that he was a real pervert after all. Turning around, he looked at her and said that it was not at all like that, to which the lady said that she still had not settled the score with him and he is already stretching his dirty paws to another girl. To which he said, What is this about? She? He didn't open his hands at all. The goblin decided to tell them that they were very grateful to the master for saving their people from the ogre. He also said that thanks to him for saving this beast-eared slave. They said that they had captured this girl to present her as a gift to the green sorcerer in exchange for a source of water, and if something happened to her, they would have to start hunting for a new victim. The girl decided to scream and said that, No, please, the lemur, she doesn't want to be given to the green sorcerer, she told the gentleman. And she began to reflect with fear because she imagined that she would belong to some green gentleman, and he would seduce her. She really wouldn't want that. To which she already told her that since that's the case, he decided to tell the goblin that they just lack a guide to get to Kao Chen. They choose her. At that very moment, he began to stroke her ears, thereby proving his affection for her. One thing was clear, and that was that she really loved this gentleman. The goblin decided to say that she was a slave, but oh well. With his gaze, he decided to ask if there were any objections to him, to which the goblin said that no. 
Not at all, he didn't mind. After which he decided to say that, well, like a lemur, would she agree to be his guide? To which she said that the lemur agreed. She decided to say that the lemur would agree to anything for the master. Well, both of them, to be honest, were a little shocked, since they did not expect that she would call Yuji master, and Luna generally thought that he was definitely a pervert. Luna looked at Yuji and said, It means that if she calls him master, and he says that he didn't let go of his hands, that's right. To which he said that no, no, he himself doesn't understand what's going on here. Why did she suddenly decide to call him that? The goblin realized that, apparently, the gentleman did not know something about beast ears. The tyranny of someone's ears means a marriage proposal. And if a stranger is born losing the beast's ears, he still won't mind the mess. Moreover, this is considered as a request for recognition as a host. But in any case, there is also a combination under the text of marriage, of course. What of course I couldn't expect this. The goblin decided to congratulate Yuji. Since he liked it so much, let him take it and leave. And with an offering to the sorcerer, they won't come up with anything. To which he said, wait a minute, but I didn't mean that at all. After which, when he was already embarrassed and realized that he had done something irreparable, he again realized what Luna knew a little later. Who the hell is she? When she learns their language, she won't be happy at all. And he also heard how she decided to call the owner. The lemur looked at her and said that her owner did not need her, to which he, of course, could not say no. Yuji said no, that's not what he meant. One thing was clear. Luna was that Yuji was most likely still a bastard, to which he couldn't say anything to her because I didn't know how to explain it to her, that right now, in fact, he could literally marry a lemur in this world as soon as they got here. Finally, the old man also said that they didn't have clothes that fit them. That's why he sang from what was, he said, so that he is not without the essence of it, gentlemen. Well, he said that this is not bad at all. It's still better than running naked in the desert, he said correctly. To which she said that it was true. That's how it is. The goblin also said that the master is the only cart of their tribe. But the trouble is that all of Scott was eaten by the huge one, and there was no one to harness except people. He understood that, so... If the master wanted, he could send several of them with them to pull the cart, to which he said that it's not worth it, they can handle it themselves. Meanwhile, one hot desert, and that's all. The boy was pulling this heavy cart. While the lemur and Luna were sitting in this very carriage, they were just driving to the distant desert. One thing was clear to him. The heat here is very, very fierce. Therefore, we need to quickly find some kind of shade or it will just fall back here. Luna decided to say that they had already been traveling for so long, but they had never seen water yet. Even the trees withered and died. The lemur decided to say that they had been suffering from a terrible drought here for six years. All the sources of the lake and river had evaporated and everything around was also dying. All the trees died behind them, in order to get to the precious water, they often fought with goblins. Luna decided to say that since everything was so bad, why don't they move to another place? Because she will say that the whole territory here is one continuous desert. They simply have nowhere to move. Yuji decided to ask if it was even possible to leave here. The girl replied that Mr. and Miss Luna apparently came from a wealthy family, they didn't leave the house at all, yes. To which she said that the territories are separated from each other by huge chasms full of terrible predators. Even with wings, you cannot cross them. She decided to say that the Goshan is connected to four zones, each of which borders on two more territories. In fact, the only way to enter another territory or zone is to obtain a special pass. The girl decided to say, I mean, stop, 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 so you also need a pass, okay? So what should they do now?
To which I already said that, yes, okay, let's go. What other pass? After all, they will break through directly. It's not very difficult. To which the girl said, I mean, directly. Does he want to say that you fight them? Meanwhile, the cave of the green sorcerer. This green sorcerer, meanwhile, was eating bones with such a look. And also this sorcerer was a real big Okorm who controlled everyone else. He told her that this month the Lukunta tribe not only failed to deliver, but also allowed their precious captive to escape. This is disgusting, he said. It seems it's time to get rid of the tribe of these useless non-entities, the ogre said. They all supported him and said that, at the same time, they would check the uselessness of their fighters. But before that, he said that it was better to eat well, so he told them little ones to come with them. This look of the ogre really scared not only them, most likely even ordinary people. After that, they realized that they should enjoy them properly. Soon, night finally came, and Yuji, along with the lady, as well as his lemur, finally realized how much better it was to travel at night in the desert. The lemur decided to tell the master that ahead was the land of the lemur tribe, and she was very happy to see it. Yuji couldn't believe his own eyes. They finally came here. Meanwhile, he saw how these other people were not very happy to see them. After all, it seems that they did not want to wait for new guests at all. They decided to say that magic, that they generally needed beast ears from them. They came from the goblin tribe. You definitely don't expect anything good here, said another beast-eared. Everyone told everyone that they needed to be detained urgently, as they could pose a great danger. To which she decided to speed up and jump somewhere, and say, Wait, they are not bad guys. They saved her. It was clear that they were surprised and said that she, she had been kidnapped a long time ago and had returned right now. They really saved her. Coming closer, he decided to ask, It's great that she returned after being caught by the goblins. He no longer hoped for it. To which he said, What, did the owner save Murr? To which he decided to ask the owner, Meanwhile, they finally arrived, and he thanked them for saving Mr. Yuji the lemur. He said that he was the head of the beast-eared mogul tribe. And right now he found out that their relationship with the goblin tribe was disgusting, so anyone who comes from them cannot escape suspicion, and they will already forgive them, I hope, Mr. Yuji. To which he said, It's okay. He understands everything. He also decided to ask the guy if he thought he just heard a lemur calling him master. It's true that he proposed marriage, to which the boy said that, in general, it is possible. The lemur said that this is how the owner saved her and also scratched her ear. Yuji immediately realized that some sounds were being heard from the moon in the background. She just said that he was a scoundrel, a scoundrel, a pervert, a maniac, a scoundrel in general, in his spirit. The gentleman just laughed and said that's how it is. Well, if that's the case, it's young. He understands everything. She understands. Well, if he doesn't mind, the lemur agrees. Then they will have no objections. But he also understood that, yes, the lemur she returned just in time, there was an important matter that they needed to discuss. The fact is that Orley fell ill with the rotten virus 19. She couldn't believe it. Enough. She doesn't believe how this can even be. To which she then decided to run and straight from this room, which made Yuji a little worried and decided to ask, Where is she, Lemur? Well, the head said that. Oh, a terrible thing. The Lemur's mother also died from hatred 19. And now the armies that the lemur cared for for so long also became infected with this disease head 19. So, it's better to ask, yes. The gentleman also insisted that the rotten virus 19 appeared in them about four years ago. This is a terrible and highly contagious disease. The fact is that those infected with the rotten virus 19 first have a fever, develop shortness of breath and a severe cough, 
and then rapid aging begins. Vitality disappears from the body and therefore leads to death. He decided to notice that their tribe's best medicine was trying to find a cure for this disease. In the meantime, in order to avoid infecting the entire tribe, all those infected and those who came into contact with them are required to go into self-isolation. They are expelled from the tribe. The girl didn't expect it and said, Wow, this is so serious. Yuji decided to ask the leader. So he means that all sick people and those who came into contact with them should leave the tribe. To which he said, Probably so. Since the boy said so. But he told the lemur that Arlie was sick. After all, he understands that even being aware of the difference, the virus 19 has not rotted, he will still run to see Arlie. To which he said, that's exactly what it is. He understood that she was from a tribe of goblins and brought with her two muddy poppies. Who can guarantee this and that she is telling the truth and not scheming against the tribe? Meanwhile, the lemur finally found Arlie. She looked at her and she told the lemur to leave quickly. She doesn't think about herself at all. She said that if she stayed even for a second, she would also have to leave the tribe. To which, and you said that no, you need to find a cure, and they won't necessarily cure her. They just talk to each other. So what's now? Or Mora ran inside. What else should they do? said another. Now they both need to be driven out. Otherwise, the infection will spread, and the whole tribe will definitely end. The leader said that he just wants to protect their tribe. They have something, or have some other suggestions. How can this be changed? Yuji looked at the head as well as Luna. I even looked at it all with such a look. They didn't know what to say in response at that moment. After this, the chief said that all the inhabitants as well as all the brothers of his tribe, should listen to his order. To prevent the spread of the rot virus, Arlie and the lemurs in contact with her must leave the village right now. So he told them to be kind and get out of here. Lemur could not allow them to be kicked out of the village, simply because she began to get sick with this particular virus. He told the lemur to take the magicians she could bring from the goblins. Also, let them get out of here immediately, to which the little girl told them to wait, but let them give her everything for the medicine and she can cure Arlie of the rotten virus, to which the head replied that she could cure the rotten virus, that she believed in the recipe described in the medicinal book of Black Thunder. Even if they're not the best doctors have already declared that he is absolutely useless. The guy said that if that recipe could really help, her mother would be alive. What Yuji looked at was how she looked at all this, and she understood that it was most likely very painful for her to hear this now. So Yuji decided to say that maybe it was worth giving the lemur a try after all. He asked the head. The leader said, so what if he gives her the ingredients now, just because he said so, and they can't waste precious resources just on nonsense? Yuji decided to ask again. Did he not understand? He said that they should give her everything she needs. He decided to ask if she tried it, and it turned out that the recipe was really useless. He would understand everything and would not cause him any inconvenience, or that he wanted to immediately move on to the consequences of his anger. What he didn't expect was that Maka would be able to radiate such an ominous power and he just couldn't understand what kind of how dare he even. In his thoughts, he understood that this guy was exhaling the smell of great danger, and he would not understand what was happening here. But it was better to be gentle with him, in fact, the head realized. Therefore, he decided to say, Well, okay, let them give him a lemur to try to do it once, and right away, but they say if they don't achieve any results, let me do it only for myself. After which Eugene decided to tell her that the lemur was fine with her. In response, she looked at the owner and said that thanks to him she could fix everything, and she was grateful that he stood up for her. 
The head decided to tell them to bring the ingredients now, let her prepare her medicine right here. After which a little time passed, and right now it was already starting to be a little lighter. All the people around just said, well, will they soon be there in groups of four, four at a time? If three hours have already passed, they were all in a hurry. Lamora was also told that she was simply fooling people. This is true. I'll have to drink. All these people didn't understand why it took so long to prepare the medicine. Although the head understood that this is all they were saying, all nonsense, you see, the medicine could take much longer. While they didn't speak and hurried and told her to finish already, Yuji only showed that they should be calmer there. Luna decided to say, Oh, will this work? It's soon morning. Will she be able to make an effective medicine? To which he already told her that, Nothing, we still need to wait. What if the lemur succeeds, and even if not, then nothing? To which she said that. He said, then he had something in store, which he obviously didn't expect. She said she finished in an hour. The girl decided to present this medicine so that she could try drinking it. To which she said that, it's okay, lemur, no matter what the outcome will be, she has already done everything she could. After which, as soon as she tried this very medicine, she decided to ask how she was feeling, Arlie. She heard nothing in response, and it was clear that nothing worked. The head just scoffed and said, Well, so that they look. He said so many times that nothing will work, but they all like, Let's try. Let's try. We have no brains at all, in fact. All the people were alarmed and said that there was no need to talk to them about anything else, to throw them out of here. Yuji decided to tell them to wait a little. Patience is the main ally in such matters. To which the head said that, again, a new excuse or what? To which he said that this is the case. He thinks that the healing process just hasn't finished yet, that's all. After which he decided to tell Luna that it was possible he would ask her to use the magic of the elements on Arlie, let him collect the element of water for her, to which she was a little surprised and understood what she needed to do. The head was surprised and said that the magic of the elements, they are real magicians and this is not even an excuse. The lady decided to say what he was up to in such an arid place, and it would be difficult to collect a drop of water, but that he said that less talk, let her do something more. Let's do something important, as he said. After which she began to do this and said that all she knew was how to command people, but he himself couldn't do anything. Okay, the water elements of their entire world ask themselves to rights and not to pass by, and the earth, in the face of her despair, is still dissipating into streams, she counted the spell. Yo! After which a small source of water appeared from her hands. And then a little later, because of this small source of water, it was drawn into Arlie. One thing was clear. This was indeed natural water magic. Wow, look, I said, one of the human animal people. They couldn't believe it. She left young and beautiful. She really cured her. The recipe turned out to be working, just not fully used. Yuji said correctly. So the so-called rot virus is not some kind of terrible disease and incurable at all. This disease is caused by a simple lack of water, so there is only one conclusion. If they want to be cured of the rotten virus, they should just stay close to the water. A large amount of water will make the medicine effective, and they, like old Arlie, will turn back into. What an extraordinary beautiful girl. Yuji understood correctly. This is Arlie. Finally, they were all happy. And they said that she really recovered. They couldn't believe their eyes. Oral returned to her original appearance. Now this wonderful recipe. They all said how great it is that she is now as she was before. Right now, Yuji decided to ask. And now the clan head has something to say about this matter to which he just thought a little and how wonderful it is that everything ended well, he said, 
but he didn't think that the problem was not in the recipe, but in the water. It is clear that she screamed and said that it was not a problem with the water at all. But the problem was that he didn't give it to the sick. This is what made the recipe useless. Lemur said that it was he who killed them all. It was all his fault, it turns out. After which everyone else understood how this happened. After all, if they just gave more water to everyone else, they would survive. It turns out that his father was also being treated. And therefore, according to the recipe, if he had water, he would be here now. They all cried and suffered. In order to cure the Levirus, all they had to do was get water. With these very hands he kicked out his mother and sister from the tribe, they all regretted it very much. After this, because of the mistake of their, so to speak, head, they hated him, saying that it was he who killed their relatives, and he was not worthy to be their headman, which he couldn't expect to have such an effect because he made such a fragile mistake. After that, they started throwing stones at him and saying that it was all his fault. The lemur decided to say that it was because of him that her mother died. She decided to yell at him, and out of anger, as well as the fact that he wasn't like that simply because he was so naive, she really begged him to bring her mom back. The head said that there is no need to exaggerate everything so much. They're simple. He decided to say that, in general, let them drive people out of the tribe. He was not the only one who decided. They all agreed then. And he decided to shout at everyone. They say that even if this recipe helps cure the rotten virus, and so what? All the patients were weak and old people. Now they are gone. And those drops of water that they saved can last for a couple of days more than all the water they have. Barely enough for healthy people to survive. Where else will they get water to treat the sick? And he told everyone. After all, in this world it is survival of the fittest. They are clearly not from kindergarten, so as not to understand such truths. They got rid of those who were dragging the tribe back. Now their resources will be used for more useful people. This is what he calls the right way. They all just merged more, but he continued to say what or what. Where do they think the water they drink every day comes from? This is all thanks to the sacrifices of other people. So how are they different from him? He decided to say that compared to them, it was much harder for him. After all, they had no idea about all this. But he is in charge, and he must proceed from the interests of the entire tribe, although he himself understood that this was madness. They all began to sympathize in their heads for the fact that such a burden was really placed on him for their tribe. After which he heard the clapping of Yuji, who said that what a good headman, silently bearing all the hardships of life, was simply magnificent. Well said, but he almost believed it. To which he looked back and said, again, so what else now? To which Yuji said, it's nothing special. After all, there is this thing, as soon as the goblin elder told such interesting things. For example, that water for the beast-eared tribe is exchanged by their elder with the sorcerer for special offerings, and also that the kidnapped lemurs were not at all accidental, but because they were goblins, and the head of the tribe herself exchanged her for resources. All the people you heard that the offering traded the lemur goblin for resources. That's exactly what Yuji said, and when he saw that the lemur had returned from the goblins, the elder was so scared that now all his dirty deeds would come out. But he came up with an idea, took advantage of the army's illness, so that he, or Mora, could be known from the tribe. The head decided to say that this was complete nonsense. Why can Yuji even understand such a thing as a foreigner? What is this? Everything he does, he does for the sake of their tribe, for the sake of all of them. To which the lemur said that not at all, this is all in order to protect his place as head of the tribe. To which he could not respond except to say, what do you mean? What she said is that someone who is unable to protect the tribe should not be its leader, 
he is the most useless person in the tribe. Yuji just said that it was well said, lemur, she's great. After this, Luna decided to say that someone who does not value the lives of his relatives should not be a leader. To which he said what was he even up to? He is the head, how dare she do this to him? Then I decided to create a water flow attack, and she created a typhoon that could lift him very high so that he could see his village a little from above. Everyone who lived in this settlement rejoiced and said that water is water. They will have water, and now they will be the happiest they can be. After which that same Arlie decided to tell them to look. Rather, there's a rainbow there. One thing was clear. In this world, after all, rainbows can be found much more often than usual. If it really rains once and the sun shines like that, then of course they will see a rainbow. The only thing is that if you wait until the drought ends after the rain, you can see a rainbow. This is it, as the lemur thought. She decided to tell her to promise her mother that she would look at the rainbow recording of her. The girl was very happy that she was finally able to meet the rainbow and that she was not eaten by those orcs and also that she had found a master who would, perhaps, protect them until the very end of their journey. Yuji was clearly proud that everything was going so well here, and Luna also felt a little better about the whole situation. The boy decided to say that it was a pity, of course, that it was an artificial rainbow, but it still looks beautiful, to which the moon replied that he should be silent for a while now. Residents said they now have so much water that they won't have to worry anytime soon. They are really very grateful to Mr. Yuji, as well as to her companion. One of her friends said that the lemur needed to discuss something with her alone now. She decided to say what she thought. Can Mr. Yuji be asked to become their new leader? To which the lemur said that the new leader is the owner to which she said that it was just because Mogu started this whole mess and couldn't cope with it. They now need a new head. And basically, Mr. Yuji is so strong. Moreover, he can use magic. He is not at all deprived of intelligence, but he does not have a tail or ears. And this is the most ideal leader. The lemur could not believe that the leader of the beasts was meowing. She decided to say that it wouldn't work. After all, the goal of the owner's journey is the main thing, the empire, which is located in the central continent. He can't stay here. To which she said, that's how it is. For this reason, she decided to come up with this idea. Probably the most truthful idea and the best one now will be. Here's the thing. She heard that Mr. Yuji rubbed her ears and proposed marriage, right? This means that since the master himself cannot stay, then let his children stay. Let his child not be their leader. To which the lemur said, Children, but the master has no children. Meow. And then it dawned on her that she was suggesting that there was nothing to do now. Then the Lemurians, the master, only need to give birth to one, another, and that's all in principle. In fact, Yuji, you see, is resting right now, let her go to him while he is free and quietly sneak into his room and do everything herself. And that's the point. But the truth is, she didn't take into account that, it seems, she went a little overboard with this. After all, looking at her, she only said, Meow, meow, meow. It turns out that she was a little unconscious right now. Before heading out the next day, Yuji and Luna wanted to take a good rest. The girl said that the bed was so soft and pleasant to the touch. The boy decided to say, Really, Luna, she's a princess after all. It's just a bed. What's that noise before that? To which he will say that, How much does he understand? She said that since they got to this damn place, there have been such damn things, then ogres, then rotten viruses, and it turned out that there was a crib in which they could rest peacefully. This is quite a rare thing here. Hugging something as well as a pillow, she said that, Oh, if only I could wash myself. A dream. And that's all. 
Yuji said that if she wants to take a shower, then she should ask the Beast Ears to prepare everything for her. What problems? To which she said that he was completely stupid or something. After all, she herself once provided water for them with the help of magic, but she remembers that the beast-eared animals were dying from drought. How can she wash herself in water that is precious to them? To which he already told her that, oh, that's right, he completely forgot about it. If so, he said that, but he had not noticed that she was so kind-hearted and was very surprised by this. To which she said that she was very surprised, since he was a filthy freak, she said. Hugging herself into a pillow, she realized that maybe from the outside it seems that she really is so evil, but still she is kind. The girl told Yuji that yes, there is something she wants to ask him. She said that from the very beginning she began to doubt that it was so. The goblins are beast-eared, they clearly move to another world, and it scares her that they will not be able to return back. One thing was clear. She now misses home very much, and says that there is a way to return to their world, right? She told Yuji. It turns out that the girl had never heard of such transitions between worlds in the legendary ones. But they will really be able to go back, because there is no way to go back. They are here forever, to which he already told her that they would definitely return. Since Sarah and Alice, they are all waiting for him so he definitely needs to return, even if it means crossing worlds. And also, he really wants her to be able to get home, so he won't stop just like that, and he understood that it was better not to worry about it, because he would take her with him. What she didn't expect was that Yuji was actually so worried about her, and in general he was a very good person, in fact, even though he was a pervert. After which they saw her say that, there was trouble, master, trouble. Lemur said that the goblin tribe returned, and no, not even that. The goblin tribe was forced to return here because they were attacked by others. Yuji and the mistress could not understand just one thing, what was going on here. Why did they even come back here? Coming a little closer, he saw and discovered that the goblins really wanted to enter this village. And also they were waiting for the master, and in front of their goblin stood the same leader, the elder. He decided to come here and ask what was going on here, to which the cat girl decided to tell Mr. Yuji that, after all, not very good things are happening here. She said that a tribe of goblins had come to ask for help. That's it. They looked like they were being followed. To which Yuji could not explain who was pursuing them in the first place. After which he drew attention to the elder and he decided to say only one thing to Mr. The old man immediately started telling Mr. Yuji to help them. He begged him, now they are just helpless against all this. To which Yuji decided to ask what happened in the end, what was the matter. The goblin said that the green sorcerer attacked their village. What he was going to do, he couldn't understand that the green sorcerer was the one they were talking about after which one of the small ones decided to pay attention and say that the head man, he is already here. He caught up with them. Looking back, Yuji saw something. The goblin said that here they are. One thing was clear, that these goblins transformed and they create over them themselves to intimidate other tribes. These are the same orcs that surrounded their village. In fact, they are not that big. There are still a lot of them. Essentially, these are the same goblins, but they are ferocious and cruel, with a very bad trait and a thirst for flesh. One of the kitten tribe said, What the hell is this monster anyway? All that was clear was that there were so many of them. This is too much, said the second. All they could think about was what to do now. After all, if they start attacking the village, they will definitely not get out of here alive after which one of them decided to say what kind of business this was all about. It's a great idea to bring hordes of monsters from their village alone. I didn't want to die like that. Now they'll drag them along with me, he told the goblin. 
It was clear that the goblin said that, not at all. He just wanted to ask Mr. Yuji for help. To which he said that, yes, he was crazy, right? No matter how strong he is, what can he do against so many of these mutants? To which Yuji said that this is the green sorcerer. They really are ugly, of course. With such a quantity, you will have to work hard, but in general, there are no problems at all. What they both said. What? No problem. That one of his tribe said that he really, Mr. Yuji, could do this. To which he said that, yes, they could fight. To which he said, if it's possible, then fine. To which the lemur said, that's enough. She said, enough with all these annoying requests. Well, as much as possible anyway. To which they looked at her and said, Lemur, what's the matter? Yuji looked and said, Yes, they are already like that. They are already annoying. The lady still didn't understand everything that the gentleman could say, but she thanked him for pulling the lemur out of the goblin's lair and thanked him for saving the lemur's village from destruction. And the facts of meeting the owner already make the lemur incredibly happy. But still, she would not want him to die because of these creatures. The girl decided to say that she was glad that the owner had already given so much effort to the lemur that she didn't know how to thank him now. She decided to say that the green sorcerer had come for them as well as those purchased. Therefore, he is not to blame. That's why he can leave here. The owner does not have to put himself in danger for their sake, so she asks the owner and Messi to leave here as soon as possible. Now is the time to do it. She also said that he should ask that the lemur would not and could no longer be her guide. They were all worried about this and understood that it was true that the gentleman was not to blame for anything. Therefore, of course, they sympathized with the husband that they would have to say goodbye to the master. But still... The goblin decided to say that she said everything correctly. This is all somehow irresponsible on his part. You can't turn to impossibilities and requests to a benefactor who has already saved their tribe. The goblin chief said, So quickly, let them leave here, and they only need a little time to escape, and at this time the goblin tribe will delay them so that they can escape. The girl looked at it all and she understood that if she did it right now, she would never ask herself. The lemur at this time sheds enough tears to understand that she will feel very bad without her master. Also the same kid who found and at the very beginning understood that he was going right now to certain death. And what they didn't try to tell him, he just laughed and said, What? Well, they don't respect them at all. They decided to tell them all to listen to him because the lemur, if he wants to leave any place, then do so only of his own free will. And there is no force that will force him to do anything at the whim of others. And the problem he talked about at the beginning is just an empty stomach, because while he's chopping up these monsters, he'll definitely get hungry. So he decided this. Right now he decided to order the lemur so that all they need to do is go and cook something delicious. So let it be then, and then he will soon return and have dinner with them. But right now he wants to fight them together with the moon. The goblins could not even imagine that there would be only two of them, and they were such bugs, it seemed to them. The boy decided to say that if she is afraid, it is better to let her move away and not interfere with anything. The main thing for him is that she said that, yes, how could he give such a speech? How could she go hide after her? Besides, she said that in truth, she... I realize that Yuji really does have some kind of trump card, or he was just trying not to lose himself in the eyes, to which he decided to ask her what he meant by this. She decided to ask again, Can he really cope with so many monsters? To which Yuji replied that the time has come as soon as it begins, it will end. From such words, she even overestimated him a little and said how they would start. She decided to ask if he had really mastered some incredible forbidden magic, since he can throw around such words. To which Yuji replied that he should think so. 
He's drinking. I thought that this, of course, was not forbidden magic, but in terms of power it was something like that. While Luna thought that the gray student had already reached such an incredible level, she couldn't even imagine what was happening, and Gray had been doing all these legendary things for a long time. The girl said that, okay, she would help him gain time, to which Yuji laughed again and said, to buy time, is she really? Laughing, she said that although she did not own everything that he owned, but performing such complex magic necessarily takes a lot of time. Well, something, and she knows that for sure. So she said she would delay them and let him focus on his magic. He promised to take her with him when he returned to their world. So she needs to keep him from dying until then. The guy thought that, in fact, he didn't need any time to prepare. Okay, nothing. Let him think so. The girl began to call on her sword, saying that Ase should answer her and also let her give her his power. The sword began to talk about how her strength was not enough to fix it, but she appreciates how she takes care of her condition. So, so be it. She can help her. Then let's go. The only thing the ogre didn't understand was what they were going to do, although he saw a beautiful girl hanging in the air. Looking at it, he could not even imagine that this was the soul of the sword. Therefore, he assumed that he liked the damn thing after which he ordered all his goblins to take her alive. Meanwhile, the spirit spoke to Luna, saying that using her powers would speed up the expenditure of her magical energy, and judging by her condition now, she will only be able to support for ten seconds. So you need to hurry up and help that young man Yuji as quickly as possible. While the orcs began to attack, she was finally able to charge this sword. Then she said that it was enough, and now you can attack them. Lightning was really good, but of course it was not enough to kill everyone. Of course, there were a lot of orcs there. But still, the lightning magic passed through them all, and they died. The spectacle was not a pleasant one for such non-entities as them. But still, meanwhile, the lightning decided to fly straight towards the orc leader, and he understood that right now he could not die. It's not for nothing that he is called the leader of the orcs, because he will need to be not only smarter, but also stronger. Therefore, only one thing is clear. This is the power of the sword soul. Indeed, they are a worthy opponent for him, but compared to his power. That thunder, it doesn't mean anything against him at all, he said. After which he turned this very lightning back into the sender. As a result, the moon suffered a blow from its own lightning. She understood that she was still very weak and even used the powers of the soul of the ball. While Luna thought that she ended up doing almost nothing anyway, Yuji decided to buy this very sword for himself in order to try to use it for his own purposes. And of course, he was able to catch the moon and said, It came out great. I'm glad that the moon became his ally to which she said that she had helped him gain some time, what was he doing here anyway, and in general, she was able to at least do this. What he said was that naturally she helped him a lot, after which he told Luna to have a good rest now. After all, this is important now, and he will try to sort it all out. The orc just yelled, You said that another fool has come. He does not know what power and respect are. Let the soldiers of the Green King tear him to pieces. I was just glad, he answered, that he could experience something new again. But he knows neither power nor respect. He laughed at the king's words. Having finally decided to turn, he decided to say, The soul of the sword, it's still there at all. To which she replied that it was a pity, but he was not her owner. So he can't use her powers. To which he said, well, it's okay, it doesn't matter. To which the sword asked, I mean, it doesn't matter. The boy decided to tell him that. He just needs to make sure whether it can withstand the main lightning magic on other energy sources. To which he replied that the king of the elements forged it using the purest energy of lightning. Not a single lightning in the world could harm it. Well, said Yuji. 
you're so nice, after which he began to use his lightning, which belongs specifically to his element, fire, between lightning as well as dark force. One thing is clear. The orc king did not expect such a thing to happen. Looking at this, Luna could never have thought that a service student could master lightning, which was also unusual, and real red lightning. Also, all the people who stood near the village also could not believe it because they did not understand why lightning began to shoot at their master. Although they understood perfectly well that he himself most likely caused it, it was still surprising. Meanwhile, the perverted spirit decided to tell him to wait a little because he wasn't leading her into some kind of ecstasy because of the thunder. I decided to tell him to stop. Don't stop quickly. Let him stop enough. She can't fit in anymore. If he continues for even a fraction of a second, she won't be able to withstand such power. She said that she could no longer withstand so much elemental thunder energy. Yuji decided to think and also understood that although she was able to cope with his energy and lightning, the capacity is certainly too small. What kind of magic sword is this? Why does it hold so little energy? It seemed quite strange. To which she said that, wow, anyway, let him quickly use her, otherwise he will soon tear her to pieces. Well, since there are no other options, then it will do. After which Yuji shouted that the shortened version was calling her right now. It was as if all the orcs did not exist. They all suffered from such a powerful power of this sword, as well as the element of lightning. The head of the orcs could not even imagine what kind of power it was, such that it causes red lightning for revenge of ordinary yellow lightning. What is it anyway? He simply could not believe that this couple could be so strong, and they just wanted to capture some miserable village of goblins or these simple beast people. This simply seemed unthinkable to him. The entire population that was standing right now near the gate and all the people and goblins looked at them and did not understand how this was even possible and how strong their master was. The elder said that they saw this too, and he didn't make a mistake just now to which the lemur said that so many monsters in one fur disappeared. And I couldn't believe that it was just that his sulfur taught him this or something. It's just unfashionable. It turns out that Sulphur can also use magic of such power. She thought that she had already been told that, and that it turned out well after all, the great sword. To which the spirit said that he, just a lovely magician, and he's not her master at all, and he deals with her body without repair. It's so exciting. I said the sword, more precisely. She thought that even if he deceived her and forced her to serve him, it's just an insult to the magic sword but she couldn't believe that for that sweet moment when she was filled with power and that short moment of release they were beautiful, it seemed so that in the end she was glad that he was able to use her like that. And she also laughed and said, and he's really good. She didn't drop her honor and magic sword, to which Yuji really didn't understand what she was talking about and or even understood, but he also knew the context of what she could say. But still, he decided to continue the conversation, saying that something still surprised him. The thing is, how did he survive? How much strength does he have? Something so stubborn that he can survive so much from so many lightning bolts. The orc said that he is this guy and what kind of person he is. Where does he have so much power? To which Yuji replied, maybe... And what's the point of telling her this even if he finds out the answer, he'll still die right there on the spot, so he doesn't need to know? Well, he said the orc will die. He just laughed and said that he would never die. It's not for nothing that he is considered the greatest orc and there is no need to be so self-confident, he said. He hasn't even shown his real power yet. After which all these souls began to change little. Yuji began to understand that, wow, what was this even interesting to him? The souls of dead monsters began to return to him. That's how powerful he was. The orc just laughed and said that she had finally managed to turn into a battle troll, and he, a weakling and an ignoramus, 
would learn today what real power is. And he already decided to say that he would have to tinker a little more. He decided to ask the spirit. She is ready for another call, to which she said that she will do it again. The orc only insisted that he had to until the moment of his death, and still didn't understand anything. Now he will send him to the underworld. To which he said, great, he can't wait to see it. After which the orc decided to move from his place and head straight for the boy. One thing was clear. He decided to summon the cores of the purple tiger. After which he began to throw them directly at Yuji. Well, he could, of course, dodge them. But rather than being pretentious, he could just fight them off. He looked a little forward and he saw only thorns or in front of his eyes and understood that most likely. He is right behind him as it really seemed to him. Of course, he began to shorten from the blows he tried to land. Orca just continued to say what kind of coward he is. Why does he need a magic sword if all he does is run away from it? Thus, Yuji said that since he is so impatient to be cut apart by the attack, everything he wants, of course, what is the spirit that is now using this power? It only hiccups for such an absorption of energy. Finally, Yuji decided to show him strength just in one moment, after which he shouted for the magic tick to open to him right now. Orgar said that he laughed and said that his supposedly cool sword could not kill him so easily. He looked carefully and stopped him, but right in front of his nose, or rather with his third eye. She clearly decided to explain to him that no, he was already a corpse, in fact. The essence of this blow is not to defeat the enemy with the sword, but to remove him with the magic that will be released from this very sword, after which he shot him right in the head with this same death ray, and he was able to fly far from this place, realizing that he finally would most likely not be able to get up. Right now, Yuji understood that he was unlikely to survive such blows, but only if he was not an immortal. They were all surprised at what happened right now. Of course, they were very happy because they knew that he had finally won. He was a hero. He was alone against them all. The green sorcerer was no more. One of the residents decided to ask the lemur, the man with whom she returned, how he managed to survive at all. The boy decided to say that, well, let her take her sword, to which the moon said that, yes, thank you. The girl simply could not understand how strong he was, but in the meantime she just wanted to rest and say that he had fought a little from hunger and his stomach was already cramping. Okay. He suggested that she go have a little something to eat. While she looked at Yuji with admiration, the spirit that appeared in front of her right now, she was only thinking about it. She understood that this guy was great, the feeling when she was instantly filled with energy and it was immediately released, this sweet moment of concentration and an incredible explosion at the end. At that moment, Luna thought that her own swords were more perverted than Yuji's. In justification, she said that with her magical powers, this would, of course, never be achieved. But still, yes, they had finally arrived here and it was clear that they were able to defeat him. They didn't know what to say to Mr. Yuji. They were all very happy that. Why ask again? What are you happy about? Well, that he saved them. He decided to tell them all that he asked them to prepare some tasty treats. By the time he returns, he is simply dying of hunger. They decided to look at each other. They obviously forgot to prepare him incredible treats, but they were so shocked by the battle that they could not do anything else. Suddenly the lemur screamed and said to the owner, He's great, since I was able to do it all so well. The entire settlement was happy with how everything turned out. They decided to say that the feast was quick, let them set a luxurious table. Everyone should run to get ready. They need to have a good celebration and all this. After which they finally decided to drink, so to speak, and decided to drink to their health, as well as to this wonderful victory that Mr. Yuji gave them. They all danced round dances, as well as much more. However, it was beautiful and cool to watch all this. 
Another thing that was clear was that the goblins and demi-humans had clearly become friends with each other. And now, after this joint victory, they were right on top, and they did not know what evil was like before. Of course, Yuji and the heads and also each had their own mistress. They all began to drink and drink and laughed loudly around. One thing was clear. He never thought that the day would come when he would drink at the same table with goblins. To which the elder only laughed and said that he too could not imagine that this could happen at all. Lemur decided to say that it was all thanks to Mr. Yuji, to which the goblin girl said that it was for sure. It was clear, the boy laughed, that Mr. Yuji, what plans he had for the future. Maybe he will still stay and be their head man. And what did he say that it wouldn't work out? He had other things to do tomorrow. They are leaving. Which, of course, he didn't expect. He was indignant and said, And that's true. But such a big man like Mr. Eugene cannot remain in their outback. It would be a real waste of talent. The old man said that even if he had already decided that he would leave. So let him not rush, because there is no need to eat one place, Mr. Yuji thinks. It will be interesting to look at it. The elder said that the green sorcerer's cave probably contains the treasures that they looted. Why don't Mr. Yuji go there before leaving, and not to look at something interesting, to which Yuji immediately became interested and asked, Does that mean treasures? Yes. Although, if you think about it, Yuji understood that, of course, there was hardly anything remarkable in this world, or rather in this cave, but it was worth going there, if only to dispel the moon. She's been helping him a lot lately. So he decided to say, Okay, if that's the case, they'll wait until tomorrow. The moon will rest, and they, if it is that there are the sorcerer's caves, to which the lemur decided to ask the owner something. She decided to say if he would take her with him on the trip. The little girl said that she would like to be the owner's guide and would take the lemur from the owner to Gaoshan, to which she heard that the gentleman said that she would excuse him, of course, but. As a safety measure, he decided that he would probably never return here again, which means they wouldn't be able to bring her back, and he values her safety, so he doesn't want to take her with him. He also told the goblin elder to draw a map for him, so they don't need a guide anymore, that's why. He decided to say that it was better for him to stay close to his family. To which she did not expect such an answer. And she understood that this was most likely a farewell forever, or, most likely, this would be the last thing she would hear. The boy decided to ask the lemur if something was wrong, to which she said that this is what it would be like in this case. She decided to get up and said that if she could not see any more, then she would not have the opportunity to repay the owner for his help, in this case. Therefore, she said that if so, the lemur would dance for the owner, and this would be her small but compensation for everything. Yuji just thought, dance, okay, sounds pretty good actually, after which she went on stage and was ready to dance her lovely dance for him. She looked at him with answers, and it was clearly evident that right now she loved her owner more than anything in the world and would not want to let him go anywhere, but she also understood that she wanted to tell him only with her smile and also with what she could. Therefore, she began to dance on stage, showing her feelings for her master. He looked at it all and understood how beautiful this world really is. The gentleman decided to ask the boy why he didn't watch the lemur dance. She's trying. To which he said that this is how to say it. He'd better look for himself, Mr. Eugene. He wouldn't have to do that. Shoot, damn it! The girl decided to come up and explain something to the gentleman. The fact is that this fiery dance means an expression of a woman's love for a man. Although she doesn't know what they have with the lemur, but... She clearly realizes that she mustered all the courage to confess to him and dance right in front of him. Therefore, she asks the young ones and the master to start looking at her, and she asks him not to take his eyes off her and take a good look at the dance. After which, turning around, 
He saw how she had finally finished dancing and right in front of his eyes and decided to show herself. She decided to say that why was he staring at her like that and not taking his eyes off her? Did you really like it? To which she was a little embarrassed and understood what she was driving at. He really didn't want to do anything like that and understood that at least she was cute, but the moon will kill him. He decided to say that why was he here? They had just been in the square. And why are they already in the tent? But what did she say? Why did he just look at her stupidly, no matter what? Since she started dancing, no matter how he called, she thought that even if he didn't answer, she had to take him here. He said that, of course, it was all funny, but she probably danced really well that he was so focused. It seems that since their time is over, he sings to himself. Okay to which she will tell him to wait a little. After which he looked at it and only listened with a straight face as she said that according to their traditions, if they agreed to watch the confession dance and went along with the dancer, then, in this case, the lemur and its owner are fine. While there was noise all around, they could not be heard at all, since there were actually a lot of people and they were all condemning their deeds. Nobody would have heard them and she began to continue that the lemur knows that the owner cannot stay and demand to take the lemur with him. But at the same time, she will not just defend her plans. She decided to tell you so that they only have tonight to do it, after which there was sudden silence, and right now the lemon was very red, probably from her own words, but she didn't understand what the problem was. And how did it even come to this? It's walking right now. But I saw how the lemur just froze in one place and is not doing anything, not talking, nothing. One thing was clear to him, that he had to start the situation with his own hands and let the lemur stand a little and listen to him. Eugia decided to say that he was very glad that she felt this way about him, but such things should only be done by mutual consent, and he cannot stay precisely because he needs to return to one very important person. Therefore, he decided to say that the day would definitely come when she would meet a man who would love her as much as she loved him. Until then, she needs to protect herself. After these words, the lemur almost lost her tower and right now she simply doesn't understand what she's doing and is thinking about her own things. What Yuji decided by looking at her was that right now she was most likely either not listening or she had passed out. He realized that right now she had simply passed out. One thing was clear to him, that she really was a good girl. After which he put her to bed and said that it was good that everything had turned out this way. He understood that one thing was clear. If he even just lay there and looked at her, then everything was quite good. Looking at her a little more, he thought that, but if he really could have stayed, perhaps he would have really taken her as his wife. It would also be great to celebrate and be a cool ruler here, but remembering that Alice can say, and she can say that this is how it is, well then and after that she remains in this hole, living it out as she wants, and let her never return to her again. He also remembered how others would feel about it. Okay, tell me that he actually promised to return her home, but in the end he decided to stay with some deceiver. She doesn't remember teaching him to do such things. He disappointed her greatly. Well, Luna didn't think that Yuji was such a person. She was wrong about him. Yuji understood that everything could turn out to be a disaster. And he also hears that, as expected, you can't trust a word the cerebellum says. All men are worthless. Let him stay there and never return. To which Yuji wanted to justify himself that everything was not so. He said, no, Alice is gray. Let them listen to her. He will explain everything right now. So you have it first thing in the morning the next day. It was finally morning and right now she was at the peak of her strength. He probably decided to say, good morning. What, are you getting old? She also said that she urgently needed to see Mr. Yuji. But it seems that today he is somehow bruised or beaten all night or something, did not sleep. To which he said that he just couldn't sleep, yes.
One thing was clear. The goblin said that the troop of equipment for going to the green sorcerer's cave was already ready, but Lady Luna still had not woken up, to which he was surprised, and since she had not yet woken up, he realized that it seemed that overused magical powers were affecting the body much more seriously than he had expected. The goblin said that so, they will wait until Lady Luna rests, and then they will move out. To which he said that, no, it's not worth it. It's better to leave early and finish as soon as possible. Well, he said, okay, sir, they're leaving right now. After which a little time passed, and everyone said goodbye to them, as they had already left, all there, to the orc cave. Finally, the next day came, and the girls decided to ask the lemur how it went, to which she asked what I mean, how. Coming closer, she just asked, and that's enough. Let him pretend. They all saw how Mr. Yuji left her room in the morning with circles under his eyes, to which they were all very happy for her and said that the two of them had already advanced to the same level. That's right. The other one will say that, Oh, let TV tell it. Quickly. They are very interested. To which she said that she would not tell them anything. After all, there might be something there, of course, but it's better not to tell them that she got worried and fainted, and when I woke up, the sun was already shining, there was one thing that the gentleman and his team had already begun to slowly approach the cave. One of the passages with her said that, This is a cave. Let the gentleman take a look at this. The cave of the green sorcerer. One thing was clear. They needed to slow down a little. So he asked them all to stop right here. He decided to say that there were some strong fluctuations in magic ahead. What they didn't think was that he felt this magic so keenly. After which, from the very place where he felt the hesitation, he saw how the plants began to perform from there, and he said that it was just too late anyway. Some plant that was not near the cart began to grab them. One of the words said that these are generally vines, they turn out magical. After which some stranger came out and said that the goblins mixed with the beast ears. This surprise seemed very interesting to him. Are they really accused? said the strangers still know that this is the lair of the green sorcerer. But they still dared to come here. They must know exactly where the green sorcerer went, he asked them correctly. After which he said that, okay, let them talk normally first. They got acquainted and decided to ask where his beloved green sorcerer and his monsters had gone. To which Yuji replied that those monsters turned out to be his creation. Well, what did he say? Yes. It's already a real shame to show such monsters to other people, in fact, but don't let him worry. He even helped him get rid of them, okay? Okay, don't let him thank him. To which he just laughed and said that he got rid of it and don't let him make him laugh. They are just a couple of not up to the magicians who overestimated themselves. This gentleman understood that it seems that if you don't make all these invaders suffer, then they really won't tell him at all. If they set something up, he killed his green monsters, then okay. After which he decided to let a little magic into his vines and decided to just kill them all, he also said that then let them see that they will die right now. The gentleman just laughed and said that if he was asking so, he would of course show him. Why not show him what he was capable of? after which he could not understand what this one-person washing machine was and who he was anyway. I'm with you on one thing. He's not north-eared or a goblin, but some other species. With such an appearance, what kind of bitch is he? After which he saw how lightning began to stretch towards him, and in fact he did not expect this. One thing was clear. Right now he was electrocuted, and he turned into just an incoming skeleton, which right now would most likely fall to the ground in a burnt flame. He just screamed a little from such electricity and said that the Lord would not forgive them for this succubus, after which they fell silent and did not understand at all that this was dangerous for them. Yuji, one thing was clear. He drove away. Eh? I wanted to ask him a couple of questions first. Who knew that this fool wouldn't think of letting Liana go? 
She was a little out of her mind until his copy said, Hey, sir, what are they going to do now? To which he replied, What should they do? Well, they don't even know who it was, so just let them move on and take everything that's there. To which he said, Okay, then. Meanwhile, someone decided to come to His Majesty at the Lord's Palace. He decided to report that Gerda had died. Before his death, he was able to leave a message for them, to which he said, What a nonsense! What did he say? To which he said that the succubi were revolting. The ruler asked the succubi, Strange, is this really the case? A little later, the lemur decided to say that Lady Moon had not woken up yet. Really? To which she said that no, not at all, she was still sleeping now. Walking a little closer, she decided to look at her and thought that she had not woken up for a very long time. Maybe something had happened to her. Mr. Yuji said that he had spent a lot of energy on his magic and needed a good rest. Let her sleep as much as she needs and don't worry. Lemura decided to look at her carefully and understood that right now she was probably sleeping soundly. But suddenly something began to bother her some terrible dreams. One thing was clear. She was having incredible nightmares, and she could not say anything, and also she could not understand why everything was happening this way. She saw in her nightmares that her brothers and everyone in general, everyone who was here, they all died. Her entire kingdom was captured by one person who only said that, Ai, 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 is this Princess Luna? Apparently, she has a nightmare when Laser was married to her, and he later wanted to kill her entire kingdom. He decided to say that, I never thought that such a fish would fall into his net. Today, none of their royal family will be able to escape. The king said that the moon should quickly run away from here and never return here, to which she shouted and said that no father, she wanted to help him as much as possible but it was clear that no one would allow her to escape from here, and she realized that behind her back they had asked where she wanted to escape, his little princess. Looking back, she saw how they wanted behind her back. While she tried to fight, they only said that he could not hide from her, to which she just shouted and said that, Russia, let her give her some strength so that she can defeat her opponents. And suddenly, like the worst nightmare, he broke into pieces and began to disappear a little. One thing was clear, that for her, this was the biggest nightmare, that she would not be able to master even her sword, and she would simply be helpless. She didn't understand how this could even be and what the spirit told her to look at. Even a magic sword cannot escape a miserable end when in such hands. He has nothing to look at her, and therefore no one will save her, and in the end, no one will protect you. All her loved ones and relatives are all dead, and even this sword, and what it was, is doomed to death. To which she will say, What nonsense! Some kind of nonsense! Moving a little closer, she finally saw a demon who would say that she knows everything, knows everything about her. She is the moon, to which the girl herself could not understand anything of her words. Closer and closer, they say, that while she was having fun there in other worlds, she already at least knows what her country and her city are going through. She is a weak, stupid, selfish princess who doesn't understand anything with everyone. She decided to tell her to hurry up, let her show her his agony. She'll wait for her to come, but it's better not to linger in this world from her. After all, Everything she does now is a mere trifle compared to what will happen later, until she turns into it. After this terrible nightmare, she was finally able to wake up. After looking around, they decided to say that hooray, she finally woke up. The lemur decided to say that great, finally Luna, she woke up and will be able to get up. But in response, she only asked how long she slept here to which she will say that all night and all day, it turns out. The girl just got angry and said that night and day are a lot, but that the lemur said that she was probably very hungry, having slept for so long, that she would now have dinner. 
She looked down and realized that just now, it was all a dream, right? This isn't real. But really, you can't waste any more time here. It's time to go home, Luna thought. She recalled this look, this dream, which brought a bad feeling. The lady decided to ask where Yuji was now, to which the lemur replied that he is the owner now, after which he finally threw it out and said that you all would rather come here, to the lair of the green sorcerer. They found tons of food, resources, water, and gems, to which they were all happy and wow so much, they all said. The girl said that it seemed like it would last them for several years. One of the mockingbirds decided to ask, Is he sure he wants to do this, give all the resources to them? To which he already told her that, What's wrong with that? Moreover, they themselves presented most of this to a serious sorcerer before. Therefore, of course. Moreover, these resources are heavy and bulky. The most important thing is that further they will all need to unite and work hard for the benefit of the whole common cause. Work is the only way they will overcome all disasters. He says, okay, Mr. Yuji, they will do all this. To which the goblin will answer that they goblins now form a single tribe with animal ears. He began to say that, oh yes, how nice it would be if the last association, Mr. Yuji, became their leader to which he will say that he has already said that he cannot stay and be a leader. He saw Luna with a smiling look, who was not smiling at all. He decided to ask if she had finally woken up. Great, let her gloss how much they brought from the lair of the green sorcerer. But what is the answer? She told them to come back and quickly, which Yuji couldn't understand. I mean, they came back so quickly. The girl said that they had already sorted it out, which is absolutely true, so then let them return immediately. The sooner they get out, the sooner they will find a way to return home, to which he said that she had only recently recovered. Maybe she should rest a little more, to which she screamed and said, No, there's no need. While they are not in the kingdom, anything can happen. He doesn't care about Sarah and the others at all. Knowing that he already told her that, no, because he doesn't give a damn. After all, then she said that, it's good, then they'll leave now. Okay, or maybe, I looked at all this and realized that right now, most likely, they would leave on a trip and never meet again. Therefore, she could not understand whether the owner was already leaving. After this, Luna was a little alarmed, of course. It's really a pity that things happen this way. But they quickly needed to return home and already decided to shout to everyone and say that somehow they still had things to deal with. Let them go now. They all cried a lot. Two villages. One decided to say that, No, sir, I already for what? The other said that they did not expect that he was getting ready to leave so quickly. It's just unbearable pain. Everyone who couldn't believe it, at least let them give them a farewell feast. Well, he said it's not worth it. They really need to hurry. After which the elder sister of the lemur told her to quickly say goodbye to Mr. Yuji. It was clear that she said goodbye sadly. After all, I understood that everything would end there. He came closer and decided to cheer him up, saying that she really wanted to accompany him. With such an expression on your face, don't let it hang your nose. He decided to say, okay, here's something to cheer her up a little. The lemur decided to ask what the treasure was, to which Yuji said that he found it in the cave of the green sorcerer. He added some protective magic there. In a moment of danger, he would protect her, he told her. Also, of course, he cannot guarantee but if possible, he would try to figure out a way to return and visit them. And until this happens, let the post of head of the clan be hers. To which she was glad and said that he would really come back here. She was very happy to hear this. Yuji said that he will do everything possible to get him back here. So he asked her not to be sad anymore. To which she replied that, It's good, master. 
she will take care of the clan and will also wait for his arrival again. They all said goodbye to him, saying goodbye, Mr. Yuji. Soon, finally, they arrived in some mountains where all sorts of animals lived. Of course, a little in parallel, he decided to dabble in all sorts of magic with the help of a sword. The fact is that the spirit asked him to experiment a little and told him to continue and not stop. The spirit said that she felt that she would soon be able to get used to these discharges of electricity, to which Yuji was a little shocked, of course, but understood that it was probably cool for a sword. But Luna understood that she didn't like it, that he was playing with her sword right now, and it didn't look very good from the outside. She decided to tell him to stop, the two of them. Let them stop with these perversions already. I found Yuji and said, give it to him. It doesn't matter. It's Asia who demands to continue, to which the spirit only shouted at her and said that this is not some kind of perversion. This is training. She also said that she is an electric sword and suddenly for the first time in her life she encounters a type of lightning that she can handle. It's just a shame. Let her say what she wants, but she must own this lightning. Lady Luna said that it was okay, that few people could tame her. To which she shouted that, No, no, that's what? And she wouldn't put up with this. So she said to Yuji, Let's do it again. And again there were screams of delight. Meanwhile, somewhere on the mountain, a werewolf stood with his pack. One of the servants said that the commander in front had discovered two people as well as a judge along their route. They're about to reach the border to which he was surprised, since he found a person. Where do people even come from here? They explained that one of them was surrounded by vibrations of lightning magic. He must be a magician, the werewolf said to the servants. Hmm, a magician means, said the werewolf. Well, that's pretty interesting. The guy decided to say that, since this is so, it was because of the filthy people that Eric became so weak and pathetic. It doesn't matter whether he's a magician or someone else, he definitely won't pass. He also told them to quickly go deal with him, to which they said that there was a commander. After which Yuji, together with the moon, as well as the spirit, already began to climb higher up the mountain. When suddenly the spirit told him to wait a little, a little bit of energy was already too much, and she began to feel a little nauseous from such a mass of energy. The boy thought that if this was the case, he needed to find something like chopping, to which Luna was only surprised. And what to chop with a sword? She decided to say that he would not use the spell in the mountains. To which he said, What kind of spells are there? He'll just find something. Yes, he'll wave the ball. It was clear that it's not that difficult since, for example, the opponents who are flying behind him right now. Just like that, bam, that's it. He doesn't know where these dogs came from, but still the experiment was successful. They could not expect such an attack from the magicians, and apparently they understand that right now he really has some incredible power, since he was able to find out that they would attack him from behind. He didn't expect that there were werewolves here. That means it could help them. And you said it well, leader of the pack but he also decided to say that they would both die here today and let the little people see it for themselves, after which he began to transform into a fiery form, saying that he was transforming into the King of Flames. Yuji decided to ask, Wait a minute, since they are werewolves, it means they can probably know the cry, which is great news. Well, what does he see? He laughed so that he would talk less, because he or the girl should not even dare to say the name of his brother. To which he said that this is how well he understood it. Yuji realized that it seemed that only by putting this werewolf on his knees could he make him obey the guy. Luna couldn't believe wait a minute what he was even planning to do right now. After which he poked these very lightning bolts under him, he decided to simply make a lightning-fast shock wave. It was clear that this works best now. And soon all this fog cleared and this mountain was covered as if with dents, except for one place. 
But the werewolf still managed to escape and even returned from all this. He understood that, after all, this man could not be simple. He understood that this guy was definitely a human being. In fact, Yuji's life is quite boring, as they are always wondering whether he is a human or an apostle. But he said he seemed to have gone a little overboard with the force. Well, Luna just looked and was simply unable to talk. He decided to ask, well, how does he even want to fight him? To which he thought, damn, this is really a very bad situation for him. After which an incredible shaking of the earth began, and this was clearly not normal. The moon could not understand what this earthquake was all about. Could this really be the case here? To which the brothers said that it was all over for them. Yuji most likely understood that it seemed like they accidentally woke him up with this explosion, to which he asked who else was woken up. Looking up, he just saw how big it was. She didn't really understand what he was talking about. But then she looked at this huge worm and realized what they were talking about. It was clear from his eyes that he was unhappy with what was happening now. Therefore, I decided to show who the beast is here with my roar. With this, the werewolf knelt down and said, O oh, master, the sun devourer, let him have mercy. And they didn't just get into a dead end. They were only fulfilling a public duty, in no way wanted to disturb the great master. What will happen to them now? To which Yuji understood that, well, if that's the case. The girl didn't understand with such size and power, even if all the imperial armies were with them, they still wouldn't be able to win. To let her relax, because he is standing next to her. So she doesn't have to worry about anything. He said it was time to show everyone what they had learned in training. After all, let her look at it because he answered that it was an excellent opportunity to say goodbye to excess energy. After which the media saw how lightning began to thicken around these people, and he understood how incredibly powerful this force was. And one thing was clear, to look at this, that she was much larger than himself, was clearly proof that this person would clearly be stronger. To be honest, such a blow made even a werewolf tremble. Something that can be done so powerfully with the help of the sword spirit, as well as with the red lightning element. Even at that very moment, the goblins and all those who accompanied them saw these lightning bolts behind the mountains, and clearly understood that they had been summoned for a reason, and they also knew who did it. At that time, the worm was in a bit of a trance, after which it began to gradually disappear underground. And finally, there was silence from which there seemed to be no worm at all. Praise him, because I realized what a good kid he was and immediately left here as soon as he saw the strength. Commendable. The boy understood that the little obedient animals were so cute as always, to which Luna said that, Yuji, he's just... She decided to say that she still used forbidden magic. One more. To which Yuji said that, yes, it's some kind of magic. It's showing off like that. He said, Okay, gentlemen werewolves who decided to take on them, finally. The guy decided to ask them if they even wanted to continue fighting with him, to which it was clear from their look that now they could not say anything to him in response, but were only surprised that he did not kill them on the spot. Yuji understood that, Well, great then let them take them all to their camp. To which they said, yes, and they will take them right away. And finally they arrived at the werewolf settlement. All their other brothers only said that people, how long had it been since he had seen them alive? And the other one said that these are prisoners, Lari. It's no use these little people climbed on him, of course. To which the werewolf said that, oh, these fools are just talking nonsense. Let him please, great sir, not pay attention to them. To which Yuji said that it was probably nothing. Let him take them to Eric. Finally they came up and said that they had arrived. He could come in. After which he decided to call his brother and said that guests should come to him. And he was ready to meet them. To which he said that, Uh, 
he didn't want to see anyone. Let him tell the Lord he will never meddle in this damned world of people again. That his brother came up to him and said that he had come to his senses, his brother urgently needed to calm him down. The winner of the Sun Devourer, the great Lord Yuji, came to him, after which he wondered what kind of Mr. Yuji he was. He had already met Mr. Yuji once in the human world. Looking closely, he couldn't, he apparently could end up in their world. The werewolf was surprised and decided to ask Mr. Yuji what he was even doing here, to which he said that, yeah, he was glad to see him too. Long time no see. To Eric, how is he doing? But the werewolf couldn't believe it and said that it was really him. He had no glitches. Looking at his brother, he realized that right now, and not what is right here, they are all, they can do nothing, okay? After he looked at his brother who was looking at him, he decided to hit him right on the floor. To show how grateful they were that he had come, he told Mr. Yuji to receive him at their lair. This is a great honor. If his brother managed to offend him in some way, please be generous. Forgive him, please, he asked Mr. Yuji. What did he say? Nothing, guys. Let them relax. The girl decided to ask how he knew werewolves from the magical world, to which Yuji replied that Carrick had been in the human world, and that's when they met. That time there was a little trouble there, so they met. It's true that the werewolf said that's exactly it. Yes. Lady Luna decided to say, Okay, let them. Let's tell them the latest news from the wizarding world. And then she would ask them a couple of her questions, to which they said, Yes, lady. Eugia also decided to say that thanks to the death of Count Pierce, or whatever his name is, the fox took his place and now owns a coastal castle. That's how it is, and the rulers of the magical world are ready to invade the human world. When I contacted her, she said that was exactly the case. In general, all zones received orders for full combat readiness. Therefore, the king of beasts in their zone is also against the rules. Well, of course, inform their werewolves that they will soon go on a hike, Yojia decided to ask, so they were preparing for the invasion of the human world, and once again to which he said, No, of course not. Werewolves will definitely not obey such an order. To which he said, That's great. These people in the world have him and a big man. Although the world of people is weak, he likes it quite well. He won't allow anyone to spoil the things that he likes, or he hopes they are his, understood. She said that, of course, they understood, and they would not do anything like that while the world of people was being protected. Their attempts to invade him will simply drown in the depths of all depths. And it already seemed strange that it seemed that their ruler did not fully understand this. Surely Lily told him everything. Does he still dare to have views of the human world? Well, it's worth explaining to him in person, if possible. Luna began to suspect that this guy not only has connections with the magical world, but judging by his tone, he doesn't even care about the ruler of the magical world. Well, she began to understand that such a person certainly could not be just a student of sulfur. So who is he anyway? Little by little, she began to realize that no, it doesn't matter who he is. The most important thing is that with his help, the issue of the military weakness of the empire will be resolved. What if Yuji noticed a look at himself that was downright strange and a little suspicious? He decided to ask, what? It's the moon that's just staring at him so intently that it's cutting right through him, as if. To which he decided to joke. I'm saying that she has finally discovered the whole abyss of his charm. To which she said, Less it, let him talk all sorts of nonsense, young man. But still, the girl understood that this was a fact. He had plenty of strength, no matter if he killed green monsters or drove away the sun absorber. The strength he demonstrates is simply fantastic. Is it clear that with such power, any problem will become a problem? It's worth paying any price just to get him as an ally, and that's it.
even if it is. Suddenly the lady became a little embarrassed and thought that, wait, something was going wrong. Well, come on, let him teach you quickly. He's Sarah's student, maybe he's even her fiancé. But how can she? Although Yuji at that moment didn't understand why she was still embarrassed and looking in the other direction. The gentleman decided to ask Carrick what he generally knew about the method of magic in the human world, to which he asked about moving from the world of magic. Well, he said that, of course, he knew something, but he didn't know that he needed it. The guy decided to tell him that if the gentleman wants to leave the magical world, he needs to get to GAO and open the magical gates, but you won't be able to enter the GAO chin without the permission of the ruler. The only chance is to take possession of the seals from the magical barrier. The four rulers of each zone have them. Only then can something work out. Yuji, of course, was not satisfied with such an answer, and he asked why he first had to offend all the seasons, collect all the seals, and only then could he leave. To which the werewolf didn't really want to talk about it, but that's how it was. Yuji decided to say, Yes, it's troublesome, of course. Or maybe they should go straight, break this magical barrier, and to hell with it, he's only afraid that he won't calculate the strength. Yes, he'll accidentally destroy them. Small fates are not very... It will be polite. To which the werewolf said, Please let him calm down, sir. He will try to do everything possible so that he can get into the human world. Out of nerves, he decided to say that the gentleman had definitely mentioned Miss Fox. They know each other because now Lily is one of the rulers of the zone, so maybe there is some other way to enter Gaochen. Yuji decided to say that he really needed to find Lilis. Okay, the boy said, then let's go look for Lilis. They need to ask her, since they know her. Maybe something will work out. And such a werewolf just experienced the most vivid emotions. Also the fear that the master might not like something, and he might tear him apart right here. Therefore, clapping his hands, he said that it was good, sir. Let him wait a little. His wolves will arrange everything. He said that, yes, that's what Mr. Yuji means. He even fought the purebred succubus Miss Lysis. They said that the first beauty of their world, Miss Lillis, although... According to rumors, she already has a child. She has been exciting the minds of men for a thousand years, remaining a young beauty. This is the best flower of the magical world, which of all the men of the magical world would not want to become, ugh, would not want to be struck down by Cupid's arrow. She really didn't expect them to be so divinely comfortable. Er miss, er lily who is being considered right now, it turns out, is Alice's mother. Luna decided to say, the best flower of the wizarding world, then yes. To which I already said no. No, most likely he is confused. Yuji decided to say that he hopes she won't tell others about all this, because Lily is Alice's mother. But at that moment, somehow she was listening, the girl was only thinking about how stupid... Let them come so close to her, because she won't withstand such pressure. But Yuji just wanted to say that he wouldn't want anyone to find out about their relative. After which she decided a little, but for him to move away, she said, well, she understood. Let him not switch to her close to a perversion like him. And what will he tell her that, okay, he just wanted to say important information. And he said that it's good then they will go there. So the werewolf said that, Mr. Yuji, everything is ready. We can go right now. The girl decided to take a look and realize that, in fact, everything was arranged very quickly. In fact, it was a pretty good cart with the best riding wolves in the whole wide world. The gentleman decided to say that this was a good cart, to which Eric said that this was the cart of their leader. He hoped he would be comfortable in it. He also insisted that in order to get to the territory of the Dark Knight, you need to cross the territory of the King of Beasts and the territory of Nightmares along a hurricane road. An ordinary cart simply cannot pass there, but they can. Because he told her about then thank him, 
but he didn't decide to say in response about his brother, so that he would relax and deliver everything to him. After which all these wolves began to slowly climb the mountains. Of course it was a little hard for them, but they were created to pull such carts. Volchara only told the gentlemen not to worry. They were already leaving for the Hurricane Mountain, to which the gentlemen said that, wow, that's a dream indeed. The boy could not even think that there were such places in the magical world. The werewolf saw that they were finally in the tunnel. Volchara said that the gentlemen should not worry about everything. They need to overcome this cave, and after that they can rest a little, to which Yuji said that it was good. Finally, they moved right here. It was quite nice here. But suddenly the werewolf sensed something wrong. He felt the presence of someone else. And he also saw that someone was really here, since his wolves also heard that someone was here. After which some unknown person, together with two others, decided to say that he had finally arrived. Apparently it was a werewolf who was glad that Karik could finally get here. This same Lev decided to say that the judge, according to reports, he betrayed the magical empire and went over to the people, began to help them, and he planned to help people enter the Gaoshan. He was ready to cause the Lord his trouble, and he cannot believe that this is true. To which the werewolf said that the king of beasts, how did he even end up here? Yuji couldn't believe who the king of beasts was. Wow, that's quite interesting. Yuji went outside with the moon and didn't hear that Mr. Tsar said that, of course he was here to find out whether the rumors about his betrayal were true, but apparently behind him there was the person whom he was glad to obey, the one for whom he was ready to give the empire an emperor. He decided that Leo would be the future lord of the beast zone and he challenges him to see if he dares to accept it, to which she already told her duels are not very interesting. The king of beasts said that the Mara beasts live by the principle of survival of the fittest. They only respect strength. If he gets Eric to fix it, then he definitely has the power. And if he defeats him, he won't go after Eric for his betrayal. The white lion decided to say that if he wins, even giving him the beast king throne will not be a problem for him. Yuji decided to say no. Why does he need the throne of the king of beasts? although Yuji noticed something. His crown was actually quite good. Okay, he agreed to these terms. He does not unnaturally need any thrones, but if he wins, he'll give him his cool crown. He is coming, he asked the king of beasts. One of the guards said that the happy man, that is, the throne of the king of beasts, does not need, and he coveted the crown to which the lion said to calm down, Lorend. Deciding to agree to the conditions, he said, If you want my crown, then let him know that it is the main strength of the king of beasts. The one who possesses it will become the king, but he agrees to fight with him on such conditions. But he said that she had one condition. It's quite narrow here, and she should turn around and go outside. There they can fight. And after looking at the moon, she decided to tell Yuji that their goal was to return to the human world. Why does he need the throne of the king of beasts? The guy decided to tell her that he didn't need the throne. He just really liked the crown. That's it, he said. I decided to ask her. He invited her to go to the green sorcerer's cave and choose something for herself. So, she didn't go. Yuji said that this crown is very beautiful and he thinks that it will definitely suit her. So he wants to take it and give it to her, to which she became very embarrassed and said that he was a complete woodpecker. She is the princess of the human world. What does she need the crown of the king of beasts? And she said that she didn't want him to give her anything at all and not get confused. Nothing. What? Yuji said that he wanted to give her something for nothing after which the king of beasts asked if he was ready to fight the human one, to which he said, Okay, let the bull out. He decided to say that the lion hunts the hare, tearing it apart. That's why he said that the boy is now in the role of a hare, after which he decided to remove it with all his stupidity. 
Having struck, he thought that he could easily crush him. Well, of course, in fact, he survived and said that the lion was hunting the hare. Well, it's a funny story. But, well, who is the lion here? Who knows? He got a little confused. And suddenly the king of beasts realized that this was power. This is incredible. After which he just laughed and said that it was stronger than I expected. Who will I listen to? Now to Eric. But he said it's flammable right now, so he better be careful. What he definitely couldn't do was flash into a golden lion. Yuji immediately understood that gold was weaker than diamond, so it was not the best protection, just for the sake of fueling. And also, why does he still love to change his appearance? Well, compared to that chatterbox who trembled for half a day and then changed shape and immediately died, he still seems to be nothing. So he has a gift for him. It will allow him to see what is called real power, after which the king of beasts saw how much power this boy had. Since he was just constantly on the spot, he was able to free up a little of his strength. The king of beasts could not believe it. He just picked it up and threw it away without any movement. This is simply unimaginable power, he thought. Yuji decided to ask how he felt about his power, after which the boy decided to simply take his hand a little and turn it to the side. By turning it, he was able to make a deliciously powerful magic that was just like a normal magic sword cut. But the king really could not expect this. After all, he made just one movement, and such power was right in front of him. I was simply out of my mind with rage, and so it's surprising how strong this man is. Meanwhile, Luna was no longer surprised, and the werewolf, judging by the fact that he knew that this gentleman was clearly strong, even decided to save the sunglasses for himself. One thing was clear, wow. The continuous wind, which blew away everything in its path with a hurricane stream, has been gone for several thousand years. The king of beasts understood that he had done it in one fell swoop. Even the hurricane of the soul, here for thousands of years in an instant, stopped. It was clear to the king that this was the power of the strongest world. In total, he was a victim at the hands of this monster, and he does not regret it at all after which it began to transform into its real appearance. Yuji simply didn't understand. Why the hell does every villain want to turn into someone stronger? He decided to say, is he getting ready to continue his metamorphoses or wants to explode right now or what? After which he did not expect to see a little lion cub. He didn't expect this and said, wow, he didn't expect to see a little baby after which one of the guards said that the king, no, everything is fine with him. Finally getting up from the polo, he told him to calm down. Lawrence, he's fine. To which he said that, please don't let him be upset. Even if the Lord himself comes, he won't be able to defeat this strange monster. The werewolf said that this was the real body of the king of beasts. He is still very young, and the image of a formidable lion was maintained with the help of the magical powers of the King of Beasts. Well, the girl was a little surprised and decided to ask again. So young, that is. She decided to say that it was an unfair fight. It turns out that he beat the baby. To which Yuji said that he didn't even know that he was a baby. He said that if anything, it was he who challenged him to a duel and it doesn't matter to him whether they are adults or not, the result will definitely be the same. To which the young king said, Be calm, Lord. He will definitely not use such excuses. To avoid the holy duel. Lev said that from the meetings of his other creatures, he is the first who has such incredible power. Therefore, it would be an honor to fight and lose to him. Therefore, as they agreed, and it was in the agreement, he brings him the crown of the king of beasts. His guards only cried and said that the king of beasts, that man would become, no. This is the worst nightmare, he thought. To which the king told him to shut his mouth, Lorend. And the one who paid attention to her thought that, in fact, this Leo was very noble. Even though he is an animal, he decided to say that it was good. 
he takes it just like that. I decided to tell her to put on the moon. To which she said stop, and he said that he was even planning such a thing. After which he put the crown on her, and he realized that he was giving her a gift, as they had agreed. And by the way, while speaking, he noticed that she was very strong. It even suits her. He was surprised. So, wow, it also automatically selects the size, Yuji said well. Again he shouted and said that the king of beasts had a human female. He did not expect such a turn. To which, again, the king of beasts said that he should close his mouth, please. The boy said that they had some problems with this. To which he said that no, the crown already belongs to him, which means he can dispose of it at his own discretion. To which Yuji said that it's great, the wind just stopped. Now they can continue on their way. But suddenly I changed. I didn't expect such a turn, of course. After all, they will go with them. To which the young Leo said that, of course, after all, Lady Moon has become the queen of the animals, and it is their sacred duty to follow the new king everywhere. To which the guard said that this was temporary. His majesty would grow up and definitely regain both the throne and the crown. She, what, he again told him to shut his damn mouth already. The girl, to be honest, understood that she somehow didn't want to own this crown, and because of such circumstances. Gentlemen, they will soon arrive at the place. The nightmare zone is already visible ahead, and this means that they are already very close to them. Driving there, he decided to introduce himself that they had finally arrived here, and they were hopefully glad that they were able to arrive so quickly. The king said that the zone is a nightmare, instead of which it really makes you sweat a little and also quarrel. The lady decided to ask again. It makes me shudder, that is. To which the young czar, who is no longer a king, said that this is so. Her majesty, this place is a grave for the weak. To which she said, oh, no need to call her majesty, please. He decided to tell those that here all the weakest go to another world. Let her see for herself and understand everything right away. Outside there are only those same half-dead corpses. In fact, it's a little scary, the atmosphere of this city. But that's the truth. She couldn't understand that these people, they were still alive, turned out to be correct to which he said that they had not died yet but were close to it. They have gone crazy a long time ago, and the zone gives them nightmares, magnificent dreams in which people slowly weaken and die because the zone sucks all the life force out of them in return for receiving energy for their further existence. The only thing that is clear is that anyone who enters this earth will immediately become a victim of succubi. These vile creatures are always looking for an opportunity to take possession of the weak, but if their faith is strong, there is no need to worry. They will not fall into the trap of a succubus. Yuji said that since that was the case, he would still like to meet them. Succubi means the lady thought. She decided to understand that she probably didn't make it all up and was somehow asleep. Leo decided to say what Her Majesty said and did not arrive at the hotel. Today they will rest here and tomorrow they can move into the dark night zone. One of the henchmen said that His Majesty the King of Beasts and his retinue are welcoming them to the nightmare zone. They are very happy with such guests. These are not their friends, it turns out. But looking closely, he saw that they were people. And he also saw something unimaginable. The man was also the King of Beasts. Luna decided to ask why the hotels in the nightmare zone don't accept people, to which he just laughed and said that, no, no, everything is fine. He decided to say that his companion simply had a crown on her head, and it was very similar to the crown of the King of Beasts, so he thought to which the former King of Beasts said that she was not similar. It was the crown of the King of Beasts. This was the new girl, the King of Beasts and Her Majesty the Moon to which he could not understand that the new king of beasts was a girl, and he said that this did not concern him. Let him quickly arrange for their room what he said was there. 
Meanwhile, in some building, the wizards were wondering what it was. They were very interested in the visit of new guests, and those who did not decide to tell the person whom they did not want to see at all and the person with whom he was most looking forward to meeting suddenly come together. He decided to say that the owner meant the king of beasts, to which she said that the fool, these small pawns, are of no interest at all. She was very interested and also said that the owner was talking about those two people, especially about the guy, even though he disguises his power very well, but they still don't feel that he has something unusually strong and it's clear that he's doing an incredibly brave thing too, which he said that this guy really is kind of annoying, to which he just laughed. In this case, he decided to say that then it would be she who would be responsible for his capture and she could not understand that she had made a mistake or something. In this case, it seems that he will be able to expose her and quickly to which he said that it's okay if he discovers her. The main thing is that he doesn't interfere with him. This guy quickly gets carried away with women. He won't harm her either, probably. In general, let Lanius owe Amir and the Lord that the king of beasts betrayed them, and what he said is and will report everything until the succubi merge to the fact that she will be responsible for him. So it turns out that Yulman really surprised him. Only one thing was clear. How many years had he finally found his completely receptacle? This time he will definitely not let him leave him. Then, in the meantime, at the hotel. In this very hotel, someone decided to get inside the building through a small mesh, and this someone was clearly either a ghost or a very skilled succubus. And of course, the succubus decided to have a little fun with him and weave all sorts of dreams into him. Deciding to sneak closer, she thought something that even the owner felt that this guy could interfere. So let's go, she said. She was only a little perplexed because she understood that he had sent her to find out what kind of person this was. After which, meanwhile, Wu Yuji is in his dreams. The boy ended up in some kind of bathhouse or springs. He didn't understand why he was here, but he clearly knew it was a dream. The guy understood, because he didn't dream of anything, and then, bam! This is the atmosphere. He didn't even imagine it and realize that it was a succubus. Did they really come to him? Looking closely, he saw sulfur, which told him what he was talking about, the stupid student. She said that since he returned, be with them longer and they won't let him go anywhere. To which Alice said that, Yuji, they missed him very much. Let her stay and be good with them. To which he understood that fantasies, creations from memories pulled out from his subconscious, are the special skill of a succubus. Eh, no surprise. The lady just merged a little and understood that he instantly saw through her and this guy was not telling the truth. He said that, but unfortunately, the present Grays and Alice do not behave at all, to which she could not understand that damn she screwed up. Yuji decided to tell her that they could leave all this and chat for a while, but that was okay too, after which he began to quickly retain everything in memory while he had awareness. He decided to ask what else Succubi could do there, a different setting, different clothes, something else, to which she thought, well, okay. After all, it still completes the task. At the same time, Luna's room. She, of course, was just sleeping soundly at first, but things could have changed dramatically. She realized that right now she was dreaming about Yuji fighting with ordinary bandits and with some very ordinary sword. And, of course, she is with him. The bandit said, how is it possible that he single-handedly defeated his squad? He couldn't understand how he knew this man. To which the guy told him that he was General Harvard. That's right. He decided to say that if he was around, his vile plan would not be carried out. So let him capitulate quickly from here. After which, in these same dreams, they looked at each other. One thing was clear. How was this even possible? What was wrong with this guy? She was unnecessarily angry and realized that how he appeared in the dream that she created and controls him is just a chimera, an illusion. 
so why is her strength not enough to intervene in this? To which the gentleman said that this guy is an apostle. She was very surprised about this, and he decided to continue that, even if it was created by fantasy, it would still remain an apostle's fantasy, and her low magic could not interfere with a being like him. Therefore there is only one conclusion. There is both good news and bad. Something awakened in the container. The succubus couldn't believe it was true. The girl wanted to ask Lesha about one thing. What does it even mean? After which, little by little, she began to be wrapped a little in those very tentacles that he wanted to show her something. She wanted to leave this place but could not move. The gentleman decided to say that they have a sprout of black magic here. The mother of the black goat. Deciding to use his power, he decided to tell her something using it. Bringing her finger closer to her, she was very afraid, because she didn't know what he wanted to do right now. After which he decided to show her everything that she did not see, so this is how a princess from the human world is trying to save her empire. Before entering the demon world, she was possessed by the mother of a black goat, after which there are seven left in it. And the demons, having learned Yuji's true power, hope for his help. Indeed, it is funny with the outlook of people. It is impossible to know the meaning of the power of the apostle, but let him not worry. He too can help her wish come true. It was like she said that she would be very surprised if they succeeded. She understood that she was with you, or she would definitely not give it to her. Therefore, coming closer, she asked Yuji to leave this dream right now. Give it to me. I'm a little closer. She was twice as big, and it was clear that right now she would prevent this dream from manifesting itself as a good dream. Looking back, Luna and her lemon saw something unimaginable, and Luna couldn't understand what it was all about. What kind of monster is this? To which Yuji told her to move back. He decided to tell her to behave calmly, because he could always protect her. When he said that he would always protect her, he was beaten to death, of course in a dream, because that's what she wanted. She couldn't believe that Yuji, he deceived her. How could this even happen? After which she fell to her knees and did not understand what was happening now, what to do without him. Is there a force more powerful than Yuji? To which she heard an unfamiliar voice, and she decided to say that she still did not understand. The lady said that she hoped to put everything on the shoulders of other people. Here's her mistake. What she needs is her own strength. Those who looked at her, she could not understand her own power, how she would have to pay for it, that she wanted to master it only by entering, let us. She could save everyone. To which she said no. Nobody owns her. She will remain herself. The lady argued that power is not inherently divided into light and dark sides. Everyone decides for themselves how to use it. People who haven't discovered their power do not even have the opportunity to make a choice between good and evil. She must clearly understand this. Call on others for help and place your destiny in the hands of others. This is not the best way or control everything with your own hands and decide only for yourself. Isn't the second option the most tempting? Luna began to realize that this was true. The second offer may clearly be more tempting than the first. Relying on others is not the best option, but to master the powers on your own. It's simple, a sign that you can master something higher than now. Therefore, you need to achieve this as soon as possible. One thing is clear, whatever you hit can be a stone, and with any force, but the stronger. The better the blow, and in this case, she will be able to stand up for herself and protect everyone else. And Luna decided that it didn't matter to her whether she was a good mock or an evil demon, she would use this power, relying only on herself. It was clear exactly what I definitely needed to save. Meanwhile, the next morning, Everyone finally woke up, and Yuji immediately realized that he had not gone so deeply into the space of his consciousness for a long time. After which he saw Luna, who said, 
Why did he just get up now? Why is he digging for so long? What Yuji really didn't expect was that she would be such an early bird. He decided to take a guess and also ask Luna, Why did she get up so early and why is her appearance so unusual? To which she said, What do you mean it's early? She already managed to go for a walk and come back. She did it. It's not too early, she said. In general, they have been in this world for so long, and finally she had the opportunity and place to go shopping. She decided to say that before, her new crown did not take clothing into account at all. I didn't even want to wear it. I didn't think that she could change her appearance on her own. Well, the guard of Leo, the former king of beasts, began to cry and told her. He decided to say that he saw her new outfit and realized that she really was the queen of animals, to which she replied that he thought she only bought it for herself. The girl said that Eugene also bought clothes. Here it is, to which he was a little surprised and thought that this was true for me. Well, okay. Luna said that today they need to pay a visit to the ruler of this zone. He's not going to go there, right? To ask her what's wrong with him. Does he look bad or something? She decided to say what was wrong. Yes. It's just a shame. All the human races, he wants the entire demon world to laugh at humans and their ignorance, to which he will tell her that, okay, okay, whatever she says. After which she ordered that, that's great, they won't waste time, let them go, prepare the carriage, to which Leo said, yes, your majesty. Yuji decided to ask, it turns out that she already liked giving orders to her servants, your majesty, who paid attention to this. The lady decided to explain that they themselves wanted to call her that. She didn't force them. Okay, let them go faster already. Let them change clothes and go out. To which Yuji replied, I'm listening, queen. After that, somewhere in the depths, he said that they had already left, finally. The master decided to praise them and say that they did a good job of distracting Yuji, to which the succubus said that thank you for the praise, master. But in general, the bitch understood that they were just chatting with him all evening. And there is nothing remarkable about it at all, in fact. While she was thinking, the head decided to come up and ask her, she really didn't think there was anything remarkable about him, right? And all this is due to the fact that he really pays a lot of attention to girls. The rumors turned out to be true, so he kindly helped him in a difficult moment due to his typing memory, to which she replied that it was memory. But she was with them all the time, and nothing like that happened. Then she realized, after which he was able to print it out to her, and she couldn't believe that she was able to find out this piece of memory. She remembered something she didn't remember before. He said that he was so grateful and allowed her to get to know the U-Cups better and chatted with him for so long. He also said that he was giving her a return gift and would allow her to wither away into his real world of dreams, after which she could not believe that it was real. And what happened? She was only at the upper level. Believe us in a dream. How did this even happen? She had to control everything, but... What did Yuji say? Here they are, in their beautiful dream. The guy decided to explain that she would welcome her into his own world. She couldn't believe that it was him, the apostle. To which he said, Which is true, this is indeed the first apostle, Yuji. He decided to hint, and that one could say that he was either too self-confident or too careless. Apparently, he checked that she was an ordinary succubus of the nightmare zone, and she did not arouse his suspicions, to which she thought that such a guy was really the first apostle. The gentleman said that their plan worked. He did not notice that the changes had disappeared together. I am with you that they should wait a little, and they will see each other again very soon. Dear Catfish, or said young master, meanwhile... Yuji and his entire team went to the Dark Night Zone, the City of Blood. What was clear was that Leo decided to say that they had arrived. This is the City of Blood. Lilith should be in the Palace of Eternal Life, in theory. 
to which he had already come out and said, Wow, Lily now lives in such a place. It's quite a charming place. But still, why is there no one here at all? The former king of beasts said that it's really strange that there's not a soul here. Is it really true that Lilis is not here? Yuji decided to say that no, Lilis is inside, just like that. He knew this because he felt the magic stone that he gave her as a gift. She should be inside. All that was clear was this. Well, since no one wants to meet them, they will come in themselves, and then they began to enter the corridor, looking around a little at everything there. Finally, they all entered the beautiful castle together, and Leo decided to say that ahead of them was the palace of eternal life, only that for some reason there was no one there. It seemed strange to him. Yuji also realized that, well, no, he feels it from those who are hiding here. This is not about succubi, but incubi. The guy thought that, okay, he thinks better. Once they can meet Lilis, they will immediately understand everything. Finally approaching the throne room, they could not find her. The king decided to ask, what was Lilis doing? Where are all the other inhabitants of the palace? No one even came out to meet them. To which she only said that Asuka Lord was gathering everyone for teachings. Why did he come to her in the dark night zone? And he also brought people with him. But he just thought and said that it was not he who was looking for her. And as if they, Yuji, immediately suspected that this was most likely not a release, since she would have remembered it right now, or it was her, but someone fooled her memory. She just said that they meant Asuka, since when did low-grade beings, humans, have the right of audience with her, the Queen and the Dark Knight? Luna decided to ask, didn't he say that she knew him? Judging by her tone, she is not aware of this, to which Yuji said that it seems they have problems. After all, he understood that the one who was now sitting in front of him, not Lilis at all, the white lion couldn't believe it. He said it was impossible. He has already met her. Before that, he recognizes her smell. It was she, to which she said that, yes, it was her body. But there is no soul. She just laughed and said that they saw through her, which means her trick didn't work after all. Since that's the case, the lady decided that it's okay, since they decided to become enemies of the Lord. They are here today. Everyone will die to arms, and Lena, she said, is another succubus. Then suddenly a net flew at them, which most likely wanted to cover them all. The king could not even imagine what it was. A spider's network, the queen of insects, arena. What is she even doing here? Of course, Yuji and Luna were able to dodge such a trap. But still, this girl just laughed because the young prince was caught in the net. In general, being the queen of the magical world, the queen of insects, and Lena said that being one of the four queens, she should be. He knows very well that her magical trap will not allow him to use the powers of the king of beasts, so tell him to avoid any nonsense, meaningless fluttering and the like. The lady told him to take it upon himself. They only destroy traitors. This is the order of the Lord. After which she decided to hit him so that he would come to his senses a little in her opinion, which made Little Wolf scream a little and understand that this was most likely a sleepy puppet, a spell. After which someone decided to move into this very king of beasts, and he screamed because he was finally able to move into him. He said that this is fun, this is the body of the king of beasts, so powerful. Luna screamed and said what was wrong with Sashka, to which he said what was going on here in general, another squabble among themselves, although he decided to tell Luna that it's okay, I'm just controlling it through a dream. Lady Spider said that this guy knows Lilis, but she doesn't feel his magic at all. How then was he able to recruit two and four kings? to which she said that she herself did not know. After all, in the memory of the release there is not a word about this person, but she is sure that he is exactly the one that the Lord spoke to them. 
having decided to think, she will say that she needs to grab him and hand him over to the Lord. Just let her do it carefully, without accidentally killing him. After which he already told her that it turns out that this is the head of the nightmare zone. She took over Lysus's body. You'll have to work hard, Yuji said. But Luna also said what, and what should they do now? After all, you will have to simultaneously confront the four of this world. Yes, I already told her. Judging by their appearance, they cannot speak well. Then all that remains is to teach them a good lesson once. We need to fight. A. If she had known in advance, she would have worn a different dress. Yes, and she left it. The boy said that it's okay. He can handle it himself. After all, who is he who cannot do anything for his mistress? But here's the problem. He doesn't know how to treat programs condescendingly. She decided to guess what it was, like with Alice or something, the lady thought. Although Lysus's powers are not the same as Pierce's with his fictional world, but this energy of a purebred succubus suits her very well. She also meant that it would be great that she could test the full power of the combined energy of succubi and incubi on both of them. After which, of course, Eugene was able to cut those very icicles out of your problems. The gentleman decided to tell Luna to move back because he didn't want her to get hurt, because she said it was good. After this, someone decided to control Teen Wolf and decided to create Orc's Fury, a complete release. The boy immediately began to attack Yuji. Then he decided to ask, did he really decide to play with the lightning in front of him? It's quite interesting, he said. He decided to show that he shouldn't have been playing with the lightning right in front of him. The guy decided to tell him to stop doing this, because lightning is his strong point, after which he threw it away from him. Mistress Alish was angry at this and thought that he took out Asuka with one blow, after all, he used the powers of the King of Beasts to the fullest. How is this even possible? After which the Spider Queen realized that this was an excellent chance to attack him from behind, and she decided to block him with her web. Yuji didn't expect that the same web would be behind him, so he was able to let them catch him. The princess was very worried about Yuji and didn't know if he was okay. Completely wrapped in a web, they finally realized that who... They did it, and right now he will be blocked in this web.